Welcome to the audiobook I Am His Human Luna, written by Nim Sandu, narrated by Helena. Chapter 1 Character Sketch and Prologue Character Sketch Xenia Fernando A simple 23 year old bubbly girl with a positive attitude and an open mind to anything. Her only dream is to live a simple life without inflicting harm to anyone and without being a burden to anyone. She persistently doesn't want to get married, nor does she have any plans to spend just another typical married woman's life. Especially one where the wife always depends on their husband and thinks that their husband is God. She desires to be an independent, strong woman who would never bend for men for any reason whatsoever. Her goal is to do her MBA in America. Her hobbies include gardening and cooking for others for pleasure. Grayson Lockwood Roberts The only true alpha of the Redwood Warriors pack and a billionaire. The perfect material for an alpha. His sharp jawline, sea green eyes, sharp pointed nose, and long, sexy neck. He is 25 years old and desperately waiting for his mate, his Luna, his other half. He has a strong possessive nature, especially to things that belong to him. His Greek godlike body and handsome features melt any girl's heart and wet them to the core. Every girl craves a one-night stand with him, but he waits for his mate loyally. So this is the start of the story of a simple girl and a royal alpha. Enjoy it. Prologue She laid unconsciously on a comfortable king-size bed. The silk red and black bed sheets hugged her back of her body as a comfortable duvet covered her. He stood there, stunned by her mesmerizing beauty, admiring her from a distance but soon she slowly regained her consciousness. She blinked her eyes few times before slowly opening them with difficulty as the room lights are too bright. Suddenly the lights got dim, and she felt comfortable enough to fully open her eyes. She immediately looked around at the whole room carefully. Her head was aching like it was hit by hard rock. Suddenly, slowly, she started to remember what the hell has happened to her. Then, just like magnets, her eyes met with the most handsome man she had ever seen in her life. Who was he? Was he the one who kidnapped me? Can a kidnapper be so handsome like a Greek god? Who are you? What do you want from me? Please just don't kill me. I'm begging you. I don't know you. I've never seen you in my entire life. Why are you doing this to me? She started to wiggle further into the bed, increasing the distance between her and the stranger. Her whole body was shaking and sweating like hell, despite the cold winds from the air conditioner. He then started to walk towards her with his heavy footsteps. With three long strides, he sat on the bed. She quickly moved to the other corner of the bed so that he, he couldn't touch her. A low growl escaped from his mouth in response, and she was startled in fear. Please, sir, tell me if I did anything wrong unwillingly, because unwillingly I wouldn't even hurt an ant in my life. She pleaded, her whole body shivering, and her eyes shining with tears. He just looked at her with a blank expression before his lips curled into a small smile. Angel, he called her with his husky voice. Shivers ran through her body as she retreated in fear and confusion. You are my angel, my whole world. How could I kill you? How could you even think that I would do such a thing to my mate? I'll cut off my hands before I do such a thing. 
he approached her slowly, his face softening with compassion. She stood there, motionless, trembling in fear, but she had a look of confusion plastered on her face. You are my mate. Mine, he declared with a steady voice. Chapter 2 The Good News Xenia's POV Sweetheart, wake up. It's already 8 o'clock in the morning and you're still sleeping. How will you manage your married life when you sleep until the sun rays fall into your face? One day you will have to go to your in-laws' home and you have to serve them. Oh, please, Mom. Not again. Not today. Don't scream. I'll wake up. That was my mom's morning lecture every weekend. Why? Because I love sleep. There was no chance to sleep in on weekdays since I had to get up early to go to the office, so weekends were dedicated to enjoying heavenly sleep in my bed where I could sleep as much as I want. We are a middle-class family, and my dad is a retired bank officer while my mom is a full-time housewife. I am an only child and I was working as an HR executive in Pixel Industries. My mom always wanted to see me starting my married life since my 20s. But I'm 23 years old now and there was no way in hell I wanted to get married. My dream was to spend an independent life. Why was marriage so important all the time? Why can't people live their own happy life without a partner? These questions made me wonder every time my mom brought up my marriage. But after hearing her morning nagging, my sleep was spoiled, and so I woke up to start my day. I was particularly nervous that day because two weeks ago I applied for an MBA program at Philadelphia University in America, the land of opportunity. They were finally going to publish their selected name list of the candidates for the program. It was my long-awaited dream to come true if I got selected. I had my breakfast before logging into my office email to check if I received any new emails. The only thing I received was the replacement candidate list for my finance manager position. So, I picked up my phone and started to call each candidate to schedule their interview. After doing some work, I visited my garden to check on the vegetables that I planted. I always loved them, the way they grow up, and most importantly, the harvesting part. Sometimes I share my overflowing portions with my neighbors also. Soon, the clock struck 11 o'clock, indicating that it was high time to check whether I was selected for the MBA program. Oh, God, please have mercy on me. I logged into the site and checked my application with nervous hands. Holy cow! I couldn't believe my own eyes. I was successfully selected for the program, and it was starting in four weeks. The minute I read the good news, I started jumping, screaming with joy. Ah! Mom! Mom, where are you? Where's my sweet lady bean? Where are you? I looked around the house for her, only to find her in the kitchen, busy cooking. Well, you scared me to death, girl. Why did you scream? She asked me with her large eyes slapping my arms playfully. Mom, I've been selected for the MBA program at Philadelphia University, USA. It's starting in four weeks. Oh, God, Mom, can you believe that your little girl is going to be flying? I started to dance with her happily, but then I saw tears in her eyes. What's wrong, Mom? Aren't you happy? I lifted up her chin with my hand. No, no, my baby. I was just thinking how big you have become. Now you're going to fly away overseas for your higher studies. I'm just worried about your safety and how much we're going to miss you, our cutie pie. My mother hugged me tightly, and we both remained there in silence for a few minutes in each other's arms. After our sentimental moment, my mother continued cooking lunch, and for dinner, 
She promised that she was going to cook something special since we received such good news. I also received an email from Philadelphia University mentioning what I needed to bring along and the necessary documents I needed to have before proceeding to the American Embassy. And further, they requested me to arrive in America at least one week in advance, since I was a foreigner and it generally takes some time to adjust to the environment. But besides all that, I was so excited and had already planned to go shopping for new clothes and other necessary stuff. I was looking forward to staying at the university hostel. I was required to pay a small fee monthly, and for that, I had to find a part-time job once I arrived in Philadelphia. I got prepared hurriedly and ordered an Uber cab so I could go to the mall the very same day since I didn't have enough time to prepare everything. I informed my mom that I wouldn't be able to come back home for lunch in time and that I would have it outside somewhere. At the mall, I purchased some leather jackets, jeans, casual frocks, t-shirts, undergarments, and winter clothes. I have always loved wearing leather jackets and floral jackets over my clothes. As for makeup, I don't like to apply makeup frequently because I sweat easily when wearing makeup. But I bought a new lip balm since my lips are very sensitive to a cool environment. Finally, I splurged my money on the foodstuffs I needed to take with me for my consumption. As soon as I came back home, I informed my manager about my successful selection into the MBA program, and he asked me to submit my resignation immediately on Monday. So, I immediately typed my resignation letter by thanking everyone, mainly because this job enabled me to save money for the MBA program. As the sun started to set in the evening, I started going through my old pictures and remembering happy moments we spent as a family and with my friends. I've always loved my workplace, my bosses, my peers, and my colleagues. But my MBA was a two years program, which meant I wouldn't be able to see them for a long time. Plus, I was planning to settle down in America permanently with my established career. Only God knew what would happen in a country far away from my mother's land, Sri Lanka. Maybe my fate wasn't as bad as it looked. After a celebratory dinner with my family, I grew tired due to my hectic day, and so I headed to bed and slept like a log through the night. Chapter 3 a heart-touching goodbye. Xenia's POV Mom, I'm home, I announced with a tired voice. I arrived back home after spending yet another tiring day at the office and standing on the bus in terrible traffic. The worst and most hateful part of riding the bus was tolerating the same old drooling looks of disgusting men which was why I always used my AirPods on the bus, to listen to my favorite songs just so I can avoid the unnecessary conversations and judging looks of other people. Most importantly, it was the day I handed over my resignation to my manager. Usually, we had to give our notice of resignation one month in advance, but since I didn't have much time left, I applied for annual leave for the last two weeks. As I packed up my things, everyone congratulated me for being selected into the MBA program. The next day, I prepared all the necessary documents I needed to submit to the American Embassy. Honestly, I was a little nervous since it was my first time visiting and dealing with an embassy. As usual, just like any other day, my mom blessed me before I headed out of the house. I reached the embassy with my document file tucked safely in my arms before handing it over to them. The officer in charge asked me a few questions, and I successfully answered them. It was not too difficult since the Philadelphia University was a reputed and well-known university all over the world, and especially in the United States of America. After going through my application, 
they asked me to come back in four days to check about the visa approval. I returned home in relief, and Mom was waiting for me in the living room. How was your interview? She asked impatiently. Not bad, Mom. They asked a few questions to double-check with the documents and told me to come back to check about the visa status after four days. I sat down on the sofa tiredly next to her. I see. We will see then. Come. I have prepared prawn rice for dinner, she said with a smile. What? Oh my God, Mom, that's my favorite. I'm gonna miss all your delicious food. I hugged her tightly and she patted my back lovingly. I'll just go freshen up. Please prepare the dinner table. I'm gonna eat a lot today, I exclaimed as I danced to my room. I had a quick shower and changed into my pajamas. I joined my mom and ate so much that I couldn't breathe. My mom was stunned, wondering whether I had been possessed by a greedy ghost. After dinner, I brushed my teeth and went to my happiest place and my heaven. My bed. Oh, I'm gonna miss you, baby, I pouted, cuddling my bed. Beside my bed was my favorite soft toy, Mario, which was gifted to me by an unforgettable friend of mine for my last birthday. There was no way I was going without Mario. I'll carry Mario with me. Just like that, I slowly went to sleep like there's no tomorrow. Four days later. After impatiently waiting, I finally visited the American Embassy again. I remember entering the building with an uneasy mind and my wet, sweaty palms, which was normal whenever I'm nervous. After twenty minutes they called my number, which I was assigned to when I entered the embassy, and I approached the counter. I was nervous as hell. Miss Zenia, your visa has been authorized by the embassy. Congratulations and have a pleasant stay in Philadelphia. The visa officer announced formally. Thank you very much, sir. I danced in my head and took my passport. As soon as I got out of the embassy, I called my mom to tell her the good news. Mom, the visa has been authorized! I screamed with a happy tone. Few people turned to look at me with their narrowed eyebrows. Go to hell, world. This is me. I returned home and informed all my close friends and my manager. They all congratulated me, but it reminded me that in two days, it would be my last working day at the office. I had a fresh bath and had my dinner before going to bed. I always loved my friends in office, and they're like my family. I knew it was going to be painful for me to say goodbye to all my loved ones, as I'm a very sensitive person. One small thing was enough for me to start my waterfall of tears. I looked through the photos on my FB profile and remembered the sweet, wonderful moments I had with all my loved ones. Many years ago, a friend told me that high tech is not important for any relationship, but high touch is essential. I finally understood because I would be able to talk to them through Viber or FaceTime, but I wouldn't be able to physically touch and hug them. Come on, Senya. If you're so weak to say bye to your loved ones, why did you apply for this? My mind argued. It was true. I had to be a strong girl since I was about to fly to an unknown country and live with unknown people. As I contemplated my new future, I drifted off to sleep. My last day at the office finally came, and I personally requested them not to arrange any party for me, since I knew I won't be able to do a thank you speech without crying. I pleaded with them to let the day go about just like another normal day for me, and allow me to feel another working day with my loving buddies, so I won't feel that I am resigning. Nevertheless, they arranged gifts and a small party which was participated with very few people. All my colleagues from finance, marketing, the HR team were there to congratulate me. 
With teary eyes, I started my speech, and I felt as if something was stuck in my throat. I couldn't talk more and broke down in tears, which made them come to hug me and try to console me. Finally, I went to all the floors and departments to personally say goodbye to them. Why are goodbyes always so hard? I randomly checked one of my gifts and realized they had gifted me a large framed photo of a collection of different pictures we took from time to time on many occasions. I couldn't ask for more great people. Eventually, I completed my work and said goodbye to them before returning home. Mom, I'm home, I called out with a sad voice. She knew the reason for my sadness, so she didn't ask anything further. I freshened up and had my dinner before heading straight to bed. In just two days, I was about to leave Sri Lanka. My flight was scheduled at 8.30 p.m. and it was a direct flight to Philadelphia. Even though the ticket was a bit costly, it was good for me. I wouldn't have to transit and run around, especially since I was flying alone. Time passed by very fast, and finally the day arrived for my departure. I knew that my parents were very sad, but they didn't show it to me. I also tried to hide my tears. Mom prepared some food for me that could be used from time to time, so I could minimize my expenses for my food until I get a job. I packed everything I needed along with my favorite small pillow. I couldn't sleep without that pillow. It was my childhood pillow, and it's very soft. I always used it to cover one of my ears with it and go to sleep. Otherwise, I can't sleep. So there was no way I was leaving it behind. I got dressed in a pair of blue denim jeans and a t-shirt along with a leather jacket on top of that, so I don't feel cold. The university had personally asked us to bring more winter clothes since it was November and winter was coming. I ordered an Uber car. My parents came along with me to the airport to drop me and say goodbye to me. We arrived at the airport at 5 p.m. We had to be there about three hours before the flight to avoid the unfortunate circumstances that could occur. We sat on a bench and filled the necessary forms. Suddenly, Mom started to cry and boom. My waterfall of tears also started. My father just looked at both of us somberly and tried to console us. Be safe, love, and call us as soon as possible once you land, and contact us as many times as you can, my mom advised, holding back her tears. We all hugged tightly, and finally, I said my final goodbye to them. I waved until the point I couldn't see them any longer. I got onto the flight and looked for my seat with the help of an air hostess. I made sure to take a window seat so I could enjoy the flight as I knew it was going to be a long journey. The pilot welcomed all the passengers and asked us to wear seat belts since the flight was going to take off. I looked at the runway with sadness and excitement. Goodbye, Sri Lanka. Until we meet again. I whispered with a lump in my throat. Chapter 4 Sleep, My Angel Xenia's POV Oh God, I didn't know that enduring a flight takeoff was so hard for a first-time flyer. I breathed deeply as I tightly held on to the arms of my seat. Within a few minutes, we were up in the air. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You may now remove your seatbelts the pilot announced before the plane glided in the air smoothly. Ma'am, good evening. An air hostess approached me with a food trolley two hours into the flight. A beautiful smile was always on her face as she did her job. I remember how I crazily wanted to become an air hostess. I even went for an interview, but unfortunately, I didn't get through due to my lack of the desired height since I was only five feet tall. Such incidences always made me curse my height every... Yes, good evening, I replied with a smile. Ma'am, what would you like to have for dinner? She asked, 
handing me a menu. I would like to have the rice and curry plate without any meat. If you have something with seafood, it would be good too, I explained, my smile not fading away from my face. She offered me a meal packet with a set of cutlery, and I requested a water bottle as my choice of beverage. The hot and aromatic meal packet in front of me made my appetite grow. Thank you. I nodded my head gratefully and started to have my meal. It was delicious, but nothing could compare to my mother's cooking. I wanted to watch a movie while having my meal, and so I selected Hansel and Gretel on the screen in front of me, since I loved that kind of movie. After finishing the movie, I felt a little bit sleepy. I had nothing else to do besides to sleep, since it was an 18-hour flight from Sri Lanka to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania Airport. So I went to the lavatory and returned to my seat before requesting a blanket. The crew quickly gave me a blanket, and the warmth of the blanket immediately lulled me into a good night's sleep. I was sitting on the luscious green grass in front of a beautiful huge lake. The sounds of birds chirping and the breeze from the lovely environment encircled me. Suddenly, I heard a loud growl, and as soon as I turned around, a huge animal with black fur and red eyes launched itself at me. Narrowly escaping it, I got up and tried to run as fast as I could, but it wasn't good enough. With its long claws, it scratched my leg deeply. Stopping in my tracks, I screamed in pain while holding my leg. The animal prepared to jump on me again, so I crouched down and covered my face with my hands. But it didn't come. Instead, I heard an ear-piercing loud growl, mightier than the first creature, and I heard the two creatures fighting. I slowly removed my hands and I saw that second creature bite the first one's throat, making blood cover them. The first creature started howling in pain, the strength of its voice reducing slowly before it ended along with its life. Who are they? Are they wolves? But these animals are larger than a human. The second wolf has silver fur with chocolate brown eyes and was much larger than the first one. Then suddenly, our eyes met directly as blood dripped from its mouth. Ma'am, ma'am. I felt someone shaking my shoulder, and I woke up to see an air hostess next to me. Damn. I looked down to see my palms sweating as I realized it was only a dream. But it felt so real. Especially those chocolate brown eyes. It had sadness, care, compassion, and many feelings. Good morning, ma'am. What would you like to have for breakfast? She inquired me politely. Oh, God, it was already morning. I slept for so long already. I'll have milk, rice, or omelette and bread if you have. I smiled, hiding my confused face. Thinking about the dream, I had my breakfast in silence. Then I thought about my parents, and a single tear came to my eyes before slowly rolling down my cheek. I quickly wiped it with the back of my palm and shook the sad thoughts from my head. I was still five hours away from my destination. The head of the student committee of the business administration department would be at the airport to pick me up and transport me to the university. It was a big relief for me since I don't know anyone in America yet. I visited the lavatory again and decided to watch another movie after returning to my seat. I selected Avengers Infinity War and started watching it. But somewhere in my mind, I couldn't stop thinking about those chocolate brown eyes. I felt like they were trying to tell me something, but I brushed it aside. Eventually, time passed and lunchtime came. Once again, the air hostess came and asked my desire lunch. I requested noodles with fish curry and a water bottle. I ate my lunch and rested for a while. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. 
Kindly fasten your seatbelts. We will be landing in 15 minutes. The pilot suddenly announced as I looked out of the window to the buildings below. At last, we are going to land. Trust me, handling the landing was as difficult for me as the takeoff. I hurriedly took my handbag and hand luggage before lining up with the other passengers to get down from the plane. Hello, America. Please be good to me, I muttered in my mind as I stepped foot on the foreign land. I was stunned by the view of the environment. I always wanted to come to America, and then my dream came true. Philadelphia Airport is located in Pennsylvania. It is the 20th busiest airport in America. So, for security purposes, all the luggage was checked, and all the passengers too. I approached the immigration counter line and there was a lovely officer checking the passports of each passenger. After my turn arrived, I gave them my passport and she served me with a warm smile. Good evening, ma'am. What is your reason to visit America? She looked at me kindly, waiting for my response. I have come to my MBA at Philadelphia University. I answered her with a smile. Oh, what a great decision. Welcome to the United States of America and have a pleasant stay. The kind officer stamped my passport and returned it back to me. After collecting my luggage and going through customs, I went to sit on a nearby bench. Most important of all, I needed to call mom. Technically, there is a 9.5 hours gap between Sri Lanka and Philadelphia, with Sri Lanka being in advance. I turned on my roaming facility and called home. It was night in America, which meant morning back home. I didn't have to wait long as Mom immediately answered the call. Hello, Mom. It's me, I said in a shaky voice due to the cold weather. Hello, love. Did you arrive safely? She asked worriedly. Yes, Mom. Everything is all right here. I got through everything and I'm sitting on a bench to enjoy the view here for a little bit. How's Dad? I explained as I hugged myself to feel warmer. We both are fine and missing you a lot, sweetie. Her voice started to shake and I knew that she was going to cry. Hey, Mom, don't worry, okay? I'm perfectly fine here. I consoled her while trying to control my own tears. Don't cry. Don't cry, Zenya, my mind warned. Okay, Mom, I gotta go now. I'll call you later. Bye and take care. I disconnected the call and started to cry, covering my face with my palms as my shoulders shook terribly due to my sobs. I just sat there on that bench for around ten minutes before I decided to wipe my tears and get up from my seat. I looked around at the damn huge airport full of crowds, but no one was looking for each other. Everyone was minding their own business. I was amazed at the environment, but while observing my surroundings, I suddenly noticed two muscular young men looking at me. I thought they were doing so due to my skin color, because I have tan color skin as an Asian. And oh, what else? Due to my fucking height. As soon as they saw me looking at them, they were disappeared into the crowd quickly. I quickly brushed it off without thinking about it further, since I really need to go to the toilet as I drank a lot of water on the flight. So I hurried to the washroom to pee. Oh, what a relief after the release. I washed my face and hands before drying them with facial tissues. Looking at my messy hair... I took out my comb from my bag and combed it a little bit. The toilets were huge, and to my surprise, even though the airport was crowded, but the toilet was not. They were separated far from the counters, making it look like an isolated area. Happy with how I looked, I moved to exit the toilet, but just as I was going out, suddenly out of those two muscular men I saw earlier blocked my path. I ignored him and tried to walk around him, but then the second guy also came and blocked my way. They stood in front of me like a huge wall covering my path. 
My mouth got dry in fear. What are you doing? Who are you? Move from my way or else I'll scream. I warned without showing them any fear I was feeling. Luna, please calm down. You have to come with us, they explained in a pleading manner. Luna, I am not Luna. There must be a mistake. Now move and let me go, I insisted, trying to push my way through them. They didn't say anything, but instead suddenly looked over my shoulder. I tried to scream, but suddenly a strong arm covered my mouth. I started to throw my hands around and kick my legs in the air. But oddly, at the same time, I felt sparks going through all over my body. All of a sudden, the person who covered my mouth injected me something on my neck. Tears started to roll down my cheeks, and soon the darkness welcomed me. But just before I blacked out, I heard something. Sleep, my angel. Sleep. Soon you are going home, baby girl. A deep, husky voice assured. Chapter 5 She is our mate. Somewhere far away from Philadelphia, close to the forest. Grayson's POV. Good morning, Alpha. Little pups gathered around me. I always went for a morning run as it helps me to start my day smoothly, especially for my wolf. Good morning, pups. How are you all this bright morning? I asked while removing dirt from my face. We're good, Alpha. We also want to run with you. But Mom never allows us to. A little girl with curly gray hair complained with a little pout. Oh, don't worry. You will get a chance to when you grow up. I reassured her as I took her into my arms lovingly. Alpha, when will I be able to get a mate? A stubborn little boy asked bravely. And where is your mate? He continued before I could answer his previous question. All right, that's enough, children. Stop teasing the Alpha. It's time for school. Sorry, Alpha. Their mom nodded at me apologetically before chasing them inside. I watched them run inside the house playfully. I always love these pups. They make my days wonderful and stress-free. When I find my mate, I am going to have lots and lots of pups. I will keep impregnating her until she says no more pups. But before that, I have to find her. Oh, yes, you are correct. I had not found my mate yet and was desperately waiting for her. Sometimes the thought of that made me really upset, and it affected my wolf also. That was why I woke up early in the morning every day and went for a run. It calmed both of us down from the storm within us. Where are you, mate? Usually, a wolf finds his or her mate after their first shift. That is, at the age of 18. But we alphas shift at the age of 15. But I was now 25 and still hadn't found my mate. It had been a lonely 10 fucking years. My beta and all the pack members, even those who recently shifted, also found their mate. I felt ashamed of myself sometimes. A pack without a Luna is incomplete. We, the Redwood Warrior pack, needed to have a future. An alpha heir should be born to strengthen the pack. But to do all those, I had to find her. I'm coming for you, mate. Wait and watch. She must be somewhere nearby. I can sense her. Damon, my wolf, suddenly exclaimed. Oh, really? Are you sure? Then where is she? Why isn't she coming to us? Why haven't we found her yet? I questioned Damon insistently. Be patient. She must be very special. That's why it takes time to find her. My wolf reassured me. But I knew he was impatient too. I don't know. We'll see. Now we have to rush for the annual Alpha meeting in Philadelphia, and then to a business meeting in New York. I interrupted my wolf. I am a billionaire and sole owner of Roberts Industries. 
My dad, the previous self of the pack, handed all the pack duties and business responsibilities over to me at the age of 18. I returned to my room and had a shower before heading to my walk-in closet. I picked out a pair of black jeans and a white short sleeve t-shirt before putting on my brown leather jacket over it. I wore my white Adidas shoes and headed out of the room. The meeting in Philadelphia was an annual meeting for all the alphas from all over the world, which was why I was dressed as such. On the other hand, the New York meeting was a business meeting with my clients, so I packed a full suit set for that. In total, I was to be away from the pack for five days along with my Gamma, third in command, and another four warriors. I had my usual breakfast and we all got into our two black Range Rovers. Usually I use my private jet to travel, but since my pilot was away for his mate's delivery, I had to use a domestic flight to Philadelphia, which left around 9 a.m. Alphas from around the world have participated in the meeting as we discussed our issues, territories, rogues, and other important matters. Some of the Alphas proposed their daughter's hand as a mate for me, but I politely rejected them all. I only wanted my destined mate, that is for sure. We had our lunch, and around 7.30 p.m., we finished the meeting and came back to the airport. As soon as we approached the ticket encounters, my wolf started to howl and dance in my mind, making me so confused. Damon, what is it? Why are you dancing like a lovesick puppy? Behave! We're in between humans! I warned him with a stern voice. Mate! Our mate! She's here! Damon started behaving like a crazy dog. What? Where is she? Are you sure? How do you know? I demanded as soon as the word mate hid my mind with realization. Don't you feel her scent? She smells like rose mixed with lavender. Damon howled in excitement, his tail wagging vigorously. I sniffed the air. Yes. He was right. I could smell her. I could feel her. It was really crowded in the airport, and finding her was not going easy. What is it, Alpha? Why do you look so concerned? My gamma Stephen asked. We found our mate. Both I and my wolf sense her, but it's hard to find her in this crowd. I exclaimed with an impatient tone, my eyes scanning the crowd. What? No matter what, Alpha, we need to find our Luna at any cost. Stephen's body stood upright, alert and ready for my orders. He was always so upset that I was desperate to have my mate, but couldn't find her. Actually, we're diaper friends, including my beta. His father was my father's gamma. Alpha, try to smell her scent and sniff. I closed my eyes and concentrated on her enchanting scent. Yes, I can smell her. Over there, near the check-in counters, I declared and ran towards her, my nose leading the way. Gamma and one of my warriors also ran with me. I could strongly feel her as I kept running. I looked here and there before I finally caught sight of her. She was breathtaking. Even though she had a tan skin tone, I loved her at first sight. She was talking to someone on a phone, sniffling away. And after the call, she started to cry. Was that her boyfriend whom she called? I desperately longed to go there and hug her, console her, wipe away her tears, and give her the comfort she needs. After a few minutes, she wiped her tears on her own accord. She applied a lip balm to her plump lips. Shit. I was controlling very hard the urge to kiss that juicy lips. She was so tiny and cute. There she is. Our mate. She's so beautiful. Let's go and claim her. She's ours. Damon paced up and down in my mind impatiently. No, we can't suddenly barge towards her. She's a human, and she will get frightened, I retorted. So what? Are you going to reject her? If you do such a thing, I'll never come out again. My wolf warned, but with a sad voice. 
No, you idiot. Why would I reject her? After all, she's my life, my angel, my rose petals, my sunshine. I exclaimed with an overwhelming voice, my heart filling with love. There you go. Now you're the lovesick puppy. Damon laughed at me. I turned to my gamma and warrior. She's a human. She'll never come with us willingly. Yes, the key word is willingly. Besides that, she looks like a foreigner, most probably an Asian, a human that doesn't know that werewolves exist. So we need a plan. I ran my hands through my hair, thinking of something. Okay, here's the plan. First, you two go and talk to her in a nice manner. But if things get worse, we will go for a plan B. We need to find an injection to make her unconscious. I looked at my mate, sighing deeply at the thought of hurting her. Alpha, I think we can get some help from the airport staff since there are some werewolves also among the staff. Gamma Stephen voiced out. Oh, that's a good idea. I'll go and check with them. You two stay here and keep on your eyes on her. I don't want to lose her. I ordered with a commanding voice. After a few minutes, I returned, but she was not there. My gamma said that she went to the washroom. Okay, you two go first and block her path. Don't forget. First, try to talk to her nicely. If she doesn't agree, then I'll come from behind and inject her this. I held up the syringe in my hand, a red vial glowing within. They did what I ordered. And when she was coming out, I saw Stephen try to convince her, but it seemed like she didn't agree. So we implemented plan B. I snuck up behind her and covered her mouth. As soon as I touched her, light sparks went through my whole body. Yes, I could feel the maid bond, and I believe she did too. She tried to escape, but her efforts were nothing compared to my strength since she has a tiny, fragile body and weight like a feather. I injected her and she fell into my chest, unconscious. I took her into my arms in bridal style as I gazed at her lifeless face. Take her luggage, handbag, and hurry to the plane, I said, moving quickly. Few people looked at us curiously since I was carrying a girl in a bridal style in my arms through the crowd. After some time, we got a new visa to her passport, since some of the visa officers were wolves and they were loyal to their alpha. We all headed to the plane and sat in the business class. I didn't even put her into a different seat. I just placed her on my lap carefully, looking at her innocent face with longing. My wolf is howling. He impatiently wanted to touch her, feel her soft skin. A loose strand of her hair fell to her face, and I lightly tucked it behind her ear. Was this the mate bond? I am so possessive of her, even though I just met her. I kissed her forehead with passion. Ooh, love is in the air, Stephen said with a teasing sigh. I gave him a death glare and he threw his hand up in surrender, but he still had a teasing smirk on his face. Sir, you need to wear your belt and let ma'am sleep on the other seat. Please put her seatbelt on also, since we're going to take off. An air hostess advised politely, pointing at my mate. I cursed her under my breath. Even though I hated the idea of taking her away from my arms, but breaking rules was not my thing. I put her in my other seat gently and put on her seatbelt. As soon as the flight took off, it hit the open air. I placed her on my lap again, holding her tightly and so possessively. I'll never, ever let you go away from me, my sunshine. You don't know how much we waited for you, my love. You are my life. I whispered into her ear, kissing the back of her palm softly. As soon as our plane landed in New York, two Hummers were waiting to pick us up from the airport to the hotel. The business meeting was the next day, and thankfully the hotel chosen was one of our hotels, so the staff knows me well. We directly headed to our suites, one suite for me and my mate, one for my gamma and the others for our pack warriors. I gently rested her in the middle of the bed. 
She was still unconscious, but I just stood there admiring her beauty. Could a mate be as beautiful as this? I finally could feel how others were crazy for their mates. I desperately wanted to touch her fragile body, her five feet body. Oh, moon goddess, how will she tolerate my large frame? How will she carry my pups in her little womb? Claim her. She's ours. Mark her. Damon demanded impatiently. What? No, we can't do that without her will. You are going to mess everything. We will do it all slowly. Look at her. She is so naive. She is a human, I protested. I took her passport and checked it. It said Xenia Fernando from Sri Lanka, Colombo. I checked her luggage and saw a family picture of her with her parents. I mind-linked Stephen and asked him to get ready to go to Sri Lanka as soon as the meeting was over, to go and find her background information. Then suddenly, I saw her slowly regaining her consciousness back. Here we go, mate. Chapter 6 Greek Godlike Kidnapper Grayson's POV My mate laid unconsciously on a comfortable king-sized bed. The silk red and black bedsheets hugged her back of her body as a comfortable duvet covered her. I stood there, stunned by her mesmerizing beauty, admiring her from a distance. But soon she slowly regained her consciousness. She blinked her eyes few times before slowly opening them with difficulty, as the room lights were too bright. Suddenly the lights got dim, and she felt comfortable enough to fully open her eyes. She immediately looked around at the whole room carefully, while holding on to her head, like she was in pain. Her face changed from confusion to horror, and I guess she was starting to remember what had happened to her. Before I could say anything, our eyes met, and I felt a jolt of electricity run through my veins. She was indeed mine. Xenia's POV I massaged my head softly, easing the aching feeling like it was hit by a hard rock. The events that happened before I blacked out slowly returned to my mind, and panic filled me. Then, just like a magnet, my eyes met with the most handsome man I had ever seen in my life. Who was he? Was he the one who kidnapped me? Can a kidnapper be so handsome like a Greek god? Who are you? What do you want from me? Please just don't kill me. I'm begging you. I don't know you. I've never seen you in my entire life. Why are you doing this to me? I wiggled further into the bed, increasing the distance between the stranger and me. My whole body was shaking and sweating like hell despite the cold winds from the air conditioner. The handsome stranger suddenly started to walk towards me with his heavy footsteps. With three long strides, he sat on the bed. Like instinct, I quickly moved to the other corner of the bed so that he couldn't touch me. But instead of saying something, a low growl escaped from his mouth in response, startling me in fear. Please, sir, tell me if I did anything wrong unwillingly, because willingly I wouldn't even hurt an ant in my life. I pleaded, my whole body shivering and tears filling my eyes. He just looked at me with a blank expression before his lips curled into a small smile. Angel, he called out to me with his husky voice. Shivers ran through my body as I retreated in horror and confusion. You are my angel, my whole world. How could I kill you? How could you even think that I will do such a thing to my mate? I'll cut off my hands before I do such a thing. He approached me slowly, his face softening with compassion. I just stood there, motionless, trembling in fear as my mind ran with questions about him and my presence here. You are my mate. Mine, he declared with a steady voice. 
and my heart skipped a beat like it nearly escaped from my mouth. What is he talking about? I was so confused, and my head was still throbbing in pain. I looked at him, my eyes widening as I scanned him up and down. He was at least six foot four in height, and his eyes were sea green. His pointed nose and sharp jawline could cut a banana easily. I've never seen such a handsome man in my entire life. Girls must be dying to be his, and he must have a girlfriend. The white t-shirt he was wearing perfectly hugged his upper body. His abs and biceps were visibly fighting to come out. Every part of me yearned to touch and feel them. Oh, you're a pervert, Zenya. What are you thinking? He's your kidnapper. Find a way to get the hell out of this fucking place. Sir, this, this must be a mistake. I don't know you, and this is my first ever visit America. Please let me go. I pleaded, rubbing my forehead in pain. We'll talk about it later, Angel. Now, does your head hurt? I'm so sorry, baby girl, that I had to do that, he said, his voice laced with concern. But first we'll have something for dinner. Come, baby girl. The hypnotically charming stranger extended his hand towards me in invitation. Listen, I am not here to have dinner with you, okay? Just let me go, please. I'm begging you. Tears started flowing down my face freely. His face suddenly changed in my behavior, and he looked sad like he was holding back. He shook his head and approached me slightly, making me jump out of the bed and scream. Don't come near me! Don't you ever dare to touch me with your dirty hands! Just get out from here! I yelled angrily, hiding my fear behind my stern face. My kidnapper's eyes suddenly shifted into a chocolate brown color like a new identity took over him. Through the dim light in the room, I could still see his eyes clearly. Holy shit! Those eyes! Those were the eyes in my dream! But that belonged to a wolf, and this is a human. Your eyes! It changed to brown! I pointed to his eyes in shock, my arms shaking violently. I was scared to death. The stranger immediately shut his eyes tightly. His face started crunching up weirdly like he was talking or debating with someone. But how could someone's eyes change? It's nothing. You can't forbid me from coming near you. You're my everything. My rose petals. You're my other half. Listen, I don't understand you, okay? Let me go from here, please. S Grayson. It's Grayson Lockwood Roberts. Or you can call me honey, love, anything you like, my baby girl. He chuckled and explained before I could finish my sentence. Okay, let's go and put something inside your little belly, Grayson said, turning towards the door. I'm not hungry, I protested, folding my arms in front of my chest, but my stomach betrayed me and started grumbling at the same time. Oh, great timing, you bitchy stomach. But it looks like your tummy's saying a different story, my lady. Grayson's lips curled into a smile. Listen, if you don't come with me, I will carry you. And trust me, I would love to do that, he suggested while walking toward me. No, no, you pervert. I'll come, I responded with an angry tone. See, it's not that hard. Let's go. Grayson opened the door and walked out of the room, holding the door for me until I exited the room. What is this place? A home? A mansion? Or a hotel? I couldn't see outside, but I knew it was already night. We went through a small corridor and walked down a staircase. All the interiors of the place were white and gold, mixed with beige. Lavishness screamed from each inch of the building. Must be a spoiled brat of a billionaire father. Soon we arrived at a living room with a huge television. Luckily, the air conditioner wasn't on, or else I would have become frozen and died. 
But he didn't stop there. He headed to the kitchen directly while I was admiring in awe the beautiful interiors and surrounding areas. Ahem, your highness, your dinner is ready. Please come this way. Grayson waved his hand towards me from the kitchen before calling me over. I obediently followed and headed to the kitchen. The minute I stepped in, the mouth-watering aroma of the food made my taste buds scream to me to have them all. There was hot soup, bread and butter, seafood salad with mayo sauce, grilled chicken, cheese macaroni, and pizza. He offered me the chair and I sat on the table as he passed me a bowl of soup. Wait, what's in it? I asked him curiously, forcing myself to stop eating. It's just potato soup. Why? What's wrong? Grayson questioned me, his eyebrow arched. Nothing, I replied blankly before a realization hit me. Wait, what if he mixed something in the food to make me unconscious and take advantage of me? There's nothing mixed with the soup. He approached me and drank two spoonfuls of soup from my bowl. Wait, how did he know what I was thinking? Can he read minds? I was so curious, but I was also very hungry. Plus, to fight him, I needed strength. Bravely, I slowly started to sipping on my soup. My tongue melted to the taste of the soup. Who prepared this? Could a person cook so deliciously? I quickly finished my soup, savoring each sip. Was he not eating? Grayson just looked at me, making me feel really uncomfortable as if he was drooling at me. Grayson's POV Could a mate be as beautiful as her? I looked at her with pure awe like she was my whole world. I knew that she was extremely hungry, but she was too stubborn to admit it, just like me. Oh, Redwood Warriors, you have a stubborn Luna. But I like that. I loved her every expression, her every feature. I love her. What's your name? I asked her, despite knowing it already. I just needed to hear it from her. Xenia looked at me in shock before blinking her eyes, probably contemplating if she should tell me her name. It's Alyssa. She lied before looking down at her plate. Oh, so my dear mate lied. It was then I definitely knew that she would try to run away from me, at any cost. But that won't happen. Not even in your dreams, my mate. Don't lie, Xenia, I said, curious to see her reaction. She immediately choked on her food and I passed her a glass of water. Xenia just looked at me in surprise. Angel, don't lie to me. Please don't be scared of me. Talk to me freely, I begged, hoping that she would accept me. But if you ever try to escape from me, Angel, you will be punished. If you behave perfectly well, you will be rewarded. I continued this time with a stern voice. Can I have a piece of pizza? Xenia asked, ignoring my words. Sure, anything for my mate. I offered her a slice of pizza on a plate. So you don't like to have anything with meat, right? I'll keep that in mind and make sure to remember it. Xenia looked at me for an instant, her mind running with questions before ignoring me again as she ate her pizza. After finishing our meals, I brought out some desserts, a gato cake, avocado mousse, and ice cream. Oh, God, this avocado mousse is melting in my mouth, Xenia whispered, but I still heard it. A moan escaped from her mouth and she licked her lips. Damon howled in my mind and took over my body for a second, basking in her presence. Fuck, what is she doing? Licking her lips and moaning. I'm controlling myself so hard and she's teasing me. She must be good in bed. Imagine when she screams our name while having sex underneath you. Damon exclaimed greedily, taking control of me before I could say another word. Your eyes turned into chocolate brown again, Xenia pointed out, fear vibrating in her voice. I quickly shut my eyes and regained control, 
my sea-green eyes returning. My wolf needed to control himself. Xenia's POV Grayson stood up and approached me, before bending down towards me from behind, his face just next to my ear. Don't ever moan or lick your lips until we mate, or I'll mark you before that, no matter what. I am controlling myself here, and my patience is as thin as a thread now. So trust me, Angel. You won't like the consequences. He whispered in my ear, sending shivers down my spine. My heart thumped loudly in my chest. I was so afraid, and her goosebumps covered my whole body as his hot breath fanned to my ear. All I could do was nod obediently before finishing my dinner. I want to meet the chef who made the dinner and thanks to him or her, I announced proudly, placing my napkin down. He's right in front of you, my lady, Grayson replied, bowing his head humbly. What? You know how to cook? That's amazing. It was a wonderful dinner. Thank you. I expressed gratefully, but he remained silent with a small smile on his lips. Okay, why did you bring me here? Why did you kidnap me? How does your eye color change? Where am I? And what do you mean by marking? I questioned him rapidly in one breath. Angel, I will answer all your questions later. Now it's time for bed. We both are tired and I have to attend a meeting tomorrow morning. So let's go and sleep. And remember, don't you ever think of escaping from me, sunshine. Even though I'm not here, my warriors are here. Grayson explained, lifting my chin to face him. Fine, good night then. I entered the room only to find him following me into the room. Why are you coming here? Go back to your room. I tried to close the door. This is my room too, Angel, he said with a teasing smile. Fine then, I'll go to another room. I retorted and turned to walk out of the room. However, as soon as I turned around, he captured me by my waist and pulled me to his chest. I hit against his rock-hard chest and once again, sparks ran through my body. What is this feeling? Am I sick? You are not going anywhere, my baby girl. We're going to be sleeping on the same bed. He whispered into my ear huskily, sending tingles across my skin. Are you crazy? There is no way in hell I'm going to sleep in the same bed with you. Listen here, mister. I'm from a different culture, okay? We don't sleep with men at any cost until our marriage. I argued persistently. I know, my angel. I won't touch you until you say so and beg me to touch you. But for now, enough stubbornness. Go freshen up and let's sleep. Here, eat these painkiller tablets to help ease your headache. And wear this. Grayson placed two white tablets in one hand and some clothes with a bag in my other hand. I looked carefully to find one of his shirts and his boxers along with a bag. Are you crazy? What are you, a psycho? First you kidnap me and then you make me wear your clothes? I need my luggage back so I can wear my own clothes. I demanded, folding her arms in front of my chest. I don't think you're in any position to demand anything, my sunshine. He responded with a naughty smirk. Huffing, I stomped my feet and made my way to the bathroom. I took a nice warm bath and looked in the bag. It had a pair of undergarments, particularly a red lace lingerie set. This man is definitely a psycho. But I had no choice, so I changed into his clothes and came out of the bathroom. Grayson looked greedily at me from top to bottom with an evil smirk on his face. If he could eat me, he definitely will. Then I realized that he was wearing nothing but a pair of gray sweatpants. His bare sculpted chest was exposed nakedly, making me immediately cover her eyes. Can you please wear a t-shirt? There's a girl here with you. I asked, still shielding my eyes. You know, Angel. I mean, no shame. I am comfortable with this, so just sleep, baby girl. Good night.
He pulled my hands down before giving me a flying kiss. I lied down on the bed and tried to sleep, but I found myself slowly starting to cry as I thought about my hopes and dreams, but where I was instead. Grayson's POV Her sobs filled my ears. My mate was crying. I wanted to hug her, take her into my arms, kiss her forehead, and assure her that everything will be all right. But I knew that she didn't like me to touch her, and I wanted to respect her wishes. I could feel my wolf howling in pain without her touch. But I was certain that soon, very soon, she would be in my arms. My angel, I'll take care of you like a flower that just blooms only for me. Chapter 7 Escape Cramps Xenia's POV Oh, Mom, please close the curtains. I want to sleep more, I said, turning to face the other side of the bed. Oh, my bed is so comfortable. I just want to hug my pillow, sleep forever, and never get up. Sunshine, wake up, beautiful. It's 7 a.m. now. I heard a sexy whisper in my ear. I slowly opened my eyes and saw a pair of sea-green eyes looking back at me diligently. Surprised at his presence, I jumped out of the bed and fell on the floor. Ouch! My ass and butt cheeks hurt. In a flash, a pair of strong arms picked me up gently, making electrifying sparks run through my body. My eyes met his, and we gazed into each other's eyes, frozen at the moment. When the realization of what was happening hit me, I quickly moved away from him. Grayson just scratched his head sheepishly. Good morning, my sunshine. Go freshen up while I prepare breakfast. I need my clothes. Where are they? I need my phone also. Shit! The people from the university must be worried about me. Listen, I need my luggage, handbag, and phone. I demanded, placing my hands on my hips. Relax, baby girl. You'll receive everything if you behave like a good girl. He replied, an evil smirk appearing on his face. Ugh, can I at least have a set of my clothes to wear for now? I requested, sighing deeply at his maddening behavior. You can wear my clothes since you're not going out anywhere today, he responded, making my blood boil in my veins. Fine, go to hell, you psycho! I yelled and rushed to the bathroom. I had a hot bath to calm my nerves, but when I got out, I realized that I forgot to take his clothes. Shit! I tried drying my hair, but water still dripped down my bare body. With no other choice, I secured the towel around me and exited the bathroom to go and get some clothes. But as soon as I walked out, my jaw dropped to the sight in front of me. Fuck! He was in nothing but a towel after his shower, the water from his messy hair rolling down his perfect abs and sexy V-line, before continuing down to, Xenia, what are you doing? Are you drooling at him? My mind quickly alerted me of my crazy reactions, and I closed my dry mouth just before he saw me. Oh dear, moon goddess, please help me. He blurted out and started approaching me, taking time slow down in my mind. Before he could reach me, I ran to the closet to grab some clothes, but he quickly appeared behind me. His body towered just a few inches behind me. How can I move now? The almost naked man caged me between his rock-hard chest and closet, resting his arms on the closet door, just above my shoulders. Great. Now I can't move. Oh, fuck, he's getting closer. He reduced the distance between us, his chest almost touching my back, making me grab my towel tightly. But he just started to select clothes for himself casually from the closet, his body still trapping me in his arms. Can you move away? I need to go to the bathroom and change, I demanded. I'm just picking out my clothes for the meeting, he whispered in my ear, 
his hot lips caressing my earlobe ever so slightly, making my whole body quiver in response. You are so beautiful, my angel, like a rose which blooms only for me in the morning, he expressed, nuzzling his face into my hair and sniffing my scent. Usually, I hated men. I even had only a few male friends. I just didn't like the way men looked at me. But with Grayson, I didn't feel a bad vibe from him, and I didn't know why. I am trying very hard to control myself, baby girl. Please go and change before I do something to claim you as mine, he uttered huskily, and released me from his body cage. I ran to the bathroom to change and returned to see him dressed in a full suit. He was so handsome. How on earth a man can be so good looking? Eventually, we both headed to the kitchen to see breakfast already ready on the kitchen counters. The aroma of the food was teasing my taste buds, and I was impatient to dig into it. But unfortunately, someone knocked on the door hurriedly, like it was an emergency, just as Grayson was serving food to me. He opened the door and another handsome man, much like Grayson, barged into the room. Who was he? Was he also a part of his kidnapping gang? Good morning, Alpha. We need to hurry the meeting. Mm, the aroma of the food is am- He stopped abruptly when he noticed my presence. Good morning, Luna. I am Stefan, the Gamma of the Pack. The stranger bowed humbly before me. Huh? What's he talking about? What Luna? And who is Gamma? What is a pack? Okay, that's enough, Stefan. We need to hurry. If you didn't have your breakfast yet, you can have it with us now, Grayson said, interrupting my chain of thought. So, Luna, what do you think about our alpha? When are you planning to meet the pack? Have you told your parents already? How many pups are you going to have? Stefan asked, shoving large portions of food into his mouth. My jaw dropped in shock at his endless questions as my brain tried desperately to process what he meant. Stefan, do you wish to die before even meeting your mate? Grayson questioned him, shooting him a death glare. She needs time, Stefan. We will tell her everything later, slowly. Now stop your blabbering and let's hurry. Grayson stood up from his seat and wiped his mouth with a napkin. Wait, where are you going? I have so many questions to ask you. Plus, I need my luggage, my passport, my phone, and other things. Please. I requested with a shaky voice, knowing well I was about to cry. Baby girl, we will talk later, and I'll answer all your questions. But now I have to rush for a business meeting. Grayson patted my head briefly but softly. Don't think of running away or pulling any kinds of stunts, my angel. The consequences won't be good for you. If you ever try to escape, I would be able to feel it, baby girl. Oh, trust me. Oh, and one more thing. I have guards everywhere. He stared at me seriously, as if warning me with his eyes. Go to hell, you bastard. I thought to myself while clenching my teeth. Lunch has already been cooked and is in the refrigerator. You can reheat it in the microwave and have it, Grayson said before walking towards the door. See you in the evening, Luna. Stephen wished, and they both walked out the door. I am not Luna. It's Xenia. Call me Xenia. I shouted out, but no one responded. The minute they left for their meeting, I quickly got up from my seat not wasting a single second. I immediately started to search around every inch of the huge room for my stuff to get the hell out of there. I looked under the mattress, in the drawers, closet, cupboard, sofa, kitchen racks, bathroom counters, and basically everywhere else. I needed my passport and phone above anything else. At least with them, I could somehow manage to do something. There was no way I could roam this country without a passport. Fuck this man. I couldn't find my things anywhere, nor did I know where I was. All I had was a balcony, 
so I headed there for a clue of my location. The minute I opened the curtain, my heart stopped for a second. I couldn't believe my eyes. There, in front of me, was the Statue of Liberty, surrounded by the big blue ocean. Are you kidding me? We're in New York? But I landed in Philadelphia. How did I get to New York? I've always dreamt of visiting NYC, but definitely not in the situation I was in. I looked down to see that we were on the seventh floor of a hotel. How could I get down to the street from the balcony? With the balcony being a bad idea, my only escape was through the main door. Nevertheless, there was nothing I could do without my phone and passport. But with no other choice, I decided to escape from the hellhole, go to the police station, and tell the whole story with certainty that they would help me. I quickly got changed into my own clothes, the one I had on the day I left Sri Lanka. But the thought of the guards made me freeze. What should I tell the guards? I quickly thought of a lie and motivated myself to not show them my fear. I headed for the door and opened it, but unfortunately it was locked. That bastard had programmed a password for the door. Fuck you, Grayson. I'll definitely send you to jail. With nothing else to do, I screamed from inside of the room at the top of my lungs. Within a few minutes, a tall guard opened the door. Damn. All of them made me feel like a dwarf among their crane-heightened, muscular bodies. Luna, is there an emergency? He asked politely, peering worriedly into the room. I am not Luna. It's Senya. I need to go outside to buy a few things, I declared confidently. But we have strict orders from Alpha to not let you go outside until he comes. Besides, if you need anything, let us know and we will bring it to you, he replied professionally. I need to buy something personal, something only a woman can go and purchase, something I don't feel comfortable sharing with you. If your boss knew that I shared my personal information with you, it won't be a good thing for you, I explained, manipulating him with my clever words as I folded my arms in front of my chest. Fine, Luna, but I will come with you. He nodded his head and stepped aside for me to pass through. Well done, Zenya. I did a somersault in my head and followed behind him obediently. We headed down the VIP elevator and passed through the hotel lobby. Oddly, almost everyone bowed before me with respect, but all I could muster out was a confused look on my face. Why are they bowing to me? Eventually, the guard led me to an SUV and he drove me to a nearby shopping square. About 15 minutes away from the hotel, we went inside the square and I instructed him to wait outside one of the stores. At first he refused to let me go in alone, but I channeled my confidence again and commanded him to wait there. Surprisingly, when I commanded him with authority, the guard humbly obliged. With him stuck outside, I headed inside the store and looked around for another exit, preferably from the back of the store. I must have been running around madly because soon a sales lady looked at me skeptically as she pointed out to the red door behind me. My boyfriend and I just fought, so I just want to scare him a little and make him come to look for me. That's why I'm planning to go out the back exit. If he comes looking for me, could you just tell him that I'm still shopping? Thanks, I explain and headed out the red door. Stepping out of the store and onto the busy street, I just started running like hell. It was getting dark and I was unsure where I should go. But I knew I had to get far away from there. All of a sudden, I suddenly felt severe cramps in my abdominal area. I brushed it off thinking it was due to my intense running and slowed down slightly. But then, after walking a little further... I felt a strong pain through my back and chest, just like someone had stabbed me. What is happening to me? God, please help me. I quickly sat down for a few minutes, breathing deeply to reduce the pain. As soon as the pain recited, I started to walk again. Then, oddly, 
even in the cold weather, my whole body started to sweat tremendously, drenching my t-shirt with sweat. Why am I sweating when it's cold outside? Am I going to die? No matter what, I ignored my state and was determined to get to the police station. I started running again, but once again that stabbing pain overcame me, this time much worse, making me feel like my whole body was being stabbed continually. My legs were wobbling and I could run nor walk. My body felt like it was getting weaker by the second as nausea stirred in my chest accompanied by an inferno devouring my body. Giving up, I was about to trip and fall when two strong arms wrapped around my waist and pulled me against a rock-hard chest. I looked up to see none other than Grayson. Despite feeling annoyed that I was in the presence of my kidnapper again, he made me feel like I had gone to heaven. His touch made me feel like I suddenly got dipped into an icy glacier my body heat reducing tremendously. However, I couldn't hold back my nausea and I ended up vomiting on his chest. But Grayson didn't revolt or pull back disgustingly. Instead, he lightly patted my back lovingly. Soon, I felt dark spots clouding my view, and before I knew it, I was unconscious in his arms. Grayson's POV After breakfast with Zenya, we got into the car to head to our meeting. As soon as we entered the car, Stephen asked me if I had told her that we're werewolves. I just shook my head silently. Alpha, with no disrespect, but you need to tell her the truth. She's a human. It would take some time for her to absorb the truth and adjust to our environment, Stephen advised. I know that, Stephen. I will tell her soon. I will make her love me, whether she likes it or not. I know that I can. Besides, I've waited for her for too long already. I can't just let her go. I am so possessive over her, Stephen. I know it's not something easy, but I will make her fall for me. She may deny it, but I know that she can feel the sparks too. The moon goddess created our mate bond for a reason. I looked out from the window, sighing deeply. Go slowly with her, Alpha. But... I really like her, Stephen said with a smile, tapping my back encouragingly. Soon we arrived at our meeting and discussed our new business with our clients. Even though I was physically at the meeting, my mind was always thinking about my angel. Her beauty truly drove me crazy. Even when we were having our lunch, I was wondering if she had already had her lunch or not. Instead of focusing on the meeting, I was planning on what to cook for her for dinner. It was 5 p.m. when all the meetings finally came to an end. I decided to freshen up before returning to the hotel and went to a nearby restroom to wash my face. All of a sudden, a piercing pain struck my back, but after a few seconds, the pain went away. I walked out of the restroom and I started feeling my body heating up, fast and extremely. I turned on the air conditioner and removed my tie, crashing on the couch. My temperature was increasing greatly like my whole body was on fire. It was then I realized what was happening. Fuck, she's escaping. I can feel it. That's why I'm feeling this way. We, the Redwood Warrior Pack, are blessed with a special blessing from the Moon Goddess. It is that once we touch our mate, and if he or she tries to run away or escape from us, a series of escape cramps would be felt by both mates, and it was a blinding pain to bear. My heart broke at the thought of how my poor angel was trying to bear the pain. I must hurry now, or else the condition of both of us will be at risk. I screamed for Stephen immediately, and soon he started running towards me. Alpha, what is it? Why are you in pain? He asked, looking at me with horror and worry. Hurry up! She's escaping! Take me to her! I cried out before my wolf came to the surface. Hurry up, Gamma! I can't lose her! Damon exclaimed in pain. Yes, Alpha. Can you sniff the air and locate her? Stephen requested, running along with me to the car. She's heading towards Alfred Street. Quickly, step on it! 
Damon ordered, sitting in the car and removing the suit coat I was wearing. Damon was desperately searching for her, and soon he saw that she's swaying weakly, about to trip and fall. He jumped out of the stopped car and ran towards her, just in time to catch her in her arms. After seeing that his mate, safe and sound, Damon gave me back control. I held onto her possessively as I felt my pain disappear, her touch making me feel better. I nuzzled into her crook of the neck and smelled a lungful of her scent. She looked at me sadly before vomiting on my chest. I realized that she was in a tough situation. She was just a human. This kind of pain was unbearable. Why did you escape, my baby girl? I thought to myself as I patted her back before she slowly became unconscious in my arms. Let's go home, my angel. I've got you. I carried her bridal style in my arms and got into the vehicle. Chapter 8 You Will Be Rewarded Grayson's POV Stephen, call for a doctor. Immediately. I commanded as I rushed her to our room. Yes, Alpha, Stephen replied and ran in the other direction. I slowly and gently rested her on the bed. Her beautiful and innocent face was covered with pain. I blamed myself for not telling her the truth about me and escape cramps. Because of that. She suffered a lot and her tiny, fragile body couldn't bear the pain. I gazed upon her with my broken heart as I slowly moved her hair from her face. I knew I needed to tell her the truth as soon as possible, before any more pain is caused. I headed to the bathroom and changed out of my vomit-filled clothes while waiting for the doctor to arrive. Just as I came out of the bathroom with fresh clothes, Stephen arrived with the doctor. Unfortunately, the doctor was a human and I couldn't share about escape cramps with him, so I hid it from him instead. Doctor, can you please check on her state? She just fainted all of a sudden. Please make sure she's okay. She's my fiancé. I shook his hand and looked at him with hopeful eyes. Mr. Lockwood, it's a pleasure to meet you. Not to worry, I'll check on her, the doctor said, much to my surprise. Wait. You know who I am? I asked curiously. Of course. What does it know about you, sir? After all, you're one of the youngest successful businessmen in the country, he replied with a proud smile. Oh, I see. Thank you, doctor. Can you please kindly check on her? I requested as worry and fear filled my bones. I sat impatiently on the other side of the bed while the doctor inspected her state. He checked her blood pressure and her pulse, hearing her heart beat with a stethoscope. What is it, doctor? Is she okay? Please tell me. I'm really worried. I persisted, impatient to know her condition. Oh, she's fine, Mr. Lockwood. There's nothing to worry about. She's just a little bit weak. It looks like she didn't have anything to eat for quite some time. From morning, perhaps. Her blood pressure and blood sugar are slightly low. But I'll give her an injection and that will help her to gain some energy. I'll also prescribe some vitamins for her. She'll gain her consciousness soon. When she wakes up, give her light food like soup and fruits for tonight and make sure she takes the vitamin tablets. Ultimately, make sure that she has healthy meals and plenty of rest, the doctor advised, handing me a prescription slip. Thank you very much, doctor. Sorry for bothering you this evening, I apologized shaking his hand. Oh, not at all, Mr. Lockwood. It was a pleasure meeting you. Good night. He nodded respectfully and proceeded to head out of the room. Looking at my sleeping angel, I kissed her forehead lovingly, missing her presence already. I gave the prescription slip to Stephen and asked him to purchase the prescribed vitamins. While waiting, I ventured into the kitchen to prepare a light dinner for her when I opened the fridge, I saw that she didn't eat her lunch. Oh, this girl is really stubborn. Dismissing the thought, I started to prepare a creamy mushroom soup with some toast and cut up some fresh fruits for her. As soon as I finished cooking, I went to check on her again, only to find her still lying unconsciously on the bed. So I returned to the kitchen and Stephen walked in with the vitamin bottles. 
We sat on the living room sofa and started to have a chat while having coffee. Stephen, you need to leave for Sri Lanka tomorrow. Book your tickets immediately. I need to know every little detail about her. Everything since her childhood. I sipped my coffee, but my forehead was scrunched in uneasiness. Suddenly, we both heard crashing sounds coming from my room upstairs, where my angel was. We both ran towards it at lightning speed. I opened the door to see the room in a mess like a tornado has passed through. My angel was throwing everything and slamming them on the floor. She was behaving like a crazy person, screaming angrily at the top of her lungs. Get out from here! She yelled as soon as she saw us. Baby girl, calm down, please. I pleaded, slowly trying to approach her. Luna, please calm down. It's not good for your health, Stephen advised, worried about her condition. You! Don't you dare talk to me about my health! She snapped in fury, pointing at Stephen. Please, my angel, cool down and have a sit. We can talk it over, I suggested, moving toward the bed. There's nothing to talk about. You ruined my life and my lifelong dream. After all my efforts, I've come back to square one again. And what did you do to me that made me have to endure such horrible pain? She exclaimed, her tears drenching her face completely. Luna, it was not just you who suffered. Alpha also suffered just like you did. It's because of the mate bond. It's a two-way connection. Your bond is so strong and that's why you both felt such immense pain. Stephen explained, his voice laced with concern. Listen, I don't understand your fucking bond, okay? I don't care. Just let me go, you bastards. She cried out, her voice echoing around the room. All right, that's enough. My patience had disappeared. She needs to learn the hard way. Does she want to yell? Fine. Here comes the big bad alpha, baby girl. Stephen, get out from here now. I'll take care of her. I ordered with a stern tone, my eyes not peeling away from her eyes. But Alpha, please be kind to her. She is a... Get out now! Damon came to the surface and snarled with an ear-piercing yell. Luna, please calm down and surrender to him. He won't hurt you. He just wants you to calm down. Stephen advised and ran out of the room. My screaming, angry mate was now shivering with fear as I looked at her with my brown eyes. Damon, you need to be gentle with her, I reminded Damon, fearing he might lose control. Relax, buddy. I won't hurt her. I just took control to calm her down. When she's cooled down, I'll give you back control, Damon explained. Damon approached her with heavy strides and she kept retreating away until her back hit against the wall. Damon quickly caged her in between her arms, with his palms securely pressed against the wall. There was no escape for her as her whole body trembled in horror. Please don't kill me, she whispered frightfully before her soft sobs were heard. Damon, give me back control now. She's scared of you. I insisted, unable to bear her reaction. Wait. I'll calm her down and give you back control, Damon argued. Mate, listen to me, sweetheart. You need to calm down. Don't stress yourself. You need to rest and have a proper meal, Damon calmly muttered. Are you calm down now? He asked her. Yes, she replied softly, but with a loud sob as her tears rolled from her eyes straight down to her neck. Satisfied, Damon returned control to me. My heart sank at the sight of her sad state. I quickly cupped her cheeks and wiped her tears away with my thumb. Her skin felt so soft at my touch, but her chest still moved up and down to an irregular rhythm, signaling her fear. Please don't be scared of me, Angel. I won't hurt you even in my dreams. I'll die before I do such a thing. I kissed her forehead fervently, her whole body shivering at my touch. I lead her to the bed and made her sit on it, 
placing some pillows behind her back as she leaned against the headboard. Now, my rose petal, listen to me carefully. I'll answer all your questions. But before that, you need to promise me that you will behave like a good girl and not pull any such stunts in the future. I clarified, tucking a loose strand behind her ear. Oh, and you have to have healthy meals as well as your vitamins. And remember, I told you that if you pull any stunt, you will be punished. I asked, my lips curling into a naughty smirk. Her eyes immediately enlarged and her plump ruby lips parted with fear. So from now on, you'll be having your meals while seated on my lap and I am gonna feed you. We both have our meal from one plate. I winked at her. What? No. I can eat by myself sitting on a chair. Her eyebrows furrowed at my words as her lips pouted slightly. Uh-uh, baby girl. I think you've forgotten that you're not in any position to demand. Remember, be a good girl and you'll be rewarded. I reminded her, getting up from the bed. So, shall we move to the kitchen for our dinner? I'm hungry as hell, I said while caressing my stomach. Agreeing, she got up and started to walk towards the door. Unfortunately, she couldn't even walk for more than two steps before she started swaying weakly. Knowing she was going to fall, I quickly held her up. She is too weak. So I took her into my arms in a bridal style and carried her to the kitchen before placing her down to sit on the kitchen counter while I prepared the table. Can I have a glass of water, please? She requested calmly. I nodded before fetching a glass of water and passing it to her. She gulped it down quickly and returned the glass to me gratefully. Once the table was prepared, I took her in my arms again and I sat on my chair, carefully placing her on my lap. Is this really necessary? I still can have my meal on my own, she said, gritting her teeth. You know, Angel, you're even more beautiful when you're angry, I teased, my lips forming a smile, but all she did was glare at me. Let's fill your little tummy first, okay? I slowly started to feed her the soup, careful to make sure it wasn't too hot for her. Xenia obediently had the meal like a baby. I always loved looking at her, but she was staring at the food instead of looking at me. What's wrong, Angel? Isn't it delicious? I asked her with a worried tone. No, no, it's tasty. I was just reminded of my mom and how she used to prepare meals for me, she replied, and soon a loud sob escaped her mouth. My heart moved with pity for her. So I decided to give her something that would boost her mood. I wiped her mouth and gave her the glass of water to drink. Hmm, now it's time to reward my baby girl. I'll give you your phone tomorrow. You can call your parents and check in on them. But don't you dare tell them anything about your situation, okay? I declared, kissing the back of her palm affectionately. Oh my god, really? Thank you so much! She exclaimed with a joy, a wide smile on her lips as a new, fresh color filled her previously pale face. Now it's time to take your vitamins. I gave her the vitamin tablets with a glass of water and she took them with no fuss. I got up from the table and started cleaning up, removing plates from the table. Where did you learn to cook so well? She inquired, looking at me curiously. Hmm, I went to a training camp for a year. There we have to do everything for ourselves, including learning how to cook. I explained, wiping my wet hands on a kitchen cloth. Come, baby girl. Let's go to sleep now. I suggested, and we both went to the room. You said that you'll answer my questions, right? She suddenly reminded, sitting on the bed. Yes, I did. Go ahead with your questions. I responded with a long sigh. Why did you kidnap me? What do you want from me? Who are you? Why are you treating me in a good manner? Who's a mate? What is a pack? Why are they calling you Alpha and me Luna? She asked all at once, without stopping to take a breath. 
Oh, it's going to be a long and tough night for both of us. Before that, you have to promise me that you won't get scared or even panic after listening to answers. I kneeled in front of her. She nodded her head in agreement, and I took a long, deep breath. I am a werewolf, and you are my mate, I blurted out, looking straight into her eyes. Chapter 9 I am a werewolf Grayson's POV I am a werewolf, and you are my mate, I said directly, looking straight into her eyes. Zenya just stared at me, confused, her eyes wide and her mouth agape. She remained like that for a second before breaking out in laughter. I loved seeing her laugh, but I was confused as to her sudden change in emotion. Angel, why are you laughing? I asked, my eyebrows scrunched up in puzzlement. You're a wolf? <laughs> I mean, seriously? I can't stop laughing. Are you trying to scare me by telling me some fairy tale? <laughs> Ooh, I'm scared now, Mr. Big Bad Wolf. Please don't kill me, wolf. <laughs> she teased sarcastically before giggling once again. I am not kidding, Angel. I am serious. I asserted with a serious look on my face. You mean, like, Twilight? The Vampire Diaries or the originals? Zenya questioned, desperately trying to keep a straight face without laughing. I growled at her in response, my tone louder than usual, making her jump away from me in fear. What was that? Who did that? Listen, enough with the jokes. You're scaring me, okay? I watched as sweat beads formed on her nose and upper lip in fear. This is serious, baby girl. I am a werewolf, and you are my fated Luna. Listen, I'm tired of your bullshit, okay? Oh, it's almost 11 p.m. now, and I'm feeling sleepy, she said with a yawn. Oh, she's indeed a baby with that cute yawn. Okay, baby girl, wash up and let's sleep. I passed her a set of my clothes before she disappeared into the bathroom and returned a few minutes later. You're giving me my phone tomorrow, right? She looked at me, her perfectly shaped eyebrow arched at me. Of course, baby girl. Now go to sleep. Good night, my angel. I patted her head lovingly. Xenia's POV I woke up the next morning and noticed that Grayson wasn't on the bed. Nevertheless, I felt happy because I was finally going to receive my phone. I quickly went to the bathroom and came out wearing his clothes. His clothes were floating on my fragile small body, but I had no choice except to obey his instruction. Eventually, I went downstairs. Grayson was preparing breakfast, and the aroma of the food made my stomach grumble in hunger. He was wearing nothing but a pair of gray sweatpants, his biceps and strong muscles moving in rhythm with a pan and spatula. My lips parted at the incredible sight, and instantly, he looked directly at me. Hungry, baby girl? He tempted with a sexy, husky voice. I knew he was teasing me and enjoyed my reactions. Yes, but first, I need my phone, I demanded while placing my hands on my hips. He slid his hand inside his pants pocket and handed my phone to me. I jumped up and down with glee, much like a small kid excited to get candy. Grayson just smiled at my reaction, his eyes glued to my face. Go talk to your parents while I'm preparing breakfast, he said, lifting a pan from the stove and shaking it expertly. I turned around and started to walk towards the nearby room, but all of a sudden, Grayson wrapped his hands around my waist, pulling me close. Where do you think you're going, Angel? He whispered in my ear with a husky voice. Shit! My body shivered and goosebumps spread all over my body. I was baffled at how his touch could make my knees weak and my body tremble. To the room, I muttered with difficulty. Uh-uh-uh. 
You are not going anywhere. Talk to your parents from here and don't try to tell them that you've been kidnapped. If you do such a thing, trust me, Angel, you will be punished again. He shook his head warningly before releasing me and lifting me to sit on the kitchen counter. Oh, and don't open your webcam. Just tell them there's a signal issue and talk with them normally and happily. A thin smile appeared on his face before he returned back to his cooking. I made a vibrant call to my parents. They were very happy to hear my voice and trust me. I was on cloud nine just by listening to their comforting voices. Grayson kept looking at me from time to time, smiling at my behavior. Soon, the call ended and Grayson prepared the table with his breakfast spread. Scrambled eggs, sausages, butter toasts, croissants, and cut fruits with yogurt. Just as we about to sit, Stephen knocked on the door and Grayson opened the door, leading him inside. Good morning, Luna, he wished, pulling out a chair at the table and sitting down. Have some food, Stephen. As soon as you finish breakfast, go can leave to do the work I asked, Grayson ordered commandingly before taking a seat. I was about to sit on another chair when suddenly he pulled me and placed me on his lap. Are you crazy? What are you doing? This is so embarrassing. Let me go. There's an outsider here. Aren't you ashamed? I protested, rolling my eyes at him. Oh, baby girl, we wolves are very possessive of our mates. Grayson smirked, exchanging glances with Stephen, who was also smiling. Enough of your nonsense with the wolf thing, man. I sighed deeply. Okay, baby girl. First I'll feed you, and after that I'll answer your questions. He explained before starting to feed me. Oh, come on, Alpha. That's not fair. I mean, I still haven't found my mate, and here you are making me jealous. Stephen sulked, shoving a croissant into his mouth annoyingly. Shut up, Stephen. Grayson squinted his eyes at Stephen. I felt so embarrassed in that situation. There I was sitting and having my breakfast on a man's lap, in the presence of his friend. I mean, I never ever dreamt of something like this. Grayson was so shameless while I was so uncomfortable, wiggling around on his lap, grinding him unconsciously. My angel, you are making things harder. Don't grind while sitting on my lap. Grayson sat out loud and I turned to face him in shock. Our foreheads met and I realized his eyes were suddenly brown again. Before I could say anything, I felt his manhood poked me from under my butt cheeks, making me jump out from his lap in a jolt. Stephen, did you see that? Did you know he could do this? His eyes keep changing colors from time to time. I cried out moving away from Grayson. All of a sudden, Grayson stood up and I saw the most horrible scene I have ever seen in my life. Grayson's teeth elongated and some kind of silver fur started covering his whole body. The sound of bones cracking filled the room and he started shaking his neck. His human ears grew longer and soon he was on his four paws. There, before me, was a wolf. Grayson is a wolf, a bloody hell six feet tall wolf. I can't believe he was right. He was indeed a werewolf. My feet fell glued to the floor as my legs went numb and my mouth became dry. Despite his terrorizing stature, his chocolate eyes looked at me with nothing but compassion. Is he going to eat me? Shit, I must run. Stephen, run! He's a wolf. He will eat both of us. I warned Stephen, but all he did was look at me apologetically. So you knew he's a wolf? Are you one also? I asked, backing away from the both of them slowly. He nodded in response. Luna, please calm down. Alpha won't hurt you. He just needs to show you his reality. He needs your love. Stephen pleaded on behalf of Wolf Grayson. Are you crazy? He's a huge wolf, not a cute puppy to cuddle with. I cried out, 
continuing to distance myself from them. Grayson started to approach me, his large paws moving step by step. His eyes were filled with care with a hint of sadness. Unable to take it anymore, I started running to the bedroom. Luna, please don't run. He won't hurt you. He needs to be touched by you. He wants your love and care, Stephen begged, running after me. There was no way in hell I was going to do as he said. I ran to the room, closed the door, bolting the door for safety before breaking down in tears. God, where have you brought me? He's a monster. All of a sudden, a loud thud was heard as the door vibrated violently. It just kept repeating, and I finally realized what was happening. He's going to break down the door. Fuck, what would I do? Instantly, Grayson barged into the room in his wolf form. Looking at me intensely with his chocolate eyes, he started approaching me again, and this time I felt my head spinning with dizziness. My breath felt restricted like I was choking, as my surroundings slowly darkened around me, swallowing me into consciousness. Alpha, she's having a panic attack. Stephen yelled out, the last and only words heard before I fainted. Grayson's POV I placed her on my lap to feed her, but she started to grind on my lap. Fuck! I couldn't myself. Was she teasing me? I wanted to take her right there and then. I felt my dick starting to grow bigger and the urge to fuck her virgin pussy was killing me inside. I wanted to hear her scream my name so bad. Fuck these perverted thoughts. Mmm, her pussy must be tasty. I can't wait to worship her body. Suck her juicy nipples and taste her plump lips. Damon said with a purring sound inside my head. He was so impatient. Suddenly, Zenya jumped out from my lap and ran towards Stephen. We both got frustrated at her absence on our lap, and Damon took control, making me shift into my wolf. I watched as she shivered in fear before running out towards the bedroom. I ran towards the room, but she locked the door. She's scared of us, Damon pouted sadly. Of course, she's a human after all. I comforted, but I couldn't help feel pity for my fear-stricken mate. Damon started slamming against the door with his large body, and with just four thuds he managed to break open the door. I entered the room to see her just standing across the room, trembling with fear. Longing to comfort her, I started to walk towards her. Damon too needed to touch her and calm down, but she was way too scared. The more I approached her, the more she looked unwell. Her eyes started closing and her body swayed weakly. Alpha, she's going to have a panic attack, Stephen yelled out, and at lightning speed I changed a human form and caught her in my arms before she hit the floor. Chapter 10 Questions and Answers Grayson's POV I laid her down gently on the bed and quickly wore a pair of basketball shorts and a t-shirt. She just had a panic attack because of me. I didn't understand how to make her love me. The full me. Would she stay with me? Would she love me? Would she support me as my Luna? Thousands of questions and uncertainty flowed through my mind, but I was certain that I couldn't let her go. I would die if she's apart from me. We, the Redwood Warrior Pack members, are so possessive for our mates and the whole foundation of the pack is the mate bond. I took her hand and lightly rubbed it within mine. My sweet Xenia was so naive, so innocent that everything was too much for her. After around two hours, she started to stir awake. I dimmed the lights of the room so it would be comfortable for her eyes to adjust. She slowly regained her consciousness and opened her eyes. Angel, are you all right? Baby, talk to me, please, I said, worry and guilt filling me. My mate just silently looked at me and I could see a disappointed look form on her face. 
Then her eyes started to moisten with tears before she burst out crying, loud sobs escaping from her mouth. Xenias covered her face with her palms and her shoulders started shaking terribly. I slowly moved to sit beside her on the bed and gently carried her to my lap. I realized that I needed to make sure to take things very slowly and gently with her. My angel still kept sobbing uncontrollably in my lap, so I carefully caressed her head before kissing her forehead comfortingly, while my free hand lightly rubbed her back up and down. Her endless crying had started to drench my t-shirt with her tears. Oh, baby girl, please don't cry. I know you can't tolerate all this at once, my love. It came as a huge shock for you. But I promise you, my angel, I will make everything all right. Now please stop crying, my love, I whispered in her ear pleadingly, making her cries die down significantly until only little sobs were heard. Who is an alpha? she suddenly asked, looking at me with her teary eyes. Alpha is the leader of the pack, and he's responsible for his pack. The Alpha titles pass down from generations, like how I inherited it from my father. So, in my pack, I am the Alpha, I explained, caressing her hair. Then who is a Luna? Her head tilted slightly, curious to learn more about the title she had been called multiple times in the last few days. Aluna is an alpha's mate, his better half, his soulmate. I wiped off her tears with my fingers delicately. Is that like husband and wife? She questioned again, sitting up straight in my lap. Yes, but our mate bond is stronger than a legally signed paper. Every wolf is blessed with a mate for him or her. But for their entire life, they get only one mate and the moon goddess creates the mate bond. Usually a wolf finds his mate after the first shift, but unfortunately it took me exactly ten years to find my angel. I kissed the back of her palm lovingly, my eyes fixated on hers. Xenia sighed deeply. <sighs> so I am your fiancé? And we're going to get married? Yes, baby girl but I'm not in any kind of hurry, I reassured her. Liar, we both know that we want to mate with her right here and now, Damon exclaimed in my mind with a naughty smirk. I know, Damon, but she'll get scared. Be patient. Time will make her fall in love with us, I lectured him. I know he was impatient. So was I, but I couldn't rush into anything. I needed to take things very slowly with her. What is a pack? And what are other titles you all have? She continued asking her long list of questions, but I wasn't annoyed. Rather, I was proud she was trying to understand. My second in command is called Beta. His name is Cade. He's at the pack house with a pack while I'm away. My third in command is referred to as Gamma, which is Stephen. My fourth is Delta, and so on. Omegas are the servants in the pack, but we don't treat them like servants. We treat each person in my pack equally. I tucked a loose strand of her hair behind her ear. When she didn't say anything in response, but instead just stared at me curiously, waiting to hear more, I decided to keep on explaining. So, a pack is a group of werewolves living under one roof. Wolves in a pack care for each other like family and live together with their family in a huge house called a pack house. I have given the freedom to them to do whatever job they like and study as they choose. After all, we are living in the 21st century. And don't be alarmed. We don't harm humans or anyone unless we felt there's a threat to our pack. I clarified, rubbing her back affectionately. What are these sparks I feel when you touch me? And the terrible pain I felt when I was escaping? Oh, and why are your eyes chocolate brown sometimes? Xenia asked all at once, in a single breath. Wow, looks like my angel has so many questions. Okay. The sparks are due to our mate bond. 
It doesn't just happen to you, but me as well. Now, about the pain, we call it to escape cramps, when we touch our mate for the first time. A natural bond is created. Our Redwood Warrior Pax Foundation is based on the mate bond. So if our mate is trying to run away or escape from us, these cramps occur. It alerts the other party of the fleeing of our mate, I said, sighing deeply at the pain of escape cramps. And what about your eyes? She pointed at my eyes, her finger shifting between both my pupils. Ahem. That actually happens due to three reasons. One, when you try to reject me or run away from me, my wolf becomes desperate and pissed. Two, when I am angry with someone else who tries to harm you or when I see a threat. I felt my heart clench at the sudden thought of someone hurting my mate. And the third reason? My alert mate voiced out. Are you sure you want to know about that? I rubbed the back of my neck, unsure if I should tell her. She nodded her head vigorously, and her curiosity made her eyes sparkle. Um, it happens when, you know, when that feeling comes. Um, when I need to, you know, do that thing with you? I explained shyly, slightly embarrassed even. Do what? She blurted out directly, making me jolt up in surprise. Um, that thing... You know, sex? When I want to have sex with you, it happens, I finally told her. As soon as I said that, she jumped out from my lap, but I quickly pulled her back to the bed gently and hovered her little body. I was careful not to put my weight on her fragile body by supporting myself up with my arms on the side of her body. Oh, my angel, don't worry. I promise I will not do anything without your permission or free will. Trust me, I know one day you will beg for me, and I am impatiently waiting for that day to devour your body, my sunshine. I whispered huskily in her ear, my lips softly grazing her outer ear. Why do you call me with so many names? I have a name, you know, she accused, raising her head towards me. Well, I call you Angel because you're so beautiful and peaceful, just like an angel from heaven. Baby girl, it's because you're so cute, innocent, and naive like a baby. Sunshine since you're so hot like the morning sun rays, and my world is dark without your light. And rose petals because you smell like a rose. A rose that bloomed in my love garden just for me. I described softly and with passion without peeling my gaze from her eyes before getting off from above her and sitting on the edge of the bed. Listen, I think there's been a mistake, okay? I am not the one for you. After all, I am just a human. Please try to understand. I just came to America for my MBA. I don't have any plans to get married or start a family. Besides, I hate men. I hate when they look at me devouringly. I hate when they try to touch me inappropriately. I hate all of them, she said and ran to the washroom hurriedly. Why did she hate men so much? Did someone break her heart? I knew I had to find out about it myself. Worried, I stood up from the bed and approached the bathroom door, tapping on it lightly. All I could hear was her sobs. Was she crying? Oh, baby girl, please come out. Don't cry. You couldn't share anything with me. I assured her as worry ran through my veins. I had to control myself or else Damon would feel the urge to break the door again. Eventually, after some time, she came out with reddened eyes due to her constant crying. My love, you can share anything with me, my baby girl. I offered, taking her hand in mine and caressing it comfortingly. When she didn't respond, I decided to change the topic and make her forget her sadness. Baby girl, shall we go out for lunch? I'll show you New York City and you can try to relax. Oh, and let's do some shopping for some clothes for you. Then we can have dinner outside too, okay? 
I patted her head lovingly, heartbreaking at the sight of her so upset. Zenya nodded in agreement and I smiled before walking towards the door. Okay then, go get ready. We'll be leaving in twenty minutes, I said and walked out of the room to give her some space to get ready. Chapter 11 Getting to Know About Her Xenia's POV Grayson had asked me to get dressed and come down, insisting that we go out for some leisure activities. I got dressed with my one and only set of clothes since Grayson still refused to give me my luggage before heading down. There in the living room, I saw that Grayson was sitting on the couch wearing a royal blue t-shirt and jeans, topped off with a sexy black leather jacket. Oh, I think he also loves to wear jackets like me. As soon as he saw me, he stood up from the couch and approached me. Shall we go, baby girl? He asked, extending his hand forward to the front door of the hotel. Yeah, I'm ready. Let's go. I nodded and followed behind him. We stepped outside of the hotel and waited for our vehicle. Soon, a black Range Rover stopped in front of us and the driver got out. Surprisingly, Grayson took over the wheel, leaving only me and Grayson in the vehicle. The drive was slow and I started to feel really awkward. Luckily, he turned on the heater and the ride became much more comfortable. As we approached some busy streets, the traffic started to become heavier. While stuck in traffic, I caught sight of an advertisement on a digital screen, announcing that there was a WWE match happening that night at Madison Square Garden in Manhattan. Without even realizing it, I was possessively looking at the screen because it was one of my bucket list dreams to watch a live WWE wrestling match as I drank Coke and ate popcorn. But unfortunately, all of my dreams will be dreams forever. Just like my MBA. Baby girl, what are you looking at so intently? He suddenly asked me, moving towards my side to look outside the window. Nothing, I replied briefly, knowing that there was no point in telling him my interest. Do you want to watch a wrestling match? Come on, tell me, Angel. Grayson gently turned my head to face him with fingers looking at me curiously. Despite every bone in my body stopping me, I still nodded my head in agreement. That's my girl. My girl with a kick-ass spirit. That's why I love you. You're different and special compared to any normal girl, he expressed, beaming away with pride. He immediately took out his phone and called someone, putting the call on loudspeaker for me to hear. Hello, Mr. Lockwood. How can I help you, sir? Someone asked from the other side of the line. I need you to book two tickets for tonight's WWE show, and it should be front seats, Grayson ordered with a stern voice. My jaw dropped at his words. My mind shocked at the way he could just make my dream a reality by a snap of a finger, but also that he ordered two tickets instead of one. Is he going to watch the match with me? Sure, sir. Anything for you. I'll reserve the two seats for you. The man replied before the call ended. How did you do that with just one call? I questioned, my face still riddled with surprise. Oh, I'm a billionaire, my sunshine. It's mostly money talk, actually. Plus, most of the people know me here. But most importantly, I'll do anything for you, just to see a smile on your face, my baby girl. Grayson smiled and reached for my hand, before bringing it up to his lips to kiss it. Thank you. I appreciate it. But I'm still confident that there must be a mistake. I am not the partner whom you're looking for. I can't give you the support you expect from Aluna. Besides, I am a pathetic, weak, ugly human being. I'm certain that your pack's kids are stronger than me. I explained confidently. Grayson suddenly hit the brakes and pulled the car over to the curb, parking it immediately. The impact was so great that I almost going to hit my head on the dashboard, but he quickly placed his hand to my forehead, stopping it from happening. 
he removed my seatbelt and carried me onto his lap. My heart was beating rapidly in my chest in fear. I was afraid to see him that way because I was someone who trembled in horror when someone was angry. It was very obvious that he was fuming as his nostrils are enlarged and he was breathing like a raging bull, clenching his teeth strongly. Why are you angry? Did I say anything wrong? I'm sorry, please don't hurt me, please. I pleaded, my voice shaking in fright. Don't you ever dare say things like that about yourself ever again. You don't have any right to talk about anything about yourself, especially in that way. Your body and soul belong to me. And to me, you are a perfect woman compared to those fake girls, much like dolls. Do you understand, my angel? He looked into my eyes intently before kissing the top of my head and returning me to my seat. I nodded my head obediently and he continued to drive as if nothing had happened. Why is he so possessive and obsessive? Is this real love? Or is he just interested in my body? Here we are, baby, Grayson said, disturbing my chain of thoughts as he stopped the car in front of a huge shopping mall. Great shopping time. Ugh, I hated shopping because I didn't enjoy walking so much for no particular reason, unlike when I was shopping for my move to America. But I kept silent, careful to not infuriate Grayson again. He got down from the vehicle and before I could open my door, he was at my side of the door, as if he moved at the speed of lightning. He opened the door and helped me down before we both entered the mall. My eyes roamed the interior of the mall in awe. I had never seen such a luxurious mall in my life. Gracie immediately led me to a store selling winter clothes first and told me to pick out what I liked. But I already brought all these things and I don't have money to spend on new clothes. Listen, I already brought everything from Sri Lanka so I don't need to buy anything more. Plus, I don't have enough money anyway. You buy what you need and I'll wait outside, I explained before turning around to head outside the store. Grayson immediately grabbed onto my hand softly, turning me to face him. Baby girl, listen to me. Today, I'm only shopping for you. You just need to tell me what you like and I'll pay for it. And trust me, I know that you're not a gold digger, okay? So just pick anything you like. But I don't want anything. I don't like shopping, please. I pouted my lips sadly, sighing deeply. Don't be stubborn, my love. Remember to behave like a good girl and you'll be rewarded. He reminded with a sly wink. Take her inside and pack everything that she likes. He ordered the store clerk. Sure, sir. Ma'am, this way, please. The lady invited and I followed her. With everything I pulled out from the rack, I checked the price tag only to find the prices extremely expensive. These prices are crazy. How could I pick something from here? You know what? Just pack everything that she touched and take those to the cashier. I'll be right there to pay. Grayson suddenly declared, making me freeze for a minute in shock. No, wait. You're wasting money. I cried out before I hung on his arm, stopping him from heading to the cashier. But I failed to realize that it was the very first time that I touched him of my own accord. Grayson just looked at me in awe in response, making me quickly pull my hand away. He flashed me a charming smile and my cheeks reddened with blush. Oh, my baby's blushing. You have every right to touch me, baby girl. He smiled and caressed my cheek softly. After buying a ton of winter clothes, Grayson led me to another shop. This time he bought me an assortment of clothes such as jeans, t-shirts, casual dresses, jackets, shoes and sandals, accessories, and so much more. I strictly requested him not to buy and makeup items nor facial cream since I hated using them. So instead, he bought a very expensive lip balm for me. Is he not tired? I am. 
I'm tired and hungry now, I told him weakly. Just one more shot, baby girl. We can have lunch after that. He stroked my hair comfortingly before heading towards a controversial store. What? He's taking me to a Victoria's Secret store? Come on! How can I choose undergarments with him? No way. Take her measurements and pack her a set of undergarments, including lace, thong, bikini, hipster, and boy shorts, as well as every type of bras in 24 different colors. He ordered the sales staff. I am so embarrassed. How does he know so much about all the different categories? Another half an hour flew by just while we were in that store. When I came out of the changing room, he already had another huge bag in his hand. He paid the bill with no questions asked, and we walked out of the store. Little did he know that I found out from the lady in the last store he visited that Grayson owned the shopping mall. That was why it was so easy for him to order them around and arrange for all the bags he was holding to be sent to the car. As promised, we had our lunch after that, and by the time we finished with that, it was already 3.30 p.m. Now, baby girl, tell me, where do you want to go? Grayson asked, wiping his mouth with his napkin. I want to go home to my mom and dad. I gazed down to the floor sadly before looking at him again. He sighed deeply and ran his hand through his hair. Baby girl, listen to me very carefully. This is your home now until your last breath. Don't worry. I'll take you to your parents and I'll give you everything you ask for. But I can't be apart from you. It will kill us both. So whether you like it or not, I can't let you go. If I have to tie you to my bed to make sure you stay, I won't hesitate to do that. He explained. His words struck me with fear and horror. I started to cry at his words, knowing clearly that I didn't have an option anymore. I only know the Statue of Liberty, I replied his previous question, wiping my tears with my sleeves. Okay, so we will first go there and then I'll take you on a small tour of the city. He reached forward and tucked a loose strand of my hair behind my ear. We spent the late afternoon basking in the beauty of New York. I was exceptionally amazed to see all the enormous skyscrapers in the middle of the city. But eventually I grew tired. Listen, I am so tired and my legs are hurting now. I can't even walk another step, I said, crashing down tiredly on a bench. Okay, my love, you sit and rest here. I'll go get some ice creams for both of us. He smiled at me and walked towards a nearby store, before returning with two ice cream cones. Here you go. One dark chocolate ice cream for you, he said, passing me a cone. I'm sorry, but I don't like chocolate flavor, I replied, passing the ice cream back to him. What? Are you serious, baby girl? I mean, girls always love chocolate. You're the first girl I've seen that hates chocolate flavor he exclaimed in surprise. That is the case with other girls, but not me. This is me, I declared confidently, folding my arms in front of my chest. Grayson's POV Grayson, you must tell Gamma to find out about her preferences as soon as possible. Otherwise, we both have to spend a shameless life in front of her. Damon ridiculed me laughing at my situation. I know, buddy. We can't compare her to other girls since she's so different. Plus, she's never going to tell me her preferences willingly. For now, at least. I answered Damon as I walked back to Xenia with a vanilla-flavored ice cream cone in my hand. As soon as I passed her the ice cream, she started to indulge it like a child. After we finished our ice creams, I noticed her body started to shiver due to the cold breeze. She started to rub her palms together to keep warm. Possessively worried, I hurriedly carried her in my arms and ran to the car. I placed her in the back seat and turned on the heather. Then I joined her in the back seat and started removing my jacket and t-shirt. What are you doing? 
Why are you removing your clothes? She demanded. Her eyes enlarged with fear before she tried opening the door to run, but I quickly locked it. Please don't do anything. Please. I'm begging you. She started to cry out, edging her back towards the door as far from me as she could. I carried her onto my lap and tried to remove her jacket. She struggled to move from my grasp, but in comparison to my strength, her efforts were nothing. No! No, please don't do this! Why are you doing this? Stop, please! Xenia started to hit my chest repeatedly until I growled, making her stop completely. Baby girl, I am trying to warm you or else you might catch a cold. I'm just trying to give you skin-to-skin -skin warmth. I am not going to hurt you, my angel. Shh. Just calm down, please. I assured her while slowly removing her jacket. I took a blanket and covered us both, hugging her under it. She calmed down immensely and cuddled up to my warm body like an infant. Her skin soft like a feather. After a few minutes, she stopped shivering and I put her jacket back on adding more winter clothes over her along with some gloves. We drove to a nearby restaurant for dinner, and I made sure she had good hot food to warm her up comfortably. After dinner, we drove to Manhattan where the WWE match was to be held. I was extremely intrigued to see her mood and reaction while watching people fight. I promise you, baby girl, I will keep you happy until my last breath. Chapter 12 The Unfortunate Incident Xenia's POV I sat quietly in the car as Grayson drove us to Madison Square Garden in Manhattan while he answered a few business calls while driving. As I watched his face contort into a serious look, I wondered how a single person could handle so many responsibilities while having two characters on top of that. After about a half an hour drive, we reached our destination. Grayson parked the car. Once again, as soon as I unstrapped my seatbelt, he was already there by my door, opening it for me. Baby girl, don't ever get down from the car until I come and open the door for you, okay? He advised, taking my hand in his. I nodded my head obediently and followed him towards the building. What else can I do besides agreeing to his every command? I stared in wonder at the crowd of people crazily cheering and holding up boards of their favorite WWE superstars. The whole building was covered with the posters of the WWE superstars, and particularly that night was a special four-hour show with a hidden surprise for the fans. I was so impatient to see these superstars as I had always seen them on a TV screen but I was finally about to see them live in front of my eyes. The minute we entered the building, Grayson pulled out his phone and called someone. Hello, we're at the entrance. Come and escort us inside, he ordered briefly before ending the call. Within a few minutes, a slightly over middle-aged man dressed in a suit approached us and bowed before Grayson. Oh, come on. Don't tell me that he's also a wolf. I can't believe this. This whole town is full of wolves. Is he also a wolf? I whispered, curiously observing the man. Of course, baby girl. Come, let's go. We can enter as VIPs, he said before placing his arm around my lower back. Stop it. This is embarrassing. Don't hug me. There are thousands of people here. Don't you feel embarrassed? I cried out softly, trying to release myself from his grip around my waist. Oh, sunshine, there's nothing to be ashamed of. We're mates and this is America. There are thousands of people kissing and hugging openly. Moreover, I don't want to touch you to be touched by any other men in this area. Grayson whispered in my ear possessively. I sighed deeply, realizing that debating with him was futile so I kept my mouth shut and sat down at our front seats, the stage right in front of us. Is this a dream? If this is a dream, please do not wake me up. 
I want to see the matches live first. Just I imagined we were served popcorn, chips, and some canned drinks. Here we go. The show begins with my favorite music before my favorite wrestler, John Cena, appeared on the stage. The crowd started cheering and screaming crazily. Usually, I was mellow, but I didn't know what overcame me at that moment because I suddenly got up from my seat, started to cheer, jump, and scream like others. I was behaving like an excited schoolgirl in public. The match started and soon things turned heated. They were fighting like machines. But eventually he won the match. I immediately stood on my chair and started to cheer for him. I was not aware of my surroundings nor the people seated behind me. I was busy enjoying it as much as I could. Grayson's POV We sat in our seats and we received some snacks and drinks. I could see the sparks in her eyes as a smile never left her lips. I was finally seeing some light in her face, compared to the last few days. Just seeing her like that made me feel so overwhelmed like I needed to see my baby's happy face all the time. Soon the show began and suddenly she started to stand up and cheer. I just gazed at her in wonder, thinking of how she was such a bubbly girl that loved to enjoy her simple moments to her fullest. I should definitely bring her to see these matches often, just so I can see this cheerful side of her. She was just like a kid who had the whole world in front of her. Unlike her, the matches were not important to me. I had fought more than thousands of fights in my real life as a wolf. Just wait, baby. I can show you a real fight when we go back to the pack house. These wrestlers were fighting for money, but we fight for the pack. Then, finally, her superstar won the match. <clears throat> I can show you a real fight if you want, babe. I whispered in her ear, brushing my lips ever so slightly over her earlobe. My angel shuddered for a second before turning to look at me with her big doe eyes. Oh, moon goddess, I love her the way she's looking at me. No, thank you. They're fighting to entertain us. But you are killing each other. She narrowed her eyes at me before turning to look at the ring again. Wrong. We fight for our pack. To protect each other. To protect the ones we love. Oh, and babe, trust me. I can show you a fight that will make you forget to have your popcorn. I told her with a chuckle. Can I please watch the match? I don't want to hear your boastings. She requested folding her hands in front of her chest, probably annoyed. Sure, babe, I replied with a small smile. The matches continued until past midnight. Once again, I was in awe of her energy that lasted tight till the end without failing to cheer and scream for every victory. Xenia's POV The show finally reached the last hour as the clock struck midnight. I wonder why I don't feel tired. I could see Grayson watching me rather than watching matches from the corner of my eye. I knew these matches meant nothing to him. He may fight real fights. After all, he was a wolf who covered his identity with a human coat. Finally, the announcer announced the surprise for the fans. There was going to be a women's tag team match. The fans were at the edge of their seats waiting for the surprise. Suddenly, the music started playing and I immediately knew what it was. It's the theme song of Lita. I couldn't believe my eyes. There, standing in the tunnel, was the legend diva, Lita. She headed to the ring so proudly as fans cheered for her. Just when we thought the surprise was over, another theme song played. What the fuck, man? This time it was Trish Stratus, standing in the tunnel. The seven-time women's champion headed to the ring, prepared to compete with her opponent in front of my eyes. My body went numb in excitement and disbelief at the amazing sight in front of my eyes. The match started and the ladies fought with a passion to give the best entertainment to their fans. 
Trish and Lita had returned to the WWE stage after many years, and I was amazed at their strength. They fought really hard, and as a finale, Trish used her famous signature move, the Stratus Faction, and Lita used Moonsault. I couldn't believe my eyes, and in that pure happiness, I jumped into Grayson's lap and hugged him with tears slowly rolling down my face. Grayson's POV I kept my eyes on her for hours, but suddenly she stopped screaming or cheering. What's wrong with her? Is she tired? Did she not like the final match? Worry started filling me inch by inch. Finally, the match came to an end and suddenly she jumped into my lap. My mind was boggled with uncertainty as I tried to figure out what happened to her all of a sudden. My mate, who didn't like to touch me, wanted to be in my lap. Nevertheless, her actions made both me and my wolf delighted. But then she had to cry while still hanging on to my neck. I can hear her sobs, but I didn't know why it was happening. Baby girl, are you all right? Why are you crying? I asked her caressing her hair, trying to console her while my heart clenched in worry. Thank you. It is the best day of my life, she muttered before hugging me again, tightly. Damon started to dance in my head, happily howling. We both thanked the moon goddess for that special moment. I just patted her back and drew small comforting circles on her back with my fingers. I think she's starting to like us. Damon explained with a cheerful howl. Yes, I think so too. I told you she'll slowly fall for us. I reassured Damon and pushed him towards the back of my mind. Baby girl, shall we go now? The show's over and it's already 12.30 a.m. I think we both are really tired. I cupped her cheeks and she nodded her head before following me out to the parking lot. Xenia's POV we exited the building and I realized that I really needed to pee badly. I need to go to the toilet. Please, it's urgent, I pleaded. Baby girl, there's a toilet at the corner of the parking lot. But if you can wait until we go to the hotel, that would be better because that area is a little bit dark. He advised with concern. No, no, I can't wait. I really need to pee. Please, I persisted. My urgency to go for the toilet is much more important than the darkness. Okay, then. Let's go. You go inside. I also need to go to the male toilet over there. He said before walking towards the building slightly further from the female toilet. No one seemed to be around when I went inside to relieve myself. But when I was about to come out, suddenly my mouth got covered by a strong hand. I tried to scream but couldn't. I bit the hand of the man as hard as I could and screamed for help when he pulled it away. But then they started to drag me towards a dark corner. Are they going to abuse me? Are they going to rape me? I prayed to God that somebody could hear my cries. My mind thought back to my childhood, to the incident that happened when I was seven years old. The reason I started hating men. Then, just when I lost hope, I saw that Grayson coming towards me, his eyes glaring in our direction before he started to fight them off. Is he fighting to protect me? Or is he angry that someone decided to rape me before he can make the first step? Nevertheless, I watched silently as he fought with the three men. They were nothing but twigs in comparison with his strength. His veins were throbbing and popping up from his neck and hands. I even caught sight of his canine teeth appearing. He finally defeated them and started to approach me. Don't you dare come near me, you bastard men. All you want is our body and to rape us, I yelled at him. But instead of anger, all I could see was sorrow, care, and love in his eyes. He didn't care for my yells, but continued to approach me and take me in his arms. Then, like deja vu, I saw the familiar dark spots blocking my vision before darkness swallowed me. Grayson's POV 
We were in the parking lot when Zenya told me that she needed to use the toilet badly. I suggested that we return to the hotel where it would be more comfortable. But she persisted even though it was dark, and I didn't want to spoil things after our special moment. So, I followed her to the female toilet before leaving her to visit the male toilets while waiting. I relieved myself and came out, but there was still no sign of my angel. I waited there for another five minutes, but oddly, she didn't come back. She must be in a trouble. We should go and check on her, Damon insisted, pacing up and down in my head anxiously. Yeah, let's go and check, I agreed and headed towards the toilet, but soon I heard someone scream for help. That's her. She's in trouble. Let me come to the surface, Damon demanded, infuriated. No, there are humans here. I'll handle it. I ran towards her, hoping that she was okay. I followed the sound of her screams, and soon I saw three men dragging her towards a dark spot corner of the car park. One of them was covering her mouth. She was crying, throwing her hands and legs in the air. I got really pissed at what I saw. But then, another man slapped her hard. Oh, hell no. How dare you? I ran to them at lightning speed and jumped at them. I started to fight with them with all my strength. I kicked and punched at them as hard as I could. But soon I realized that while I was fighting with two of them, the third guy started to tear her clothes. She screamed out loud for help and her weak voice somehow gave me indescribable strength to defeat them completely. I ran towards her and grabbed the man's neck before throwing him towards a nearby vehicle making him hit the windscreen and fall unconscious. My angel just lied on the ground like a dead body. I hurried towards her as she tried to slowly get up. Don't you dare come near me, you bastard men. All you want is our body and to rape us. She yelled out when she saw me, her eyes reflecting nothing but fear. My heart broke at her words. To rape her? No. I can't even imagine doing something like that to her. I forcefully took her in my arms and she struggled to escape, cursing at me. Please don't do this. Please don't hurt me, she said finally before fainting in my arms. I ran to the car and laid her down on the seat gently. Even with the dim street light, I could see the bruise on her face from the slap, making me fume in rage. I mind-linked my warriors, and they came within a couple of seconds. She didn't know that I secretly asked them to come along with us for safety reasons. I knew that she didn't like to go anywhere with them tagging along. Take those bastards to the packhouse dungeons, I commanded my warriors with my Alpha voice. Yes, Alpha. Is Luna okay? One of the warriors asked. I knew that they were also really worried about her. No, she is not okay. I want to give them a slow death for the assault they did on my angel. I hissed, clenching my teeth as my palms balled into fists. I need to go back to the hotel. We're leaving. You clean the mess. I instructed before getting into the car. My soul felt pity for my poor innocent mate. I could see a few drops of blood dripping from the side of her mouth. More than anything, I didn't understand why she hated men so much. There's something that she didn't like to share. Something dark that must have happened to her in the past. I had to find out, no matter what. I drove to the hotel in silence with thousands of questions in my head. Chapter 13 I Was Abused Grayson's POV I looked at my unconscious mate lying on the bed with a worried feeling. Now, under the room light, I could see the dried-up remnants of the tears she shed all over the cheeks. The bruises on her cheek from the hard slap she got looked much worse as the imprint of his hand glowed in red. I won't spare these bastards. I'll torture them until they beg for their death. How dare they touch my angel. She is so pure and naive. 
I will protect her until my last breath. I got an ice pack from the fridge and lightly massaged her cheeks with it as she shivered a little due to the cold. I want to rip their body into tiny pieces. I want to show them the horrifying consequences that happen to those who dare touch her mate. Damon growled in my head, his eyes burning fury. We will, Damon, we will. I won't spare those fuckers. I sighed and ran my fingers through my hair. I sat by her bed loyally until I finally noticed that she was slowly regaining her consciousness. Her eyeballs started moving violently under her eyelids, and her chest moved up and down rapidly. What's wrong with her? No, no, please don't hurt me. Please, somebody save me. Don't rape me. She cried out. She started to cry and scream, making me feel miserable. I can't see her like this. I slowly moved towards her and took her onto my lap. She was still not fully conscious, swaying between consciousness and unconsciousness. Shh, my baby girl. You are safe with me. There's no one going to hurt you. You are with me. Please open your eyes, baby. No one can touch you while I'm here. Baby, please open your eyes and look at me, I pleaded. I lightly patted her cheeks and she hissed with pain from her hurt cheek. Slowly she opened her eyes and looked at me with her teary eyes. Are you also going to rape me? She asked with a shaky voice, making my heart sink. No, my angel. How could I even think such a thing? You are my world, my everything. I will protect you with my life, no matter what happens to me. You are my other half, I assured, kissing her forehead and patting her head before lightly rubbing her back to soothe her pain. Then why did you bring me here? She questioned through her sobbing. Baby, you are my mate. You should stay with me. How many times do I have to tell you that I love you? That I need you? I cupped her unhurt cheek. You are so pure, so naive, baby girl. Why are you so afraid of men? Why are you so disgusted with men? I looked into her eyes, trying to find the answer in her eyes. I was abused. I'm not sure. She blurted out as soon as I finished my sentence. My whole body grew numb at her words as she started crying again, clenching my t-shirt in her fists. I tried to console her as Damon whined in me. Like me, he too needed to know what happened to her. You heard me. I am not pure as you think. I was abused by my cousin brother. Now what? You feeling disgusted, right? Your so-called pure baby is stained, wolfy boy. She yelled, her body trembling in my arms. I hugged her tightly to calm her down. What happened to you, my angel? Tell me. Release your pain, baby girl. I advised. When she didn't respond, I turned her body to face me while still on my lap. I guided her legs to wrap around my torso and she put her hands around my neck. I supported her back with one hand on her back and one on her neck. In this position, she was looking straight into my eyes. You are going to tell me what happened with you and keep this ice pack to your cheek. Don't remove it until I say so, okay? I ordered her, passing her the ice pack, and watched as she placed it on her cheek, hissing at the cold and pain. It happened when I was a child. No one knows about this until now. During our school holidays, my mom, my dad, and I used to go to my auntie's place almost every time. It was located high in the hills, so it was cold there. She had two children, a daughter and a son. They are both elder to me by more than eight years. She started explaining before her waterfall of tears began again making me pat her back comfortingly. One day, 
My dad and uncle went to the town. Their daughter is an air hostess, so she was out of the country. So only me, my mom, my auntie, and her son were at the house. Mom and auntie were in the kitchen when my cousin suddenly asked me to come and play with him in his room. He was around 14 or 15 years old, and I was seven. I didn't think much about it and wanted to play since I was feeling bored. So we both went to his room and he locked the door. She tightly hugged me at the end of her sentence, and I knew that the bitter part is about to come. It's okay, baby. Go ahead. Daddy is listening to you. I kissed her head. Then he pushed me on the bed. I was wondering what kind of a game was he playing. All of a sudden, he jumped on me like a lion hunting its prey. She sobbed uncontrollably in my arms. Shh, it's okay, baby. Release your pain. Tell me the story and end the bitter, dark truth. Let me heal you, my angel. I whispered in her ear. He started to remove his pants and move up the red dress I was wearing. I wasn't wearing panties at that moment. His manhood was hard and he started to rub it against my vagina. I was so confused as I wondered what he was doing. I was seven and had no idea that he was actually abusing me. She explained, her breath quickening and her lips trembling. She started crying badly, howling even. The ice pack fell from her hand as she covered her face with her hands. I felt disgusted at her cousin, and I could feel Damon growling in my head. As for me, I could feel my veins popping up from my neck and hands, the speed of my breath accelerating after hearing her confession. I was fuming with raw rage. My poor angel had to carry the burden. The wrath of his cheap feeling has affected her whole life. How could somebody do that with a child? I was angry with her mom also for abandoning her even for a few minutes. We werewolves, creatures. But we would never do such a disgusting thing. They were humans. They should treat their own kind better compared to us. Now I can see who are the real creatures. He didn't go further since he felt that someone was coming. He quickly got up and wore his pants and threatened me not to tell anybody about the incident. She continued, before starting to cry again. My baby, cry as much as you want. Release the pain, baby girl. I hugged her tightly, trying to squeeze out all her pain and console her. I kissed her forehead affectionately as she kept crying, her tears falling from her eyes like a waterfall. You don't understand that feeling. At that age, I was just a child. But when I grew up, I realized how disgusting that moment was and what he did was. The worst thing is that your hands are tied even though you know the person. You can't take any action against him because he's your relative. She exclaimed, her voice laced with frustration and sadness. After a while, she finally stopped crying. So, what do you think? Do you still want me as your precious gift? You don't feel like it now, right? That's why I hate men so much. Whenever they get an opportunity, they use us without a second thought. I know in near future you will also use me and throw me out like trash after. Then, my life is finished. Her voice started to stabilize, but it was filled with anger. Yes, I need you. No matter what happened to you, my angel, I still love you. And that feeling has increased a lot because you chose to tell this story to me. And not anyone else. I respect you, my rose petal. I won't throw you anywhere, my baby. How can I prove my love to you? Please, just give me some time. Give us some time. I love you. So damn much. I showered her with kisses on the top of her head, her forehead, her cheeks, and her neck. I badly want to kiss her plump, sweet lips, but I knew that if I did such a thing, she would freak out again.
Things must go very slowly with her. But I realized that before gaining her love, I need to gain her trust. We just gazed into each other's eyes for a few minutes before I stood up with her still in my arms. What are you doing? Where are you taking me? She asked me, surprised by my sudden actions. You need to have a hot bath, baby girl. It's two in the morning. We both are tired after a hectic day. I'm taking you to the bathroom so that you have a bath. I'll prepare something for your little tummy while you do that. I placed her on the bathroom counter before going to grab my t-shirt and my boxers for her to wear after her bath. Can I have my PJs? She requested with her adorable puppy eyes. Nope, not at all. You have to wear my clothes every night when you go to sleep. I love my smell on your body. I teased with a smile before closing the bathroom door behind me as I exited. Don't lock the door, baby girl, I reminded before leaving the room. I went down to the kitchen to make a simple sandwich for her, but my mind was still thinking about all her suffering throughout those years. Alpha, we caught those three men and we'll take them to the dungeons of the pack house. How's the Luna? A warrior mind linked me. She's all right now. Take them and don't touch them until I come. We'll begin the show after I arrive. Oh, and there's another one too. Soon he will also join them. Make sure to find a pilot and send my private jet for me tomorrow. We're leaving New York tomorrow. I ordered, my teeth gritted in fury. Okay, Alpha. Stay safe and take care of the Luna. He replied before I cut off the mind link. I prepared a cheese and tuna sandwich for my baby girl and headed back up to the room with it. She had already had her bath and was sitting on the bed, looking at me with her beautiful eyes. How are you feeling now, my angel? I placed the plate on the side table and sat next to her on the bed. I feel much better after the bath, but my cheeks still hurt. She responded and tried to take the plate from the side table. Ah, uh ah. -uh. No, baby girl. You remember the rule. I'll feed you. I grabbed the plate before she could and placed her on my lap. Oh, please stop this nonsense. I can eat by myself, she sighed, rolling her eyes at me annoyingly. No talking now. Come, I'll feed you. After you eat, I'll apply some balm for your bruise, I said before starting to feed her. She slowly ate the sandwich while I stared at my innocent baby girl with adoration. Soon she finished the whole sandwich and I handed her a glass of water. Baby girl, you lay down on the bed. I'll apply the balm. I advised before going to get the balm from the cupboard. I returned to the bed with the balm and applied it on her cheek gently. My angel held on to my hand tightly due to the pain. Does it hurt, baby? I asked as I softly rubbed the balm on her bruised cheek. Yes, she responded. Angel, we're leaving from here tomorrow, I suddenly declared. Where are we going? She sat up in alarm. We're going back home. Our home. I answered, caressing her head. Please, I need to do my studies. That's why I came here. She pleaded with a soft look. We'll talk about it later, baby girl. Now it's already three in the morning. Go to sleep, and there is no need to wake up early tomorrow morning. Sleep as much as you want. I laid her back on the bed and covered her with the duvet. Good night, my angel. Sleep tight. I wished with a smile. Good night. Thank you for the day, and thank you for the sandwich. It was mouth-watering she said with a grateful smile before turning around. Chapter 14 She Likes My Eye Color Stevens POV I am the Gamma of the Pack, which means I am in subjection of my Alpha and I can obey him. Moreover, we've waited years to meet our Luna. Alpha wasn't the only one for we too were waiting for her impatiently. A pack without a Luna is like a vehicle without an engine. 
There's no going forward, nor was there a future. So I was prepared to do anything to keep our Luna with us, and that led me to her motherland. Sri Lanka was an island close to the equator, so it was hot and there were no seasonal changes like we had back in America. Back home, November was the beginning of the winter season, but in Sri Lanka, it was hot as hell. The taxi stopped in front of my hotel and I got down, heading straight to the reception counter. They checked my details and gave me my room keys. I had booked a standard room in this hotel, but it was a five-star hotel located in Colombo. My only mission there was to find information about Luna, such as her family background, her likes and dislikes, her associates, her education, her character, among other things. Settled in my room, I pulled out my phone and called the Alpha. Alpha, good evening. It's 8 p.m. here. I just checked into the hotel. I said, throwing my shoes in the air and lying down on the bed. Good. Go have your dinner and start the mission that I sent you for first thing tomorrow morning. Make sure to find each and every little detail about her. I don't want any mistakes, Stephen. Understood? Alpha ordered with his command voice. I knew that he was so possessive of Luna and that he fell in love with her at first sight. Yes, Alpha, don't worry about it. How's Luna? Is she okay now? The last thing that happened on the day I left America was that she saw you in your wolf form. I hope with time she'll get used to it. I sighed deeply. Oh, yes, she's all right now. I'll make her fall for me, Stephen. You know about my charms. Alpha replied with a chuckle. That's true. Every girl wants to sleep with him. His charming look and handsome features made their knees go weak. Yep. After all, you are the Alpha of the most powerful pack in America. Okay then, Alpha. It's time for me to freshen up and go have my dinner. Take care and stay safe. Bye. I replied, and after his farewell, I ended the call. I had a hot bath and changed into my comfortable shorts and t-shirts before going down to the restaurant floor to have my buffet dinner. I made use of the time I had while eating my dinner to check in Google Maps for the exact location of Luna's home. Alpha had already given me all the necessary details from her passport. I enjoyed the remaining of my dinner and returned to my room. Tired from my travel, I changed into my sweatpants and crawled into bed, sleep overcoming me soon after. Xenia's POV I wonder where Stephen is. Did he go back to their so-called pack house? The last time I recalled seeing him was when Grayson shifted in front of me. He vanished after that. My mind thought back to the events of the previous night. I had finally shared the unpleasant past of my life with Grayson. After hiding it from everyone, I don't know why my mind urged me that share the story with him. I can't understand what's going on with my life. I had come to America with a purpose, to build my career and my future. But fate had other plans for me. Never mind. I will keep looking for an escape. I checked the time. It was already 10 a.m. Shit! I slept too much. But after what happened the previous night and going to bed at 3 in the morning, I really needed the extra sleep. Then the previous night's incidents started to appear in my mind again, making me feel disgusted with myself, especially when they touched my body. I think I'm going to be sick. I started crying out loud, leaning my head against the bed's headboard. All of a sudden I felt someone patting my head. I looked through my tears to see Grayson gazing down at me with compassion and pity. Why are you crying, my angel? Are you hurt? He asked me, and that was enough for me to make me cry even harder. I am not pure. They touched me, and here, and there. Those stains never go away no matter how many times I wash them off. I cried out, sobbing as I pointed to the places they had touched me with lust. No, my angel. Please don't say things like that. You are the purest-hearted woman that I've ever met. No one can take your purity away by just touching you. He comforted before kissing my forehead. 
Now, baby girl, go and take a shower. I'll wait for you at the breakfast table, he said with a smile and walked out from the room, leaving me alone. I went to the bathroom and had a shower. When I came out of the bathroom, I noticed a light blue dress lying neatly on the bed. I took the dress and saw that there was a set of underwear also next to it, guessing that Grayson must have kept them on the bed. Oh, this man has no shame. Why can't he give me those bags instead of keeping them with him? I wore them but realized that the dress was significantly shorter than what I usually wore. Shit. I can't wear this. I've never worn short dresses before. What should I do now? With no other choice nor other clothes in sight, I took a dry towel and wrapped it around my hips, covering my bare revealed legs. Satisfied, I went down to the kitchen to see Grayson already sitting on a chair at the dining table. Shit, there's no other chair there, which means that I had to sit on his lap again. Oh, this is so embarrassing. Grayson's POV I was patiently waited for my angel to join me for breakfast. I knew she was still upset with the unfortunately horrible incidents, and I wished I could make her feel better. Then, from the corner of my eye, I saw her walking towards the kitchen. What the hell? Why is she covering her legs with a towel? Now what is she going to do? I stood up from the chair, terribly confused. Baby girl, why are you covering your lower body with a towel? What's wrong? I asked, moving closer to her in concern. I can't wear this dress. This is too short. I've never worn such short dresses. Please give me those bags with the clothes you bought yesterday so that I can choose what I want to wear. And aren't you ashamed? You've kept the undergarments, too she replied, rolling her eyes at me. Oh, that's why you're in a towel. But I don't think those are too short, my love. And I don't mind if you stay naked too, since there's no one here except you and me. I teased with a smirk. I could feel her cursing me in her mind, and I laughed at the sight of her changing facial expressions. I need to remove that towel somehow, but she's holding on to it too tightly. Eventually, a cunning idea came to mind. Baby girl, let's have breakfast, and as usual, you have to sit on my lap. I sat down on the chair, and she sat on my lap with no fuss. Angel, can you please pass that omelet dish for me? I asked, pointing my finger at the plate which was at the corner of the table. Innocently, she nodded her head and stretched her hand out to grab the omelet plate. As soon as she released her hands from the towel, I yanked the towel off and threw it far away. What are you doing? Are you crazy? She questioned in shock, trying to hide her bare legs. I looked into her legs in wonder. Fuck, they're cream in color. What made them more beautiful was the two parallel birthmarks that I spotted on her thighs. She was trying her best to cover up her legs, but I found them so sexy, and soon I could feel my little buddy starting to become larger. My hands were trembling as I craved to touch those soft, creamy legs. Hmm, I'm sure that her inner body is so soft and cream-colored from all the years of protection with her long dresses. We need to taste her. She's ours, and we need to devour her sexy body. I'm impatient until I can do that. Why are you waiting for Buddy? Claim her. She's our mate. She is a treasure which lies under the deep sea that only we can find and claim. Damon insisted, impatiently waiting to claim her. Suddenly I noticed her trying to turn away and run, but my reflexes were quicker. I grabbed her waist and pulled her back to my lap, making Damon come up to the surface. Your eyes... It's brown again. Did I make you angry? Please don't hurt me, she pleaded, her voice shaking with fear. No, mate. This is another type of feeling, I replied. As both Damon and I remained so distracted. What is he, the feeling now? She questioned, swallowing her saliva nervously. 
full lust, desire, and hunger to taste you, to claim you as ours. I blurted out directly. To calm me down, I nuzzled her neck and took a deep breath. She smelled like rose and lavender. But she started to tremble with fear, so Damon relinquished his control back to me, and I returned with my sea green eyes. Baby girl, let's have our breakfast. Sorry, I went a little bit off the track. I apologized and began feeding her as she silently ate her food. Oh, and baby girl, we're leaving New York today. I gently held the glass of fruit juice to her plump lips. Going where? Please let me go. I need to go back to my country. I swear that I won't tell anyone about you. I promise. Please let me go. She begged with her sad puppy eyes. We're going to my mansion far away from Philadelphia. And baby girl, I'm sorry, but I can't let you go. I've told you again and again, that is your home. With me. My love, you are my heartbeat. I explained despite knowing that she really wanted to escape from me. But I'll take every precaution to avoid that from happening. All of a sudden my phone rang and I saw that Stephen was calling, probably with some information about my baby girl. Hello, Alpha. I've gotten the information you need. Are you busy or should I call you back later? Stephen asked. No, I'm not busy. Just give me a minute. I replied before turning to face my angel. Angel, you go and take a rest. We'll be leaving as soon as we have our lunch. I told her, placing one hand over the phone. I didn't want her to go away, but I needed to listen to Stephen and what he had to say. Yes, go ahead, I said to Stephen as soon as she left the room. Alpha, she's the only child of the family. Her father is a retired bank officer and her mom is a housewife. She's completed her studies and she flew to America to further her studies, particularly an MBA. Stephen explained and I listened to him calmly. Since her childhood, she's been interested in space, and according to her mom, there was a time when her dream was to become an astronaut. He continued. Alpha, I must say our Luna is an absolutely different girl. I kind of like her. Stephen chuckled and I growled in response over the phone. Oops, sorry, Alpha. Okay, listen to the rest of the things I found out. Her favorite color is blue and sea green. A wide smile appeared on my face as soon as I hear the word sea green as her favorite color. That was the reason she liked looking directly into my eyes. She liked my sea green eyes. My wolf and I started to do a happy dance mentally at his words. Alpha, hello? Are you listening to me? Stephen asked. Yes, continue, I responded, focusing back on what he had to say. She needs everything to be neat and tidy, especially the bathroom and kitchen. She loves her bathroom to smell fragrant all the time and for the floor to always be dry. Her mom said that she always looked forward to having her own home and decorating it with white paint, along with blue and white curtains, Stephen narrated. When Stephen listed everything he found out, I started listening carefully, mentally registered them in my brain. I paid attention to every small detail about her, so that I could keep her happy all the time. Stephen kept on listing a lot of information about her likes and dislikes. Finally, I thanked my gamma and requested him to come back to America before ending the call. Oh, baby girl, I'm going to give you lots and lots of surprises. I'm going to fulfill all and every one of your dreams. Chapter 15 His Territory Xenia's POV I sat on the edge of the bed, packing my belongings as my mind ran with various thoughts. I was extremely confused with everything that was happening around me. Nevertheless, I was still determined to escape. As soon as I get a chance, I'm going to run away from this creepy person. But to escape successfully, I needed to act like there was nothing wrong and be an obedient kidnappee. That was the reason I was packing up my things submissively and with no fuss, or else I was also someone who could be a rebel. Unfortunately, I knew I couldn't misbehave. 
After all, he was a wolf. He could rip me into tiny pieces, and with my petite body, I am sure that it will only take seconds for him to finish me up. Soon my bags were packed, and I realized that I had to get on a flight, much to my discomfort. Just thinking about the flight takeoff and landing made goosebumps appear all over my body. Probably my fear of flying is due to my lack of flying experience. What time are we leaving for the airport? I asked Grayson during lunch. Regrettably, he still refused to allow me to sit on my own chair, but insisted I sit on his lap as he fed me. What kind of punishment is this? We're leaving as soon as we're done with lunch, baby girl. Why do you ask? Do you want to rest first? If so, I can inform my pilot to wait for us, he said as he fed me a spoonful of food. What do you mean by your pilot? I demanded, a frown forming on my forehead. Did he throw his money away and purchase a pilot or what? Baby girl, we're flying in my private jet. He chuckled as if what he said wasn't a big deal for him. What? You have a private jet? And a pilot? If so, why did you fly from Philadelphia to New York in a common flight? That was how you came, I presume. I looked into his eyes, blinking rapidly at his previous surprising response. Oh, that was because my pilot's mate was delivering their first pup, so I didn't want to disturb him. I believe that his mate deserved to have him there when she delivers their pup and to give her emotional support. He explained before taking a sip of water. I thought deeply about his words, the way he thought about things. Despite firmly not wanting to accept him, I couldn't help but feel impressed at his thinking pattern. Trust me, my angel. I have thanked the moon goddess a thousand times for giving me that opportunity to travel in a common flight. If I didn't get on that flight, I would probably die as a bachelor. And believe me, girls wouldn't have liked that. Grayson winked at me. His every word laced with possessiveness as held on tightly to me, like I was the treasure he had found. Eventually, we finished having our lunch and prepared to check out of the hotel. I wonder where his warriors are. Usually, they're always near. Anyway, we got into an SUV and drove to the airport. As usual, before I could get down from the vehicle, Grayson was already standing beside me, taking my hand to help me down. How does he do that so fast? His speed is unbelievable. Ignoring his behavior, I shook the thought out of my head and followed him as he led us to his private jet. The pilot welcomed both of us, bowing himself before us. The minute we approached the plane, this bowing down habit is really making me uncomfortable. Luna, it's a pleasure to meet you. My name's Jack and I'm your pilot. If you don't mind, I must say that the elf is very lucky to have you. Enjoy your flight he conveyed before bowing down again, making my muscles tense with discomfort. Jack, please call me Xenia. I prefer my name, not Luna, I said to him politely with a small smile making him respond with a baffled look. Don't worry, Jack. She'll get used to it with time, Grayson said in an apologetic tone before he took my hand, leading me inside the jet. My eyes almost bulged out of my head at the sight of the inside of his jet. I looked around in awe. My jaw dropped and my breath hitched in my throat. I had never been on neither flown in a private jet before. The interior was well decorated in white and gold, making it look very luxurious. Damn, Grayson is truly a billionaire. While Grayson was talking to Jack, I took a seat on the comfortable leather chair still admiring my surroundings. Soon, Grayson joined me, taking a seat in the chair next to me. Sunshine, come to my lap. He patted his lap as if he was inviting a small kid to sit on his lap. I'm not a kid who needs to sit and travel on someone's lap, okay? I rolled my eyes at him. Yep, you are my kid, my baby girl. I want you to travel on my lap. He teased me with a sly smirk. No. Never. Are you crazy? 
Why do you need me to sit on your lap every time? You are a psycho, mister, I blurted out before turning away to look out of my window. Excuse me, sir. Ma'am, good afternoon. My name's Aleska and I'm your air hostess for the journey. If you need anything, please press the bell and I will be happy to serve you. She offered with a small bow and a kind smile. Hi, Aleska. Can we have some champagne? Grayson asked her. Sure, sir. I'll bring it immediately with two glasses. Aleska nodded and disappeared towards the back of the jet. So, baby girl, where were we? Ah, yes, traveling on my lap. Angel, to be honest, I like having skin-to-skin -to -skin touch with you. That's just the nature of our wolves. We will do anything for our mates. Please try to understand, my love, Grayson pleaded. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Everything has been cleared for our flight. Please fasten your seatbelts. The flight is going to take off soon. Thank you and have a pleasant flight, Jack announced to the speakers before the plane hummed to life. Oh no, this is the toughest part. I quickly locked in my seatbelt and tightly gripped the armrest of the seats, closing my eyes tightly. Grayson's POV I saw Xenia tightly squeezing the armrest of the seats, her eyes forced to shut as she mumbled something to herself. I knew that she was afraid of takeoff because of her lack of flight experience. Sunshine, please come to my lab. I know that you're afraid of the takeoff, I requested her. No, I would rather die than travel on your lap, she snapped, her voice firm with determination. As soon as the word death reached my ears, both Damon and I became restless and angry. Angel, don't make me angry. Now come to my lap like a good girl and I will ease your pain. I warned, removed the armrest between us. No, don't you dare try to touch me. Put it back down, she demanded, trying to put down the armrest. Fine. If you're stubborn, then I am not going to give up so easily. Oh, dear mate. You underestimate me. The Alpha never backs down. Sunshine, I swear to the goddess, if you don't come and sit on my lap right now, I'm going to kiss you so hard. And when that happens, I won't be able to control myself. And I'll end up taking you to the room. I don't think that I need to explain to you what happens after that. Trust me, I would love that. So if you want to be stubborn, fine. Go ahead. I'd like to see what happens. I explained in detail with my alpha voice, making her look at me with her big moist eyes and dreadful face. I removed the armrest and took her to my lap without any protest from her. I held on to her tightly, kissing her head and patting her back. I could feel her light sobs echoing in front of my chest as her shoulders started trembling. So I assumed that she was secretly crying. I realized that she must have been terrified in my words but I was never going to do anything to her without her will. I promised that to both her and myself. I just told her that because I knew that she won't back down without a fight, and I wanted to protect her from her fear of flying. Shh, please, baby girl. Don't cry. I said all that for your own good. I know that you're afraid of the takeoff and landing. I stroked her hair lovingly. Can I go back to my seat now? She requested softly in almost a whisper. No. Until we reach our mansion, you are going to travel on my lap. I declared firmly yet delicately. She nodded her head obediently and leaned against my chest. After a few minutes, I started to hear a soft snore. I looked down to see her sleeping peacefully in my arms. That's good. At least the landing won't be a pain for her. I kissed her forehead and the top of her head from time to time, as if assuring her that I was still around with her and that she was not alone. Eventually, the air hostess brought me the champagne, and I had two glasses, basking in the presence of my love in my arms. She was still asleep when the time came to get off the plane. She must be so tired. So instead of waking her up, I carried her in my arms to the car. Two of my warriors and my beta came to the airport to pick us up. Good evening, Alpha, 
Stephen told me that you found our Luna. I can see that she's sleeping like a baby in your arms. Cade, my beta, teased me with a smile. Ah, yes, she's sleeping. How's the pack, Cade? I asked while getting to the car. Everything's fine, Alpha. Everyone is impatiently waiting to see and meet our Luna. Kate exclaimed excitedly. We sat quietly in the car and headed straight to my mansion. She was still sleeping soundly in my arms like a baby. That's why I call her my baby girl. I loved the way she was cuddling up to me as she slept. She would have never done such a thing if she was awake and in her senses. As we approached the mansion, she started to yawn and get up from her slumber. Look at how cute she is. I slowly placed her down on the seat as we reached the mansion. Xenia's POV I opened my eyes and realized that we were no longer on the plane but were already nearing the gate of Grayson's mansion. I had never seen such a huge and majestic mansion in my entire life, except in movies. His mansion was located in the middle of the forest with no other houses around, and I presume no humans around too. Great. I'm going to be the only human around and there is probably no one around for miles. I'm going to left alone with the wolves. The mansion's compound was so big that it took more than a five-minute drive to get from the main gate to the main entrance of the mansion itself. Eventually, the car stopped at the main door and a man dressed in a full suit approached to open our door. He opened the door for Grayson, who then came over to my side and opened my door, taking my hand in his. As I was getting down from the car, I noticed that there were two other people in the vehicle. Luna, I'm Kate, the beta of the pack, he announced, bowing down before me. Hi, Kate. I'm Xenia. Don't call me Luna. I blurted out and I saw his head shake slightly in surprise. Oh, Kate, we'll talk later. Let's go inside, Grayson said, and we entered his home. Good evening, Alpha and Luna. Luna, we welcome you to the mansion. A lady in her mid-fifties bowed before us, before smiling sweetly. She had a pleasant look, and she wore a simple yet neat dress. Despite the way she addressed me, I flashed her a small smile. Slowly, my eyes started roaming, admiring the interior of the mansion. The floor was made out of spectacular mahogany, and the white-painted walls gave it a modern twist. Soon I realized that his living room alone was larger than my house back in Sri Lanka. Shall we go inside, baby girl? Grayson took my hand and led me to the elevator. He pressed the button for the fourth floor. I can't believe that the mansion has an elevator, too. Based on the buttons displayed, there were four floors, a rooftop, and a basement car park. Just the sight of his lifestyle made me wonder the reason he wanted me as a partner when I was nothing compared to him. Is he going to sacrifice me for some kind of ritual? Baby girl, I'll give you a tour of the mansion later. For now, you can rest in our bedroom, Grayson said as soon as we arrived on the fourth floor. We stepped out of the elevator and he led me to a giant mahogany double door. But instead of opening it, he moved to the side and a small machine scanned his eye before a beeping sound was heard. Great. Just great. The door only opens by scanning his eye? Now how will I escape from here? This is our bedroom, Angel. Grayson pushed open the double doors and stepped into the gigantic bedroom. Excuse me? Hours? What do you mean by hours? I asked. My eyebrow arched at him as my arms folded automatically in front of my chest. Well, this bedroom belongs to me and you. No one will disturb us here. Grayson teased with a smirk on his face. I am not going to stay in the same room as you. Just give me another room. A small one is more than enough for me. I replied, this time moving my hands to my hips, almost commandingly. Baby girl, you are my equal, so you're going to stay where I'm staying. There is no debating about it. We're going to be living in the same room and sleeping on the same bed. Grayson persisted, much to my annoyance. 
Ignoring his, I took a glance around the room. It was an enormous room and the curtains were white and brown. Within the room was also a personal swimming pool, which probably was not deeper than three feet. It was the first time that I ever saw a pool inside a bedroom. My eyes soon fell on the walk-in closet and my feet automatically carried me there. Everything inside was neatly folded and separated accordingly. Surprisingly, there was a huge collection of my clothes also arranged together. Casual dresses, t-shirts, jeans, skirts, shoes, sandals, slippers, undergarments, everything was there. I just looked at them in shock with my mouth agape. Baby girl, you take a shower and rest. I'll show you the mansion later, Grayson advised before heading towards the door. Oh, and one more thing. The room is soundproof. No one is going to hear you scream my name. He winked at me as a naughty smile crept to his lips before disappearing behind the closed door. You pervert man! Brushing off his annoying remark, I entered the bathroom. The bathroom was not secondary to the other parts of the mansion. It was gigantic and so spacious. Oh God, I love this bathroom. It was extremely clean. It smelled amazing and the floor was dry. On the counters, there were many branded shampoos, conditioners, shower gel, body lotions, and other usual bath products. In the corner of the bathroom was a huge bathtub and surrounding was scented candles, bath salts, and bubble solutions. Whatever luxury he has, I don't care. I'm still going to definitely find a way and escape from here. Chapter 16 Welcome, Luna. Xenia's POV The warm bath I had washed my hole over with relief and comfort. It made me feel better since I was starting to feel tired due to the aches in my thighs and lower abdomen, possibly due to the change of weather. I wasn't used to the cold of winter since my homeland was a tropical country. Grayson entered the room as soon as I sat on the bed, his face lighting up with a smile. How could a man be so handsome? Even more so with those sea-green eyes. I'm certain every girl who lays eyes on him would fall for him. Who wouldn't? He's like a life sculpture of a Greek god. Checking me out, sunshine? He asked slyly, his husky voice throwing my chain of thoughts out the window. In your dreams, mister, I denied, shaking my head intensely at his question. Let's go, baby girl. I want to give you a tour of the mansion and introduce you to the others, Grayson stated, turning to head towards the door. Why did you purchase so many clothes for me? You're just uselessly spending your money, I demanded. There is no way that I'm going to stay here for that long. You are my queen. You have every right on my every penny. Plus, if I don't spend my money on you and for you, then who should I spend it on? Grayson countered, lifting my hands to his lips and kissing it softly. Grayson led me towards a long corridor and I couldn't help notice the expensive pictures hung up on the walls. But while I was busy observing my surroundings, I caught Grayson looking at me from the corner of my eye. Doesn't he ever get fed up looking at me? Anyway, I ignored him and soon we stepped outside on a balcony. From the balcony, I could see nothing but an unending forest for miles. There were indeed no other homes nor humans anywhere. How could someone live in a deserted area without other people? No wonder they're wolves. After a little while, Grayson guided me to the elevator and we rode it down to his garden. It was a huge landscape much like a public botanical garden. The scent of the flowers and their beauty calmed my worries as well as the tornado in my mind. Do you have any vegetable plots in the garden other than flowers? I questioned, looking around curiously. No, baby girl. There are only flowers. Why do you ask? Do you like to grow vegetables? He replied, his eyes shining with excitement. Yes, I like planting vegetables more than flowers, I expressed as my mind drifted to the side of my garden back home. I don't know whether Mom is watering my plants. I hope she'll look after them. 
Alpha and Luna. Good evening. A man in his mid-fifties bowed before us. Good evening, Alfred. Meet your Luna. Grayson extended his hand towards me. Good evening, Luna. It's a pleasure to finally meet you. Alpha was desperately waiting for you. I'm Alfred, your gardener. He introduced, bowing before me submissively. Oh no, not again. No more bows, please. Call me Xenia. I don't like to be referred to as Luna. Oh, and also there's no need to bow. You're elder to me. You can bow to your alpha if you want, but please, not to me. I smiled at him sweetly. Alfred just looked between me and Grayson repetitively, his face scrunched up in confusion, much like the others. Alfred, we'll talk about it later, okay? You may continue your work. Grayson instructed before we continued walking around his garden. Um, can I make a call to my mom, please? I requested Grayson with a calm and pleading tone. Sure, Angel. He passed my phone to me without hesitation. I quickly dialed their number and talked to them. They were glad to hear my voice and I was relieved that they were doing fine. Thank you. By the way, where are your parents? I asked Grayson as I returned my phone to him. They're at the pack house. While I was away, they went to help Cade with the pack duties. Grayson explained before he bent down to pluck a yellow rose. Baby girl, this is for you. I know this flower is not as beautiful as you, but still, please accept this. He offered, his voice soft as if he were pleading. I looked at his soft gaze and accepted it, taking the flower in my hands and smelling its lovely fragrance. Shall we go inside? I'm starting to feel cold here, I suggested, rubbing my hands together and looking at the slowly darkening skies. We both returned inside and I caught sight of the kitchen staff busy preparing dinner. Like impulse, I wanted to go towards them and peep at what they were preparing. I had always loved cooking western dishes. Before I could realize it, my feet began walking towards the kitchen of their own accord. Baby girl, why are you going to the kitchen? Grayson asked, his brows raised as he trailed behind me. I wanted to see the way they're cooking and if I can help them also, I explained, continuing towards the kitchen. The minute we stepped into the kitchen, the busy kitchen staff stopped all of a sudden, like they froze where they were standing. Then they bowed before me and immediately looked down to the floor. Soon, Grayson appeared behind me. It's okay, everyone. You can go back to your workstations and continue cooking. Luna's just here because she's interested in watching the food being prepared. Grayson explained with a commanding voice. Luna, welcome to the kitchen. I am Brian, the head chef. We really appreciate your visit here, but with all due respect, I request you to please rest. A slightly plump man dressed in a chef uniform advised. There's no need for that. Please, there's nothing else for me to do here. I love cooking and I just want to watch. I promise I won't disturb anyone, I pleaded. Brian, it's all right. Let her stay here, Grayson told him with a smile. And so I sat on a kitchen counter and watched them cut fresh vegetables, seafood, and meat. Everything is fresh here. I watched them in awe as they prepared everything needed for a perfect meal. Soups, salads, main courses, and desserts. I wanted to ask them so many questions, but I didn't want to disturb them. Not to worry, I'll just ask them later. Baby girl, shall we go and change for the dinner? Grayson tapped me on my shoulder. Sure. I got down from the counter and we both headed to the bedroom. While Grayson was in the shower, I entered my walk-in closet to choose a simple dress for dinner. I found a blue maxi dress and changed into it. Just as I was finishing getting ready, Grayson came out from the bathroom wearing only a towel. I quickly turned around and closed my eyes as he approached behind me. Angel, you have every right to look at me, Grayson whispered with a sexy voice, his warm breath tingling my neck, causing goosebumps to appear on my skin. Can you please wear some clothes? I demanded without turning around. 
He laughed and moved away to change into a casual T-shirt and a simple pair of jeans. We both went down and the table was already arranged nicely with candles. They made a special dinner since it's your first night in the mansion, Grayson informed, his lips curling into a bright smile. We all sat at a large table and stewards started serving us. They even poured wine into our glasses, tending to our every request. Everyone raise your glass and welcome Luna, Grayson announced, raising his wine glass high. Welcome to our pack, Luna. May you both be blessed with all the blessings of the moon goddess. Everyone wished and sipped their wine. They're welcoming me to their pack, but only I know that I'm planning to escape as soon as possible. We finished our dinner and I thanked the kitchen staff before wishing them good night. Eventually, we returned to our room and I fell asleep almost instantly. I don't know why I feel really tired and exhausted today. Chapter 17 We Get Menstrual Cycle Grayson's POV I smell blood. It's her blood. My mind was troubled at the smell of her blood. Both Damon and I were so confused and troubled. I woke up immediately and looked at her fragile body. She was still sleeping soundly sleeping. I looked at the clock to see that it was 6 a.m. With the scent of her blood still clouding my mind, I removed the duvet. The dreadful sight before me startled my mind and soul. The lower part of her body and the bed sheets had blood spots, as well as the boxers that she was wearing as well. I got terrified and was so puzzled about what I should do. Is this a dream? I wiped my eyes repetitively. No, it's real. It's not a dream. My angel still was sleeping peacefully like a baby, without any pain. Where did this blood come from? Is she hurt? We must take her to Pack Hospital immediately. Damon insisted, worried about her condition. I know, but she's sleeping without any pain. Should we wait until she wakes up? I debated in my mind with him. No, wake her up now. Look, she's covered with blood. Damon cried out impatiently. So I patted her cheek slightly a few times, calling out her name. After doing that a few times, she woke up with a yawn. Then, all of a sudden, she squeezed her lower abdomen with pain and looked inside the duvet. I saw her eyes enlarge with horror before pulling the duvet to cover her whole body. Baby girl, what is it? Are you hurt? Why is there blood all over your lower body parts? Are you in pain? Tell me, my angel, I'm so worried. I said, taking her hand into my hand. It's nothing. It's none of your business. Just go. I'll clean these bed sheets. Also, I'm sorry for creating a mess on your bed sheets, she muttered sadly. Baby girl, I don't understand. Tell me, are you hurt? Where did all this blood come from? Why are you acting like you know why this blood is on your clothes? I demanded as I tried to remove the duvet. It's not your problem. Please, just go away from here. I need to clean myself. Oh, and can you please bring my luggage here? It has the necessary things I need right now at this moment she requested, holding the duvet tightly towards her as she tried to hide it from me. I'm not going to ask you again, Rose Petal. Tell me, what is the meaning of this blood and where did it come from? I commanded with a firm voice, looking into her eyes directly. I'm sure by my tone she knows that I'm impatient to find out what's wrong. This is something related to human ladies. I can't share with you these things. It's personal. It's ladies' talk and not men's. So please try to understand, she pleaded with her puppy dog eyes. Fine. If you're not going to share with me what's going on, I'm not going to move from here for the entire day until you tell me the story behind this blood. I flashed her a stubborn look, folding my arms in front of my chest. Okay, I'll tell you later, but for now, can you please move out from the room? I need to clean these things. She pulled the duvet further onto herself. I removed the quilt with a speed she didn't expect and turned to see her looking at me with her big doe eyes. I slowly started to move towards her and she started to moving back until her back was pressed against the headboard. Baby girl, I'm going to ask you nicely for the last time. Tell me why is this blood here? 
I looked into her eyes with our faces our few centimeters away before she bit her lips nervously. Okay, fine. It's called the menstrual cycle. It's a human ladies thing. I don't know whether your female population has it or not, but it is common among every human female. Every woman in their reproductive age faces this situation every month. There you go. That's enough. Now please go. I need to clean myself. She insisted, pushing me away. So this is something related to your reproductive system. Tell me more. I need to know more. Each and every detail. I probed her, moving forward towards her with curiosity. She looked at me in shock, her eyebrow arching and her jaw dropped. Did I say something wrong? What, are you crazy? Don't you feel disgusted with this dirty blood? Plus, why should I tell you? This is a female thing. She sighed deeply. Baby girl, let me tell you one thing clearly. You are not disgusting to me. Anything related to you is not disgusting to me. Even if I have to lick your body and wounds, I'll do it with pleasure. It's because I love you so much and this love grows day by day, my angel. Now please tell me. I kissed her forehead and back of her palm. A surprise overcame her. After we reach a certain age where our body can bear a baby, naturally the fertile egg starts releasing from our ovary to the fallopian tube. If that egg didn't meet any sperm and create a baby, it goes to waste together with the wall of the womb and they start to bleed. This happens every 28 days to 35 days. It depends on the mental and physical fitness of a woman. If she gets pregnant, this cycle temporarily stops. And when we come to age 45 or 50, this cycle permanently stops. As for bleeding pain, it's different from one to another. Some can live with it very comfortably and some not, like in my case. I hate this cycle and this pain. It makes me feel disgusted about myself. The first two days have a heavy blood flow. Until the bleeding stops, we have to use sanitary napkins. That's why I'm asking you for my luggage as it has my medicine and napkins. There, the science lesson is now over. Please go. I need to clean myself and change these bed sheets. She explained in detail before starting to get down from the bed. I quickly took her to my arms in a bridal style, startling her as her breath hitched in her throat in sudden surprise. Baby girl, listen to me very carefully. From now onwards, I will clean your every bloodstain when your menstrual cycle starts every month. I promised. I took her to the bathroom and placed her on the bathroom counter. I started to fill the bathtub with warm water so that her body will relax and her lower abdomen pain will reduce. When the tub filled up, I started to remove her shirt buttons, but she held on to it tightly. I realized that it was still too soon for me to remove her clothes by myself. Baby girl, after the tub is filled, you can have a bath. I'll change the bed sheets and keep your clothes on the bed together with your medicines and napkins too. I'll go to the kitchen and instruct them to prepare breakfast. I patted her head and exited the bathroom. I headed to the guest room and had a shower there before changing into fresh clothes. Then I returned to our room and changed the bed sheets. I gave those dirty sheets to Omega and asked her to wash them properly. After that, I took her medicines and sanitary napkins, placing them on the bed. I even started to search on the internet for everything related to the menstrual cycle. Eventually, I went down to the kitchen. They bowed before me and wished me good morning. I instructed the chef to prepare some comfort food that would help her make her menstrual cycle more comfortable. Anything from my poor angel. Xenia's POV My mind started running with questions as the tub started filling with water. What kind of a man is he? Doesn't he feel disgusted with my impure blood? Even I feel like I stink and am disgusted about myself. How could he say that he will change those bloody sheets? Does he really love me? Soon I saw the tub was filled and I turned off the tap before slowly getting into it. I moaned with enjoyment as soon as the warm water touched my body. I sat inside the tub, leaned my body backward and closed my eyes. All of a sudden I heard a knock on the door. I knew that it was Grace and worried about me. I was enjoying myself so much that I didn't even know how long I was lying in the tub. 
I requested him to give me a few minutes and he complied. Eventually, I got out of the tub, had a shower, and wrapped a towel around my body. I peeped through the door carefully and saw that Grayson wasn't around. I hurriedly exited the bathroom and changed into my clothes. My eyes scanned the bed and realized that he had indeed changed the bed sheets like he said he would. Wow, he's really a man of his word. I rode the elevator down and headed to the kitchen. The minute I got close enough, my nostrils started to fill with the mouth-watering aroma of the food. I'm so hungry. Then the minute I enter the kitchen, my eyes fall on Grayson, who was walking towards me. Shall we have breakfast, baby girl? He asked me, and I nodded my head in response. Without saying a single word further, he took me to his lap and started to feed me. Angel, after breakfast we'll go shopping, he suddenly blurted out, lifting up the glass of fruit juice to my lips. Wait, for what? You already bought enough clothes for me, I told him persistently, sipping on the juice. But I didn't buy female products and medicine for you, Grayson said, his voice slightly apologetic. I nodded my head obediently because I knew that arguing with him was futile and I couldn't change his mind once it's made up. Chapter 18 Date? And what is that? Xenia's POV It was 11 a.m. and Grace had insisted we do some shopping. Unfortunately, no matter how many times I refused, he was so stubborn to go buy the necessary things I needed for my time of the month. So we got into the car and headed to town where Grayson owned the biggest shopping mall in Philadelphia. Frankly, I was excited to go to the town because it was where I was supposed to attend my university. I was determined to have a discussion with him about doing my MBA, but Grayson looked busy on his phone with his business tasks. Grayson, if you're not too busy, can I talk to you about something? I asked politely as soon as he finished with a call. Sure, my angel, I have enough time for you, Grayson said, turning his attention to me. I really need to attend university. Please, I came here to do my higher studies. I would love to continue my studies. Please, I'll do anything you want. I'm begging you. I pleaded, my eyes close to tears. Are you sure that you'll do anything I ask for? Grayson questions, his lips curling into a sly smirk. Yes, I'll do as you say, I promised naively. Anything, huh? Grayson smiled as he tapped his chin, deep in thought. What is he thinking about? Will he ask me something that I can't give? By anything, I mean you can ask me for something I can give, I clarified in a touch, formal voice. Of course, only you can give me this, Grayson whispered, taking off his seatbelt and moving towards me. Terrified, I slowly started backing away towards the car door. I could see Cade giggling to himself as he drove the car, amused by our antics. This man has no shame. There is another person in the vehicle, and still he's acting like a possessive person. With nowhere left to run, I was cornered to the vehicle door as he looked at me. I quickly looked down, but I could still his laser eyes burning holes in my face. Grayson got closer and I turned away in fear. My breathing accelerated. Will you come with me on a romantic date? Grayson whispered in my ear teasingly, making goosebumps rise over my body. I quickly turned to face him. Date? What's a date? You promise to do anything I ask so that you can attend university, Grayson reminded. Okay, fine, but what do you mean by a date? I asked him, completely oblivious to the concept of a date. You'll find out, Angel. If you want to attend university, you need to cooperate with me by joining me for a date. That's it, he explained, his eyebrows arched mischievously. All right, I'll come with you, but please let me continue my studies, I begged, slowly pushing him back. Alpha, we've reached the shopping mall, Kate announced, looking at us through the rear mirror. All three of us got down and entered the mall. Cade went to do some shopping for his maid while Grayson led the way to buy the necessary things for my monthly visits. Baby girl, what kind of napkins do you want? And what medicines do you need? 
Grayson probed me persistently as we entered a pharmacy. Can you please wait outside until I buy things I need? It's a female issue and... Angel, please don't keep saying that it's a female issue. I already told you that I have every right over you. So please stop arguing with me. Grayson snapped back with a serious tone before we approached the pharmacist. Baby girl, tell her your requirements. He pointed to the pharmacist with a smile. I need napkins with wings for heavy flow for first two days. Special napkins to wear at night and for regular flow, too. I listed out to the female pharmacist. Make sure they're all the best branded and most comfortable napkins. Grayson insisted commandingly. Sure, sir. The pharmacist quickly excused herself and went to pick out the necessary things. After a while, she returned with a few packets and packed them neatly in a bag. I also want some painkillers, but I don't know the brands. I told her as I looked through the bag she packed. She brought the medicines I asked for and even instructed me on the way to take them. Satisfied, we both exited the shop and returned to the car park. Grayson's closed his eyes for a few seconds and after a while, Kate came out of the make with a few bags. Was he talking to Kate in his mind? Are we good to go, lovebirds? Kate asked us with a giggle. Do I look like a lovebird to you, Kate? What I am is a bird stuck in a cage. I lashed out angrily. I'm sorry, Luna. I was just kidding. Kate apologized, bowing his head repetitively. Come on, don't bow before me for everything. It makes me feel awkward. You can bow before your alpha if you want, but not me, please. I straightened up my back confidently and got into the car. A long ride later, we were back at the mansion and I immediately went up to the bedroom. I was exhausted due to my monthly chumps, so I just laid on the bed with my eyes closed. I was about to fall asleep when suddenly someone knocked on the door. Come in, I said, getting up from the bed. A young adult girl with blonde hair entered the room. Luna, good afternoon. My name is Sophie and I'm an Omega of the pack. Alpha sent me to ask if you need anything and he told me to give this bowl of watermelon. She held the bowl of watermelon tightly in her hands and kept her head bowed down, approaching me slowly. Will you please look at me and talk like a normal girl to me? I requested her. Pardon me, Luna, I can't do that. We're of the low caste. If anyone sees or hears that I talk to Luna while looking at her face, the Alpha will kill me. Sophie explained softly. What if your Alpha asks you to do so? I asked her cunningly, folding my arms in front of my chest. If so, then I will be able to do so, Luna. She replied, her eyes glued to the floor. Fine, I'll talk with the Alpha about that. But first, I need to ask you something. I approached her, my mind boggled with a single question. Yes, Luna, anything, Sophie responded, her hand still holding out the bowl of watermelon. What's a romantic date? I asked her before taking the bowl from her hand and sitting on the bed. Luna, I think I'm not in a position to explain you about that, she clarified, her body still bowing down before me. Please. There's no one who likes to speak with me here. Everyone is in fear of your alpha. They keep bowing their head and not looking at my face. I complained before shoving a piece of watermelon into my mouth. Mmm, this is amazing. Wow, I need to have this entire bowl. Mmm. I cried out with joy, the sweet watermelon melting in my mouth. Luna, your actions are really cute. Sophie giggled. So, tell me, what is a date? I demanded once again, eager to fix this annoying question in my head. Luna, a date means showing romantic feelings for each other, like the feelings a girl and boy have for each other. Sophie explained. What? Are you sure? I bit my fingernails, my mind racing with new thoughts. Yes, Luna. I know this because my maid used to take me on romantic dates when we were dating. Sophie continued. What do people do on a date? I questioned, curious to learn every detail about this new concept that I was not familiar with. Luna, they do all kinds of romantic things. They show their care for each other through gifts, kissing, and sometimes sex too, Sophie said, 
making me gulp in fear at her words. Why did I agree with him to do this? He knew that I'll do anything to attend the university. Did he mean sex? Now what should I do to avoid this? Think, Senya, think. What if he forces me to have sex with him? Oh, Senya, you're in big trouble. Chapter 19 Meeting the Pack Xenia's POV I still didn't know why I agreed to go on a date with Grayson. I didn't know anything about it since I had never dated anyone previously. But most importantly, I was desperately hoping that Grayson wouldn't do any unwanted thing to me forcefully, without my will. He promised me that he will not do anything until I beg him to do so. Will he keep his promise? Grayson's POV The next day, I asked Xenia to get ready so that we could meet the pack, my Redwood Warrior pack. My mom and dad were waiting to see their daughter-in-law while the rest of the pack were impatient to see their future Luna. Baby girl, are you ready to go? I asked and glanced at my watch. It showed that it was 9.15 in the morning. My angel walked out of the closet in a blue and white floral dress. She had just applied lip balm and lip gloss on her lips. I watched with awe as she pressed her pink, plump lips together. You are really beautiful, my angel. Just like a fresh rose that blooms in the morning. I tucked a loose strand of her hair behind her ear. I'm sure that my mom will go crazy after seeing you. She always wanted my maid to be as beautiful as an angel, I expressed, taking her hand in mine. Do I really need to meet your pack? She suddenly asked, her voice soft and unsure. Yes, baby girl. They're all impatiently waiting for you to come. Trust me, they're gonna love you. Many of them already started mind-linking me since early in the morning, asking when they would get to see their Luna. I reassured her, knowing well that she felt uncomfortable and that it was all something new to her. Before things go further, I would like to say something to you. Look, I'm a human and you're not. I know that as the Alpha, you have a huge responsibility to care for your pack, think about the pack's future, and do what's best for them. I know that you needed a partner to carry on your Alpha bloodline to strengthen your pack's lineage, right? Xenia spoke convincingly, but all I could do was stare at her with a blank expression. I don't have any plans to start a family or have kids. All the plans I made for my future were designed for me as a single person. Suppose if we got married and if I was not ready to have kids, what will happen to you and your pack? Okay, how about this? Let's say we have kids anyhow. Will they be strong enough to hold an alpha title? Will they be fully wolves? I mean, I'm human and you're a wolf, so they will be half wolves, right? Think about my question with your brain, not your heart, she explained, trying to convince me, but I felt that she just wanted it all to end so that she could go back to her previous life. I listened to her very carefully. Her words made me angry. But I knew that I couldn't show it since it will scare her. I sighed deeply and ran my hand through my hair. Sunshine. Listen to me very carefully. Whatever you say or whatever you do, my decision about having you is not going to change. You will be mine and only mine, forever. You better keep that fact embedded in your brain, Angel. I know you're trying to convince me, but don't worry, my decision is finalized. So, shall we go now? I extended my hand towards her invitingly with a smirk. I watched as she stared at me, her jaw locked and her teeth clenched tightly. She didn't like my answer, but that was the truth. There's no need to ask my permission, right? After all, you're the Alpha. Why would my opinion be important? Xenia yelled out furiously and stomped her way to the car. Instead of getting frustrated, her burst of anger somehow made me smile as I watched her walk away. 
Three dark purple Range Rovers were parked outside the main door. I took her hand and got into the middle one, while Cade got into the first car, and few warriors got into the third. As soon as I got into the car, I carried Xenia and placed her on my lap. What are you doing? Just put me back on the seat. Xenia struggled to get off my lap. Oh, my angel, you sure are stubborn. But I'm not going to be second to you. I can be stubborn, too. And in comparison to my strength, your efforts won't help you. Baby girl, please don't struggle. Don't you feel the warmth of my touch on your skin? Why are you so stubborn to accept my love for you? Both my wolf and I are crazy for you. The whole you. I whispered into her ear before nuzzling her neck. I wanted to kiss her neck, the marking spot. But I didn't want to do it now. I knew that if I do so, I won't be able to control himself nor Damon. Soon, Xenia stopped struggling. She knew that it was useless to fight with me. But based on her actions, I knew she was extremely nervous. How long will it take to travel to your pack house? Will they be kind to me or will they eat me? She blurted out in fear, her palms moist with sweat. Baby girl, relax. No one is going to harm you. I am there. My beta and gamma, Stephen, will be there. No one will be able to lay a single finger on you. I assured her, drawing comforting circles on her back to calm her down. Xenia's POV From the main road, they took a turn to inside the woods where once again, there was nothing but trees for miles. No human beings or even a fly around. After about 20 minutes, we reached the pack house. It was a huge building with multiple floors. Surprisingly, Grayson asked me to stay in the car, but he got down. From the car window, I could see a crowd of almost 500 people waiting. When Grayson went inside the house, Kate popped in and asked me to relax. He explained that Grayson had gone inside to check if everything was ready. I feel Kate is a good person, but who knows? There's a creature inside each of them. Baby girl, come, let's go. Grayson opened the car door and took my hand. I can't go. Please try to understand. They're all wolves and they'll eat me alive as soon as I get down from the car. Please just let me go. I begged, my eyes burning with tears. I couldn't face them. I couldn't handle my nervousness. My heart was thumping like a horse running on a race course. I'm scared to go to them. Why does this man not understand that? I tried to pull my hand away from Grayson, but he didn't allow me to let my hand go. Angel, they love you. I asked them not to come because I know that you were scared. But I can't control their willingness and excitement to see their Luna. I know this is all new to you and terrifying. But baby girl, you don't understand how desperate we all are to have a Luna. The number of years we all had to wait for this to happen. Please, my love, just trust me. Grayson pleaded kindly. Sighing deeply, I took his hand and got down from the vehicle. All their eyes were set on me. When we both started to walk towards them, they all bowed down and sat on their knees. Why do they have to bow all the time? I tightly held on to Grayson's hand as he walked next to me with a smile. People were bowing before us and standing on both sides, creating a path for us to walk. They all looked at me with a smile, welcoming me. Then, from afar, I saw a middle-aged couple waiting at the main entrance, their faces bright with smiles. The man had extremely similar features and the same physique as Grayson, while the lady seemed nice and kind. I think they're Grayson's parents. I hope they'll reject me so I can run away from this mess. My darling, you're gorgeous. I can see how lucky my son is. Welcome to Redwood Warriors Pack, my love. She hugged me at foot of the staircase leading to the main door. Huh? Oh, God, no! What's happening? Why are they not rejecting me? 
Sweetheart, what's your name? The gentleman asked, his voice laced with care and compassion. Um, it's Senya, I answered. Angel, this is my parents, the former Alpha and Luna of the pack, Robert Alfred Lockwood and Eva Watson Lockwood. Grayson introduced before giving them each a big hug, and surprisingly, they hugged me too. Oh, I I'm sorry, sir, ma'am. I didn't know that. I apologized, bowing before them in respect. What are you doing, sweetheart? You're our family. Call me mom and this is your dad. Or you can call us by our names until your marriage happens. Mrs. Lockwood advised with a big, friendly smile. Oh, no, no. What marriage? This family's running behind me for marriage and mate things all the time. I am trapped like a rabbit for their dinner. Do something, Zenya, and run away from these crazy wolves. I gave them a forced smile and followed them inside. The pack house was a huge building with countless rooms are here. I think they all live together in this house, like a big family. Hey, Luna and Alpha. It's great to see you. Stephen approached us with a white rose basket and handed it to me, his lips smiling widely. A small gift for our precious Luna. Welcome to the Redwood Pack, he declared and bowed before me. The spowing habit is really irritating me as well as the fact that they keep calling me Luna every time. We entered a huge hall, probably their conference hall, to see it decorated attractively with hundreds of roses of multiple colors. The sweet fragrance of the roses immediately calmed my nerves. Come, Angel, let's go on the stage. Grayson took my hand and we climbed up onto the stage with his parents. Good afternoon, everyone, Grayson announced with his alpha voice. And immediately the entire hall became silent. A pin drop silence, to be exact. Thank you, my pack, for coming here today and for all the hard work which you have done to welcome your Luna. Grayson continued, his voice still radiating authority. I'm not going to speak further, but instead introduce someone special to you. Everyone, meet my maid and your future Luna, Grayson declared pulling me forward gently and placing his arm around my lower back. Long live our Luna! They all shouted at once, making me tremble with fear and at their sudden voices. Angel, are you okay? I can feel that you're shivering. Grayson turned me to face him and rubbed my back before kissing my forehead lovingly. I don't know why or how, but the simple action that he does every time was always enough to calm me down. Is this what he meant by the mate bond? All of you can now join us for lunch. Oh, and one more thing. If any of you do anything or even say anything that hurts your Luna, I'll forget that you belong to my pack and my wolf will not hesitate to shred you into pieces. Grayson threatened with a possessive tone and the crowd became numb at the sight of their possessive alpha. Angel, shall we go for lunch? Grayson asked me, placing his hand around my waist and pulling me close to him. I followed him and we all sat at the table. Both Mr. and Mrs. Lockwood sat with us at the table. Then I saw Kate approaching with a young lady. She was a beautiful girl who must be almost my age. Both of them came to me and bowed before me. Luna, meet my mate, Caitlin. Kate introduced with a proud smile. It's a pleasure to meet you, Luna. This is a small gift from us to you, Caitlin wished, her eyes still looking down as she passed me the bag. Thank you. Call me Xenia. I prefer my name. I expressed, trying to shake her hand. Huh? I'm sorry, Luna, but we can't call you by your name. She admitted softly. From the corner of my eye, I could see Grayson looking at me, his eyes angry. You two can join us for the lunch, Grayson told Cade, much to my relief. Hey, did you forget about me? Alpha, come on. How could you do this to me? Stephen approached our table with a chuckle. 
I liked Stephen. He was a very cheerful and friendly guy, even though he was the third in command of the pack. I flashed him a smile in possessive grace and gave him a low growl. While having lunch, I started to look around, admiring my surroundings. Everyone was looking at me in awe and with a welcoming smile on their face. I smiled back at them, but then, in the corner of the hall, I saw a girl looking at me furiously, her teeth clenched tightly. Why is she the only one looking at me like that? I was intently looking at her when Grayson shook my hand and I snapped out of my thoughts. Love, Mom is saying something, Grayson whispered into my ear. Yes, Mrs. Lockwood, were you saying something? I asked her politely. I was saying that I need to see you both as husband and wife very soon, and I want to cuddle my grandchildren as soon as possible, she replied excitedly. I nearly choked on my food and coughed it out. What did she say? Grayson quickly handed me a glass of water and lightly patted my back. I could see Stephen trying hard to control his smile while Grayson shot him a death glare. Before that, Mrs. Lockwood, I have to complete my studies. That was the reason I came to America, I replied, giving her an answer straight away so that she wouldn't continue to force me. I hope. Oh, Xenia, don't worry about that. You can continue your studies even after marriage also. Xenia, your existence as Luna is very important to the pack's existence. Honey, I know this is all too much for you, but please consider it. She explained politely, giving me a small smile. Mom will talk about that later. She needs to rest now, I think. Grayson spoke on behalf of me. As soon as we both stood from our seats, everyone else stood up in respect. All of a sudden, a little girl came running to me with a gift box in her hand. She was a very pretty girl who must have been around four or five years old. She was wearing a pink lace dress, and her long hair was neatly arranged with a pink bow to adorn it. Luna, please accept this gift from me, she said while presenting her gift box to me. I bent down towards her and patted her head gently. Thank you, my sweetheart. What's your name? It's Kylie. Can I touch you, Luna? I never met a human before. She requested cutely, her dimples appearing as she smiled. Of course you can. You can touch me any time. I told her and she raised her soft hand to touch my cheeks and hair. You're so beautiful, Luna. Everyone's talking about your beauty and they all have gifts to give you. She exclaimed in glee. Kylie, honey, what are you doing? A young lady rushed towards us. Must be her mom. Forgive me, Luna. She was desperately wanting to give you this gift. She explained while bowing her head before me. It's all right. You can call me Xenia. And what's your name? I asked the lady. It's Scarlet, Luna, she answered. Okay, then, we'll talk later, Scarlet, I replied and turned to head to my room. Angel, you need to stop telling your name to everyone. You are there, Luna. Only I have the right to call you by your name. Grayson whispered in my ears, his eyebrows raised with possessiveness. After Kylie gave me her gift, Everyone started coming towards me to shower me with their gifts. I honestly can't take these gifts. I plan to run away. How can I take these things? I requested Grayson to take the gifts, but I smiled at them and gratefully thanked them. Eventually, we both went to our room. I sat on the bed and looked around the huge room in awe before getting up to go to the balcony. All of a sudden, Grayson came and hugged me from behind. Can you please stop this drama? Why are you giving hope to everyone? You know that I'm still thinking about an escape plan. And knowing that? Why are you doing this? I demanded, trying to free myself from his grip. Angel, I know that this is not a drama and they all love you. Can't you see that? 
Grayson wrapped his arm around my waist and held me against him tightly, resting his chin on my shoulder. Oh, and one more thing. Tomorrow is our date night. Don't forget that. I'll give you an unforgettable romantic date night, sunshine. He whispered in my ear and lightly bit my earlobe. I held his hand tightly at the sparks and pain that tingled within me and closed my eyes. I could feel Grace and lightly chuckling from behind me at my reaction. What will happen tomorrow? Oh, God, please save me. Chapter 20 Romantic Date 1 Grayson's POV I knew that coming to Pack House was something new to her, and that she was nervous. So that was why she tried so much to change my mind by saying all kinds of things. I made a promise to myself that I would make her mind love me, and I was certain that one day she would fall for me. Her whole body started to tremble when we both got on the stage. I was amazed to see the love the pack showed her. Most of them told me that she was so pretty and her warm heart was reflected on her face. I agreed with them completely. I was in love with her, not only because she was my mate, but because of the unique qualities that made me admire her and become attracted to her. The next day when I woke up, she was still sleeping soundly. Leaving her cozy in bed, I left for a run with Kate and Stephen. I came back after my morning to see her checking the gifts the pack members presented to her. She is so pure and clear like morning dew, which makes my day flawless. I sneaked up behind her and hugged her suddenly. She dolted up in surprise as she was so deep in thought regarding the gifts. Good morning, my sunshine. Are you busy with the gifts? I nuzzled her neck as her scent calmed me and my wolf. Our maid is so cute and priceless. Damon giggled like a pup. Something he usually never does, except in front of her. If he's like this now, I can't imagine how he would behave when we have our first time together. You scared me. She tried to wiggle out of my grip around her waist. Keep on trying, my love. I like this sweet, stubborn side of you, especially when you try to escape from my hold. Are there any gifts that you like? Have they gifted anything to me for their alpha? I started to look through the gifts eagerly. <laughs> Aww, how sad. For your kind information, it's nothing, she said, her eyebrows raised. The key word was nothing. They've gifted so many things to me. But I can't accept these things, please. I already feel so guilty. Stop all this before it's too late. Don't you feel that this mess is getting bigger? She pleaded, sighing deeply. Baby girl, please don't come back to square one. We've already discussed this. No one and nothing can change the truth that you are mine. Please accept your destiny. There must be a reason that the moon god has paired us together. I looked desperately into her slowly tearing eyes. Okay, forget about that. Are you ready for our date tonight? I whispered into her ear huskily and noticed the goosebumps appeared on her skin in response. Can we cancel it? She scratched her head nervously and flashed me a cunning look. And why is that? I asked her seriously, my brows raised in suspicion. Because when I agreed with you for a date... I didn't have any idea about what it was, but when Sophie explained to me the meaning of a date, I realized that I'm not ready for all that, she explained, her lips pouting slightly. Who's Sophie? Wait, that Omega girl? I'll punish her for what she did, I exclaimed, gritting my teeth and clenching my hands into fists. No, please don't do that. She only told me because I asked her persistently. Please don't punish her. She's just a sweet, innocent girl. She didn't even look at my face. That was how much respect she had. Please, promise me that you won't punish her. Zenya took my hand in hers, begging me. How could I reject her request when this is the first time she's asking me for a promise? Of course, my angel, I will not punish her. 
Now tell me, what are you going to wear? I asked, and she immediately headed to the closet, coming out while holding up a simple yellow dress. Mmm, nope. I'll send you the clothes and everything along with a makeup artist. You just get ready with all that, Rose Petal. I kissed her forehead and headed for a shower. After my shower, I gathered Stephen, the strongest warrior from my pack, and a few Omegas to help organize my romantic date. Frankly, I was nervous too, since it was also my first date. Plus, I didn't know if she would like my plans. Nevertheless, I wanted to do my best in making it the best, most perfect date. I explained my plan for the date to Stephen, the Warriors, and the Omegas. The Warriors were gathered to ensure the safety of the location and to prevent any breach into the location. The Omegas, on the other hand, were in charge of the preparations of the foods, decorations, and other relevant work. After a few hours, I sent Senya a set of clothes along with a makeup artist to help her get ready for the date. I knew that she would be amazed to see her outfit for the date. I made sure to choose it while we were out shopping. Xenia's POV I was anxiously waiting for the makeup artist to arrive as my palms started becoming damp with sweat. After some time, someone knocked on the door. Who is it? I asked. Luna, Alpha sent me to help you get ready for the date. May I please come in? She requested. Okay, come in. I replied and looked towards the door in anticipation. A tall girl with gray hair entered the room with a smile on her face. She had a familiar bag in her hand. This bag looks familiar to me. Where did I see it before? Oh, yes. I remember Grayson was carrying this while we were shopping. I didn't ask him about it because I thought it was for him. Luna, here's your outfit. Can you please have a look at it? Oh, and Alpha also sent pieces of jewelry and shoes in it. She passed me the bag and I peered into it curiously. I was puzzled when I pulled the soft material out of the bag to see that it was a sari. Did he buy a sari for a date? Wait, that means he's been planning this since the beginning. Nevertheless, I was amazed to see it. It was a royal blue lace sari bedazzled with small white pearls. Excited to see more. I pulled out the sari blouse to see that it had short, bad hands designed for its sleeves, and the back was almost backless. Not a good idea for the cold weather. I noticed that the front of the blouse had a deep neckline. There was also a silver undershirt, a pair of pencil stiletto heels, as well as a few simple pieces of pearl jewelry. I was baffled and confused about how he figured out my taste, my favorite color, and my preferences. But my only issue is the sari blouse. The front cut is too deep and there's no behind. I can't wear this blouse. The cuts from the front and back are just too much for me. Please tell your alpha that I can't wear this. I explained, shoving the sari back into the bag. Luna, there's a jacket also inside the bag. Alpha specially instructed me to make sure you wear it on the top of the sari when you're ready to go. She clarified and pulled out the jacket from the bag. Knowing that I could never win with Grayson, I wore the sari blouse and underskirt. This blouse is embarrassing. Why did he prepare such a blouse? And wait, how does he know my measurements? It was true. No one came to take my measurements, but yet the blouse and underskirt fitted my body perfectly. The kind lady started to do my hair and makeup. From time to time, she would look at me and smile, to which I returned a small, nervous smile. This blouse is so short. It shows half of my stomach plus my belly button, too. I've never worn something like this before. I don't know how to face Grayson. Eventually, she finished my hair and face, so she started to drape the sari. She gathering them the pleats and tucked them to my waist before pinning the sari to my blouse shoulder. Luna, you're like a goddess. I must say you're the prettiest girl I've ever seen in my entire life. Alpha will be proud after seeing you, Luna. She exclaimed in awe. Thanks to you, of course. Your makeup, hairdo, and everything you did is just perfect. 
thank you for everything, I replied and hugged her. Luna, please don't do that. If Alpha comes to know, he'll punish me. She screamed out softly, her eyes filled with panic. I hate your Alpha. He banned everyone from talking with me. And everyone here is scared of me because of him, I complained, annoyed at the situation he has put me in. Luna, please don't say that. We all respect him and you'll understand him better as time goes by. My request is for you to give him some time, Luna. He's not a bad person. You will realize it. Trust me. She bowed before me humbly. Luna, my work here is done. I must go now, but Alpha will come in within a few minutes. I wish you both happiness for tonight and your future. She wished and left the room. I sat on the bed and looked at my hands. I couldn't believe how my simple life had turned upside down. I was so busy in my thoughts that I didn't notice that someone had entered the room. I felt a strong gaze from behind me and I turned around immediately. There, in front of me, I saw the most handsome man I had ever laid my eyes on. None other than Grayson. He was wearing a dark navy blue five-piece tuxedo suit which looked clearly custom-made. His hair had been blow-dried and gelled neatly. I noticed the new silver Longinus brand watch on his wrist too. I just can't understand why he spends such a huge amount of money just for a date. We both just stood there looking at each other, and I could feel his eyes on me, checking me out. My hands moved immediately to cover my exposed stomach feeling embarrassed by his gaze. It was like he was looking deep into my soul as he gazed at me from top to bottom. Soon he started approaching me. Grayson's POV The evening soon came and I started to prepare myself for the date. Kate helped me prepare for the evening, teasing me about the date, but I must say, he is the best beta I could ever get as the Alpha. Around 6.30 p.m., I went to check if my angel was already ready. I mind-linked the Omega makeup artist I sent, and she said that she had already completed her job, so I could go see her. I opened the door of our room and saw that she was looking down at her hands, deep in thought. I could see her almost bare back due to the blouse she was wearing. She immediately felt my presence and stood up from the bed, turning around to face me. I couldn't believe my eyes. Is she a goddess? My mouth got dry and I gulped my saliva, my eyes still fixated on her. She was also looking at me. I could see her struggling to cover her exposed stomach from her saray. I could also feel Damon trying to come to the surface. I knew very well that if I allowed him to come, he would definitely mark her there and then have sex with her and ruin the whole thing. It was extremely hard to control him but I tried my best. I could see her slim, cream-colored body from the see-through lace array. It perfectly fitted her figure. She must be wondering how it exactly fits her body. The truth is, I cuddle her while sleeping so I know her measurements. Her cheeks were flushed red with blush. I started to walk towards her and she retreated in response until her back hit the wall. I immediately caged her in my large frame, our bodies just an inch apart. Xenia looked down immediately and I placed my index finger on her chin and lifted her face to look into me. I could hear her heart beating like she just ran a race. Xenia just looked into my eyes hypnotically. I knew she couldn't ignore my eyes since it was her favorite color. Angel, you are a goddess, my love. How could anyone be so beautiful as you? I must worship the moon goddess for giving you to me and pairing you as my mate. I have never seen such a beautiful thing in my life. My wolf is impatient to mark you. I expressed as I held back from wanting to kiss her so badly. But if I do so, she will get scared. Things must go slowly with her. Baby girl, what have you done to me? Are you a witch? What kind of spell have you cast on me, my love? She tried to push me to free herself from my large frame, 
but the touch of her fragile body was doing nothing to me. Stop pushing me, my angel. Your rejection is arousing me more and more to devour your body. To be honest with you, I want to tear your clothes and worship your body. I want to hear your screams and moans. I whispered in her ear huskily before pulling back to see her looking at me with her big doe eyes. Please don't do anything that you'll regret later. Shall we go now? We're getting late, she said with a bitter smile, swallowing her saliva nervously. Yeah, I think we should, because if we stay here for another few minutes, Damon will surely make an appearance. Oh, sunshine, wear your jacket. I don't want anyone else to see your beautiful figure except me. I took her hand and linked it on my arm, resting it on the crook of my elbow as we headed for the car. Good evening, Alpha and Luna. I must say, you both are looking like you just got down from heaven. Stephen chuckled before getting in the driver's seat of the Range Rover, while both of us got into the back seat. Where are we going? She asked as soon as we sat inside, looking at me curiously. It's a surprise, my love. I took her hand in mine and realized that her palm was damp with sweat. I could feel her discomfort. After all, she was so naive and I knew that it was her first ever date. There are a lot of surprises prepared for you today, my angel. Just wait and see. Chapter 21 a Romantic Date 2 Grayson's POV We drove to the location where our date was planned. I could sense that she was nervous. Soon our car stopped at a remote place in the middle of the jungle. Baby girl, shall we go now? From here onwards, we have to walk to reach the place. I turned to open my door when suddenly she grabbed my hand. But why do we need to walk? Can't we go there by car? And this looks like a very remote place. I'm really scared. Why did you choose such a place in the jungle for a date? I, I think we should go back, she muttered, her voice shaking with fear. Angel, look at me. You never have to panic or worry when I'm with you. Besides, I've arranged high security with my warriors and Stephen's also here. I didn't bring Kate along because his maid is in her heat, so she really needs him. I assured her, hugging her slightly and drawing circular motions on her back to calm her. But, but please, shall we go to a crowded area instead? I don't like this dark jungle. Please, I'm begging you, let's just go to a restaurant, she said while clenching my shirt. Angel, please just have faith in me. I've planned everything to surprise you and to make you happy. I just want us to spend some time getting to know each other well, and a crowded place is not ideal for this. Please, give me some time to touch your soul, I begged her. Promise me that you'll stay with me until we come out from this jungle she demanded, slowly loosening her grip on my shirt. There's nothing to promise, my angel. I will be with you forever. I tucked a loose strand behind her ear and kissed her forehead. Baby girl, you need to remove your shoes and walk, I told her as soon as we got out of the car. Why is that? she asked with a questioning look. Because you can't walk with those heels. I explained, making her shrug her shoulders in response before removing her shoes. One more thing. At the beginning of the path, there are stones and big tree roots. So I'll carry you in my arms, and when the road is smooth, I'll put you back down, okay? Oh, and you can remove your jacket. It won't necessary anymore. Only I'll be there with you. I looked at her with a sly smirk. What? No, I can't. It's really cold here, and I'll freeze to death with this cold. Xenia gripped onto her jacket tightly, not wanting to let go. Don't worry. I'll warm your body if needed, I teased, flashing her a wink. Ha! Huh. I can see her cursing under her breath. Okay, Alpha, I'm leaving to check the perimeter and security with the warriors. Good luck with your romantic date, and call me if you need anything. Have a great time, Luna. Stephen informed before disappearing into the jungle. Ready to start our date? I took her into my arms and carried her as if carrying my bride. 
She hesitated a little bit at the beginning, but she realized that she doesn't have any option but to agree to my request. Eventually, she laced her arms around my neck and looked around with fear in her eyes. I looked at her and gave her a sudden kiss on her cheek. Why did you do that? She questioned, touching the cheek that I kissed. If you keep looking around in fear, next time I won't kiss your cheeks, but definitely your lips. Trust me, baby girl. I would love to do that. I teased with a naughty smile, but she rolled her eyes and flashed me a fake smile in response. And so I started to walk towards our destination. After about 700 meters, we reached a path where the hard rock road ended was replaced with a smooth sand path. As promised, I returned her to her feet. Angel, now I need you to walk on the smooth path, I requested her. She looked at the path in surprise before looking back at me curiously. This sand path is decorated with red rose petals and lighted with small candles. Did you do this? Of course, my love. I'll do anything for my angel. Besides, this date is the very first date for both of us. And I'll take you on many more, baby girl. Honestly, my warriors and omegas help me a lot. I clarified enjoying the look of surprise on her face. I think my day plan's working exactly as planned. I just hope it won't be interrupted. Okay, I'll walk. She started to walk down the path, her heels dangling in her hands. I walked beside her, the distance of our bodies less than a centimeter apart. I could clearly see that her fear for the dark and the lonely forest had decreased significantly due to the lighted candles along the sand path. We walked for another 500 meters into the forest, but suddenly she screamed, threw her heels away, and jumped onto me. I didn't know what had happened, nor could I imagine what she saw that made her shake like a fish that got out of water. She put her arms around my neck and stepped onto my shoes. She was screaming, and I could feel her heart thumping almost 200 times per second. Baby girl, what happened? Why are you screaming? Please tell me. I insisted, hugging her tightly. There, there I, I saw... She muttered, shivering in fear as she tried to spit out her words. There what, Angel? Tell me. I patted her back to calm her down. I, I saw two red eyes. I'm sure that I saw that. Please, let's go from here. I don't want to do this, please. I'm begging you. She started to cry. I looked and searched the place. Within a few seconds, one of my warriors came out from the forest. Luna, I didn't want to scare you. We were just checking every inch of the forest for the security of you and Alpha. I was in my wolf form, that's why you saw my red eyes. I heard your scream and came back with my human form. Just to let you know that you're safe. He explained bowing his head down before us apologetically. Oh, is that so? Oh, I got scared that some other creature was going to eat us. She responded, breathing a sigh of relief. It's okay, you can go now, I told the warrior, to which he bowed again and left us. After that, she didn't let my hand go. She hung on it strongly. I was happy with whatever happened because she was willingly touching me. After about 15 minutes, we reached our destination. Xenia's POV I must admit, the rose petals, the smell of roses, and the candles along the sand path made a calm, soothing feeling wash over me. I thought that was his surprise, but looking at the marvelous scene in front of me, I could hardly believe that this was not heaven. Is this a dream? Did I die and go to heaven? No, but Grayson is also here. I couldn't believe my own eyes, nor did I have the words to describe the scenery in front of me. There, at the end of the sand path, was a lake fully covered with large, flower-shaped, scented candles. There was a table covered and decorated with white and red roses. Small bulbs were hanging from trees providing a dim, cozy brightness to the environment. There were two wooden houses a little further away from our table. 
One of them was decorated with flowers and candles. The whole atmosphere made me feel better about our romantic date. It was perfect. I looked around the whole area with my mouth open in shock. So, do you like the place, Angel? Grayson asked me in a whisper. I must say, this place looks wonderful. Thank you. I thought these things only happen in movies. But I must thank your supportive warriors and Omegas also. I expressed gratefully. Shall we begin the date then? He asked and took my hand. I don't know how to start. You lead the way. I extended my hand towards the table. Wait, but why there is only one chair? One of us has to stand? I questioned before Grayson tugged me to the table, sat down, and placed me on his lap. What are you doing? Not again, please. I rolled my eyes and looked at him pleadingly. One chair is more than enough for us, baby girl. I want to spend this whole night with you in my lap close to me. I need to know more about you, Angel. I need to talk to your soul. I need you to love me. He spoke in a possessive manner, looking into my eyes as he cupped my cheeks. I don't understand what I should say. This is really making me embarrassed. Um, shall we start then? I changed the topic. Grayson's POV I mind linked at the chef. They were getting ready from the wooden house near the lake. Soon, one of the Omegas came with a flower basket to welcome her for the date. I could see how she looked at the flower basket happily as a small smile crept on her face. Yes, yeah, she likes our surprises. I can feel her. Damon exclaimed excitedly. Yeah, I know. I just want to see her happy. I replied to him as I watched her accept the flower basket and nod to the Omega. Luna, welcome to your special evening. Please enjoy your date and have fun. We are all here to serve you, she announced before bowing us before she left us alone. Do you like it, Angel? I soothingly rubbed her back in her bare waist. I couldn't take my hand away from her. Ever since I saw her with her soiree, all I wanted was to touch and feel her smooth skin. Could you please stop rubbing my back? She tried wiggling out of my hold, but Damon and I didn't want to let her go. Nope, I can't do that, baby girl. You know, if we were normal wolf mates or normal human couples, I'm sure that we would have already had sex multiple times. But I'm holding back from it until you're ready for that, I reminded. Why is your mind always full of sex, love, passion, obsession, and mate bond? She questioned me, her forehead scrunched up in frustration. Baby girl, like I said from the beginning, we are a pack that is based on mate bonds. We love our mates and we are possessive over them. They are our life. That's how the moon goddess created us. We're nothing without our mate. I clarified, nuzzling her neck, but she just pressed her lips together in silence. Shall we have our dinner then, baby girl? I moved away from the sore topic and mind-linked my chef to bring our dinner. As soon as the food was laid before us, I saw her looking at the food in surprise before she smiled at the chef. They had brought hot cream soup with an assortment of bread along with a bottle of wine. I nudged her to pour some soup into our soup bowl and pick out whichever bun she liked. She was about to stand up, but I held her down to my lap and asked her to do so while sitting. I don't want to let you go for even a second, my angel. I whispered in her ear and licked her earlobe slightly. She gripped my thigh strongly and I released it. I think my lick was enough to wake up her inner feelings. She started to move around and somehow poured the soup into our bowl without getting up. Then I started to feed her. It's good because in this cold climate it will give us some kind of energy. As soon as I fed her the first spoon of soup into her mouth, she moaned in pleasure. Fuck, what is she doing? I can't tolerate her moan. It turned me on. And Damon, my wolf, 
started to purr like a puppy. I pushed the thought out of my mind and fed her another spoon of soup, making her moan again. Shit, if this moaning continues, I swear I'll take her today. Angel, if you keep grinding on my lap and moaning, I am sure that today would be the day I take your virginity. If you don't want that to happen, please stop moaning. I warned, kissing her bare back, making her shiver in response before looking at me. This won't happen if you allowed me to sit alone in another chair. She retorted with an annoying tone. I smiled at her sweetly. I liked her annoying tone. She looked really cute when she was angry. I took a bun, applied butter on it, and wanted to feed it to her, but I saw that there was a little bit of soup near her lips. I suddenly turned her to my side, kept one hand on the back of her head, the other hand on her waist, and kissed the corner of her lip. She didn't have any time to think. Her eyes widened and her breath hitched. I could feel her heart beating like a horse that just finished its race. I released her and brought our foreheads together, closing my eyes and embracing the moment. She quickly turned her face away and I noticed that her cheeks were flushed red. If the corner of her lip is tasted that good, imagine how much her juicy lips will taste together with every inch of her body. Damon growled impatiently. I poured some wine into the glass and gave her a sip. She started to read the label of the bottle. This must be an expensive wine. It's manufactured year as 1950, she said with a smile. Do you like it? I questioned. I like to read and know about liquor. I don't like to drink them much, but I would love for a strong liquor collection, she confessed with a shy smile. Oh, I must add a liquor collection to my mansion. Soon, the chef brought us our main course. I had ordered them to prepare her favorite dishes, and I watched as she ate them happily. Baby girl, do you like the food? I asked her curiously. How on earth did you know that I love all of this? She demanded, her voice full of surprise. I sent Stephen to your country, and he brought me every information about you. I confessed and shoved some food into my mouth. She just looked at me with her jaw dropped in shock. I flashed her a cunning smile and finished the wine in my glass. We finished our main meal and the chef brought out the desserts. Soon, her favorite caramel pudding, avocado mousse, and fruit platter with fresh-cut fruits appeared on the table. She picked out a red strawberry and the way she shoved it into her mouth through her juicy lips without biting it made me horny. I was afraid that I would do something that I'll regret my entire life. Be patient, Grayson. She'll accept us. As soon as we finished our meal, a cold, heavy breeze of wind blew by us suddenly. She shivered due to the cold because of her exposed bare waist and back. She quickly turned to me and hugged me tightly. Grayson, it's really cold here. Wait. Did I hear it correctly? Did she say my name? What did you say, my angel? I cupped her cheeks and asked. It's really cold here. She repeated, clenching my shirt tightly. No, repeat the full sentence. I requested excitedly. Grayson, it's really cold here. She said and gulped. Say it again, please. I caressed her cheek with my thumb. Say what? She looked at me with confusion. My name, I demanded possessively. G Grayson, she muttered. Again, I looked into her eyes in awe. Grayson, she repeated, puzzled by request. Again, I asked. Grayson, she called out with a look of amazement. It was the first time she had said my name since the time we first met. I wanted to hear it another hundred times. When she said my name, it gave me a sensation that I couldn't describe. When my name was rolling out from her tongue, it made me feel like I was at the top of the world. This mate bond is driving me crazy. 
I nuzzled her neck and rubbed my nose on her. I slowly touched and drew circles on her bare waist and back. Her skin is so soft like velvet. Grayson, please, stop this, she whispered, her voice almost disappearing. Fuck, she's so sexy when she's whispering. I want to hear it when she's lying under me on our bed, when we have our beautiful moments in the future. I want to hear it when I suck her juicy lips and her round boobs. I want to hear it when I suck her nipples and make love bites on her cream-colored body. I want to hear it when I suck her pussy and drink her juice. Grayson, shall we go now? She asked, and I snapped out of my lustful train of thoughts. I shook my head and ran my hand through my hair. Let's walk a little, baby girl. Then we'll go to the woodhouse, I replied, standing up and wearing my tuxedo coat while she wore her jacket. What do you mean by that? Are we going to stay here? She looked at me with her big toe eyes. Yes, my angel. We're going to spend the night here. I took her hand and started to walk with her. Please, I can't stay here. I'm scared and I need to go back to the back house. She cried out with fear in her eyes. Angel, please. You don't need to be scared. I'm here with you. I kissed her forehead and we both went into the woodhouse. First, I had a shower, then I asked her to have a shower. I had brought along a few clothes for both of us. I gave her my shirt and basketball shorts to wear for the night. Then I placed the necessary documents for her university on the bed. I'm sure she'll get surprised. She came out from the bathroom, looking hot as usual in my clothes. Then her eyes fell on the bed and she rushed to pick it up to check it. A bright smile appeared on her face and she jumped with joy. The next thing she did was unimaginable. She rushed to me, kissed both my cheeks and my forehead. I gulped in shock and joy as I touched my cheeks. So, sorry. I didn't mean to do that, but I just couldn't believe my eyes when I saw this. Thank you. Thank you so much, Grayson. Her eyes were sparkling with happiness. Shall we sleep now? I suggested. Yeah, sure. I'm tired. And thank you for everything, she said gratefully. We got onto our bed and I dragged her close to me. I nuzzled into her neck, her scent comforting me with a good feeling. Chapter 22 I Felt I Am in the Universe Xenia's POV I heard birds chirping and slowly started to open my eyes. I felt something heavy wrapped around my waist. My eyelids were heavy and it took few seconds for me to open my eyes to the real world. I shook my head and the thoughts of our previous night filled my mind. I was amazed that someone could do that kind of romantic date for their love. Most importantly, I couldn't believe my eyes when Grayson gave me the university documents. According to the dates given by the university, they had already started the new batch, but Grayson assured me that the department had promised him to arrange some extra classes for me to cover those lectures that I missed. Good morning, my angel. You're up early today. My train of thought was disturbed by Grayson's sexy voice. He looked at me with his sea-green eyes that I love, and all I had to do was run my fingers through his hair. No, Xenia. What are you doing? Are you going to fall for him? Make a plan to run from him. Baby girl, what are you thinking so hard in the morning? He dragged me closer to him. Nothing. Just thinking about the university. I'm so excited about that, I replied. I'll go to the bathroom and then ask the chef to prepare our breakfast. While I do that, my angel, you go freshen up and join for the breakfast. He kissed my forehead and went to the bathroom. The cottage wasn't huge up. It had still had some boutique luxury type atmosphere. After Grayson left the room, I went to the bathroom and had a hot shower. I dressed in an orange and yellow flared pinafore dress. 
I went to the kitchen, and the aroma of the food was enough to wake my taste buds, making my stomach growl. Well, someone here is hungry. Now let's make your tummy full, Grayson said with a smile, and as usual, started his routine by taking me onto his lap. He started feeding me watermelon juice, and it was so good that I had three large watermelon juice glasses through the breakfast. Angel, we're leaving for a boat ride of the lake after breakfast, he informed before shoving some food into his mouth. And so we both went to the lake and got into our boat. It had a roof so the sun didn't burn us. I started to entertain myself by gazing at the mind-blowing nature surrounding us. The soft wind blew from the lakeside, and the sounds of birds chirping gave me a peaceful thought. But Grayson was not looking at anything else but me. I didn't understand what he found so fascinating about me. Am I so beautiful? He can have hundreds of girls if he wants. Girls literally would do anything to sleep with him. But still, he is single and admiring me every single day. Sunshine, you are so beautiful. I thank the moon goddess every day for giving you in my arms, he said, kissing the back of my palm. His words are making me blush. Wait, did I say I blush? What's happening with me? I must run away from here as soon as possible. After our boat ride, we went back to the cottage and had our lunch. Angel, we're leaving back for the pack house in half an hour. You can start getting ready, he informed before going to talk with the chef. I returned to the room, had a shower, and got ready. Like the previous night, we had to walk back to the main road, and waiting there was Stephen with the Range Rover. We got into the back seat and Grayson took me onto his lap. Please don't do this. This is really embarrassing. Stephen's also here, I pleaded. Yep, Alpha. Luna is correct. I'm also here and I feel jealous. Please teach me how to be a romantic maid as soon as I found my mate. I'll make love with her. Stephen looked at us from the rear mirror with a naughty smile. You don't have to act for love. It comes automatically when you found your mate. Grayson rubbed my cheek with the back of his palm. Soon we arrived at the pack house. Everyone stared at me, making me feel really awkward. Why are they looking at me? I scanned the crowd and once again I saw the same girl looking at me, her eyes filled with rage. I could see her fuming in anger. I don't know why, but everyone here seems good to me except this girl. I have to talk with her. But what's the use? I'm planning to run away from here anyway. I shrugged my shoulders, ignoring her, and went in. Hey, sweetheart, how was your date? Did he bother you? Mrs. Lockwood hugged me with a big smile on her face. Mom, what do you think about me? We enjoyed our date and I'll take her on as many dates as I can. Grayson snaked his arm around my waist and hugged me. I just smiled at Mrs. Lockwood and Cade came at that moment. Alpha, I hope your date went well. I need to talk with you about some rogue activities which happened in the last few days. If you're not busy, can we go to your office? Cade nodded his head and smiled at me. I responded back with a small smile. Angel, you go back to our room and rest. I'll have a talk with Cade and join you later. He patted my head and left. I went to the bedroom and laid on the bed to rest. Sleep welcomed me so soon, and my body started to float as light as a feather. Grayson's POV I went with Kay to my office. So, what did you say? Rogues tried to breach the territory? How's that possible? I asked Kate. Alpha, we also can't believe that they tried. No rogue has ever even thought about that. We're the strongest pack in America. Kate sat on the chair and folded his arms in front of his chest. How is this possible? Did any rogue enter the territory? I questioned with my brows raised. No, Alpha. Our warriors killed them all. They're nothing in front of our skills. 
What do you think about these sudden attacks, Alpha? Cade looked at me with a questioning look. According to my knowledge, no one has ever tried to breach our security. I wonder why these sudden attacks happened. What do they want? They know that trying to fight with us is suicide. I believe we must keep an eye on these rogues and increase our security on the territory's border. I instructed calmly. How's Luna doing, Alpha? Kate suddenly asked, changing the subject. Oh, Kate, she still hasn't accepted me. I don't know how long it will take. I'm also worried and Damon's also getting impatient. It'll take more time than we expected, so we have to wait. Slowly, she'll be mine, I said with a smile. Alpha, with all due respect, you know that you have to mark her as soon as possible and make pups with her, Kate advised. I know, but I can't do it forcefully. Her will is necessary for that. I don't want to hurt her. I stood up from the chair. Alpha, shall we go and have a talk with the pack members? I think they haven't had a chance to talk to their Alpha recently. Kate stood up and opened the door for me. Okay, we will go then. We both went out to talk to the pack members. After about two hours, I went to the bedroom. She was sleeping like a baby and I didn't want to wake her up. So I changed my clothes, put on a pair of basketball shorts and got under the duvet also, hugging her tightly. She cuddled me in her sleep. I looked intently at her lips which were plump and pink. She snuggled next to me a little bit and slowly opened her eyes. She looked at me in surprise before blinking her eyes a few times. Angel, we're leaving tomorrow for our mansion. We'll pack our things tonight. I caressed her hair which was scattered all over the pillow. Grayson, when can I go to the university? She sat upright on the bed. From next Monday onwards, you can attend the university. I'll personally drop you and pick you up from the university. If I'm not able to be there due to any business matters, I'll send Kate or Stephen. She nodded her head and went to the bathroom. Next day morning. Xenia's POV. We had our breakfast with Grayson's parents. Mrs. Lockwood kept admiring my beauty and innocence. Soon we all hugged and waved goodbye to the pack members before getting into the car. Soon enough, we reached the mansion. Grayson handed over the car for someone else to park it, while we both entered the mansion. I could immediately sense that there were some major changes in the mansion. Usually, I didn't see things in detail, but I could see many modifications that happened during the days when we were not there. The color of the curtains has changed into blue and white. New fish tanks were attached to the walls of the living room, bringing a different look to the mansion. I started admiring the changes in awe. I slowly started to climb the staircase and realized that the large paintings that were hanging on the walls were no more there. Only my pictures of various sizes with different angles were hung up. I didn't even know when and how did they capture my photos. I headed to the bedroom with lots of questions in my head. Grayson opened the door and I entered it. The sight in front of me was absolutely mind-blowing. The color of the walls had been changed into a sky blue, and the roof of the room was fully decorated with space elements such as the moon, stars, planets, spaceships, and many more as they hung from the roof. The curtains of the roof were now into royal blue and white. I feel like I've entered the universe. Photos from our date were hanging on the wall. The enlarged pictures showed how much love was sparkling from Grayson's eyes. His happy face brought a different light to the pictures. Even the floor carpets were removed and soft wool carpets were placed. So, do you like the changes, baby girl? He hugged me from behind and placed his chin on my shoulder. But why did you do all this? How do you know that I like all this? I asked curiously. Oh, as I said, Stephen did a great job. He chuckled. Forget that. Now tell me, do you like it? Do I need to change it? He questioned me and took a deep breath, waiting for my response. 
This, everything you're doing, is too much for me. I don't know why you're doing this, but please don't waste your money on a useless person like me. I said with a heavy heart. My eyes started to get moist and I didn't know why. Perhaps I felt guilty since I was planning for an escape. I handed over everything to my fate. Angel, listen to me. Do not ever say that you are useless. You don't know your value to me. You don't know how much you mean to me. You are my everything. I am nothing without you. The alpha of the biggest and strongest pack in America is nothing without you. He cupped my cheeks and without my knowledge, a tear slowly rolled from my eye to my cheek. Grayson wiped it away with his thumb, placed his thumb into his mouth, and sucked it. I love you, my angel. Now, shall we go to the garden? The gardener's waiting for you. He opened the door and we both went to the garden. The minute I stepped into the garden, I noticed that rather than flowers, vegetables were planted in a huge area and the garnered was waiting us. Luna and Alpha, good afternoon. I was waiting for you to arrive. He bowed before us. Looks like there are many changes in the garden, too. I mentioned. Alpha needed to change everything to the way you like it, Luna, he said. Luna, here are some seeds. You can plant them. The soil and everything else is ready, too. There are seeds for strawberries, apples, blueberries, and many more. The gardener gave me the seeds and I crouched down, planting them happily. I accidentally looked at Grayson and saw that he was looking at me with admiration and a bright smile on his face. I felt very uncomfortable and shook my head to concentrate on the planting. How will he behave after my escape? Chapter 23 Mission Impossible Xenia's POV I poured water into the newly planted seeds and plants. I had to think of a plan where Grayson couldn't reach me. But before doing that or whatever... I knew I had to find my passport and my luggage. Forget the luggage, Senya. It'll only slow down. Just find the passport and get the hell out of here. You can do an MBA somewhere else. As soon as you vanish and go back to your country, Grayson can't find you nor a hair on your head. So, you are our precious Luna. I turned around when I heard a female voice from behind me. The particular word she used was precious. I looked up and saw that it was the girl who looked at me with gritted teeth and gave me an angry look from the day when I first visited the pack house. Oh, hello. It's Senya. And you? I extended my hand forward to shake hers. Call me Michelle, she said, arching an eyebrow at me and folding her arms as a sign to show that she didn't give me a damn. Michelle. Nice name. So, who are you in this pack? I put down the water can which was in my hand. I am a top-ranked warrior of the pack, and one of Alpha's personal bodyguards. I associate with the Alpha very closely, she boasted proudly. Oh, but why did you grit your teeth when you saw me? I jumped to the point directly. Ah, so you noticed it. You want to know why? Because I hate you. Alpha chose you over me. I waited for him to propose to me, but you stole him from me. Her anger voice startled me a bit. After all, she was a warrior. Why did he reject you? I mean, why didn't he choose you? I arched my brows inquisitively. Oh, he waited for his so-called mate bullshit. And look what he found as his mate. A pathetic human being. He should pick me. I am a wolf, a strong warrior, and more beautiful than you. She scoffed, looking at me like I was a piece of shit. Her words are true. I feel pain mixed with her angry voice. You're correct. I'm nothing compared to you all. I've asked Grayson a million times the reason he chose me. Every time he answers that it's the maid bond. This pack is based on the maid bond. Trust me. 
I'm not interested in staying here even for a second. As soon as I get a chance, I'm going to run away from here. I confessed with a firm voice and her jaw dropped at my response. What? She looked at me in surprise. Yes, you heard it correctly. Even Grayson knows that I'll escape any time from here. That's why he's doing so many enchanting things to keep me here. Trust me, I tried to run away once, but the escape cramps almost killed me and I got caught by Grayson. I explained, looking down at my feet. So you really need to escape from here? She asked me in almost a whisper. What are you doing here, Michelle? Alpha strictly commanded you not to go near Luna. Stephen ran towards us hurriedly. I just wanted to talk to her. That's it, she replied while turning away. Oh, it's good that I saw you. Imagine if Alpha saw you. You'll be punished severely. You requested that you needed to come here to train. If you're done, you can return to Pack House or else go and train some more. Stephen commanded and gave her a death glare. Sorry, Gamma. She bowed to Stephen and walked away. Luna, please avoid Michelle as much as you can. She's not good for you. Alpha personally advised her to stay away from you. Alpha's afraid that she may hurt you. Stephen advised me. I don't think that she'll hurt me. I saw a shadow of happiness in her eyes when I said that I was looking for a way to run away from here. Immediately, an idea came to my mind. I could use her for my escape. She'll definitely help me. But first, I needed to find my passport. I went inside the mansion and had a bath. When I came out from the bathroom, Grayson was on the bed. Baby girl, shall we go for lunch? He approached me and touched my hair. Your hair is still so wet, Angel. Why didn't you dry it properly? You may catch a cold like this. Come here, I'll dry it properly. He took a towel from inside the bathroom and started to dry my hair. His slowly wiping motions gave me a soothing feeling. That's better. Shall we go now? He asked, and we went to have our lunch. Angel, we're going to your university tomorrow to fulfill the formalities, and there is an orientation program. I'll drop you at the university, and I have to go to an important business meeting. As soon as I'm finished, I'll come to pick you. If you finished early, just give me a call, okay? He patted my head and fed me. I knew I had to find Michelle. She was the only one I could get help from. I roamed all over the mansion unsupervised since Grayson was busy preparing for his meeting, scheduled for the next day. Soon I saw Michelle training her fighting movements alone, in the corner of the garden. This is my only chance. Michelle, sorry if I'm disturbing you, I announced in a low tone, looking around to make sure no one was nearby. What are you doing here? If Alpha sees us together, he'll kill me, she exclaimed with annoyance. Listen, I need a big help from you. I'm planning to escape from here tomorrow, but for that I need my passport. Can you find it for me? Oh, and one more thing. I need you to book a flight from America to my country for tomorrow. When I'm gone, you can have your alpha. Deal? I quickly told her my plan and she thought about it for a few minutes. Deal. Meet me tonight at 9 p.m. at the corner of the Rose Garden. I'll bring you what you want. She nodded at me and continued her training. Thank you. Okay, I'll go now. I thanked her and quickly came back to the mansion. I wish that everything will be all right and I'll be free from this mess by this time tomorrow. I had a nap in the evening and Grayson was still busy with the meeting preparation. He totally forgot about me, giving me a good chance to plan my escape. First, I had to get a hold of my passport. Then I'll go with Grayson tomorrow to the university. And as soon as the formalities are completed, I'll go to the airport from there. I hope Michelle will help me since she really wants to be with Grayson. 8.50 p.m. I went to meet Michelle where we planned. I tiptoed and sneaked out of the mansion quietly. Luckily, everyone was busy with their work. 
My heart was thumping very fast until I could hear it in my own ears as my palms moistened with sweat. I looked around carefully and headed to the place where Michelle asked me to come. I wore a pair of jeans and a t-shirt before covering myself from the cold with a wool jacket. I waited there until Michelle came, praying to God that no one sees us and hoping Michelle will bring my passport. After a few minutes, I saw a shadow coming towards me from the dark. Please be Michelle and not someone else. I quickly hid behind the bushes of roses. Soon, the shadow became more visible, and I realized that it was indeed Michelle. I came out from the bush and approached her. Michelle, have you got what I need? I asked with a whisper. Oh God, you scared me to death, she said, touching her chest over her heart. Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. Do you have it? I questioned her impatiently. Yes, I have what you want. I risked my life to get these things, and what a huge lie I had to say to check everywhere in the mansion. Stephen was always there keeping eye on me. Anyway, I got it, and here are the passports and your ticketing information. You are surely going, right? She squinted her eyes at me. Of course I'm leaving. What else would I need my passport for? To eat for lunch? Don't worry. From tomorrow onwards, Grayson is yours. Thank you for the support, Michelle. I'll leave now. Good night, I replied and turned towards the mansion. Good luck, Xenia, she wished and disappeared into the dark. I shoved my passport and my ticketing information into the jeans' pockets so that no one can see them. Oh, this is a mission impossible, I said to myself out loud. What is a mission impossible? And where did you go in this cold, dark night? A strong voice suddenly reached my ears. Oh no, I'm dead now. It's him. Chapter 24 Escape Plan 2 Xenia's POV Oh no. What should I do now? My throat went dry and my whole body started to shake. Did he see me meeting Michelle? If so, I am so dead. G Grayson, what are you doing here? I asked, but my voice came as a whisper since my heart knew that I did something. Angel, actually not me, but what are you doing here? And what's that Mission Impossible thing you were saying? He asked with a raised brow. Oh, that j just nothing. I suddenly wanted to watch it again, that's why. I gave him a bitter smile. Does he sense that I did something? You want to watch a movie then? We'll watch it tomorrow when we go back home, okay? Now let's go to sleep, Angel. And don't go outside alone again without anyone accompanying you for your protection. He patted my head and we went inside. We went to sleep, but my sleep didn't come to me. How will my mom and dad react to my story, and will they think that I'm crazy? I had come here with so many dreams. To complete my higher studies, to find a better job, build up my career path, and settle down here. But then this werewolf boy changed everything. I knew tomorrow was going to be a tough day for me, especially when I had to face the escape cramps. Just thinking about it reminded me of the unbearable pain. But, no matter what happens tomorrow, I will leave this country. I did feel bad because the money I invested in the university was going to be useless. But my freedom was worth more than that. At least every cent I used was my money, so I was relieved that I didn't feel guilty about wasting my parents' money. Angel, are you all right? Why are you not sleeping? It's near midnight already. You sleep so soon usually, but today you seem bothered about something. Did anything happen while I was busy with my work? Stephen told me that Michelle was talking to you. Did she say anything to hurt you? He lifted his head and rested it on the palm of his left hand. Damn, look at those biceps. Are these all wolves so strong? No, nothing happened. She just wanted to have a chit-chat with me, I replied before turning to face the other side. Sleep, my baby girl. 
Tomorrow we need to wake up in the morning and have to rush for our respective tasks. He cuddled me from behind, and no matter how much I tried to release myself from his grip, he wouldn't let me go. Soon I heard his light snoring, and I also dozed off. Next day morning. Angel, wake up, baby girl. We have to go. I woke up to someone lightly patting me on the head. I yawned and opened my eyes. This is the last day I sleep in this bed, and this is the last day I see the sunlight of America. Tomorrow morning, I'll be seeing the sunshine of my motherland. Angel, once you get ready and come down to have breakfast, then we'll leave, Grayson said and left the room. I wore the clothes I had on the day I stepped into this country, because I didn't want to take anything from here. I wanted to wipe the memories as soon as I returned to my real home. I went down with my university documents, hiding my passport and ticket documents in my handbag, before heading to have breakfast. Grayson was already sitting on his chair and took me onto his lap. Baby girl, why are you wearing the same clothes you were wearing when I saw you for the first time? You have many new clothes which I brought for you, he said while giving me a glass of watermelon juice. I wanted to wear it because it was with these clothes I wanted to attend the university. That's why, I explained with a fake smile. Hmm, he just hummed. Does he sense that I'm going to pull a stunt? Shall we go now, sunshine? We both stood up and went to the car porch. The dark purple Range Rover was there with another two BMW cars. We got into the Range Rover and Grayson's warriors entered the others. Stephen, first we need to drop Luna at her university, and then we'll head to the meetings, Grayson instructed. Okay, Alpha, Stephen nodded, and all the three vehicles started to drive through the deserted road. I don't know why my heart started to feel heavy. From time to time, I started to look at Grayson. I wonder how he will manage his pain. I'm sure Michelle can do something to heal the wound. Her love will heal him and with time past, Grayson will forget me. Angel, are you okay? Do you want to talk about something? He asked me, snapping me from my daze. No, I'm fine, just a little bit nervous, I responded with a small smile on my face. Within forty minutes, we reached the university. We both got down from the vehicle. Grayson was allowed by security to park his vehicle in the VIP parking lot. Stephen waited at the vehicle while Grayson came with me. Good morning, Mr. Lockwood. A bald man in his mid-fifties dressed in a full suit greeted us. Good morning, Mr. Robinson. Grayson gave him a smile. You must be Xenia, right? He asked me. Yes, sir, you're correct. I replied very politely. Angel? This is Mr. Robinson, department head of management section. When Grayson called me Angel in front of him, I blushed. Mr. Lockwood, please take a seat, both of you. Mr. Robinson gave me a polite smile. Oh, Mr. Robinson, I have to hurry for a meeting. Can you please take care of her? I'll come to pick her up as soon as my meetings are over, Grayson explained. Okay, Mr. Lockwood, I'll do the formalities. Mr. Robinson shook hands with Grayson. Angel, you complete the formalities and then give me a call. If I can't come, I'll send Stephen. Grayson kissed my forehead and left the room. Goodbye, Grayson. I wish I could say see you again. But no, never, I don't want to see you again. You'll understand my situation one day and you'll live happily with Michelle. Grayson's POV Something doesn't feel right within me. I feel that she's going to leave me. I don't know why, but I felt something's not right. I don't want to leave her, but this is an urgent meeting and I have to be there to finalize a deal with the foreign clients. Alfa, are you all right? Stephen asked me while driving. Stephen, I feel something awkward. I don't know why, but I feel like something's going to slip out of my hand. I ran my hands through my hair worriedly. Why is that, Alpha? Stephen looked at me with concern. I feel like my mate is hiding something from me. 
Her behavior is different from yesterday. After the meeting with Michelle, she's different. I'm worried if Michelle told her something to hurt her. I sigh deeply. Didn't you ask Luna about it? Stephen questioned. I did, but she didn't tell me anything. Something is not right. I feel that with my instincts. I expressed. Maybe she's starting her university and Luna's not available for a few hours every day. So you and your wolf may be worried about that. Stephen suggested with a smile. I feel something fishy. You're right. I think we should be with our mate. What if she gets into any trouble? She's so innocent and she needs us. Forget your things and go to our mate. Damon demanded with an impatient tone. I know, but I need to attend this and there is no one else to represent me. Dad is also busy with the pack duties. Don't worry, we'll see how it goes. I exhaled deeply. I hope something bad doesn't happen. Damon whimpered and disappeared. Soon we arrived at the hotel where meetings were scheduled. I went to my room and started the preparation for the meeting. Xenia's POV Xenia, this is the library and you have to become a member to borrow books. But you can come to the library any time and read or refer books. Mr. Robinson had appointed a senior student for the orientation program for me. Thank you very much for the support and all the information you provided for me. You're very kind and beautiful. I replied with a smile. But I don't need to keep these things in my mind, since I am leaving within few hours. I heard Sri Lanka is a beautiful country. So, as are you, Senya. Welcome to the batch. Hope you'll enjoy your time here the girl with blonde hair wished. Indeed, it's a beautiful country. You must visit once. Thank you once again. I must go now. I nodded and turned around to leave. But Mr. Robinson asked you to come back to the office as soon as you're finished with the orientation. She pointed towards Mr. Robinson's office. Ah, uh, okay. I nodded and walked towards the room. Then I saw the blonde getting ready to go to her class. As soon as she disappeared, I started to run towards the gate. It's time to execute my plan. I reached the road and looked for a taxi. My heart started to beat very fast in my chest. I have waved for few taxis, but none of them stopped. I was growing impatient since the clock was ticking, and I need to take a taxi to go to the airport. It'll take another 10 or 15 minutes to the airport from the university. I need to go now. It's showtime, Xenia. I waved my hand for another taxi. Luckily, it stopped and got into it hurriedly. Where to, miss? The driver asked. To the airport, and please hurry, I said to him. He started to drive the car towards the airport. Suddenly, I felt a heavy thirst, and I checked the time. It was nearly 2 p.m., Maybe I didn't drink anything, that's why. Never mind. As soon as I go to the airport, I'll have something to drink. Within few minutes, a light pain crawled through my heart, like short contractions. The last contraction almost squeezed my heart, and I slammed my hand towards my heart to try to control my cries of pain. Miss? Are you all right? The driver looked at me through the rearview mirror. Yes. It's just a small stomach ache. You just continue driving to the airport. I instructed with a painful smile. I think the escape cramps are starting. Fuck this man. Why does this happen? If Grayson starts having these cramps, he'll know that I'm running away from him, and he'll find me. And definitely this time, he'll kill me. Whatever happens, I am leaving from here. All of a sudden, I saw huge traffic build up on the road before us. Oh, ma'am, looks like an accident. We have to wait until police clear the road, the driver explained. What? No! What a destiny I have! Now this traffic, too? What a wonderful escape, Xenia. Now I'm sure that I have been cursed by a witch. Or else why would my destiny do these things for me? On one hand, these cramps... And the other hand, this terrible traffic. Within ten minutes, the police cleared the road and once again, 
we started our drive. Soon, a sharp pain attacked my stomach, making me feel like someone had stabbed me. Ah! I screamed until my throat also got hurt. Oh, miss, are you okay? The driver quickly stopped the car by the side of the road, terrified due to my scream. No matter what happens, don't stop the car. Just drive to the airport. I insisted. He nodded and started to drive. Soon the car came to a complete stop. Miss, we've arrived at the airport. Uh, if you want, I can help you to find a doctor, the driver suggested, his voice full of concern. No, thanks. Thank you for the drive. Here's your money. I gave him money while tightly holding my stomach. I quickly ran inside the airport as nausea started to hit me, the stabbing pain starting to increase tremendously, and it started continuously occurring. It's like someone stabbing me and taking my insides. This pain is unbearable and can't even describe how I feel. I rushed to a water dispenser and drank some water. As soon as the water went down my throat, the urge to vomit has popped up, making me run to a nearby toilet and threw up everything I had in the morning. I felt slightly better and went to wash my face, drying it with some tissues. Then I walked towards the ticket encounters. There was a long queue and I was waiting until my turn came. I looked here and there to check if Grayson was anywhere around. The pain continued and I felt like I was in hell. I bent down a little bit and squeezed my stomach to reduce the pain. But I knew until Grayson touches me, the pain won't go away. Suddenly I saw an officer coming toward me and he pointed me to the lady officers which were with him. Ma'am, you're under arrest. Don't move, don't struggle, and don't say anything. Please come with us. A police officer from airport security approached me with another two lady officers. What? Why are you arresting me? I didn't do anything. This must be a mistake. I pleaded to them. Ma'am, please cooperate and come with us. The officer declared, and one of the lady officers held me, and they started to take me to the interrogation room. No, please listen to me. I didn't do anything. Please. I need to go back to my country. Please let me go. I started to cry and tried to release my hand from them. They took me to an interrogation room and sat me on a chair where they handcuffed my right hand to the chair. I struggled, but there was no point. They wouldn't let me go. Officer, what are my charges? Why did you arrest me? I demanded while grinding on the chair. My pain was increasing and my clothes were drenched with sweat. My voice was also becoming weak. He let the two women officers leave, and soon, the both of us were inside the interrogation room. Luna, please calm down. Alpha's on the way. As soon as the word Luna hit my ear, my eyes widened and my jaw dropped. I thought due to my pain I heard something like that. Excuse me? What did you say? I asked him. Alpha's on the way to take you back with him. Until he comes, please stay calm, Luna. I know you have escape cramps and it's painful. Alpha also felt that and he mind-linked me. I didn't have any other choice but to arrest you. I'm sorry, Luna. He apologized while bowing before me. No, please don't do that. I need to go back to my country. Please let me go before he comes. I cried and struggled with a cuffed hand. The wrist of my right hand soon became red due to the force I was putting on it. I need to vomit. Could you please let me go to the washroom? I begged him. Oh, that I can't do, Luna. But I'll give you a bucket to vomit. He went out and brought me an empty bucket, a water bottle, and few facial tissues. As soon as I received the bucket, I vomited to it. I didn't expect how much I would vomit. My throat and my insides were burning due to the amount of vomiting I did. I feel dizzy now. I started to feel pity for myself. I put my life in danger to get the hell out from here, but there was no point. I knew that as soon as Grayson comes, he would kill me, 
or torture me to death. He was a wolf, and not just a normal wolf, but an alpha. I started recalling my parents and my all friends. A single tear leaked from my eye corner without my knowledge. I remembered the happy times I spent with my loved ones. My destiny was cruel. I didn't know that it could betray me so much. I started to cry loudly, but no one was there to console me. My legs were numb and the pain was still continuously shooting from within me. I tightly hugged myself as my eyes became heavy. Suddenly, I heard the door of the interrogation room open with a loud bang, and my eyes met his. I saw him, the last person on earth I wanted to see. Grayson's POV I started to get prepared for the meeting. My mind was still concerned about my angel. As soon as the meeting finished, I'll go to my angel. The meeting started and it went well with the clients. I returned to my room and I checked the time to see that it was already 2 p.m. She must be over with her things now. I went to the bathroom, freshened up, and got dressed in my casual clothes. Then, all of a sudden, I started to feel like someone was squeezing my chest. It sparked for a few times and disappeared. I thought maybe it was because I didn't have any snacks. So I took a water bottle and drank a few sips, but as soon as the water went down my throat, I needed to puke. What's happening with me? I feel pain. Our mate is in pain, too. Damon cried out while pacing up and down. I could feel that he was in pain, too. Shit. She's running away from me. Escape cramps are happening. I mind-linked Stephen as soon as possible and he came running to me. I crawled on the floor and tightly squeezed my stomach. Alpha, why are you in pain? What's wrong with you? Stephen came to me and tried to pull me up. Stephen, I think Luna's escaping, I said with a whisper. The amount of pain she goes through affects me in the same amount, too. Alpha, can you guess where she's going? Stephen demanded with a worried tone. Then everything that happened since yesterday started hitting my mind. I finally understood the reason behind her change of behavior. Stephen, she's going to the airport. Hurry up, take me there. I tried to stand up, but I couldn't. Stephen quickly put one hand around my waist and took my other hand around his neck, walking me to the car. Stephen, hurry up, I commanded with a loud growl. He started to drive the car towards the airport. I mind-linked a member of our pack who was on duty at the airport security, knowing he would do the work for me. We reached the airport within twenty minutes, but that twenty minutes felt like twenty years. Stephen parked the vehicle, helped me to get down, and we both started to walk towards the room where they kept her. I can feel her. She's in pain. Hurry up. She needs us. She needs our touch. Damon lamented with pain. I rushed to the room and opened the door. There, inside, my mate was sitting agitatedly on her chair and vomiting. The smell of vomit was all over the room. I saw her wrist has turned red. She looked at me with her teary eyes and fear flashed through them when she saw me. Xenia's POV Oh no, he's here. Every effort I put into this is such a waste now. Grayson, please leave me. Let me go. My voice came out as a whisper. Angel, you need me. Please allow me to touch you and it'll feel better. Grayson advised, taking slow steps towards me. No, please don't come near me. If you love me, please let me go. I pleaded as loud sobs started to escape from my mouth. Luna, please don't be stubborn. You both are in pain and touch is the only way that pain goes away. Please let Alpha touch you. Stephen begged persistently. No, not again. I don't want to see any of you. Just get me out from here. I held up my palm to Grayson as a gesture to stop approaching me. Baby girl, please, I can't see you in pain. We can't run away from our destiny. You are mine. Please accept the truth. Let me have you and heal you. 
Grayson came to me and hugged me softly. I had to admit that his touch gave me a soothing feeling like someone soaked me in an ice bath. The whole burning sensation started to vanish away. Who the hell cuffed her? Grayson demanded with an ear-piercing yell. Alpha, I'm sorry, but I had no choice. Please forgive me. The officer apologized and kneeled before us. Grayson gritted his teeth, but quickly shifted his attention back to me. Please let me go, Grayson, I insisted. Suddenly, a wave of dizziness struck, and soon I felt darkness consume me. We will go to our heaven, my angel. Chapter 25 I am going to mark you. Grayson's POV Why did she do that? Why did she try to escape from me? I had already told her countless times how much I love her, that the bond we shared was not a normal bond like other couples shares. Our pure bond was already decided in heaven. Damon was pissed, and I was hurt. I looked at her intently, waiting for her to wake up. I knew I had to punish her for the stunt she pulled. How did she think that she can easily get away from me? I am an alpha. She needs to know that. I also found her passport in her handbag. How did she find her passport? Did anyone help her? If someone did help her, I will not spare that person. I could see the remnant of a low, dry tear that had rolled from her eye to ear. Her right wrist is red and swollen due to the handcuffs. But I felt anger bubbling within me rather than pity for her. What didn't I do to win her heart? I thought that she was finally beginning to like me. But no, all that time she was planning to escape from me. You have messed with the wrong person, Zenya. Let me do what I need to do. She needs to learn whom she's dealing with. Damon demanded angrily. Wait until she wakes up. She needs to know and see the alpha she messed with. I replied, fury running through my veins. After a while, I could see that she was gaining her consciousness. She slowly opened her eyes and blinked a few times. She tried to move her body, but couldn't. Need to move, baby? I asked with an evil smirk on my face. G Grayson, what have you done? Why did you tie my hands? She tried to loosen her hands from the ropes. I had tied her to the bed, her hands to the headboard, and her legs to the end of the bed. Why I tied your hands? You're asking me why I tied your hands? I questioned with a loud growl and jumped at her. I tightly grabbed her chin. Our faces were a few centimeters away, and I could see her eyes getting moist with tears. Don't try to melt me with your crocodile tears, angel. This is your place, where you belong. Tied to my bed so you can go nowhere. <laughs> I laughed hysterically, evil intent all over my face. Grayson, please listen to me. Please untie me. My hands and legs are hurting. She begged with a whisper as loud sobs escaped from her mouth. I said stop crying, baby girl. There's no one to hear your screams. I can do whatever I want with you. I arched my eyebrow and smiled at her wickedly. What are you going to do, Grayson? Are you going to rape me? She stammered, her eyes flashing nothing but fear. I told you that without your consent I won't do any sexual activities with you. But, my angel... I am definitely going to punish you. I'll punish you in such a way that you will never ever think of running away from me. I whispered in her ear huskily, making her mouth open in surprise and her eyes widen. Grayson, please don't hurt me. I won't run away again. Please untie me. I'm really scared when my hands are tied to the bed. She cried bitterly and tugged her hands strongly, trying to release them from the ropes. Now you're scared, right? This is not the lovey-dovey Grayson. He is no more. Do you hear me? He's no more. I laughed like a maniac. You're crazy. Grayson, you've gone crazy. She cried out with her shaky voice. Crazy? Yes, I am. 
I'm crazy for you. I was a lovesick puppy for you. I treated you like a goddess. But in return, you backstabbed me, baby girl. Do you think that can be forgiven and forgotten so easily? My breathing increased rapidly. I could daim in his coming to the surface. I let allowed him to emerge and handle the situation. She needs to be punished. Xenia's POV I watched Grayson lash out angrily at me. He was fuming in anger, his bluish-green veins popping out from his hands and neck. His nostrils become large like a raging bull. I knew he was pissed with me, and I was scared to death. I didn't know what his agenda was, but from time to time he kept repeating that he was going to punish me. Then I noticed that his eyes were turning into chocolate brown. Grayson's beautiful sea-green eyes were no more there. Oh no, it's Damon. His wolf has come to the surface. Mate, you have done a big mistake. We showed you so much love, but we never thought that you would do something like this. Damon said with a deep, husky voice. I'm sorry. I am so sorry. I won't do it again, I promise. Please don't hurt me. Release me from these ropes. I pleaded, wiggling my hands and legs that were tightly bonded to the bed. You didn't leave us any other choice, mate. I'm going to mark you now. Damon's voice was mixed with anger and pride. What do you mean by marking? I asked, panic overcoming me. You will see. As soon as he finished talking, he turned my face to the left and carefully pushed away my hair from my neck. This will gonna hurt a little, mate, he warned, and suddenly I felt a sharp pain in my neck. What is he doing? Is he biting me? No. What are you doing? Please stop, it hurts. I squirmed and struggled to move away from him. His sharp fangs slowly sunk into my neck, little by little. Why is he doing this? Is he drinking my blood? I've seen that vamps also do this. Is he a vampire? Is he a vampire werewolf? Please, stop, Damon. It hurts. You're hurting me. I screamed out in pain. He slowly started to lick and kiss the place where he had bitten me. It comforted me and reduced the pain but I was too exhausted, making me doze off without even realizing it. I didn't know what time it was and how long I was asleep. I woke up with a heavy headache. I turned to look at the time to see that it was 11.15 p.m. I was still tied to the bed and my throat was completely dry. I looked around to see Grayson sleeping next to me. My neck was hurting, but I couldn't even rub it since my hands are tied. Water. I need water, I mumbled. I saw Grayson waking up before he blinked his eyes a few times and looked at me. You need water? Wait, I'll give you. He sat up on the bed and slowly started to untie me. Ah, I grunted in pain as soon as my ropes were loosened. My wrists and ankles were red and a little bit swollen. Sorry, I tied them a little too tight. You wanted water, right? He offered me a glass of water. Give me the whole bottle. I'm thirsty. I gulped down the whole bottle. I think I didn't have anything after my breakfast. My stomach growled loudly and I looked at it with my lips pressed together. You're hungry. Wait. I'll bring you food and medicine for your swollen areas. He notified me coldly and left the room. I rubbed my neck and stood up from the bed heading to the bathroom. Due to the vomit and sweat, I had because of the escape grams, I smelled almost rotten. I looked at the biting spot on my neck through the mirror. Two small holes could be seen as bitten marks. I don't understand why he did it. I washed my face and came out of the bathroom. I brought your food. Come, let's eat. He patted the other side of the sofa and I sat obediently. I've come to realize that I don't have any other choice but to accept him and accept that this was my destiny. I wonder why he didn't take me onto his lap. Maybe he's still mad at me. 
Silence started to rule the entire room. We had our food without looking at each other. I could see the photos from our romantic date are hanging on the wall, and I realized that he won't treat me like he did before anymore. I'm finished. I need to have a bath. I smell like hell. I stood from the sofa, but he grabbed my hand and pulled me onto his lap. I couldn't balance my body, and I slipped with a huge force into his lap. Why did you run away from me? Was my love not enough for you? He looked into my eyes numbly, and his tone carried no emotion. Because this was not the life I expected, Grayson. I wanted my freedom. I want my life back. The life I imagined. My voice started to get heavy, and I looked down at my palms somberly. For God's sake, how many times do I have to tell you, Angel, that this is your life? You need to accept it. We both need each other, and this is our destiny. He explained, his voice pleading me. You know what? Forget about that. Where did you find your passport, and how did you get a ticket? Tell me who helped you, and don't try to play with me, Angel. His pleading voice disappeared and was replaced with raw anger. No, no one helped me. I did it alone, I admitted, looking down again. Oh, really? Do I look like a fool to you? Who are you trying to protect? He demanded with a commanding voice. I knew his alpha voice was almost coming, and I was terrified of that. Trust me, no one helped me, I insisted. Trust you, baby girl? Oh, we both know that this is a big joke, right? I'll find the bastard that backstabbed me and trust me, Angel. I'll make his life a living hell. He promised, placed me on the sofa, and told me to take a shower. I have a question for you, I whispered softly. Ask me anything, he replied with a blank expression. What do you mean by marking? Why did Damon come and mark me? I asked him. We wolves usually mark our mate as soon as we met them, but that happens when two wolves are mated. In our case, you are human. Plus, I wanted to give you time and I wanted to mark you as my mate only when you were ready. Damon wanted to at this from the day we first met you, but I stopped him. I always explained to him that we needed to wait until you were ready for the mating and to be marked. But the stunt you pulled, baby girl, was enough. Both of us two took the decision to mark you and make you ours permanently. He explained and folded his arms in front of his chest. So what will happen now? I questioned, sitting back down on the sofa. Usually if you're a she-wolf. After mating, you'll have heat. But I don't know since you're a human what kind of situation will occur, Angel. He looked at me with his brows furrowed. What do you mean by heat? And you don't know that what will happen to me? You did something to me and you don't even know the consequences of it, Grayson? I screamed at him. Heat means a burning sensation which comes from inside from your body. To reduce and heal from it, you have to have sex with your mate. If anyone else touches you without your mate, your pain will get worse. He clarified in detail. What did you say? To have sex with your mate? My eyes widened at his words. What have you done to me, Grayson? So that won't happen with me, right? It only happens with she-wolves, right? I prayed to God that the answer was yes. Angel, I don't know that. We have to wait. He stood up and put his hands inside the pockets of his jeans, and I stood up in response. Why did you do that, Grayson? You should have at least asked me first. Why? Is this the punishment for my escape? Are you happy now? I started to pound his chest with my fists in frustration. Grayson's POV She was crying badly and hitting my chest, but I didn't feel any pain for her fragile arms were like flower petals to me. I grabbed her hands and suddenly pushed her to bed. She fell on the bed and I hovered over her small frame. She started breathing heavily. Her boobs were pressed to my chest. I could sense her heart beating rapidly, and I could her boobs moving up and down accordingly. I marked her, so I could mate with her easily, but I controlled it. 
She started to wiggle around again. I pressed down her hands to the sides of her head, making her start to sob again. Your sobs are making me harder, Angel. I know that you can feel my juniors getting excited to claim you. It screams to be inside of you and feel you. If you don't want it to happen now, please stop crying. I whispered in her ear. I felt her goosebumps on her skin and she slowly stopped crying. I licked the place Damon marked her on her neck and it made a tingling sensation run through my body. Knowing well, she could feel it too. I kissed her forehead, cheeks, and came to her lips, but she turned her head aside quickly. You need to have a bath and change. I'll come back later. I slowly stood up from her body. I hate you, she yelled out and ran to the bathroom. I love you, I replied with a smile. My new mission was to find out who helped her to get her passport and tickets. Be prepared for the last days of your life. The big bad Alpha's coming for you. Let's see who the betrayer is. Who wants to see their Luna vanish from here? Chapter 26 Bring the Traitor to Me Grayson's POV I went to see Stephen. He was sitting on the sofa watching TV. As soon as he saw me approaching, he turned off the TV. Alpha, how's Luna? I heard her scream and curse. Stephen scratched his neck uncomfortably. I marked her. I sat on the sofa and shrugged my shoulders. You what? You marked her? Alpha, why did you do that? I knew Stephen was worried about her since he liked her. I didn't have any choice, Stephen. Damon needed to take the control of her, and I allowed him. Besides, I didn't see any other option other than marking and making her ours. I sighed and put my legs on the ottoman. But I don't think it's correct, Alpha. Marking without the consent of our mate is not acceptable, he said, shaking his head disappointingly. Then what should I have done, Stephen? Tell me. I needed her with me. We both need each other, and she'll understand it sooner or later, I explained. You have a job to do, Gamma. I looked at him in my raised brows, my commanding voice making an appearance. Just command me, Alpha, Stephen sat upright, ready for my instruction. I found out that Xenia got her passport back and a ticket back to her country. I know that she didn't and couldn't have done this alone. Someone among us must have helped her. I need to know who and why. Find the betrayer and bring him or her to me. My Alpha Command voice instructed. Hmm. All right, Alpha. Give me 24 hours, I'll do it. Now I'm feeling sleepy, so I'm going to bed. Stephen said and headed back to his room. I went to look for some medicine for the wrists and ankles of my angel. Once I found them, I went back to the room. She was sleeping and her light snoring sounded like a beautiful song to me, making me smile by just looking at her. I lightly applied the cream and wrapped a bandage around her wrists as well as her ankles. I noticed her mark on the neck and a proud feeling washed over me, my lips curving into a small smile. I had a hot bath, jumped into my boxers, and hopped into bed, hugging my angel from behind. Soon, Sleep came to me within just a few minutes. Xenia's POV When I woke up in the morning, I felt oddly fresh. I've never felt this kind of freshness before in my life. I turned around and saw that the bed was empty. Grayson must be gone for some work. My wrists and ankles were feeling better. I saw them wrapped neatly in bandages. I covered my neck wound with band-aid I found so others wouldn't see it, the place where he marked me. I got out of bed, headed to the bathroom, and got ready to go down for the breakfast. But when I opened the bedroom door, a handsome tall man standing outside it greeted me. Good morning, Luna. I'm your personal bodyguard. I'll be with you when Alpha's not around. Alpha strictly commanded me to stay with you at all times. He bowed before me with respect. Great, Xenia. Now you have a bodyguard, too. I feel like I'm a VIP now. 
I went down to the kitchen to have my breakfast, and the table was already prepared. Good morning, Luna. Please take a seat. The chef greeted me. Good morning. Have you all had breakfast? I asked, taking a seat at the table. Not yet, Luna. We'll have it after you have your breakfast, he replied. Good morning, Luna. Stephen approached the table with a big smile. There comes our young, handsome Gamma, the chef laughed at him. What's happened to your wrists, Luna? Are you okay? Why they're wrapped with bandages? He questioned me, worry filling his voice. Your alpha tied me to the bed, so I can't go anywhere. I struggled with them, and they became wounded. Forget it. Where's Grayson? I asked, picking up a glass of fresh watermelon juice. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Luna. Alpha was very angry when he saw that you tried to escape. But he loves you so much, so he won't hurt you. Alpha has gone out for work. He'll be here before evening. Are you starting to miss him? Ooh, that's called love, Luna. Stephen teased me, chuckling away. Stop it and eat your breakfast. I rolled my eyes at him. We had our breakfast and Stephen said he had some important work to do. I felt bored and headed to the garden. Unfortunately, everywhere I went, my bodyguard was not far away, roaming around me. Grayson must be appointed him to check about me. Don't worry, I won't run away from here. You can go and do your own work. I instructed him. Luna, this is my job. Alpha appointed me for you. If I don't do my job properly, Alpha will shred me into pieces. He bowed his head slightly with a smile. Is your Alpha so tough and bad? I gave him a questioning look. Luna, Alpha's a very kind person. He does not get angry quickly. He has good control. He cares about the pack and all of us. He loves you a lot, but he's scared that if you run away from him, you will get hurt. Please don't hate him, Luna, he pleaded. I sighed and continued my work in the garden. I suddenly felt a pain in my chest exactly where my heart was. Luna, what happened? Are you okay? The bodyguard asked due to my sudden scream. I feel a pain right in my chest. I screamed and squeezed the left side of my chest. I feel like someone's stabbing me with needles. Luna, we must go inside. You're in pain. He advised and approached me to help me to get up. What happened? Why is Luna screaming? Stephen came running. Stephen, ah, there's a continuous pain in my chest. It's like someone's stabbing me with needles. Ugh. Please help me. I cried out, tears streaming down my face. Luna, we must go inside. I'll call the pack doctor. Stephen and the bodyguard helped me into the mansion to the bedroom. I squirmed and moved uncomfortably on the bed my whole body starting to sweat. I need water, Stephen. Please give me some water. Ah! I screamed again. Luna, please tolerate the pain. I'll ask Alpha to come home as soon as possible. Stephen comforted with a worried tone. I noticed that he closed his eyes for a few minutes. Luna, I mind linked the pack doctor. He'll be here soon. Hang on. I know it hurts. Stephen's eyebrows were furrowed and his eyes sad. The pack doctor came within few minutes hurriedly. Doctor, please check her. An alpha ordered me to ask you to give her an anesthesia injection, so she will be unconscious for a few hours until alpha comes. Stephen instructed the pack doctor. First, I'll check the Luna. The doctor checked my pulse and blood pressure. Did alpha mark you, Luna? The doctor asked. I nodded my head, agreeing with his question. Luckily, Stephen was the only one in the room beside the doctor. I think their bond has become stronger now. If one is in pain, then the other will also feel it. Alpha must be in pain now or he must be doing something painful. I'll give anesthesia to Luna, so she'll feel better, the doctor explained. I watched the doctor pull out a needle and give me an injection. Within a few minutes, I fell unconscious. Grayson's POV 
Stevens mind-linked me suddenly and said that my angel was in pain. I know it's because I marked her and now she feels the pain that I feel. You must be wondering that what the pain is. You'll understand later. Stephen explained that she was sleeping due to anesthesia. I felt relieved, and in the evening, Stephen alerted me that he had found out who helped Xenia get her passport and tickets. He requested me to come and look with my own eyes. So I headed to the mansion and quickly went to my bedroom. My angel was still sleeping like a doll. Happy that I saw her, I went to meet Stephen. What did you find? I asked Stephen. Alpha. I checked every CCT footage. He won't believe who was the culprit. Here, have a look yourself. Stephen moved aside, revealing the screen. He started to play the CCTV footage of my mansion's vault room. I saw Michelle enter it and come out after a few minutes. I knew it. I guessed that it must have been her. I gritted my teeth angrily. I don't understand. Why did she do that? Stephen scratched his forehead in confusion. She has a crush on me, but I warned her several times that I'm not interested in her and I am waiting for my mate. That bitch tried to separate my mate from me. My breathing started to accelerate wildly in fury. Bring her. I want to shred that traitor into pieces. Damon exclaimed angrily. Stephen, do not tell this to anyone. And tomorrow morning I want that bitch to be here. I instructed Stephen. Okay, Alpha, I'll do it. Stephen nodded his head and left the room. I headed back up to see my angel. When I entered the room, she was already awake. Angel, how are you feeling now? Do you need something? I asked, sitting on the bed next to her. I'm hungry, and I don't know what happened to me. I had unbearable pain in my chest. It's like dozens of needles were going through my body at once she explained to me. I lifted her a little bit up and put a pillow on the headboard behind her. Wait, I'll bring you food. It's already 9 p.m. I patted her head and went to the kitchen. I asked the chef to prepare a healthy meal for the Luna, and he happily did it. When I returned to the room, she was deep in thought that she didn't notice that I had entered the room. Baby girl, come, I'll feed you. I started to feed her. Are you angry with me? She asked me suddenly with her sad puppy eyes. No. How could I be angry with you? You are my love. Just forget about it. Here, finish your food, Angel. I fed her fruits. Grayson, I finally understand that I can't deny my destiny. This is where I belong. I know that the dreams I had will never be achieved. I know trying for another escape is suicide. Besides, you've marked me also. I don't know what will happen to me and I'm in a place I never imagined I would be. But I'll try to adjust to the environment, to you and your pack. However, I'm not sure that I can be a so-called Luna for you. I need you to promise me something, Grayson. She explained in detail with a low tone and looked into my eyes. Tell me, Angel, what is it? I cupped her cheeks. It may take time for me to be a perfect partner for you. It may take time for things that happens between couples to happen to us. But until that happens, please don't force me for anything, Grayson. I have already gone through a lot. If you force me for that also, I'll choose death then, she said. A tear slowly rolled down her cheek and I brushed it away with my thumb. I promise you, Angel, I won't force you for anything like that. Please don't mutter a word about death. I can't live for a second without you. I kissed her forehead fervently. I want to walk outside for a little bit. I want to breathe fresh air. I passed out for hours. She slowly stood up from the bed. Come, let's go outside. I took her hand. We both went outside. It was really calm at night as most of the members were already sleeping, while only a few were still awake. I want to see the entire property around the mansion, she insisted while walking. Baby girl, it's much bigger than you think. Besides, it's already late and we can't walk outside here for a long time. I'll show you the rest of the borders another day, okay? 
I patted her head. These are the quarters for the Omegas and the rest of the helpers of the mansion. I led her to the servant quarters. It was a big flat I had made for my helpers with every facility for them to live comfortably. Ah, mm, yes, yes. All of a sudden, we started to hear a woman's moan. Grayson, what is that noise? She asked with a questioning look on her face. Um, it's, uh, it's nothing, baby. I scratched my head nervously. Soon we heard a loud growl, followed by a man's voice. I want to punish you so badly. Don't you think we need to go there and find out what's going on? She asked worriedly. Uh. Once again a pleasure moan was heard. Grayson, that woman is screaming. I think we need to help her. That Matt is going to kill her. She pulled my hand and started leading me there. No, no, Angel, it's a matter of between maids. We do not need to interfere, I quickly explained, dragging her away. What kind of alpha are you? A woman from your pack is in trouble and you are saying that don't need to go there. She looked at me in shock and confusion. Baby girl, they're having sex. Those are pleasurable moans, so you... <sighs> Daddy, fuck me so hard and so deep, baby. I love your big cock, Daddy. It's fucking awesome in my pussy. The woman's moaned before I could finish my sentence. I'm gonna fuck you so hard until you can't walk for a week, baby. I wanna lick your pink pussy. Your boobs are dancing when I fuck you hard, baby. Oh, I'm coming, baby. Daddy's gonna come for you. The man's voice cried out. Yes, yes. Come for me, Daddy. Come in my pussy. Give me your hot, sticky cum. The woman exclaimed in pleasure. After that, we heard them panting tiredly. She looked at me with her mouth wide open mouth and her eyes widened. I think we should go inside now. It's getting cold here, she suddenly said and turned to go inside. I quickly pulled her to my chest. Now, don't you want to see them? I whispered in her ear with my husky voice. Are you crazy? Gee, who wants to see that? Her voice quivered. <laughs> then let's go inside. I laughed and kissed her forehead. Don't forget that we have work to do tomorrow. Damon reminded me. Of course I remember. I will not spare that bitch. I assured him and headed back to the bedroom to sleep. Chapter 27 because you act like a Luna. Xenia's POV I woke up to see that it was already nine in the morning. Why Grayson didn't wake me up? Usually he would wake me up before 8 a.m. and remind me that having breakfast in the morning was good for a healthy life. But today, where is he? I stood up and went to the balcony. I could see almost every pack member who was working in the mansion gathered below. What's happening? Why didn't Grayson wake me up? Does it have nothing to do with me? Never mind, Xenia. Must be some pack meeting that you aren't allowed to attend. So I went to the bathroom and had a shower. I got prepared and went down for breakfast. To my surprise, there was no one in the kitchen nor in the mansion. Everyone was at the meeting. I was really hungry, so I started having my breakfast alone. No, Alpha. Please don't do that. I heard a familiar voice plead. Who is that? Wait, that sounds like Michelle. Oh no. I ran to the place where the gathering was happening. I watched from afar and saw that Grayson, Stephen, and Cade were addressing the pack members, and Michelle was on her knees in front of Grayson's feet, crying terribly. Grayson's eyes were sharp, filled with anger and disgust. Oh no. I must do something. I squeezed through the crowd and went to Grayson hurriedly. Grayson, what are you doing? Why Michelle's crying and on her knees? My voice was shaking in fear. Angel, I think you know better than me why this traitor is here. Grayson said with an evil smirk on his face. No, I, I don't know. 
I looked at Michelle with pity. Senya, please save me. Please help me. Michelle pleaded, sobbing uncontrollably. How dare you to call your Luna by her name? Kate slapped her and Michelle fell to the ground. The sound of the slap echoed through the whole ground, and no one dared to say even a word. How dare you to raise your hand to a woman, Kate? You think you're a real man, huh? I ran to Michelle and helped her stand up. Her cheek had a terrible bruise. But Luna, she's a traitor. Kate tried to justify his action. Traitor or not, you don't have any right to raise your hand to a woman. I yelled back angrily. Angel, I think you should go back to your room. There's no need to poke your nose here. This is pack business. Grayson suggested coldly. Oh, really, Grayson? So now I'm out of your pack, huh? So why do you want me to be your Luna, then? No. I'm not going anywhere until you tell me the reason she's here. I rudely spoke to Grayson with my hands on my hips. Fine. You want to know, right? Then listen. She helped you to find your passport and arrange a return ticket to your motherland. She betrayed the pack. She supported Luna to run away from the pack. She put the whole pack in danger. She knew that without a Luna, the pack would be nothing. Still, she helped you to escape. Grayson's voice echoed the whole compound. She helped me because she loves you, Grayson. Don't you see her love for you? Why don't you choose someone that loves you? Not that you love, I said to him. Oh, really, Angel? Now you're talking about love? You can see her love, but not mine? Grayson held up my chin in his hand. Alpha, with all due respect, I think you should take Luna back to the room. It's not nice to talk your personal things in front of the pack. Stephen advised Grayson. I realized that Grayson's breathing had accelerated. Okay, fine. Please don't punish her. She did what I asked her to do. If you want to punish her, then punish me. I am the culprit. I ran away from you. I should be punished ten times more than her. I looked down and expected any punishment given by them. We'll talk about this later, sunshine. Now please go inside. I have to banish her from our pack. She must go rogue. Grayson's tone was firm. What do you mean by a rogue? I asked with my knitted eyebrows. Luna. It means she's no longer a pack member of Redwood Warriors Pack. She's banned from the pack, Stephen explained. No, please, Alpha, don't do that. I'm begging you. Please, forgive me. Give me any punishment, but I can't go rogue, please. Michelle cried bitterly. Grayson, please don't do this. Please listen to me for this one time. If you do this, her life will be hell. I promise that I'll stay with you forever. But please, don't punish her. I begged Grayson and fell on the ground, holding on to his legs. I don't want to see someone punished for my doings. Baby girl, what are you doing? No, stand up. He held my shoulders and lifted me up. Please, Grayson, I'm begging you, don't do this. I requested. Tears flowing down my face. All right, fine. I won't kick you out from the pack, but your old titles as a warrior will be relinquished. You are just another member of the pack. And everyone here should keep in their mind that if they betray me again, the consequences will not be good. Grayson roared, and everyone bowed to him. Michelle, you are not allowed to talk to or even look at Luna in the future. Cade warned. Okay. Thank you, Alpha, for your kindness. I won't do it again. Michelle stood up gratefully. Everyone, back to your work. Grayson instructed, and they all bowed again, going off to do their work. I looked down with an empty feeling. I thanked God for saving Michelle. I closed my eyes and took a deep breath. Suddenly, two strong arms carried me up. I opened my eyes and saw that Grayson had taken me in his arm like a bride, carrying me inside the mansion. I didn't want to look at him, 
but through the corner of my eye I could see that he was looking at me. We came to our bedroom and he put me on the bed gently. Angel, why did you do that? Why did you protect her? She needs to be kicked out. I'm sure that she'll pull another stunt. If she does so, I'll kill her. Grayson's knuckles have turned white due to his heavy clench. Forget it. Do you know why I forgave her? He kissed the back of my palm. Maybe you want to punish me on behalf of her. I looked down at my hands worriedly. Do you think that I can punish you? I love you so much, Angel. I can't punish you. I gave her a chance because I saw your Luna characteristics. You are the Luna for them. You are here to guide me. Your kind heart. Your bravery to talk to me in front of my pack. Your caring for other members of the pack showed me that you can be a perfect Luna for them, as my mom was. They will be really proud of you if they hear this. He looked at me, his eyes soft and full of pride. I looked at him with a surprised look. I didn't have any intention to become a Luna. I was not greedy for power. I don't want to see others get punishment for my wrongdoings. That's why I spoke. I looked at his eyes. Those green eyes had many emotions for me which I can't understand right. Grayson, I need to talk to my parents. I think I should tell them the truth. I suddenly blurted out. No, Angel, not yet. They won't believe all this. Many humans don't know that we exist. They think that we are a fantasy like Twilight. You can talk to your parents, but don't tell them yet. He kneeled near the bed and took my hands in his. Angel, we're leaving for the pack house after lunch. I have some pack duties there. Besides, we have to get used to living in both places, Grayson said. Okay, I'll pack my things. For how long are we going to be there? I asked him curiously. Maybe for a week, baby girl. He got up and stood up straight. Okay, how about your things? I mean, your clothes and all. I looked at him, waiting for his response. He looked at me with a surprised look, puzzled by my question. Are you asking if you should pack my things also, Angel? His eyes turned soft. Yes, if you don't mind, that is. Or else you can pack your things yourself. I explained and stood up. No, Angel. Please pack my things, too. You have every right on me, Your Highness. He replied, dramatically bowing to me. I smiled at his actions and started packing his clothes first. I wondered about his wardrobe, not only for him, but also the wardrobe he had prepared for me. There are so many brands that I never even heard of. I slowly packed his things and then my clothes, too. Grayson never allowed me to wear pajamas. He always wanted to wear his clothes and sleep. We had our lunch and then went to the pack house. When we reached, every pack member was waiting impatiently to see us. I think they love Grayson a lot. His parents were also there. My darling, I was waiting to see you again. She took my hand and led me inside. Mom, where are you taking her? Grayson asked with a troubled face. We want to have a ladies' talk. And why are you so impatient? She's with you for 24 hours. I'm taking her for a few minutes. You go and check around with Dad, Mrs. Lockwood said with a fake arrogant tone. Grayson scratched his head with confusion and went with his dad. I smiled at his childish act. Mrs. Lockwood then took me to their bedroom. Sweetheart, come sit here. She patted the bed to sit on it. Mrs. Lockwood, why did you bring me here? I asked while looking around. Xenia, honey, Grayson told me about your running away incident. She held my hand and I immediately looked down with a guilty feeling. Mrs. Lockwood, this life was something I never expected. I had my own life and my own plans. I looked at her face to see her looking at me in pity. Honey, I know. I can understand. I know these things are a big shock for you. I can understand you as a woman. But honey, I must tell you that Grayson waited more than ten years to find his mate. We all thought that he wasn't destined to be mated. Me, 
My friends and some huge reputed families brought marriage proposals to him dozens of times, but he never raised his eye and looked at another girl. He always said that he can feel that he is blessed with a mate. We wolves are dead without our mate, Xenia. You are Grayson's life, Xenia. You will understand it with the time, sweetie. Mrs. Lockwood's voice was very emotional. I'll try my best, Mrs. Lockwood. I need some time for that, I replied with a smile. One more thing, Xenia. Call me mom if you can. I always loved a daughter. You are my daughter, honey. You can tell me anything. She patted my head lovingly and we both came out of the room. Soon it was evening time. Grayson called a pack meeting for every member and I also went along. Good evening, everyone. Do you know that why I called a meeting in a hurry? He questioned the crowd. I like Grayson's leadership qualities. He has that personality that suits a leader. Everyone started to mumble something with each other. Guys, it's our Redwood Fun Week. It's starting in three days. You all can practice until the week begins. I heard an ear-piercing cheer from the crowd. What does that mean? Never mind, I'll ask him later. As usual, there are games for everyone including children, couples, and mates. Oh, and guess what? This year I am participating with my mate for each game allocated for mates. Once again, the crowd cheered enthusiastically. Woo! Go Alpha and Luna! I heard their happy cheering. Grayson, what do you mean by Redwood Fun Week? I asked Grayson secretly. Oh, it's a fun week for every Redwood member, including games, baby girl. Don't worry, I'm there with you. He winked at me. And the winners get free tickets for stay a week in Paris, the city of romance. All the expenses will be paid by the pack house. The crowd erupted in cheers. All right, Redwood members. Now get ready for the week and good night to all. Grayson wished and got down from the stage. Unfortunately, I was so engrossed with the cheering and happy chats going on that I didn't realize that two red eyes were looking at me in fuming anger. The only motivation of those eyes was just to destroy me into pieces. Chapter 28 Look, Alpha got a tattoo. Xenia's POV I woke up in the morning to see Grayson not beside me on the bed. How can he wake up early in the morning? Don't they sleep all night? Why should I get tired of thinking about him? I got up from the bed and saw a rose near the dressing table. It has a note. Angel, good morning. As soon as you woke up, freshen up and come down. I'm waiting for you, said the note from Grayson. I sighed, headed to the bathroom, and got dressed in a long dress before heading down. The aroma that came from the kitchen was different that day. Why is that? Are they making something special? Let's see. I looked around, but Grayson was not there. Good morning, Luna, the chef greeted me. Good morning. Where's Alpha? I asked while sitting at the table. Oh, Alpha went for a run, Luna, but he ordered me to take care of your breakfast. He started to serve me. Today's food looks different. The chef brought juice and other foods. On each and every food plate, a piece of rolled paper was tied with a red ribbon. I started to open them one by one. Angel, your lips are pinkish red like this watermelon juice. I'm sure those are tastier than this. I blushed as soon as I read his note. Then I took the omelette plate and opened the note attached to it. Sunshine. To create a perfect omelette, there are few key ingredients that must be mixed together. Likewise, you two are a mix of perfect qualities. I was amazed by his poetical thoughts. I slowly took a bite of the omelette and moaned in pleasure due to the tasty omelette. Today's omelette's awesome. It's much more delicious than the other days. What's the secret? I asked the chef. That's because your love prepared your breakfast today. Before the chef could answer, Grayson's husky voice whispered in my ear. 
My whole body started to generate a sensational feeling so early in the morning. Goosebumps started to rise all over, and I turned to look at him. He quickly took me onto his lap and laced his arms around my waist. The chef left the place with a smile. Grayson, don't behave like a five-year-old kid. You are an adult, the alpha of the pack. Behave maturely, I said, slapping his arm softly. Oh, I like this child act. If I'm a child with my mate, then let it be. He nuzzled my neck and smelled me. Rather than having breakfast, my stomach started to give me a ticklish feeling. So you prepared the breakfast today? I asked him while having a croissant. Yes. I woke up early in the morning and you were sleeping like a baby. I prepared your breakfast and went for a run. He kissed the back of my palm. Feed me also. I'm hungry. I started to feed him also. No matter how big he was, but he still behaved childishly in front of me. Grayson, I thought to explore the pack house and its borders. Otherwise, I'll get bored with nothing to do here, I explained. Hmm, seems like a good idea, Angel. I'll allocate She-Wolf for you, so she'll explain everything you want to know, Grayson said with a smile. Grayson, thank you. My lips curled into a grateful smile. We finished the breakfast and Grayson took me to introduce the She-Wolf for my pack house tour. Luna, I'm Maria. It's an honor to be with you and introduce you to the pack house territories. The She-Wolf bowed before me. Hi, Maria. Call me Xenia. I shook her head. Stop telling your name to everyone. Only I have the right for that. If any tongue rolled your name out, I'll make sure that they won't speak again. You are Luna to them, Angel. Grayson whispered in my ear, possessive of my name. Grayson, stop being so possessive and obsessive. I rolled my eyes at him. Take your Luna for a pack house tour. Make sure she stays safe. And do not move away from her for even a second. Understood? If Luna faces any trouble, you will be responsible. Grayson instructed in an authoritative tone. Yes, Alpha. I understand. Don't worry, I'll make sure Luna enjoys herself. Maria replied and bowed to him. Angel, be safe and be careful. I'll be here on the ground to practice for the games. Grayson cupped my cheeks and kissed my forehead, leaving me alone with the Maria. So, shall we start, Maria? I asked with a smile. Sure, Luna. First, we will begin with the ground floor of the pack house. Basically, there are parking lots for the vehicles and storerooms. Maria showed me the vehicle garage where many luxury vehicles were parked. It's larger than my house. Most of the vehicles are owned by the Alpha, and the rest of the vehicles belong to other pack members. But Alpha has given the permission to take any luxury vehicle if any member needs them. For example, for when they're going for a date, a romantic dinner, or any other special outings with their mate. Isn't he so good, Luna? I mean, I'm hoping that my mate should be like him. Maria explained with a big smile on her face. Hmm. I don't need to say anything to her. They all see the good side of him. None of them see the bad side. And actually, he's not bad, right? How old are you, Maria? I questioned her. Oh, I'm 17, Luna and waiting for my Prince Charming to come. <laughs> I love to have a big family with him with many kids. She giggled as her face slowly flushed red. Why don't you want to be an independent woman, Maria, rather than marrying and having kids? All of you have a common goal, have a maid and sex and then kids. That's not the only life a woman should have, I stated, annoyed with the concept. Oh, Luna, you'll understand what I mean when you fall in love with Alpha. You will crave for that. She flashed me a sly smirk and I gave her a displeased look. Okay, let's continue our tour, Luna. We started to climb the staircase to the first floor. So, I hope you already know this place. This is where the kitchen and dining room of the pack is. Then we climbed to the second floor. 
This second floor has the conference room and office rooms, particularly the previous Alpha's office, Alpha Grayson's office, Beta's office, and Gamma's office. I can't go inside since all the office rooms are accessed only by their thumbprint, and only Alpha has the access to every room. Maria pointed at the hallway leading to all the offices. It's okay. I'm not interested in those anyway. I confessed and turned around. Don't say like that, Luna. One day I went into Alpha's office. Trust me. You won't come out once you go in there. It's a beautiful, decent room designed by a famous interior decorator. I could see her eyes lighting up as she described the room. Shall we move to the other floors now? I questioned her and we climbed the staircase to the third floor. Luna, this is the third floor. This has the bedrooms of all the pack members, but only while they're single. Once they find their mate and get married, they move to the other side of the pack house, which is located separately. Maria clarified, and we went for the fourth floor. This floor has the bedroom of Alpha Grayson. I hope you know this already, Luna. It also has the bedrooms of Beta, Gamma, and previous Alpha and Luna. She pointed at the mahogany doors of the bedrooms. Why are their bedrooms are so big? I asked Maria. Hey, Luna. They are wolves. They need large rooms. The bedrooms not only to sleep for them, but also they're very sexually active in their bedroom. She looked at me with a teasing smirk. If you're done, then shall we move to the other floor? I don't know why these wolves always have sex moods. They are so interested to talk about it. Luna, this is the final floor, which is the gym. We have every piece of equipment that is needed for exercises. It was a huge gym, and there were some machines which I had never seen before in my life. Now I know how they all have six packs and the secrets of their healthy life. Luna, the tour of the pack house is completed. Shall we go outside? She requested. Sure, let's move. She started to go down the staircase at the speed of lightning. I got tired and waited there a few minutes on the second floor before continuing down to the ground floor. How do they run so fast? Can't you go slowly? I panted, catching my breath. Sorry, Luna, I forgot about that, she replied guiltily. No, it's okay. That's why I told your alpha to find a perfect she-wolf for him, not me, I joked with a smile. Luna, please don't say like that. To be a Luna, it's not necessary that you must be a wolf. To hold that title, you need qualities, Luna, and we all see those qualities in you and we feel it. Her eyes looked so innocent, and she explained to me what she had noticed. Luna, here's the library. It has many types of books. Come, I'll show you. Maria started to walk fast towards the library. It was a huge library. It reminded me of the library in the Harry Potter movies, the old books, and the huge tall wooden racks. When we entered in, there was no one there. Everyone was busy with a fun week. I looked at the books in the racks. Everything was in alphabetical order. History books, novels, management books, horror novels, and many more. I was amazed to see such a huge library. Do people come and read here? I pulled a book out of the shelf. Yes, of course. Especially kids. Plus, Alphas ordered each member should visit the library at least once a week and read a book. In the beginning, we got bored. But as time went by, it soon became a part of our life. Maria clarified with a smile. Hmm, I would love to sit and read here. My hand brushed over the chair, eager to spend my whole day there. Luna, you can read some other day. Today's your tour day and I am your tour guide, your highness. She dramatically bowed in front of me and a laugh burst from my mouth, making us both laugh. Shall we move to the ground? I nodded and we moved towards the grounds. The grounds were also massive like the other places. It had a pavilion also. When we went there, most of the pack members were training for the fun week. Some were fighting, some were running, and I saw Grayson giving advice to some of them about physical exercises. 
Luna, shall we sit here for a moment? Maria asked me while sitting on a seat in the pavilion. Just watch how they train and you can ask me anything. She took a water bottle and passed it to me. I gulped the whole bottle down, not realizing I was so thirsty. Whoa, Luna, it looks like you were very thirsty. You want me to get you some juice? Maria inquired with a kind tone. No, no, but thanks, Maria. I'm fine with water. Usually I drink a lot of water. I wiped my sweat away with my palm. Within few minutes, an omega came with a tall glass of watermelon juice. The sight of it made my thirst increase. I thanked her and started to drink it. I think Alpha sent you juice. How caring and loving, she exclaimed, cupping her own cheeks in adoration. Suddenly I heard the crowd cheering, but I didn't give them much attention. Luna, you must look. Alpha got a tattoo. Maria cried out and stood up quickly. I started to cough since the juice got stuck in my throat. If he got a tattoo, then it's a usual thing. Why are you so attentive on it and what's so special about it? I gave her an annoying look. Luna, it's your name on his chest, Maria said and ran towards Grayson. What? I cried out and looked towards the grounds. All of them had already surrounded Grayson. I looked at them with my mouth opened wide and my enlarged eyes. All of them were between me and Grayson from time to time. This is totally embarrassing. Why did he remove his shirt? Did he want to show it to others? I looked around and saw that other she-wolves drooling at him. His abs, his biceps, and V-shape that runs down his jeans. None of them are shameful people. Neither Grayson nor these she-wolves. How could they drool at him? Grayson's POV I saw my angel coming to the pavilion with Maria. I looked at them and they were in a chatty mood. I saw my angel gulp down a whole water bottle. She must be thirsty. I knew that she drinks a lot of water every day. I mind-linked the chef to prepare fresh watermelon juice and bring it to her. After a few minutes, an omega came with the juice. I knew she was greedy for watermelon and true enough, she started to drink it quickly. Hey, Alpha, I just want to check your fighting skills and give a demo to them. Cade requested me with a smirk. Not now, Cade. Just give them the instructions about fighting and monitor them. I instructed, turning away. Ooh, looks like Alpha scared. Cade started to tease me. Scared? I don't even know the meaning of scared. Oh, you are challenging the wrong person, Cade. Saying that, we started to circle each other. I saw that my sunshine didn't know that we were going to fight. Cade removed his shirt and I knew I had to, so I removed it. Suddenly, the gathered pack members started to cheer and even Cade flashed me a strange look. You got a tattoo. It's Luna's heart inside a heart with a cupid's arrow. Everyone started to tease me. Ooh, Alpha, you're seriously in love with Luna. Stephen exclaimed while touching my tattoo. I looked at the pavilion and saw Maria running towards me. Other she-wolves were drooling at me while my angel was looking at me with shock. She started to move away quickly from the pavilion. I ran to her at lightning speed and stood in front of her. I watched as she gulped her saliva when I stood in front of her. Where are you going? I asked her, moving closer to her. I'm not here to watch your games. Maria brought me here and then she ran after you removed your shirt. She said, looking down. Why are you not looking at me? I placed my index finger under her chin and lifted it up. Her face was tilted up, but her eyes were still looking down. Angel, look at me, I requested. If you don't look at me, then I'll kiss you passionately in front of everyone. I teased with a naughty smirk. She quickly looked at me. Our eyes met and I knew I could look into her eyes for hours, even days. Grayson doesn't create a scene. Just let me go. I'm not interested in your fighting things, she admitted with an annoying tone. I can see that she was looking at the tattoo. 
So, this is why I got pain in my chest that day? You were doing a tattoo? She questioned. Yes, I wanted one. I was still looking into her eyes. Fine, but there's no need to do these things to show your love for me. She declared and started to walk away from me. I grabbed her hand and stopped her. Can you please sit and watch, Angel? I pleaded. Grayson, I'm not interested in your things, okay? She refused, but I flashed her my puppy eyes. Oh, okay, fine, I'll sit and watch. Where do you want me to sit? She sighed and folded her arms. Over there, at the first row of the pavilion, so I can closely look at you. I took her hand and led her to the first row, which was closer to the ground. Sit here and watch, Angel. Oh, and we have to practice a mating game also. I winked at her. And what the hell is that, Grayson? She demanded. Chapter 29 You Tried to Kill Me Grayson's POV She was looking at me from her seat, and it did make me feel proud. Soon, Kate started to attack me. It was a demo for others, and we didn't have the fight to sharpen our skills for a long time. We, Alphas, Betas, and Gammas were supposed to take a one-year training skill development program before holding a title. There was a separate academy for that. There we learned everything, including martial arts. No shifting, Cade, otherwise Luna will get scared. I looked at my angel as she watched us. Noted, Alpha, Cade said and gave me a flying kick. My attention was on my angel that I didn't see it coming and I fell to the ground. Go, Alpha! Others cheered for me and I got up. Looks like Alpha forgot how to fight. Cade winked at me teasingly. Is that what you think about me, Beta? Oh, we'll see. Once again, we started fighting and I gave a side punch to Kate's ribcage, making him howl in pain. Grayson, what are you doing? He's in pain. Don't hurt each other. I saw the worry on her face. Oh, Luna, it's just a warm-up. Now you'll see the real fight. Cade said to her and he tried to give me an axe kick from my head. I blocked it, locked his leg in my hands and started to circle him in the air by grabbing his leg. Suddenly my hand slipped and Cade got thrown out from my hand. He flew like a speed of an arrow and landed on my angel. For a moment I couldn't imagine what happened. I saw that pack member started to run towards her and I ran into her too. Move everyone! I screamed to others. I saw the scene that I had never expected. Cade struck my angel's body. And with the weight of Cade, her chair had broken while she was still seated. Those chairs were made with steel bars and plastic seats. Cade was a strong person and due to his weight, the chair broke and one steel bar pierced through her left thigh muscle. There was a small head injury on her forehead too. Grayson, ah, it hurts, it hurts a lot, she screamed while looking at her injured leg. Her eyes enlarged with horror when she saw the steel bar poking out of her leg. Angel, look at me. Don't look there. I cupped her cheeks and made her look at me. But she looked stunned with shock. Alpha, I'm so sorry. I don't know what happened. I didn't do anything intentionally. Kate said, a guilty feeling appearing on his face. No, Kate. Actually, my hand got slipped. I admitted. <sighs> it hurts, Grayson. I don't want to die. Please do something. She yelled in pain. Stephen, bring the pack doctor immediately. I commanded. Okay, Alpha. He went to bring the pack doctor. I can't bear this pain, Grayson. My leg is hurting. She was crying, clenching my skin and biting me. I knew the pain must be unbearable. Oh, my God, Grayson, what happened? Mom and Dad approached us. Oh, sweetheart, don't worry. Nothing's going to happen to you. Mom patted her head comfortingly. Grayson, I'm begging you. Please do something. It's hurting me. I couldn't bear to see the way she was crying. Alpha, what happened? The pack doctor came and asked. 
I told him everything. Doctor, please do something. It's really painful. Blood kept oozing from her wound. Alpha, we have to remove the steel bar first. Only you can remove it. Give Luna something hard to bite on, then we can pull it out, the pack doctor advised. What? Are you crazy? What kind of a doctor are you? At least give me anesthesia and then pull. Her body started shaking in fear. Sunshine, the doc is right. We have to pull it now. Bite my hand and Doc will pull it, I told her, offering her my arm. No, never. Grayson, it hurts so much even now when you're talking about pulling it through my thigh muscle. No, please don't do it, she cried bitterly. Doc, pull it when she bites my hand. I forcefully made her bite my hand and nodded my head to the Doc as a signal to pull the steel bar. She closed her eyes in anticipation. Doc started to pull it, and she began screaming like hell as her bite on my arm became stronger. Bite me, my angel, as much as you want. Release your pain to me. I patted her head and started telling her soothing words. Don't look there and close your eyes. Just listen to my voice, angel. She kept screaming and biting. I could feel my hands starting to bleed due to her rough bite. It's done, Alpha. As soon as the steel bar came out, blood started to flow from the wound and she slowly dozed off. I took her into my arms and ran to the pack hospital. Immediately she was taken to the operation theater. I went in too and held her hand until the operation ended. I never thought something like this could happen. If I knew, I would have let her go back into the pack house. Rather than keeping her on the pavilion. It's because of you our mate got hurt. Damon said. His voice was mixed with anger and sadness. He was worried about her, as was I. I know. I just want to punish myself for my carelessness. I admitted to him. Alpha, the operation's over and successful. Luna will regain her consciousness within next few hours. The doctor explained, and she was admitted to the special care room. I sat next to her bed and took her hand in mind. I could see a dry tear mark from her eye to ear. I'll never forgive myself if anything happens to you, my angel. I kissed her forehead and kissed the back of her palm. Grayson, son, it's getting close to midnight. You have to eat something. Dad came to the room with Mom. Their faces were gloomy and Mom seemed really worried about my angel. I knew she loved her. I'm not eating anything until she opens her eyes and has something for her little tummy. I replied. I didn't let her hand out of my hand. I sat near her bed and patted her head, cursing myself for being such a reckless person. What if anything happens to her? I caressed her cheeks, kissed her forehead, and asked for her forgiveness more than thousands of times. Without my knowledge, a tear rolled down my cheek. Water. Water. I heard a whispering sound of my angel. I looked at her to see that she was gaining consciousness. I looked at the time to see that it was six o'clock in the morning. Angel, you want water, right? Wait, I'll give you water. I took the glass of water and tried to put it to her lips. No, go away from me, you murderer. You tried to kill me. She threw the glass and it broke when it hit the floor. Angel, what are you talking about? My heart clenched in pain at her accusation of being a murderer. You tried to kill me. Tell me, you added poison to that water also, didn't you? She screamed. I don't understand what you're talking about, Sunshine. My jaw dropped at her words. You tried to kill me because you wanted to punish me for trying to run away from you, right? You threw Kate at me to show others that it was an accident. But luckily I survived and now you've added poison to the water. She yelled, crying bitterly. Are you happy now? Your foolishness is pushing her away from us now. Damon's voice was mixed with anger and sadness. No, Angel. How could I do that to you? You are my life. I moved to touch her cheek, but she shrugged my hand off. Go away, you monster. Never come closer to me. 
she shrieked. What happened, sweetheart? Mom came running to the room. Your son tried to kill me. I hate him. I hate you all. You all tried to punish me for running away. Tears were pouring like a waterfall from her eyes. Angel, please don't say that. Your words are killing me. My heart was crushed and in pain. Never have I ever felt that much pain. Go away from here, you murderer! She screamed to me, pointing towards the door. Alpha, please, can you stay outside for a while? It's not good for our health to scream like this, the doc advised me. I went out sadly. Am I a murderer? I love her so much. I could hear Mom try to console her. She was crying, screaming, and cursing at me. Why, God, why? Why do you punish me in this way? What have I done to you? I waited for my mate for more than ten years, and now I have her, but she hates me. After some time, the doctor came out. How is she? I asked, worried about her. Oh, she's fine, but to heal her wound quickly, your touch on her body is necessary, especially since you recently marked her. She needs your touch. According to my experience, you both need each other at the moment. But Luna doesn't like to even see you, Alpha. You are a silver wolf, Alpha. If you can lick her wound, it will heal faster. But to do that first, Luna must allow you to touch her. I gave her medicine and she's sleeping now. You can take her home tomorrow, try to console her, and stay in touch with her. Doc advised and left me alone. Angel, why are you punishing yourself? Please allow me to heal you. We both are suffering. Alpha, how's Luna? Kate and Stephen approached me. She's sleeping. She's accusing me of trying to murder her. I looked down sadly. I am totally broken now. What? Alpha, shall we talk to Luna? I'll explain it to her, Kate offered. No, let her calm down first. I sighed deeply and ran my hand through my hair. But Alpha, you both need each other. Plus, you recently marked her and she can't reject you. If so, you both die. I could see that Stephen was extremely worried. No, give her some space. I won't show my face to her for a few days. She'll come to me. She has to. My voice was firm but weak. Grayson, son, she's sleeping. What are we going to do now? Mom asked as she came out of the room. Mom, the doctor said that tomorrow she can be discharged from the hospital. I need you to take her to the pack house. I need you to take care of her since she won't allow me to go near her. I'll allocate a personal nurse for her care too. Mom, promise me that you look after her, I pleaded, my eyes close to tears. But where are you going, son? she asked. I'm going nowhere, Mom. I'll be there, but I can't come near her until she gives me permission, I said and turned around to go to the room. I went in and saw my innocent angel sleeping. She was so naive. I kissed her forehead for a long time, her cheeks and the back of her palm too. You'll come to me, angel. You have to. If our maid bond is strong and my love is true, you will come to me. Chapter 30 My Child, I Am the Moon Goddess Grayson's POV I went for a run to calm myself and my wolf. Usually, I get calm by a long run. But today, Damon is impatient and he's not talking to me. I gave him a chance to blow off some steam and I shifted in the middle of the jungle. My large silver wolf came out and he was pissed. I knew it was because our mate hates both of us. A wolf is nothing without his or her mate. After ten years, I finally had my angel in my arms. But due to my one careless action, now she was trying to run away from me. I knew that I could give her freedom. But if I did, she would definitely die because I marked her. As soon as she goes away from me, she would die and no one on earth would be able to save her. I want to kill someone. Damon disturbed my train of thoughts. We can't kill anyone for no reason, Damon. 
I warned him. Wait, there's a deer. I saw an innocent deer eating leaves from a tree, but when Damon tried to attack, another young-looking deer came. No, wait, they're a pair. Don't harm to them, I instructed Damon. As soon as we tried to retreat, we heard the sound of a twig breaking and saw that a tiger was going to attack the deer pair. You wanted to hurt someone, Damon? Here's your chance. Damon wickedly smiled and jumped to the tiger. The deer pair ran away in fright as we fought with the tiger and killed it. Happy now? I asked Damon. Feeling better now. Let's go, he said, smiling at his victory. Alpha, Luna was discharged from the hospital and brought to the pack house. Come quickly. Cade mind linked me. Cade, I need some clothes. I went for a run. Meet me at the border of the pack house. I requested him to bring some clothes for me. I met Cade, got dressed, and went to my office room. There I could see my angel through the CCTV. She was sitting on the bed and I could see her gloomy face. The brightness of her face was no more there. She stood up and she fell suddenly. Where was the nurse I allocated? Where the hell did she go? I watched her crawl on the floor since she couldn't walk yet as the wound had not healed yet. And to heal it, she needed me. Mom, Zenya needs you. Where are you? I mind-linked my mom. Grayson, I'm having a bath. What's wrong? She asked hurriedly. Oh, looks like I have to go there. I ran to our bedroom and opened the door. She looked at me, still seated on the floor. Looks like I have to go there. I ran to our bedroom and opened the door. She looked at me, still seated on the floor. Angel, let me help you. You still can't walk. I offered, slowly approaching her. No, I don't want your help and I don't want to see your face. Get lost. Go away from here, you monster. She screamed at me. Rose Petal, please don't say like that. I love you. You need me to heal those wounds. Baby, let me take care of you. I felt close to tears at her words. Grayson? Fuck off from here. I hate you. Her words hit me hard like someone was stabbing me with dozens of swords. I slammed the door and went to look for that nurse. I'll kill her for her mistake of not being there for my angel. On the way to my office room, I met the nurse. Where the hell have you been? Did you go to fuck someone? Answer me. I grabbed her neck and tightened my grip on it. She was trying to breathe, her legs and hands waving in the air. Alpha, stop. You're trying to kill her. Kate came running to me, and after struggling with me, he finally managed to release my hand from the nurse's neck. Her face had turned blue due to lack of oxygen, and she was coughing. Tell me. Where were? You. I growled at her, the roof of the pack house vibrating. Alpha, I went to take the medicines for Luna. She answered me between coughing. She fell on the floor. She was crawling, suffering, and you left her? I'll kill you if this thing happens again. I gave her a death glare. Alpha, you need to calm down. I know you and your wolf are broken inside. It's a terrible pain when your mate hates you. But Alpha, you need to maintain your qualities as the Alpha, and I am sure Luna can't hold herself for more than two or three days. She has to come to you. Kay tried to explain the situation. I looked down and sighed. He's right. I am in no peace until she comes to me. Xenia's POV I couldn't bear the pain in my leg. Two days had passed, but it didn't go away no matter how much medicine and painkillers I took. I could see the wound from time to time when the nurse came to change the bandage dressing. It had become red and swollen. Why won't my wound heal? I asked the nurse. Luna, sorry to say, but you need Alpha to heal this, she replied while changing the bandage. And why is that? My voice was filled with anger. 
Luna, you're marked now. And to heal any wound, you need your mate's love, touch, and especially his saliva. She explained calmly. What? Why does the mate bond come first for everything? This is a joke. Fine then, bring his saliva and cure the wound. I exclaimed in pain. Luna, it's not like that. Alpha has to lick your wound in a very gentle manner. Besides, our Alpha is a silver wolf, so he has stronger healing powers rather than a normal Alpha. You need him, Luna. Only his love and touch can you. No matter how much of these medicines we apply, your wound won't get healed, she said and went out. What kind of a joke is this? Why is my destiny as playing with me like this? I've never done anything wrong to anyone in my life, but I have a cruel destiny. How could I allow him to lick my wound? I hate him. I'll die, but no more Grayson in my life. Soon, it was the third day. My food and everything I need was delivered to my room as I still couldn't walk properly. The wound was aching every time. I started vomiting that morning for no reason. I don't know why but my whole body was in pain and I felt like I was burning. The nurse was removing a bucket of my vomit every two hours. I couldn't eat anything properly. Then I heard something crashing like someone was crashing goods to the floor. A loud thud on the door scared me and the sound of glass shattering made me afraid. I could hear the voices of some people say, Alpha, you need to calm down. Is that Grayson who's breaking the things? What for? Maybe he's angry because I'm not letting him come to me. I smelled like hell. I had vomited on my clothes and I couldn't have a bath due to a wound. The doctor had instructed me not to wet the wound, but nevertheless, the wound was getting worse. It had started to accumulate some fungus, and from time to time I had a high fever. Sleep refused to come to me. Getting up, I went to the balcony with the help of my crutches. I saw a bright sky. The full moon was looking down at me and it was almost close to midnight. I sat on the chair on the balcony and started to look at the sky. I've always loved to watch the night sky. Even my childhood dream was to become an astronaut. Suddenly, I saw a bright light coming towards me from the moon. When it got closer to me, I saw that it was a beautiful woman. Who is she? Am I dreaming? Is that a ghost? That lady kept heading towards me. I felt terrified, but I couldn't run. Fear not, my child, she said with a calm voice. She had long hair and was dressed in a simple white and silver long silk dress. She had a bangle designed in the shape of a moon. Most notably, a bright aura was radiating from her whole body. Who are you? I was scared. I am the one who paired you with Alpha Grayson, she replied with a smile. The moon goddess? My voice came out as a whisper. Yes, my child. I am the one who wolves are worshipping. She smiled at me peacefully. Am I dreaming? So that is true. All the time he talked about you. I thought it was just a myth. I admitted and tried to stand up. Oh, child, you were hurt. Don't try to stand up. Her eyes were full of love and compassion. Why are you here, moon goddess? I asked. My child, I've been watching you two since the day you two met. Alpha Grayson loves you a lot. I saw everything that happened between you two, Xenia. The reason for your wound was just an accident. Grayson is a different alpha from other alphas. He never loved a woman. He never slept with anyone. He purely waited for his mate to come to him. He is showering you with love, Xenia. When I paired you two, I never thought that Grayson would be such a loving mate, and you will be so stubborn. She said with a smile as her hair floating like she was in the water. Xenia, give him a chance. I am sure he will be the best partner ever for you. 
Allow him to heal you, child. Your wound is getting worse, isn't it? Because after marking you, your wound only can be healed by your mate's love. Don't be stubborn, my child, she advised sweetly. I'm scared. What if he changes after I started to love him? What if I have to become a typical housewife for him? What if my freedom goes away? I'm scared that he'll leave me. I don't want to suffer me in my life. I confessed, looking down at my hands. Xenia, my child, do you think I would gift that kind of a man with love? Grayson is a partner that most women want, but I want him to pair with a special person, a unique person like you. Trust me, Xenia, just give him one chance. If he turns his back to you, I promise you that I'll take his wolf back and you will be a free woman. Mark my words, Xenia, she promised. Are you sure? My eyes blinking rapidly, processing her words. Now go to him, my child. He is also suffering without you. May the both of you stay happy forever. She gave me a smile and slowly went back to the dark, disappearing completely. What did I just have? Was that a dream? I pinched myself. Yes, I am alive and not sleeping. She truly came to me. What should I do now? Should I go to him? I checked the time to see that it was three in the morning and my wound was aching like hell. I slowly returned to the room and drank some water. I quietly opened the door and started to go to find Grayson. I was walking with the help of the crutches. My head started to get dizzy and my body was burning. I went to the first floor and saw that he was sitting on the sofa. He turned and looked at me. His handsome face is gone. Dark circles were around his eyes showing that he also didn't sleep for a few days. He stood up, his bare upper body showing, but his usual muscular body wasn't obvious. His hair was scattered and he looked like crap. His condition was almost as bad as mine. I started to walk to him with my trembling body. Grayson's POV I was sitting on the living room sofa. The sleep doesn't come to me. From time to time I would vomit and even the sight of food gave me a disgusting feeling. My pack members were worried about me. I was not doing this intentionally. I was weak because my mate didn't allow me to come near to her. I knew she too was suffering like me since the nurse was updating me every day. I knew her wound was getting worse. Her condition was worse than mine because she was a human and couldn't tolerate it like me. I was an alpha, a wolf. I was stronger than her. I just hope that she will come to me soon. I heard someone coming towards the living room. I turned to see that it was her. My life. My angel. She looked terrible. I stood up from my seat. We both started to look at each other. She slowly came to me with her weak legs and her trembling body. Damon started to give a happy howl. He was dancing in my head. Angel, do you need anything? I asked when she came to me. My head is feeling tissy, Grayson, she said and collapsed on me. I took her in my arms. Her body was burning. She was burning with fever. Oh, baby girl, you're burning with fever, I told her and kept my palm on her forehead. I mind-linked the nurse and she came within five minutes. She administered the medicines to her. Grayson, I can't bear the pain. I didn't sleep for the last three days and my wound is getting worse. She whispered to me weakly. I know, my angel. I know you suffered a lot. Let me take care of you. I took her to in my arms in bridal style and went to our bedroom. Grayson, I smell bad. I vomited on my clothes and I couldn't have a bath since the doctor asked me not to wet the wound. She explained with a weak voice. Angel, now stop talking. Let me take care of you. You still smell like a rose to me. 
My wolf and I are happy that you came to us. I gently laid her on the bed. Angel, I need to look at your wound. May I? She nodded, giving her permission. I slowly started pulling up her dress up to her wound. I saw that her thigh muscle was swollen badly. I gently started to remove her bandages. Oh, Grayson, it hurts. She squeezed my hand. I know, baby girl. I'll heal you. Please calm down. I fully removed the bandages. The wound has become much worse. It has become dark red and I could see some fungus in there too. Oh, baby girl, this wound has gone worse. I'm not gonna lie, but this wool hurt a little bit. I'm going to suck the bad blood from your wound and then I'll lick it. I explained. Grayson, if it hurts, please don't do it. And I'm feeling shy that you're going to suck my thigh muscle. How will you lick and suck it? Ugh, ew, it's disgusting. She replied. Oh, baby girl, nothing of you is disgusting to me, and we're mates. Don't be shy. It's just your thigh muscle, not any private part. I have to do this, otherwise your situation will get worse, baby girl. Please, let me do this. I pleaded to her. I couldn't bear to see her in pain. Okay, then quickly do it, she permitted and looked away. I started to suck the wound. I could taste the bitterness of blood. <sighs> Grayson, stop, it hurts, she started to scream. Hold for a while, Angel. It's almost done. I responded and sucked the last bad blood, drinking them all. Then I started to lick the wound. Her struggle stopped after a little while. Do you feel better now, Angel? I cupped her cheeks. Yes, the pain is gone. Thank you, Grayson. I feel better now. I licked the wound a few more times and applied the ointment wrapping it with bandages once I was done. She started to close her eyes drowsily. She must be feeling better now. Soon, she fell into a deep sleep. I took a wet towel and cleaned her face before going to have a hot bath and joining her in bed. I was finally feeling better after a hectic few days. I crawled under the duvet and hugged her from behind. I have no words to describe this feeling. Our bond is beautiful. I hope by tomorrow she will be better. Chapter 31 Oh no, it's him. Xenia's POV I slowly started to open my eyes. I felt so much better than I did in the last few days. I turned to the other side and saw that Grayson was already looking at me. His sea-green eyes were so beautiful to gaze upon in the morning. His rugged, scattered hair gave him a handsome look on the bed. Good morning, Angel. He greeted me and caressed my cheeks, making me blush. Oh, my baby's blushing, he teased me. Stop teasing me in the morning. I gave him a fake anger look, squinting my eyes at him. Oh, I miss this morning's cute look for the past few days. Please don't do it again, my angel. He kissed my forehead. I tried to stand up from the bed, but I couldn't, so I sat on the bed again. Baby girl, what are you doing? He asked, panic filling his voice. I need to go to the bathroom. I smell bad and I need to have a bath. I replied and immediately he came to me, picked me up in his arms, and took me to the bathroom. How's your wound now, sunshine? Is it still hurting? He put me on the bathroom counter. No, I feel much better. When you sucked the bad blood last night, it felt better. There's still a little pain when the muscles stretch, but it's nothing compared to the pain I had a few days ago. I felt hell is better than that, Grayson. I explained. I'll lick it again. Then it will heal soon, Angel. Grayson caressed my cheek. There's no need, Grayson. I think with the medicine, the rest of the wound will get better. I refused. Angel, my saliva is the best medicine for this. If you get infected, it's not good. You have freshened up and don't soak in the bath because until morning, you had a heavy fever. When you're done, 
I'll check the wound and bandage it, okay? He insisted and turned around to go. Wait, do you need any help to change your clothes, Angel? He turned around and asked, his lips curling into a smirk. No, I'm fine. I can do it. I shoot him out. If you need anything, I'll be just outside. He gave me a smile and went out. I removed my clothes and went under the hot water shower. Oh, after so many days, my body is touching the water. I love this feeling. I felt disguised about myself for the vomit smell I emitted, but I was amazed how Grayson could suck and lick my wound. I finished my shower and wiped my body with a towel before stepping out of the bathroom. I saw that Grayson was attending to a call on the balcony. I took a dress and turned to go inside the bathroom to change it. Suddenly, two strong hands snaked around my waist. In a hurry, baby girl? Grayson's husky voice tickled my ear. Grayson, I need to change, I replied, my voice coming out like a whisper. But I need to check your wound. He bit my earlobe lightly. What is he doing? My whole body shivered and I felt goosebumps rise over my skin. Shall we... we ch check it later? I needed to move out of his hands. Be a good girl and let me check your wound. Then you can go. Grayson turned me to face him suddenly, and I accidentally touched his six-pack abs. Damn, those mouth-watering abs. Like what you see, baby? He asked with a naughty smirk. Okay, then check it quickly. I sat on the bed. He put a pillow against the headboard and made me lay back towards it. He carefully pushed up my towel to see the wound. Oh, this is really embarrassing. I could feel that my cheeks were getting heated, blood pumping to my ears and cheeks. He slowly removed the bandage. The wound looked almost cured, but still not a hundred percent. He started to lick it again gently. This time it gave me a sensation that I couldn't describe. I clutched the bedsheet and turned my head to the other side. A ticklish sensation started to run all over my body. Grayson's POV I was on the phone with one of my clients about a business deal. As soon as the call over, I came back to the room to see that my angel was in a towel, taking a dress from her wardrobe. She was so sexy with a towel. Her creamy legs were visible, and when she turned to go to the bathroom, I quickly went to her and grabbed her from behind, my hands circling around her waist. I could hear her heart starting to beat wildly. After all, I'm a wolf so my hearing and senses were ten times sharper than a human. She wiggled to escape from me. I knew my baby girl was shy. I nuzzled her neck and smelled her. She smelled like a rose, and I could feel Damon wagging his tail happily. In a hurry, baby girl? My voice came as a sexy teaser for her. G Grayson, I need to change, she whispered. But I need to check your wound. I bit her earlobe lightly. Her whole body shivered and I saw goosebumps arise. I smiled to myself at her response. Shall we check it later? She trying to move out of my hands. I like her cute stubbornness. Oh, be a good girl and let me check your wound, then you can go. I turned her towards me. She bit her lips and accidentally touched my six-packs. Oh, damn those silky fingers. I want them to touch every part of the body. She looked at my abs and licked her lips. You will need me soon, baby girl. Like what you see, baby? I asked with a teasing smirk. Okay, then check it quickly. She sat on the bed. I put a pillow on the headboard and made her lay back against it. I carefully pulled up her towel to see the wound. She covered her pussy with her towel so that I wouldn't see it. Oh, this is really hard for me. She's in a towel with wet water drops pouring from her wet hair to her neck. Those water drops are increasing my thirst to have her. Oh, I swear to God, I'll not let her go once she willingly gives herself to me. I'll fuck her so hard until she can't walk and won't let her go from my embrace. She's getting to her touch. 
She's responding, but our mate is too stubborn to accept us. Oh, let's see who wins this game, Damon said, and I could sense that he had a smirk on his face. I slowly removed the bandages. The wound was almost cured. I started to lick it again gently. This time it gave me a motivation to lick it in a sexy way. Last night she was in pain and I want to heal her. But now I feel different. I felt more lust towards her. I could see that she was clutching the bedsheets. She was trying to hide her feelings for me. I knew she was not going to fall for me easily. But for how long are you going to hide your feelings for me, baby? I licked and cleaned the wound, then bandaged it. Angel, go and change. Then we'll go for breakfast since we both didn't eat for so many days. She gave me a smile. Grayson, I need to call my parents. They must be worried. Her forehead was creased with worry lines. Baby girl, first we'll have breakfast and then you can call them, okay? She nodded her head and went to the bathroom. I went to have a shower in the other room and dressed in a pair of jeans and a sleeveless white t-shirt. Then we both went down to have our breakfast. Good morning, Luna and Alpha, the chef greeted us. Oh, good morning, Mike. What do we have for breakfast today? I asked the chef. Alpha, give us a minute. We'll bring the food to the table. He smiled and I nodded. Hey, look, the lovely couple came to have breakfast. Stephen said, joining us. My baby girl liked hot foods. So I instructed them not to serve the food until she comes to the table. Chef brought many dishes out, including fresh juice, omelets, sausages, pancakes, croissants, puff pastries, bread, and butter. I started to feed her. We both had our meal like we hadn't eaten for a month. Can I have your phone to make a call, please, Grayson? I smiled and gave her the phone. Xenia's POV Hello, Mom. How are you? I heard my mom's voice after a long time. Senya, darling. Actually, we need to ask you that question. My mom had a worried voice. I'm fine, Mom. How are you two doing? I asked. Oh, we're fine here, dear. We miss you a lot. Only Dad and I are spending boring time together. I could feel that her voice started to change into sniffles. Mom, don't worry about me. I'm super fine here. I video call you another day, okay? I tried to call her. By the way, Xenia, your cousin brother has gone missing. Mom suddenly blurted out. What? Which one, Mom? I asked since I had a lot of cousin brothers. Oh, your cousin Mario. He was last seen two weeks ago in a club. Your auntie and uncle have filed a police complaint also, but there's still no clue about him. Mom explained at a stretch. What? Mario went missing? I stood up from my chair. Grayson looked at me and knitted his brows. He asked what was happening in sign language. I just showed him my palm, signaling him to wait. Strange, Mom, isn't it? Okay, Mom, I'll call you later. I have to go now. You and Dad, please take care. I said and hung up. What happened, Angel? Why you did suddenly stand up from the chair like you heard something shocking? Grayson asked me. Mario disappeared. He's missing. I sat down and told him. Who's Mario? Grayson asked casually, checking his phone. My cousin. That person who... I stopped there. Oh, that bastard. It's good he disappeared. Oh, Angel, I have some packhouse work. You rest in the room, okay? He patted my head and left abruptly. I got bored of staying in the room, so I thought of having a look around the packhouse. The other day, I couldn't have a proper look due to my accident. So I went outside and walked around without any knowledge about where I was going. I saw that a concrete path that started from the back of the packhouse it leads towards the forest. I wonder why Maria didn't take me down this path. I thought of having a look and started to walk down the path. There were trees everywhere, the color green everywhere I looked. I loved this environment, and everywhere you go there are trees. 
The path was going far away from the trees, and soon only the top floor of the pack house was visible to me. This is so calm. All of a sudden, I heard a man scream loudly. I got scared. Was that an echo of the trees or wind that I heard? Soon there was nothing but silence again. So I started to walk again, and then I saw a big house that looked old and pale. Standing outside were a few people. I think they're from Grayson's pack. Then I noticed Stephen was there too. Suddenly I heard another painful scream, and this time I was sure that it was coming from inside the house. What are they doing? Are they smuggling? Are they taking organs from people? I decided to have a look and approach the house. Stephen saw me and his eyes widened in shock. Luna, what are you doing here? Stephen came in front of me and blocked my path. Stephen, what's happening here? Who's screaming? I pointed to the house. Luna, you shouldn't be here. If Alpha sees you, he'll kill us all. Stephen warned with a panicked voice. Stephen, answer me. Who is screaming? What are you all doing here? I heard another scream and this time my goosebumps appeared on my skin. I pushed Stephen away and headed inside. Luna, please stop. Don't go inside. It's not a place for you. Please come back and I'll drop you at the pack house. Stephen insisted, following behind me, but I kept walking like I didn't give a damn. I'm not going back there until I find out what is happening here and who is screaming. The inside of the house was gloomy, and there were only a few lights. I went in by touching the walls as a guide until I reached a staircase that was leading down. I started to go down the staircase. Please don't go, Luna. Come back. You won't be able to see what's there. Stephen trying to stop me, but I walked straight inside. It was like a tunnel and lights were squeaking. It reminded me of some scenes in horror movies. I was scared, but I want to see what was there. As I kept going down, the place started getting very dark and there was hardly any light there. At the end of the tunnel, there was another small staircase going down. I descended it to see that there were locked dungeons with doors made of steel bars. Those dungeon walls were hard to look at. There were chains attached to every dungeon. I walked forward slowly. My throat had gone dry now with the creepy environment around me. What is this place, Stephen? I slowly asked him. This is a dungeon house, Luna. You shouldn't be here. Shall we go now at least? He pleaded to me. You torture people here? Why, Stephen? I couldn't believe it. Are they crazy people? I heard another scream, and this time it was close. I quickly went towards the scream and saw three people in one dungeon. I couldn't see their faces clearly due to the lack of lights. I squinted at them one by one until my eyes finally got familiar with the dark. I got stunned to see them. Their faces looked familiar to me. They were all covered in blood, and the walls of the dungeons had blood splatters. I think those belonged to them. Their upper body had many scars, and they looked like hell. I think they're unconscious. Wait, it's them. Yes, I remember them. It was the guys who tried to rape me that night when we watched the WWE matches. Grayson brought them here to torture them. I heard another scream all of a sudden. Now who is that? I ran towards the scream hurriedly. Soon I reached the last dungeon. The scene in front of me was enough to raise every hair of the body. I saw Grayson and Cade inside the dungeon. They were torturing a man. Grayson had a sharp knife that was covered in blood. His t-shirt and his face had many blood splatters. It looked like they were enjoying the torture. I couldn't see the man's face as it was covered with blood, his hands and legs tied to a chair as he slumped backward, almost unconscious. Grayson? My voice came out as a whisperer. Angel, what are you doing here? His eyes widened in shock. He looked like the villain that tortures you in a horror movie. 
when my voice was heard, the man who was tied to the chair turned his head to me and looked at me. Him! I covered my mouth with my hand. Oh no, it's him! It was my cousin's brother who had disappeared. My body trembled in shock, and then I collapsed. Chapter 32 Are You a Monster? Grayson's POV Why did you bring her here, Stephen? I took her into my arms. She had seen everything. Alpha, I tried to stop Luna, but she still came without listening to me. Trust me, I tried very hard. Stephen had guilt written all over his face. I knew how stubborn my angel could be. She's seen everything. I've always feared that she may see the dungeons. That's why I strictly instructed you all to make sure that she never sees the dungeons. I came out from the dungeon house. She was unconscious, and I couldn't imagine what her reactions would be when she regains her consciousness. I was scared that she would start to hate me again. I changed my clothes because I couldn't go inside the pack house with my bloody clothes. Bring the pack doctor to my bedroom now. I took her to the bedroom and placed her gently on the bed. I had a shower and washed that bastard's bloodstains off my body. When I came out, the pack doctor came into the room. He immediately checked her pulse. Oh, Alpha, there's nothing to worry about. Looks like she's in shock. And Luna's body is weak due to not having a proper meal during the past few days after the accident. I think you need to take care of her more. The pack doctor advised and began writing something down. Alpha, these are for some vitamins. Kindly give these to Luna after every meal. And make sure she has a proper healthy meal. He handed me the prescription slip, smiled, and left the room. Alpha, what do we do now? Kate asked, scratching his head. I'll handle her. You can go now, Kate, and make sure that others are getting ready for the Redwood Fun Week. I won't be able to check with them since I need to be here with Luna, I said while sitting on the bed. I'll do it, Alpha. If you need anything, just mind link me. Kate nodded and went. I ran my hands through my hair. Just when things were starting to go well, something bad happens between me and her. I sighed and closed my eyes. I didn't realize how long I slept, only that when I woke up, she was looking back at me. You woke up, baby girl. Are you feeling better? I went to her and sat on the bed. She just looked at me with a blank feeling. Suddenly she started to cry. I went to her and took her onto my lap. I turned her to face me and wrapped her legs around my torso. She hid her face in my chest. I put my chin on her head and lightly patted her head. She was crying so badly. I can't understand why. Grayson, are, are you a monster? She asked through her sobs. I sighed. I knew she scared. The scene she saw at the dungeons was not something she should see in her life. Baby girl, I know you're scared of me now. I know the thing that you saw over there was horrible. I kissed her head. I am scared, Grayson. I am so scared to be with you. I thought to give a chance to you and me, and then the next day you ruined everything. How could I hand over my life to your hand, Grayson? Your hands are covered with blood. I don't know how many people you've killed. She was crying so badly. Her nose and cheeks had turned red. I wiped her tears with my thumb, but they kept falling like a waterfall. I kissed them all and drank her tears. She sobbed uncontrollably. Angel, I know you're scared. To be honest with you, yes. I have killed many. But that's not for my happiness. I did it to protect my pack. Those bastards at the dungeon should suffer for what they try to do with you, my baby girl. I explained and made our foreheads touch. What are you going to do with them? She asked, looking into my eyes. Oh, I'm going to kill them. I sighed. Do we have any right to end someone's life, Grayson? Her eyes had turned red and fluffy due to crying. I know that you don't like it, Angel, but I don't have any option. If I let them go, 
My wolf would kill them all anyhow. I kissed her forehead again. Will you kill me also, Grayson? I am also stubborn and disobeyed you. She pouted her lips slightly. No, Angel. How could I do something like that? I can't even imagine a life without you. I will never hurt you, Angel. I am angry with them because they hurt you. I explained. Grayson, I'm hungry. Shall we go for lunch? She suddenly suggested. Changing the topic. Sure, my angel, let's go. I extended my arm out to her. We had lunch and then came back to our bedroom. Angel, we have to go to the grounds to practice for the mate game. I went to my wardrobe, taking out my track bottom and shoes. What is a mate game? She sat on the bed and questioned. Oh, there are some couple games to do, baby girl. You know what? Every year I watched every mate couple doing those games happily. I dreamt that one day I'll also do it with my mate. But every year I had to watch them and look now. Finally, I am participating with my mate. I took her hands to my hands and kissed them. She gave me an innocent smile. Grayson, my wound is aching still sometimes, especially when the thigh muscle shakes too many times. A quick pain comes and goes. So I don't think that I can play any games in this condition, she said with her puppy eyes. Angel, I know still you're weak, but in these games you only have to be there with me and not do anything. I'll do everything, I caressed her cheeks. Okay, then what do I have to do? She got up from the bed. You'll see once we go to the grounds. I gave her the tracksuit and shoes. Angel, wear these and come down. I'll be waiting on the first floor. I went down to meet Cade. Cade, make sure those bastards suffer much more and don't give them an easy death. I instructed. Shall we go then? My angel came down with a jacket and we went to the grounds. I asked the ground operators to close the roof of the ground so the sunshine wouldn't burn my angel. Mom and Dad were also there. Most of the mate couples were practicing the games and Cade also here with his mate. What are we going to do now, Grayson? She asked without having any knowledge about the games. I put her on the mat and asked her to lie down. Why do we need this, Grayson? What are we going to do with the mat? Her eyes widened and she looked at me curiously. Relax, Angel. Just lay here. Your back should touch the mat. She laid and I removed my t-shirt and threw it away. As soon as I removed my t-shirt, she immediately tried to get up. What are you going to do? Why did you remove the t-shirt? She questioned with worry. I could hear some cheering from the she-wolves. They were greedy to see me without a t-shirt. Angel, I'm not going to anything here. This is for the game. Please calm down. She laid back down again. I started to do push-ups. That was the game. We need to do push-ups while our maid laid under us and make sure that we don't touch her not even a hair. If we do so, we're out. I could see some she-wolves licking their lips. Is this the game, Grayson? What a crazy game. Why should I lie down? You can do push-ups on your own, she explained with an annoying tone. Oh, Angel, you don't know how hard it is to control ourselves when our mate is near with us. I winked at her, and she gave me a fake annoyed look. We spent our afternoon happily on the grounds. We had a race 500 meters and all the she-wolves cheered for me. I noticed that my angel looked a little bit annoyed. Is she jealous that other she-wolves are cheering on me? Oh, I have to tease her. We went inside. I saw that she was talking to Maria. Angel, can you pass me that water bottle? I asked her for the water bottle beside her. Why, don't you have she-wolves to get it for you? The ones who cheered for you? Aw, she's jealous. Aw, my mate is jealous. I have a jealous mate. Oh, let me see the face of my jealous mate. I went to her and hugged her from behind. Go away, you liar. I saw that you also flirting with them. I am not jealous. Why would I get jealous? She was annoyed with me. Oh, let's see the cute face of my jealous mate. I said and turned her to me. She started to hit my chest. 
I hate you. I hate you, she cried out. I kissed her forehead and warmly hugged her, taking her into my arms. I took her to our room. She was still having a cute, fake, annoyed face. Are you still angry with me? I gently laid her on the bed and she still gave me her annoyed face. Yes, go away. I hate you. Go to your wolf ladies. Why do you want me? You can go and enjoy yourself with them. Besides, I'm not beautiful like them. I don't have a beautiful, strong figure like them. She kept looking down. Hmm, are you sure you're angry with me? I knitted my brows. Yes, of course. She looked away and folded her arms. Hmm, Angel, you should know that I have many ways to make you friendly with me. I immediately jumped onto her and started to tickle her. <laughs> Stop it, Grayson. <laughs> Stop it. You're tickling me. But I didn't want to stop it. I wanted to see and hear her laugh. It was a lovely melody to my ears. Nope, I won't stop until you say you're not angry with me. I tickled her neck, under her arms, and her back. No. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm not angry with you. Now stop tickling me. She cried out in defeat while laughing. Say that you're not angry, but you are jealous. I laid on the bed, rolled her on top of me, her back resting on my chest. Okay, I'm jealous, she confessed, panting for her breath. And why is my mate jealous? I asked her ear while rolling my hands around her waist. I don't know, I felt insecure. She turned to face me. Grayson. There's no one here in this country which is familiar to me. Only you are. So I'm scared that if you turn your back on me... I placed my index finger on her lips and made stop talking immediately. Never, ever, my sunshine. I can't even think about a life without you. I cupped her cheeks and kissed her forehead. She gave me a smile and jumped from the bed. Would you like to try some Sri Lankan recipes for dinner tonight? She suggested with a bright smile on her lips. Sounds good, baby girl. I'll ask the chef to prepare. I sat up on the bed. Nope, I'm going to prepare it with my own hands, for you. Her eyebrows raised with excitement. Angel, can you cook? You don't have to get tired, baby. I'll ask the chef to cook. I stood up from the bed. No, please, Grayson. I need to cook for you. Ask the chef to cook for others. I'll prepare a meal tonight. You could freshen up and come down. She headed to the bathroom, had a bath, and came out with a long dress. Xenia's POV I went down to the kitchen. I planned to prepare string hoppers kathu. String hoppers, in Sanhala we call it indiapa. It is a dish made from a special flour called string hoppers flour. It looks just like wheat flour. First, the flour is mixed with water and a little bit of salt until it becomes fluffy. Then there's a special equipment. It's a traditional string hopper mold. We put a little bit of mixture into it and then press down while circling it so the string hoppers will pour out into the small plates. Then we have to steam it until it cooks. Katsu is something similar to fried rice. We cut vegetables including carrot, leeks, beans, cabbage, and then let it cook before adding eggs, salt, and pepper to taste. We then cut the string hoppers into small pieces, add them to the tempered vegetable, and then mix. While I was shopping, I brought a pack of string hopper flour and a machine from a Sri Lankan store in America. So I asked the chef to help me cut the vegetables. He allocated an omega for me. It was a kitchen, so more than 20 people can move around easily. I decided not to disturb them, took my things aside, and started my work. I tied my hair, wore an apron, and then made the string hoppers. After that, I prepared a caramel pudding as the dessert and kept it in the fridge. I had to make a curry also since, without any curry, it would be a little hard to eat. So I decided to prepare a potato curry without adding any chilies so that Grayson also could eat it. I looked for the salt bottle in racks but couldn't find it. 
They must keep salt bottles in the upper racks because they hardly use salt for their food. My height wasn't tall enough to reach for the upper racks, so I looked for a chair or stool near me since I didn't want to disturb others. I found a stool, kept it on the floor, and got up on it to try and reach for the upper rack. I moved up a little bit with my toes also, but my hand still couldn't reach it. Suddenly, the stool slipped and I fell. I closed my eyes to expect a big pain as soon as I hit the floor, but two strong arms grabbed me from my waist. I slowly opened my eyes and saw that Grayson had caught me. Angel, what are you doing? What if you fell and got injured? Why didn't you ask for someone's help? Why didn't you call me? I could see that he was extremely worried. I didn't want to trouble others. I flashed him my puppy eyes. Why did you need the stool? He looked at the stool on the floor. I need to take the salt bottle. I pointed to the upper racks behind me. Wait, I'll help you. He adjusted me into his arms, put his arms behind my back, and cupped my butt cheeks by gathering his forearms, lifting me up. As soon as my eyes met the rack, I grabbed the salt bottle. Thank you, Grayson. Now put me down, I requested with a smile. I don't mind keeping you like this. I heard the giggles of other members. I turned and looked. They were giggling while covering their mouth. What are you doing? There are so many people here, Grayson. Put me down, I demanded. I can lift and keep you like this for much longer, Angel. My breast was almost touching his chin. Grayson, I need to cook. Please put me down. He slowly put me down while looking at my eyes. Her eyes met for a second. Those sea-green eyes had many emotions which I couldn't understand. When he put me down, my breast almost touched his chest, and it gave me a different sensation. Oh, love is in the air. I turned to see that Stephen had walked in. Luna, what's that smell? He sniffs the air. Oh, she's cooking a traditional Sri Lankan-style menu for me today. Grayson's proud face brought a smile to my face. Oh, that smells good, Luna. It motivates my taste buds. I also need to try it, Stephen said while looking into the curry. Okay, I'll give it to you also, you greedy wolf. I gave him a fake annoyed face. Oh, I also need to find a mate like Luna, so I can ask her to cook what I like. Stephen smiled at us. Don't find a partner just to cook for you. She needs her own freedom and space also. I waved my index finger at him warningly. As you say, your highness. He bowed to me and I smiled at him. Stephen was a simple guy. I was sure his mate would be lucky when he finds her. Soon I realized that I needed to eat coconut sambal also. So I made a sambal with lots of chilies and Maldives fish. I licked my mouth just by the aroma. Grayson, you wait until I prepare the table for us. I asked him to sit, but he came and helped me bring the food to the table. I can't sit while my mate's working. I have to become a responsible and helpful husband. He smiled at me and I looked at him in wonder. In my life, I had seen many of the husbands sit and wait until their wives cook and prepare the table. Then just sit, eat, and sometimes don't praise their wives even. Shall we start then? I asked and served him food. As usual, he took me onto his lap. Now this has become a habit of mine. Mmm, Angel, this is so tasty. He kissed the back of my palms. I must kiss these hands which made such a tasty meal only for me. I felt shy and my cheeks reddened with blush. What is that over there, Angel? He pointed to the coconut sample. Oh, that's for only me, Grayson. It has a lot of chilies, I clarified. I want to taste it. I gave him a surprised look. No, Grayson, you can't eat something with that many chilies. You'll go crazy, I warned him. Oh, baby girl, I want to taste everything which you made from these hands. He took the sample and started to eat it. 
I saw his nose and face slowly turned red and sweat beads started forming on his forehead. Grayson, please don't eat it for God's sake. You can't eat it. I threw the sample plate and gave him a glass of water. Why did you throw it, Angel? He asked, huffing like a bull. Are you crazy? How could you eat that? I demanded. Even if you prepare poison for me, I'll have them all, Grayson said, and immediately I kissed his forehead for the first time. His face lighted up with a bright smile. This is the first time you've kissed my forehead, Angel. I can't tell you how happy I am. He brought our foreheads together, resting his on mine. Wait, I'll bring you desserts. I brought the pudding and fed him. Life is beautiful and perfect if you found the correct partner. Chapter 33 Two Attacks Xenia's POV Grayson, I'm bored. Shall we go to the library? I had nothing to do. Grayson was also busy with some Redwood Fun Week programs and his office work. Angel, I won't be able to come with you but there are pack members in the library all the time. I don't mind you going, but don't go alone, he advised. Shall I go with Maria? She's nice, I suggested. Okay, I'll ask her to meet you at the library. Grayson patted my head and I gave him a smile. Angel, you have to come to have your lunch and you must take vitamins which were given by the doctor, okay? I nodded my head obediently. And so I went to the library. There were only a few pack members there, most of them teenagers. They were there to find some articles which were important for their schoolwork. I went to the racks. I needed to read about the history of the wolves and I needed to find the family tree of Grayson and what are their behaviors. So I went to meet the librarian. He showed me the books and I started reading about them. Later, Maria joined me after some time. Hey, Luna. Alpha asked me to visit you, Maria whispered to me. Oh yeah, this is a library. Silence is a must. Yeah, you know your Alpha's scared to send me anywhere alone. I shrugged my shoulders. Alpha cares about you. You were so lucky, Luna, to have a mate like Alpha. She smiled at me. I decided to read about the history and behaviors of werewolves because I don't know anything. I have to read and learn since I'm going to live with you all. I explained and looked at the book. Maria also brought some books to refer to for her studies. I could see that she was also doing some of her homework. The book I started to read about wolves included everything about them. How the moon goddess created them, their line of authority, some curses, and the final chapter was about their reproduction system. Simply said about their sex life. Do I need to read about this? Am I going to have sex with him? What would it be like if Grayson and I had sex? When I'm under him, fully naked, with so many passionate kisses, will he be gentle with me? I heard that the first time was painful for girls and they would even bleed. I was scared of that, and I felt shy just thinking about it. Whatever. It's good to read and know about this. Luna, what are you reading? Maria peeped into my book. Ooh, reading about sex, huh? She teased me. What's the big fuss? This is also a part of the wolf's life, right? I showed my bravery, but only I knew that how embarrassed I was in that situation. The book said that wolves are so possessive and obsessive for their mates. It rarely happens that someone rejects their mate. They would love to be in touch with their mates all the time. They mark their mate as soon as they met because they're scared that if the mate goes away, their wolf would die. So Grayson was right. That's why he tries to keep me around him all the time. After marking, they have sexual intercourse. This is to carry on their bloodline and to make sure that their bond complete. Some packs have mating ceremonies also. Alphas are totally different than normal wolves. They're strong will fight to their death just to protect their loved ones. It was true. I saw what Grayson had done to those men and my cousin brother. Speaking about them, what had happened to them? I don't want to know. 
I'm not going to ask him. I don't want to bring any bitter taste to our relationship. So I started to read the book again. Their capacities for sex activities are high and extreme. They could do sexual intercourse for hours even, and they don't get tired easily. Once they start having sex, they never take a step back. Wolves try to impregnate their mate as many times as they are possible. They do sex in many positions. Some are gentle and some are rough. I was afraid of the kind of person Grayson was when it came to sex. I couldn't ask him nor talk to him about it. Luna, I have some work to do. I have to go to the garden for some school activity. I'll come back soon. Please don't tell Alpha that I left you for a few seconds, she said and ran. This girl is something. I like her nature, how simple she is, and her honesty. I took a brief look around the library. It seemed like everyone had left since it was almost lunchtime. Grayson asked me to take lunch on time. Maybe I'll just read a few pages and then leave for lunch. Suddenly, through the corner of my eye, I saw a shadow quickly run past a rack. I probably just imagined it. So I started to read the book again. The entire library was so calm in pin-drop silence. Tap, tap. The sound of someone's shoes was heard, but it suddenly stopped. Hello? Who's there? Is anyone there? But no one replied. No sounds. Nothing but the same silence again. Then all of a sudden, a huge book rack came falling on me. I screamed and closed my eyes with my hands. I felt someone drag me to their chest and crawl to the floor. My back hit the floor, but my head didn't because whoever it was who grabbed me put their palm behind my head. I'm familiar with this touch. It's Grayson. The book rack landed on his back. How could he tolerate the impact and weight of such a huge book rack? Angel, are you all right? He asked, and I slowly opened my eyes. Unfortunately, a huge heavy book slipped from the rack and hit me on my forehead. Ah! I screamed. It hurts a lot. Shit, are you hurt, my angel? Did it hurt? I nodded my head. My head started to get dizzy due to the amount of pain I had. Grayson's POV It was 1.30 p.m. My angel still hadn't had her lunch. I strictly told her to have her lunch on time. But no, this stubborn girl never listens to me. I have to go and bring her to the kitchen myself. Cade, I'll just go and have a look at Luna. She needs to have her lunch on time. You carry on the work. I asked Kay to do his work and headed towards the library. Something's not right. Damon suddenly alerted me. What do you mean by that? His words had stricken me with fear. Our mate's in danger. I could feel it. Hurry up, go there. Damon impatiently demanded. I ran towards the library. I knew if Damon, he felt that something was wrong. He was right. I entered the library to see no one around. I went further inside and saw that my angel was reading a book. She has no attention to the outer world and was absorbed into the book. A smile came to my face seeing that she was all right. But that feeling didn't last for a second. Since a huge tall book rack suddenly came crashing down behind her, I ran at lightning speed and dragged her to my chest, making us both fall to the ground. I kept my palm on the back of her head so that she won't injure her head. I checked to see whether she was hurt, but at the same time a heavy book hit her on her forehead. Ouch, that must have hurt. Cade, come quickly to the library with some warriors. I mind-linked Cade. Grayson, are you hurt? That huge book rack fell onto you. You must be hurt and injured. She was worried about me. Oh, I'm okay, Angel. But I need to put some ice on your forehead. Soon, Cade came with few warriors. Alpha, what happened here? Are you two all right? Cade lifted the book rack with two other warriors. Yes, I'm okay, but Luna's forehead was hit by a book. She needs some ice on it, I explained. How did this book rack fall onto you, Alpha? These are so strong and have never fallen until... Yes, until someone pushes this rack from behind, I said before Cade could finish his sentence. Who wants to kill you? 
Cade has a questioning look on his face. Not me. Someone was targeting Luna. She looked at me with shock. Wants to kill me? But why? Who wants to do that? I didn't do anything wrong to anyone. She cried out in panic and confusion. I know she's innocent. But who wants to hurt her? Cade, check the place. Sniffs and try to find out who sent us here. We have to find the culprit. I ordered. Grayson, when Maria went out, I was the only one in the library. Then I saw someone's shadow, but I thought it was just in my mind. I heard a shoe tapping sound. I talked to the person, but no one answered me. Then this book rack fell onto me. Luckily you came here, otherwise I'll be dead. I had to find who did such a thing. I'll shred that bastard into pieces and take him apart limb by limb. Angel, let's go inside. I'll keep some ice on your forehead. We went inside. Why did Maria go outside? I asked her to stay there with you. I was angry with her. I'll punish her for disobeying my command. Grayson, please don't punish her. She went outside to find something for her school activity. Please don't be angry with her. She put her palm to my cheek pleadingly. I started to place a bag of ice on her forehead. It was swollen a little bit. Ah, oh, it hurts, Grayson. She pushed my hand away. Don't be stubborn, baby girl. If you don't allow me to ice your forehead, I'll punish you. I said to her with a fake angry face. No, please don't punish me. I kept ice for a few minutes and applied an ointment to the swollen area. Then I hugged her tightly like I didn't want to let her go, even for a second. I knew I was so possessive over her. Grayson, what's wrong? I nuzzled her neck. Her smell calms me and Damon. I was afraid, thinking what if something bad would happen to her. Luckily, I hurried there. If not, something terrible would have happened. Grayson, I'm okay. Nothing will happen to me while you're with me. She gave me a smile and I brought our foreheads together. Three days later, within the same week. Xenia's POV Luna, shall we go for a walk towards the lakeside? A little girl who looked like she was around eight years old came to me and asked in the evening. She had gray eyes and her curly brown hair gave her a shaggy look. Honey, where's your mom? You should get permission from her, I said, bending down to her height. She's busy with my little brother, so she won't look for me. Luna, please, shall we go? I would love to take a walk with you. I was also bored and decided to spend some time with her. Plus, the lakeside must be beautiful. Okay, let's go. I took her hand and we both went to the lakeside. The lake was located around 700 meters from the pack house. We both didn't get exhausted walking there because it was already evening and the trees gave a huge shade to our path. Eventually, we came to the lakeside and the beautiful scenery before us was breathtaking. I was in awe of the green trees. The lake water was golden, shimmering from the reflection of the sun rays. However, I felt that the scenery was familiar to me. Is this the lake where I saw in my dream when I was on the plane? This looks exactly like it. Luna, isn't it so beautiful? The little girl asked. Indeed, my cute lady. I squeezed her cheeks. The surroundings were very calm. We started running through the grass. She made me feel like I was her age again. Suddenly, a set of birds flew out from the forest side. I stopped running and looked at the forest, but there was no sound. I think we should go now, I said to the little girl and started to walk back. Suddenly, our path was blocked by a huge black wolf. It had red eyes. Is this a pack member of the Grayson? I was terrified. Listen, my brave little girl, if anything happens to me, you have to run to the pack house, okay? No matter what happens here, just run. Saying that, we started to run. Unfortunately, my speed wasn't fast enough to beat the wolf. It jumped on me and I fell to the ground. Run! Don't stop! I screamed to the little girl. She cried and ran away. I crawled on the floor. I knew the wolf was going to eat me at any moment. 
My life started flashing before my eyes like a movie. Mom, Dad, my friends, my office, even Grayson also. This may be my last moment. Please don't hurt me. I didn't do anything to anyone. Let me go. I cried and begged. The wolf growled and jumped on me again. It attacked my leg with a paw. Its long claws went deep inside my ankle and tore the muscles. I screamed out loud, and with all my strength that I feared, my lungs would come out. Blood was oozing from my wound. I couldn't walk, and the wolf looked like he was enjoying my pain. It prepared to jump on me again, bending its back legs. It launched at me, and I closed my eyes, but it didn't come to me. Instead, I heard an ear-piercing growl louder than before. I opened my eyes and saw a gray wolf much bigger than the first wolf standing in front of me. Grayson! It's Grayson. This is the dream I saw on the flight, and I saw Grayson before I even met him. With one bite, Grayson broke its neck and he pulls out the throat. The black wolf squirmed a little and then slumped down, dead. Grayson was covered in blood. Lona, are you okay? Cade came running to me. I'm hurt, Cade. Cade's eyes widened when he saw the wound. I saw Grayson run behind a tree and shifted into his human form, approaching me wearing a pair of basketball shorts. Angel, are you hurt? Oh, I'm so sorry, Angel. He looked at my wound before starting to lick it. Alpha, you should go with Luna. We will take care of the rogue, Kate suggested. Grayson, it hurts a lot. There was a little girl with me. Please find her also. I cried out while grunting in the pain. Angel, we met her on the way. She is safe and with her mom. He took me in his arms and I wrapped my arms around his neck. How did you know that I was here? I asked. I came out from the office room and looked for you. I searched for you everywhere and then a pack member said that you went out with a little girl. I sensed that something bad was going to happen. I asked Kay to come with me and he came with some warriors also. Damon took the control and sniffed for your scent. And here you were, he explained lengthily. Grayson, I was terribly scared. I started to cry on his neck. Shh, Angel, please don't cry. Now I'm here with you. Why didn't you tell me that you're going out? He questioned with a worried face. I didn't want to disturb you, I whispered guiltily. Angel? You are never a disturbance or a burden to me. Do not ever think about yourself like that, okay? You are my everything. If anything happens to you, how would I live? I'll also die! Grayson exclaimed emotionally, resting his forehead on mine. Okay, I'm sorry. Next time I'll definitely tell you, I replied sadly. We came to the pack house immediately. Grayson licked my wound and applied ointment on it before bandaging it. He requested me to rest. Someone's POV. I hated her. I hate that bitch. Within a week I had attempted to kill her two times, but both times she was lucky that he saved her. That rogue wolf was nothing. Useless. He couldn't even fight for a long time with Grayson. I promised him that I would give him a free life and look. Now he's free. I always kept my eye on her. She's a liar. She betrayed me. Wherever she went, I took the chance to kill her. But my all attempts failed. Now her security has increased. I masked my scent with the help of a witch. Otherwise, they would have easily caught me in the library. Cade was good at sniffing. But he couldn't catch me since I masked my scent. Looks like it's time to meet the rogue alpha. Chapter 34 Redwood Fun Week Grayson's POV Kate, we need to find who did these attacks. Two attacks in one week. This is a threat to her life. We need to find it as soon as possible, otherwise we will all regret it. I sighed deeply, running my hand through my hair. Alpha, we couldn't find any scent in the library. Whoever did this must have masked their scent. Cade looks disappointed in his failure. What do you mean by masking their scent? 
I raised my brow curiously. Alpha, I hear that there are witches who practice witchcraft, and they have spells or some magic potions to cover someone's scent. I think that's the same scenario that happened here, Kate explained to me. But the second attack was by a rogue. How could a rogue come into my territory without our knowledge? Plus, there is a strong guard in the boundary and there are patrols which travel all the time. I had so many unanswered questions about the attacks on my angel. We could have got some information from that rogue if we could have captured him alive. But unfortunately, he died on the spot. Kate shrugged his shoulders. Yes, I know that. What else could I have done when my mate was attacked by a wolf and was helplessly laying on the ground, wounded? Nothing coming to your mind, Cade? You would have done the same if you were in my spot, I clarified. I know, Alpha. We will definitely find who's behind all these, Kate assured. Okay, Kate. How's the program for the Redwood Fun Week? I needed to know about the plan of the program. Alpha, the first day we'll be having the games for children and the next day for teenagers. On the third day, we have planned to have a pool party. It's open for everyone and the dress code will be swimming costumes. The fourth day is for mate games. The fifth day is an appreciation day for members who have dedicated many things to the well-being of the pack. Finally, on the sixth day, we have planned to give the gifts to the winners. Everyone gets a participation gift and a souvenir for all the pack members of this year's Redwood Fun Week. Kate explained to me in detail. Sounds good, Kate. Okay, then mind link all the pack members to gather to the grounds tomorrow at 7 a.m. I have to go to Luna and check on her wound. I stood from my seat and left the room. Good night, Alpha. I nodded to Kate and returned to my bedroom. My angel was sleeping. I slowly closed the door, but she felt that I came into the room and she opened her eyes. Are you finished with your pack duties for today? She asked. While sitting on the bed. Yes, my princess, your servant has come to serve you. I said dramatically and she laughed in response. Oh, Angel, you're so beautiful when you laugh. I need to see this happiness forever. She immediately looked down with a shy face. Baby girl, tomorrow we start the Redwood Fun Week and I want you to be there with me every time. I sat on the bed and took her to my lap. But Grayson, my wound is still aching. I don't think that I'll be able to participate in any game with you. Sorry. She was worried and I could feel it. I'll make a comfortable place for you to sit and watch, Angel. Don't worry about your wound. You will compete with me and trust me. We are going to win also. I kissed the back of her palm. Grayson, don't you feel that I'm weak for Aluna? I mean, if yesterday's incident would have happened with a strong wolf, she would have killed the wolf on the spot. But what did I do? I couldn't even run properly. I fell crawled, got injured, and begged for my life. I could feel the disappointment mix in her sad voice. Baby girl, I told you not to talk about this topic ever again. You are so strong for Aluna. It is not about being physically strong, but also about your qualities. For example, you were injured yesterday, but the first thing you asked me was to care for the little girl. That's the spirit we need as a Luna, not a woman just physically strong and devil at heart. For your kind information, you have a ten times strong mate, so don't worry, my love. I kissed her forehead and she smiled. Someone knocked on the door. I opened the door to see that our dinner had come to our room. I requested them to send the dinner to our room since she was injured. I took the tray inside and kept it on the side table. I took my angel onto my lap and started to feed her. She started to feed me also. I was happy that she was not rejecting me. After we finished our dinner, I removed her bandage and licked the wound. Since Damon was a silver wolf, my saliva had healing powers, and her wound would get almost cured by the next day. Baby girl, you go and have a shower, then I'll apply the ointment and bandage the wound. You'll feel better by tomorrow. I kissed her feet. Her cheeks flushed with pinkish red due to her shyness. When she came from the bathroom wearing my shirt and basketball shorts, 
I took her into my arms like a bride and gently laid her on the bed. Then I covered us both with a duvet, hugging her from behind and nuzzling her neck. The best part of the day was sleeping next to her. Next Day Morning We all gathered at the grounds around 6.30. I took my angel in my arms and kept her on a chair in the pavilion. All the other pack members gathered before 7 a.m. Kate and Stephen had to do a lot of work for this year's festival since I had to take care of my angel. Stephen was an attractive character between unmated she-wolves. He was a playful, fun character, but he never slept with any she-wolf. Grayson, what's today's program? Why so many children are here? My angel asked. Angel, today we have games for children only. We care about each part of the pack. I smiled at her while a little girl came towards her. Luna, please come to play with us. I carried her up in my arms. Oh, your Luna's injured and she needs rest. She will compete with me in mating games. I started to tickle the girl. Her smile gave us a good kick to start the day. Luna, you know what? Alpha loves kids. Stephen came and sat next to me. Stephen, you should care about the games. I changed the topic. I saw her face falling. She looked down sadly. I knew she didn't have any plans for kids in her life. Her life had totally changed due to my presence. Seriously, Luna, you have to make a lot of kids with Alpha. Stephen teased her. All right, that's enough, Stephen. I'm going to kick your ass now if you keep teasing Luna. I put the little girl down and she ran to her mom. We started the games for kids. Everyone cheered for them and I saw that my angel also cheering. Seems like she's enjoying it. You are enjoying it a lot, huh? I smile at her. It reminds me of my school days when we used to have sport meets where we will all play games like this. All the time we were on the ground, we played, we fought, and we were divided into houses. Sometimes even best friends fought due to their separate houses. Oh God, that crazy time would never come into our lives again. That time was the coolest and most carefree time, Grayson. No responsibilities, and we could roam like free birds. We used to pray to become adults soon. But when we become adults, then only we understand that how tough life is. I could see that she was getting emotional. Your beautiful life yet to come, my angel. I kissed her forehead. Everyone was enjoying the games. We arranged lunch and snacks on the pavilion so that everyone could enjoy their food while watching the games. I fed her and gave her medicine. The next few days went by with the games, and soon the day for mating games arrived. Angel, I have to do push-ups while you're beneath me. I saw that almost everyone who was mated participated in this game. The judges were our elders. I removed my shirt and my tattoo was visible to her. I slowly laid her down, parted her legs, and positioned my legs closer for push-ups. Her cheeks were flushed red. Oh, my sweet, shy mate. We started push-ups. Usually, Cade won this game every year. But this year, I was here to compete. Mmm, I love when you're doing this, babe. I heard a teasing moan from Cade's side. His mate was teasing him. I knew these types of games were hard to do while your mate is underneath you. Please, baby. I need to taste your cock in my hot mouth. Take me to our bedroom and make love with me. This bait of females really something. I could see Kay doing his push-ups with difficulty. My angel was so embarrassed to hear those things and she shut her eyes. Beta female, you're making it hard for Cade. You will lose the game if you continue this teasing. She nodded and kept her mouth shut. We are wolves. We are a strong warrior pack. Even our omegas are stronger than a gamma in a usual pack. So no one backs down. The game continued and I saw that after around one hour, one by one started to lose in the game. Finally, I and Kate were only left. Everyone cheered for us, but none of us was ready to back down. Grayson, will you please allow Kate to win? My angel requested. Nope, angel. He wins this game every year. This year, I am going to win. The game continued for another half an hour. 
Finally, Kate lost and we won. I took my angel in my arms bridal style and the whole pack cheered for us. She smiled at me and hid her face in my neck. The winners of the push-up game are Alpha and Luna, and they receive a free tour to Paris for one week. I went to the pavilion between applauses and cheers. I gently kept her on the chair and asked an Omega to bring her favorite watermelon juice. She drank two glasses, and soon the sun started to burn our day. I put on my shades and watched the games, but she kept looking at me. Angel, do you need anything? I asked her. Nothing. You look handsome when you wear sunglasses, she blurted out and bit her lip, looking down immediately. A bright smile came to my face. Hehe, <laughs> someone shy? Damon started to laugh within me. Shut up, Damon, I replied. Why? You should be feeling proud when your mate praises you. I know that she's falling for us, Damon teased. While they were enjoying the Redwood Fun Week and ending it in a superb way, someone was drawing an evil plan to destroy their happiness and destroy Xenia. Chapter 35 Happy Birthday, Angel Grayson's POV I looked at the clock. It was 12 a.m. sharp. Happy Birthday, Angel, I whispered in her ear. Mm. She was still sleeping. What? She quickly jolts up from her sleep like an arrow, making me laugh. Her cute expressions were filling my every moment with joy. What did you say? She widened her eyes. Happy birthday to my princess. I kissed her cheeks and forehead. What's the date today, Grayson? She sat on the bed and crossed her legs under her. Oh, it's December 3rd, my love. It's your birthday. I cupped her cheeks. How do you know that today is my birthday? She asked curiously. I'm a magician, your highness. I bowed dramatically before her and she burst out laughing. As I said previously, Stephen found all the information about you. Oh, it's your birthday and we must cut a cake. Wait, I said and blindfolded her. Where are you taking me? I took her into my arms and went to the balcony. Both of us are going to have a small private party. I placed her back on her feet. On our room's balcony, I had arranged a small table and a cake. I baked the cake personally for her, and to the decoration on it also. It was not a beautiful cake, but it was simple and elegant. I knew that she didn't like to eat things that were too sweet. So I reduced the icing amount. Satisfied, I slowly removed her blindfold. Wow! Grayson, this cake is so beautiful. Where did you purchase this? She looked at me with a bright smile. I pointed my thumb towards my chest proudly. You baked this cake for me? She was surprised. I waited to see that surprised feeling on her face. She jumped on me and hugged me tightly. Her hands were around my neck while my hands were around her waist, so I picked her up a little. Thank you, Grayson. Thank you for everything. Shall we cut the cake? I want to taste it. She took the butter knife to cut a small piece and fed it to me. I ate the whole piece and licked her fingers too while looking into her eyes. She looked down. I knew she was shy. Then I cut a piece and fed it to her. She ate the piece and moaned, making my feelings started bubbling to come out. I saw some icing on her lips. Fuck, I want to taste those lips. Only the moon goddess knew how I was suppressing my feelings for her. I wiped away the icing on her lips with my thumb and licked it. She looked at me and bit her lip. Angel, I'm controlling my emotions here by a distance of a thread. If you moan or lick your lips one more time, I'll forget that we have never had sex and I'm going to take you right here right now and we'll be very rough. I brought our foreheads together. Will she moan when we're having our beautiful moments? When I fuck her, will she scream? I asked Damon. Definitely, my friend. She will scream and bite us. She won't be able to walk for a long time. We will take her everywhere in our mansion until she gets exhausted. Damon said, making me calm. Angel, shall we sleep now? I suggested. 
Where did you learn to bake such tasty cakes, Grayson? She questioned suddenly. I told you that before we hold our titles, we have to go for a training program, love. In that program, they teach us everything. I explained. Now shall we go inside? I cupped her cheeks. I want to stay here on the balcony for a few minutes more. You go and sleep, Grayson. Thank you for the cake. It was so tasty. In fact, it was the tastiest cake I've ever had in my life. She smiled at me, looking like a goddess in the moonlight. I sat on the balcony chair and took her onto my lap. Her back was leaning on my chest. We both looked at the sky. She laid her head back on my shoulder. I saw her marking the spot on the neck and smiled to myself. Isn't it beautiful, Grayson? She asked, looking at the sky. Yes, beautiful indeed, I replied, looking at her. I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about the night sky. She pinched my arm and pointed her index finger to the sky. I've always loved the night sky. It's so beautiful. Suddenly I started to feel that she was sobbing. I turned her around and cupped her cheeks. Angel, what happened? Why are you crying? I asked and she started to cry harder. G Grayson, I, I remembered my parents. I, I need to see them, she cried. I could feel her hot tears pouring down on my chest. Do you want to see your parents? Hmm. I kissed her forehead and wiped her tears. Yes, I need to see them, she replied through her sobs. We will go to see them in near future, okay? I caressed her cheeks lovingly. We meaning? She looked at me in surprise. We meaning you, me, my mom, and dad. I smiled at her sweetly. No, Grayson, they will be upset if they see all of you. They will think that I came to study but started an affair with a foreigner. She confessed. Angel, we are going with my parents, so you don't have to worry, okay? I kissed her forehead. Hmm, that's good. She leaned into my chest again while looking at the sky. I kissed her head and drew circles on her arms. Within a few minutes, I heard her light snoring. A smile came to my face. She was sleeping like a baby. I took her to my arms and laid her on the bed, then hugged her from behind and I covered both of us with the duvet. Xenia's POV I opened my eyes slowly in the morning. I recalled the events of last night. It was the best night of my life. Does he really love me? Will he love me like this until my last breath? Or else will he change after some time? My mind started to fill with a lot of questions. I turned to the other side and saw Grayson watching me. Those sea green eyes are killing me. I can watch them for hours. Good morning, my birthday girl. He kissed my cheeks and I yawned. Sunshine, go freshen up and come down. We will go for breakfast. He took me in his arms and placed me on the bathroom counter. I yawned since I was still sleepy. You want me to kiss you for you to wake up? He brought his lips closer to me and I jumped down from the counter. No, I'm awake. You go first. I'll come. He laughed and went inside. I brushed my teeth and washed my face. Then I wore a fishtail skirt with a simple blouse and went down. Happy birthday, Luna! They all screamed as soon as I went down. Thank you all. I blushed at the surprise as they personally approached me to wish me. I decided to prepare milk rice for them. It's a dish that was made with rice and coconut milk for special occasions. I requested the ingredients from the chef and made the milk rice. I couldn't get fresh coconut milk, so I made the rice by mixing coconut powder with water. Grayson, want to try this? I gave him a plate of milk rice. He ate one spoon and his eyes lightened up. Angel, this is so delicious. Feed me more. I fed him the whole plate. I want more. Grayson flashed me sad puppy eyes. I fed him another plate and asked the chef to distribute the rest among the others. Angel, there's a small party for your birthday in the evening. I'll send you the dresses and everything with a makeup artist. You just get prepared and come to the packhouse ballroom. Grayson explained. Grayson, don't do anything crazy. Please, I don't want any parties. 
I replied, but he was stubborn. Baby girl, please don't say anything. This is your first birthday in my arms. I want to celebrate it. He kissed my cheeks. He always kissed my cheeks and forehead all the time because he needed to be in touch with me. Grayson, I need to call my parents, I requested. You can do a video call, Angel. Go to our bedroom, but don't show them the surroundings. I took his phone and talked to my parents. They were so happy to see me. In the evening, the makeup artist came with the clothes and other things. Luna, Alpha, send me to dress you. Shall we then? I nodded and she took the dress out of the box. I saw a beautiful ball gown, particularly a navy blue lace applique off-shoulder princess ball gown. It was like a prom dress. The bottom of the gown was designed with white lace, and from waist up, dark blue lace was appliqued. There were white pearls were attached around the waist. The gown looked elegant and clearly custom-made. I looked at the gown with my mouth wide open. I had never seen such a beautiful, elegant dress in my life. I touched the dress lightly with fear that something would happen to dress. Luna, shall we start dressing you? She asked, holding up the dress. Mm, okay. I nodded my head and started to wear the dress. Eventually, I shoved my body into the gown and she helped me to wear the heels. They were light blue color sparkling pumps decorated with royal blue color lace flowers on them with ankle straps. Luna, please sit here. I have to do your hair and makeup. I sat on the chair and let her do her job. After about one and a half hours, she finally finished her job. She clipped a pearl handmade hair ornament to my hair and completed my look. Luna, you look like a goddess. I have no words to describe your beauty. Alpha will go crazy when he sees you, she praised me. Thank you for making me so beautiful, I smiled at her. Luna, I must go. Alpha must be waiting for you, she bowed and started packing her things. Could you please help me to go to the pack house ballroom? This gown is a bit too heavy for me. She nodded and helped me to handle the gown. We slowly walked to the ballroom. The huge mahogany doors were closed. My heart started to beat rapidly and I became very nervous. I pushed the doors and went inside. Chapter 36 I Love You Grayson's POV I sent the maker artist to her room. I am impatient to see her tonight. She must be looks like an angel. I got busy with the party arrangements and I was prepared to surprise her with her birthday gift. Soon, I started to get prepared myself. Stephen came to support me. You look nervous, Alpha, he pointed out. Of course, Stephen, I am impatient to see my angel, and I know in front of her I'm nothing, I admitted. Oh, don't say like that, Alpha. We're redwood boys who aren't second to anyone. Stephen was a trustworthy Gamma. He was perfect for his title. Hmm, looks like you're ready, Alpha Prince. Shall we go to the ballroom? I nodded and we both went to the ballroom. I saw that all of the pack members had arrived for the party. I decorated the hall ceiling with dangling blue and white lace tied to every corner of the room. Mini bulbs were attached to them to give a starry look and I dimmed the lights. Her pathway was designed with red, white, and yellow rose bouquets and the path was decorated with red rose petals. Every table had candles and the table centerpieces were decorated with white and blue daisy and gerbera flowers. Grayson, I am sure Xenia will be surprised to see all this. I'm proud of you, son, Mom approached me. Oh, Mom, thanks. You look beautiful, my princess. I hugged her. She's my princess. Your princess is on the way. Dad gave me a fake annoyed look, making me laugh. I always admired their love. Alpha, Luna's ready. The makeup artist mind linked me. Okay, send her in, I replied. Listen up, everybody. Luna's going to come in now. I need all your attention on her, I said in my alpha voice. My heart started to beat rapidly in my chest. Why am I so impatient and restless? Soon I saw the large mahogany doors open, and there she stood. A spotlight fell on her. 
Is she a goddess? I couldn't believe my eyes that the beautiful human in front of me was my angel. Her big doe eyes looked around. She's like Cinderella. I forgot my surroundings. I forgot everything with her beauty. There were no words to describe her beauty. Grayson, son, you must go to Xenia. Mom came and disturbed my thoughts. I nodded and went to her. I stood in front of her. Our eyes met for a few seconds. Xenia's POV I feel like I'm Cinderella, but where's my prince? All eyes were on me through the dim lights of the hall, but then the spotlight on me made me more nervous. When my eyes started getting familiar with the lights, I saw the most handsome man in the world coming towards me, his shoes tapping across the silent hall. He approached me swiftly and stood in front of me. His hair was gelled and blow-dried to increasing the volume of his hair, but his sharp parted line was still visible. Wow. He maintained a short beard that connected from his ears and upper lip, which gives him a damn handsome look. I'm sure I'll fall for him tonight. He wore a black slim fit tuxedo suit with a velvet waistcoat, and the top coat's button parts were also velvet. Rest of the suit's color was dull black with a shine. My throat went dry when I saw the beautiful man. Angel, you are so beautiful. He kissed the back of my palm, placed my arm in his crook of the elbow, and started to walk. Grayson, this is a huge party. You said that there's a small party. I walked along with him. Seeing him made me a little more comfortable. How could I arrange a small party for my rose petal? Shall we cut the cake then? The cake table was decorated with white lilies, and on it, a two-tier beautiful buttercream frosting orange and white cake was placed. I cut the cake, and they all sang happy birthday. I took a piece of cake and fed it to Grayson. Happy birthday, my love. He wished me and kissed my cheek. I smiled and fed to Grayson's mom and dad also, then also to Kate and his mate. Soon came Stephen. Luna, I need a big piece, Stephen said and ate the whole piece. We all laughed at his act. Shall we go and sit at our table, Angel? I nodded and we went to the table. He helped me with my gown as I sat down. Angel, do you know how beautiful you look? I'm so happy that I got a mate like an angel. You are truly a goddess. He kissed the back of my palm. Everyone was happily chatting at their own tables. The kitchen staff started to serve the snacks and welcome drinks. All the pack members were laughing and enjoying their time. After a little while, Grayson's parents approached me. Xenia, happy birthday, sweetheart. Here's a small gift from me and Dad. She gave me a small gold box which was bedazzled with diamonds. I opened it to see a beautiful bracelet resting inside. Xenia. This is our family's bracelet, which is supposed to be passed down to the future daughter-in-law. I think it is time to take responsibility and join our Lockwood family. This is an ancient bracelet, Xenia. Protect it with your life, she explained. Mom, please, these things are too valuable for me to handle, I replied. You called me Mom for the first time, Xenia. I should give something worth it in return. She kissed my forehead and left. I turned to see Grayson looking at me in awe. Angel, give me a minute. I'll be right back. I nodded and started eating my food. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Grayson was on the stage and he was speaking into the microphone. It is your Luna special day. We all wish her a very happy birthday and for a happy life. The crowd started to cheer and clap for me. Now it is the time for the couple to dance. Grayson got off from the stage, approaching me with the microphone still in his hand. He stood in front of me and got down on one knee. May I? He reached out his arm to me. I had never danced with a partner. Besides, I was wearing a huge ball gown. How can I dance? I didn't want to embarrass him, so I gave him my hand. He took my hand and led me to the dance floor. Grayson, I don't know how to dance. I've never danced with a partner, and this huge gown is hard to maintain with these heels. I explained to him. 
Remove your shoes, then. He bent down and started to remove my heels. Grayson, what are you doing? Everyone's looking at us. Please get up. I insisted. I don't care, Angel. You just tightly hold on to my shoulder, otherwise you will feel unsteady when I remove one heel. He removed my heels and guided me to step on his shoes. His hands encircled around my waist and my hands linked around his neck. Then the music started playing. It was my favorite song. Ellie Golding's Love Me Like You Do. Do you like this song, Angel? Grayson asked, his lips curling into a smile. Like it? I love this song, Grayson. How did you know that I love this song? My face lighted with a bright smile. I checked your phone and saw that you've listened to the song hundreds of times. So I thought this is the right platform to play the song. He explained. We just danced along as the lyrics of the song touched my soul. You're the light. You're the night. You're the color of my blood. You're the cure. You're the pain. You're the only thing I want to touch. Never knew that it could mean so much, so much. You're the fear, I don't care. Cause I've never been so high. Follow me through the dark. Let me take you past our satellites. You can see the world you brought to life, to life. So love me like you do, la la, love me like you do, love me like you do, la la, love me like you do, touch me like you do, ta ta, touch me like you do. What are you waiting for? Grayson, this, everything you've done, means so much to me, I confessed. Shh, don't say anything. Just listen to the song. This song has everything that I need to tell you, my angel. When the song reached its peak, he lifted me from my waist and started to twirl in circles. I laughed with him. Angel, you mean to me so much. You are in every drop of my blood. He brought our foreheads together and I could see his eyes clearly now. Those eyes had pure love for me. Grayson's POV Baby girl, I have a surprise for you. I walked outside with her after dinner. Grayson, no more surprises. You've given me the best birthday ever. She cupped my cheeks and I could see a different emotion in her eyes. An emotion I had never seen in her before. A limousine came with a driver, stopping in front of us. Alpha, we're ready to go, the driver said. Where are we going? She hung on my arm and asked. I told you, it's a surprise. I opened the door for her and she got in. Then I also hopped into the limo and the drive began. I took her onto my lap and she put her arms around my neck, making me nuzzle her. I saw her marking place and kissed it, making a sparkle shoot through my body, and I knew that she also felt the same. She hid her face on my neck shyly, and I started to draw circles on her back. After a few minutes, we arrived at our destination. I blindfolded her and took her carefully out of the limo. Grayson, where are we? I need to see, she demanded. I took her in my arms, bridal style, and started walking. Soon, I slowly put her down. Are we on a beach, Grayson? She asked as soon as the soft sand touched her feet. I slowly removed her blindfold. Grayson, what are we doing on the beach? I stood behind her and turned her towards the sea. This is the gift from me for my angel's birthday. I pointed at the passenger cruise named Xenia. Grayson, th this is a cruise. She looked at me with her widened eyes. I kept my chin on her shoulder and hugged her from behind. Do you like it? I whispered in her ear. Grayson, you're crazy. Why do you spend on these expensive things for me? What would I do with this cruise? I was actually planning to have our honeymoon on that cruise, but I didn't tell her that. You will understand, baby girl. I kissed her back, her shoulder, her neck, and she wiggled in my embrace. Why are you doing these things for me, Grayson? Who am I to you? 
Everything you're doing is adding a burden of worry to my shoulders, Grayson. She turned and looked at me, sadness filling her eyes. Baby, I love you. I love you. I love you so much. You are my everything, my life. I am perfect when you're with me. I took her hands in mine. Grayson, will you love me like this until our last breath? No matter what happened between us, no matter how old we get, I just need you to love me like this. I've seen love as just a word between people. I learned that it's a pure and beautiful feeling from you. I used to hate love. I thought that love will only bring pain. But you showed me the beautiful side of love. So, Grayson, on this day I need to say something that you've waited for a long time to hear. I was afraid of what she was going to tell. My heart started to beat rapidly like never before. I love you, she confessed, looking into my eyes. W what did you say, Angel? My voice came out shakily, unsure of what I had heard. I love you, she said again. Did I hear it correctly? Did you say I love you? I asked to confirm. Yes, you heard it correctly. I love you, I love you, I love you. She smiled widely. Her bright face has a different color today. I hugged her tightly. A hug had a warm, compassionate feeling. I could feel that she hugged me back tightly. Damon, did you hear it? She said it. She says that she loves us. I happily mind-linked him. Yes, I heard it. I told you that you'll love us one day. Damon was happily howling. Yes, this is the happiest day of my life, I told to him. Angel, you gave me the happiest moment in my life. I cupped her cheeks in my palms. I love you. I went down towards her neck, kissed her marked spot. She wiggled and her whole body started to shake. I kissed her bare neck and shoulders like a thirsty person who'd just received a glass of water. You forgot to kiss the most important part. She bit her lips and licked them. Fuck, I want to taste those lips. You want me to kiss those pink lips? She nodded and looked down shyly. I lifted her chin with my index finger and placed her bare feet on my shoes. Our two bodies hugged like one. I slowly brought my lips to hers. Sparkling electricity went through our whole bodies. I had eagerly waited to taste those pink lips. It was juicy, and I wanted to taste the inside of her mouth, so I pinched her waist lightly, and with a gasp, I entered my tongue into her mouth. I felt like I was drowning in a honey river. Her saliva tasted like honey. I didn't give her a chance to kiss me back. I just shoved her lips into my mouth and sucked on those juicy lips. I lift her a little bit so her whole body weighed on me now. I roamed my tongue to every corner of her mouth and lips. I didn't want to end this kiss, but I felt like she was struggling to breathe. I quickly parted our lips. Angel, are you okay? Sorry, I couldn't stop myself. I cupped her cheeks. No, I'm okay. You kissed me and didn't give any space to kiss you back. And see, my lips are throbbing, Grayson. I saw that her pink lips had turned red and swollen. I felt proud that those cute lips were mine. And now I have another surprise for you. Close your eyes. I took out the pearl necklace from my pocket and connected it around on her bare neck. Grayson, this is so beautiful. But this is too expensive. I don't want any of these. I just want your love. That's it. The necklace had a moon-carved pendant with the first letters of our name. Angel, I want you to wear this necklace from now onward. And no matter what, don't remove it. I kissed her forehead and the fireworks started in the sky, displaying the words, Happy Birthday, Angel. She started to cry on my chest. Grayson, thank you for everything. I'm sorry for my every misbehavior with you. I didn't understand your love. That's why I pulled so many stunts. I'm so sorry for hurting you so many times. She cried on my chest bitterly. Shh, my angel, please don't cry. I don't like to see tears in your eyes. I kissed her tears and wiped them with my thumb, 
before kissing her lips lightly. You gave me the happiest moment today. That's all I want. I looked deep into her eyes. I need to talk to her. Damon suddenly interrupted. Okay, but don't hurt her or don't scare her. He nodded in response. Angel, Damon needs to talk to you. I informed her. Um, about what? I'm scared of him a little bit. Will he hurt me? She asked. No, never. He won't be able to live a minute without you. She nodded and gave her permission. Mate, you love us now, right? I waited to hear that for a long time. Damon expressed happily. Hi, Damon. This is the first time I'm talking to you. Yes, I love you both. Please don't change and love me until I die, she said to him. Oh, mate, trust me. You haven't seen the best love yet. It's yet to come, he teased. Okay, Damon, can you please give the control to Grayson now? Damon nodded and gave me the control. Angel, shall we go around the cruise? I suggested. Grayson, it's already midnight now. I think we must return to the pack house, she replied. Oh, Stephen and Kate are there to look after the pack. I smiled. Say those words while I'm carrying you during the whole cruise. I lifted her in my arms. Mmm, what words? She gave me her cute puppy eyes as she tapped her chin. You said before, I reminded. Uh, I'm sorry, is that the word? She teased. Baby girl, if you don't say it again, I will kiss you so badly until your breath gets hitched. I winked and gave an naughty smirk. Really? Then kiss me. I'm waiting. Damn, this girl is something. Fine, then don't tell me, I said with a fake angry face. She laughed in my expression. I love you, she whispered in my ear. Again, I demanded. I love you, she muttered, this time a little louder. Again, I insisted. I love you, she shouted out loud. Love is a beautiful thing. It gets so much intense when the person reciprocates our love back to us. If the person has a beautiful heart, then love is also a stunning blessing. Chapter 37 Will you marry me? Xenia's POV Good morning, my wolfy boyfriend. I kissed his cheeks. Mm, let me sleep for another five minutes and you also sleep with me, he said and pulled me back to his embrace. No, wake up, Grayson, we're getting late, I cried out. Late for what, Angel? He asked me, still half asleep. Grayson, we're going for Paris. How could you forget that? I knew it was my first time, and he had already traveled the world more times than his age. We were going on the trip as the winning ticket of mating games, but Grayson wanted to personally bear his expenses, and he gave the chance to Kate and his maid to go with the pack house's expenses. As soon as we came back home, they could go and enjoy themselves. Oh, that. Angel, we're flying with our private jets, so the pilot can wait until we get ready. He mumbled. That's true, Grayson, but I'm impatient to go. My favorite holiday destination is Paris and the Eiffel Tower. I exclaimed with a bright smile. Angel, you go and prepare. I need to sleep for five more minutes. He started falling asleep again. I pulled off his duvet. No, you take me to the bathroom. I was stubborn and had more confidence than I did previously. Oh, my stubborn mate. You are much more stubborn after you confess that you love me. He stood up from the bed. He usually slept with only his boxers. My mouth got dry when he stood up as his abs became visible. I just want to touch and feel those. Like what you see, baby? He smirked. Uh, I need to go to the bathroom. I turned, but he grabbed me from my waist and pulled me against his rock-hard chest, resting his chin on my shoulder after pushing my hair aside. You bothered to wake me up, and then now you tease me before running to the bathroom? Do you think that I'll leave you easily? His hot breath started to fan to my ear, making me tightly grab his hands that were around my waist. If you want to go for the bathroom, give me a kiss first. I want a lip kiss. He kissed my shoulder. I couldn't resist his request. 
since the day I kissed him, I too wanted and needed to keep kissing him. Then take me to the bathroom and I'll kiss you. He turned me around to face his chest and picked me up by cupping my butt cheeks, forcing me to put my legs around his waist. He carried me to the bathroom and rested me on the bathroom counter. Now, Angel, I want a deep k- Before he could end his sentence, I started to kiss him. He parted my legs and came closer to me. I put my legs around his waist and we had a deep kiss. When our breath started to hitch in our throats, we pulled our lips apart and brought our foreheads together. Angel, do you know that morning sex is awesome? My eyes widened at his words and I slapped his chest playfully. Now go out, Grayson. He laughed and left the bathroom. After freshening up, I came out of the bathroom to see that Grayson had started packing things. Angel, I packed your things also. I checked the baggage and saw that he was already done packing. Did you pack everything? I asked. Curious to check if he had packed my undergarments. Yes, I did. He answered with a proud smile. My undies also? I asked him shyly. Yes, Angel. My face turned red at the thought. Oh, my baby's shy, he teased. After packing our things, we went for our breakfast. Xenia, sweetheart, are you ready for the trip? Mom asked. Yes, Mom, I'm impatiently waiting, I replied excitedly while drinking my juice. Grayson, take care of her. She's our jewel, Mom reminded, and Grayson nodded with a smile. After our breakfast, we got ready to head to the private jet. Kate and Stephen came to drop us at the airport. You both must take care of the pack until I come back, Grayson instructed with his Alpha voice. Don't worry, Alpha, we will. You both enjoy your vacation, Stephen wished, and we headed to the private jet. Good morning, Alpha and Luna. I'm your pilot, Michael. Please come this way. He led us to our seats. Sunshine, you sit on my lap. You're afraid of the plane takeoff, right? Grayson took me onto his lap. The flight took off and I tightly hugged him, clenched his shirt, and hid my face in his chest. He drew circles on my back to calm me down. Good morning, Luna and Alpha. What would you like to have? Grayson ordered champagne. Angel, you can sleep until we reach Paris. There are seven and a half hours to go. You can rest. I have some business work. I nodded and went to the room. I feel sleepy and tired, too. I don't know why. At the Paris, France. Grayson's POV. Rose Petal, wake up. I kissed her forehead. I woke her up for the lunch also, but she was in a deep sleep. I tried hard to wake her up, but she didn't wake up. Oh, Grayson, have we arrived? She yawned and still looked sleepy. Yes, my love. I woke you up for the lunch also, but you were in a deep sleep. Are you all right, Angel? Do you feel any sickness? I asked because she had never slept that long before. Oh, Grayson, I don't know why. I feel sleepy and tired. Can I sleep as soon as we arrive at the hotel? She asked with her puppy eyes. Sleep now, Angel. I'll take you to the car. I took her in my arms. She fell asleep once again. We came to the hotel and I gently laid her on the bed. I removed my jacket and covered her body with a duvet. I parted the curtain of the window. The tall Eiffel Tower could be seen clearly and closely from our room. She will be happy to see this view. Grayson, are we in the hotel? She asked while yawning. It was already 8.30 p.m. Angel, we are in the hotel. You overslept, sunshine. What happened? Are you all right? I checked her and realized she had a slightly high temperature. Oh, Grayson, I'm sleepy and not feeling energetic. I don't know why. I took her onto my lap. Wait, Angel. Is your menstrual dates are close? If I'm correct, I think she's close to her menstrual cycle. Mm, yes, I think so. That may be the reason for these changes. She smiled weakly. Can I have some painkillers, Grayson? She requested, and I gave her the medicine. Angel, you have to see this beautiful scenery. I took her in my arms and went to the room balcony. The tall Eiffel Tower was lighted and brought a proud look to France. 
I put her on her feet. Grayson, is that the Eiffel Tower? She squealed. Yes, my love, I answered. Oh my God, this is my dream, Grayson. Thank you so much. She kissed my cheeks. I stood behind her and put my hands around her waist. Resting my chin on her shoulder, I moved a little bit of her hair off her back and kissed her shoulders. She started to feel a tingle and I felt her goosebumps brushing against my skin. Can you feel the warmth of my love, Angel? I whispered in her ear with my husky voice. She bit her lips and closed her eyes. Yes, Grayson. I was cold a little bit and now I'm fine. She kissed the back of my palm. I kissed her shoulder, neck, and the crook of her neck, licking the marking spot. I felt her breath accelerate. Her chest was moving up and down. Seeing it, I felt my manhood getting hard and it started to ache like it needed to taste her inside. I turned her to my side and started to kiss her. I deepened the kiss. I roamed my tongue to every corner of her mouth. I lightly grabbed her hair and squeezed her butt cheeks. G Grayson, I, I think we should stop from here, otherwise things will drag into something else, she said. Yes, she is correct. I knew that she was not ready for that yet. Yes, you are correct, Angel. Shall we go inside then? I suggested. Grayson, I want to walk on the streets of France. She hung on my arm and requested with her puppy eyes. Oh, baby girl, it's already night and you're not feeling well also. I promise that I'll take you tomorrow, okay? I'll take you to the Eiffel Tower also. If you wait and rest today, tomorrow you can enjoy a lot. I kissed her forehead and we returned to the room. I needed to have a cold shower to calm my inner beast, so I went to the bathroom and saw that my little buddy had already risen up. Calm down, buddy, we have to wait for a little. I came out and saw that she was watching TV. Angel, I've requested the dinner to our room. We will have it and then sleep. She went to the bathroom for a bath and joined me again. Soon, food arrived in our room and I took her to my lap to feed her. She ate everything. She didn't have anything to eat since morning. Grayson, shall we sleep then? I nodded and she quickly shoved her fragile body into the duvet and I hopped into the bed, hugging her as we both fell asleep. Next morning. Grayson, I want to have a tea on the balcony while looking at the Eiffel Tower. While I sit on your lap. Wow, she's romantic now. Sure, my love. You go to the balcony, I'll bring the things. I took the teacups and other things before heading to the balcony. So that's why my angel woke up early today. I gave her a peck to her lips. She was so sexy with my shirt and basketball shorts. Yes. Oh, I wanted to have a tea while looking at the Eiffel Tower. She yawned. I prepared the tea and sat on the chair, placing her on my lap. She sat on my lap and kept her legs up on the stool, leaning on my chest. I pushed her hair aside and kissed her neck. This moment is so romantic. Don't you want to drink your tea? She asked, taking the tea from my hand. I definitely want to, but in my ways. I smirked. She took a sip in her mouth and I turned her face to my side, kissing her, and slowly drank the tea from her mouth. Ah, oh, so this is your way. Her cheeks were flushed red. Yes, don't you like it? I drank a sip and kissed her again. This time she drank the tea. Mm, I kind of like this way, she whispered in my ear. We continued our special kiss until the tea finished. This is the best tea I've ever had in my life, she said, kissing my cheeks. Angel, shall we get ready to go out? I'll take you to see Paris. I carried her up and we went back inside. We both had our breakfast and got prepared for the day out. We went to the main door of the hotel and a BMW parked in front of us. We hopped into that and went for a ride. She kept looking out the window with amazement. Soon I parked the vehicle. Angel, shall we walk? She quickly got down from the vehicle and hung on my arm. I showed her places like Notre Dame de Paris, the Pont Royal, which was a bridge constructed with five elliptical arches, a hydrographic ladder indicating highest level floods in Paris, visible on the last pier nearest each bank, and finally the Arc de Triomphe, 
one of the most famous monuments in Paris, France. Somewhere in between these visits, we had our lunch. Baby girl, we'll go back to the hotel now, freshen up, and we'll go see the Eiffel Tower, okay? I patted her head. But can't we go like this with these clothes? I want to go now and spend the night there. Grayson, please, she pleaded. Angel, you're tired now. Besides, I'll take you to the Eiffel Tower restaurant. And for that, we need some decent clothes, so we will go back now. We got into the vehicle and drove back to the hotel. Sunshine, you take a shower and here's your dress to wear for the evening. I'll take a shower in the other bathroom. She nodded and I laid down her dress on the bed. It was a white L.K. Bennett dress with blue poppy flowers printed on the waist. And few flowers scattered here and there all over the dress. When I came out of the other bathroom, I saw that she was struggling to pull up her zip on the back of the dress. Need any help? She nodded while looking down. Her cream-colored back and just the little top of her butt cheeks were visible to me. I slowly pulled her to me, her face buried in my chest. I hugged her and slowly pulled up the zip from the bottom to the top. My fingers caressed her back and I felt her clutching my t-shirt. I kissed her cheeks and she looked down shyly. Hmm, now we will do your hair and makeup. I had downloaded a simple messy bun hairstyle from YouTube and I arranged her hair as such, adding a light coat of makeup on her face. So my wolfy boyfriend's also a beautician, huh? She smiled at me while looking in the mirror. Final touch-up is yet to be done, ma'am. I took a fresh large rose and pinned it on the hair near her left ear. She wore flat shoes, which I gave her, completing the look. Now she's perfect. I wore a pair of blue jeans, a white t-shirt, and a simple dark gray blazer on top of it. Yes, this is the perfect smart casual for me. Shall we go then? I rested her hand on the crook of my elbow and proudly walked out of the hotel into our car. The minute we reached our destination, she got off the car and ran towards the tower. Angel, stop! You might fall, don't run! I ran towards her and caught her in my arms. Careful, you'll fall if you run like that. She looked around everywhere like a baby just starting to see the world. Her eyes were shining brighter than the Eiffel Tower lights. Baby girl, shall we go to the restaurant to have our dinner? We went to the lift and headed up the restaurant on the second level. The tower had two restaurants. Le 58 Tour Eiffel on the first Eiffel and Le Jules Verne, a gourmet restaurant with its own lift on the second level. The restaurant we were heading to was star in the Michelin Red Guide. It was run by the multi-Michelin star chef Alain Ducasse from 2007 to 2017. Starting 2019, it was managed by three-star chef Frédéric Anton. Additionally, there was a champagne bar at the top of the Eiffel Tower. We had our candlelight dinner inside the tower. Reserving a table in the tower wasn't easy. But as I money talked and we got in. Grayson, this is awesome. I never imagined any of this. Thank you for everything, Grayson. She kissed my cheeks and forehead. If you're happy, that's all I want. I looked into her eyes. Those eyes had a sparkling beauty, deep like a blue ocean. Shall we go down then? I suggested. Are we leaving now? She asked, a slight pout appearing on her plump lips. No, my angel. We will wait until you decide to go back to the hotel. Happy? Her lips curled into a huge smile. We went back down to the park. It was already 10 p.m., but there was still a huge crowd. After all, Paris was the busiest city in France. The time has finally come. She was looking at the sky and tall Eiffel Tower. It looked like she would never get fed up with the view. While she was looking at the tower, I disappeared into the crowd. Grayson, where are you? Her eyes widened in fear when I was nowhere to be seen. She was so afraid that she didn't run here and there, but rather she turned around and looked among the crowd. Suddenly, the tower's light changed, and I got down on one knee. Angel? I called out to her, and she quickly turned around. The crowd among us gave us the space we need, and they surrounded us like a circle. Grayson, where did you go? And why are you on your knees? She had a confused look on her face. Will you marry me? 
I took the ring box out of my pocket and opened the box to reveal a diamond ring. Her eyes enlarged and she covered her open mouth with both her hands. Come on, say yes to him. The crowd started to cheer for us. Angel, since the day I saw you, I started to love you. That feeling never faded away. With your every cute moment and stubbornness, it kept growing. I promise you that my love for you will keep on growing until my last breath. You are the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. More than that, your heart is beautiful, my angel. She started to cry. Will you marry me, Zenia Fernando? Will you become Mrs. Grayson Lockwood? I asked out loud. Yes, I will marry you. She hugged me while crying, and as soon as she said yes, the tower's lights changed into words saying, Congratulations! And fireworks lit up the sky. The crowd started to clap and cheer for us. I slipped the diamond ring on her fourth finger and lifted her up from her waist as she put her arms around my neck while we kissed. Thank you for saying yes, Angel. You've given me so much happiness, I said gratefully. Grayson, I never expected this. So this is why you wanted to change into a fresh look? She looked at me with her eyebrow arched. I wanted to surprise you, Angel. We will get married soon. I want to be with you forever. I rested our foreheads together. This is a beautiful ring, Grayson. I don't have any words to thank you. Gave me all the happiness I want. She cried on my shoulders. Hey, no need to cry, Angel. You made my life perfect. I kissed her forehead. Come, we will sit here and spend the night here. I brought snacks and a bottle of champagne. We will celebrate. But before that, I need to make a video call to Mom. I pulled out my phone from my pocket. I dialed Mom's number and soon she appeared on the screen. Mom, how you doing? I asked. We're great, Grayson. How about you both? I replied. We're fine, son. She smiled. Mom, she said yes. She'll marry me, Mom. I was so happy and my face had a bright smile. Oh, I'm so happy for you two. Congratulations to both of you. Where's Zenya? I want to talk to her. I wrapped my arms around her waist and dragged her towards me. Mom, you knew this? You didn't say a word to me, my angel asked in surprise. Sweetheart, we all wanted to surprise you. If I told you, how would it become a surprise? Anyway, welcome to the Lockwood family, Zenya. Mom blew her a flying kiss through the screen. Thank you, Mom. Thank you for everything and especially for giving birth to a wonderful man, she said while looking at me. Okay, Mom, we'll call you later and take care. I ended the call. We both sat and I took her onto my lap. We took selfies and from time to time had our snacks and champagne. Life is so beautiful if the right person is with you. You don't need anything expensive or any luxurious life to be happy. Just the right person who loves you no matter what and no matter who you are. You feel that you're perfect with him or her, and you feel very free. So find the exact person for you. Chapter 38 I Have to Be Inside You Xenia's POV The next morning I opened my eyes slowly to see that we were in the hotel room. Maybe at midnight I slept in Grayson's arms under the Eiffel Tower, and he maybe brought me to the hotel room. It was the most beautiful night I have ever experienced. How a man could be so much romantic. I was afraid that I would lose him. I was greedy for his love. I knew that I had tried to go away from him many times, but after everything that happened, I'll do everything to keep him with me. Love is an amazing feeling that you will do anything to keep your loved ones happy. A small smile came to my face and I turned around to see the most handsome man sleeping next to me. My favorite sea green eyes were closed, but instead I ran my fingers through his hair. His stubborn brownish blackish hair gave him a sexy look. I needed to go to the bathroom, so I slowly got up from the bed and went to the bathroom. <sighs> ah! 
I screamed as a sudden sharp pain arose from my lower abdomen like someone was cutting my lower parts. Grayson quickly came running to me. Angel, what happened? His worried and scared voice echoed in my ears. I don't know. A sharp pain came from my lowest part. I said as I panted. I sat on the bathroom floor. I couldn't stand up. Angel, come. I'll take you to the bed. I was grunting in pain. Grayson, I think this is normal because I need to pee, and I held it in for a long time. Give me a minute, I'll come, I explained. Are you sure, sunshine? I nodded and went out with a worried face. I peed and came out. Ah! Grayson, it hurts! Once again, the pain ran through my body. I fell to the floor. Grayson quickly ran to me and took me into his arms. Baby girl, what's happening? Your body temperature's also increasing. He laid me on the bed and checked my body temperature also. I don't know, Grayson. That pain comes quickly and disappears within a minute. I squeezed my stomach and legs together in pain. Shall I call the doctor, Angel? I'm worried, he asked. No, we'll see. If the pain gets worse, then we will call for a doctor. He nodded and asked the hotel to bring our breakfast to our room. Within a few minutes, I started sweating, and my body temperatures kept rising. Grayson, I think my temperature's getting higher. He checked my forehead with the back of his palm. Shit, Angel, you're burning. I'm gonna call for a doctor. Grayson called the reception and asked a lady doctor to visit. Within half an hour, a doctor came to our room and she checked me. Hmm, I wonder why body temperature is increasing. Seems like she doesn't have any problem. She placed the stethoscope around her neck. Then why am I having this pain, doctor? I asked while grunting. Maybe it's due to the climate change and food changes. I'll give you some medicine. Take those. She prescribed the medicine and gave the slip to Grayson. Thank you, doctor, Grayson said, and the doctor left the room. Angel, I'll bring you the medicine. You wait and don't stand up from the bed. Grayson ran out of the room. I decided to eat something, so I took the fruit tray and started to have an omelet. I had one piece, and as soon as the second piece went down my throat, I needed to puke. I ran to the bathroom and vomited. I vomited out almost everything I had from the previous night. I felt dizzy, and then I collapsed. Grayson's POV When I entered the room with medicine, I heard that she was vomiting. I ran to the bathroom. As soon as I opened the door, she was about to fall on the floor. I quickly grabbed her and took her into my arms. She was unconscious, making me extremely worried about her. Maybe the pain is unbearable. That's why she collapsed. I carried her and gently rested her on the bed. Her body was like it was on fire, burning and sweating. I took a wet towel, started to wipe away her sweat, and lightly dab her neck, arms, forehead with the towel. After about half an hour, she slowly opened her eyes. Angel, I'm here. How do you feel now? I asked while stroking her hair. Grayson, ah, the pain, it's not reducing. She cried out and squeezed her lower abdomen. I was worried about her. I couldn't understand what's wrong with her. My phone rang suddenly. I checked the screen and saw that mom was calling. Maybe she can help me. Hello, Grayson. Is Zenia okay? I thought that she was in pain, Mom said. No, Mom, she's not okay. I don't know from yesterday she felt tired and sleepy, and suddenly today she's screaming in pain, squeezing her lower abdomen area. And she puked and collapsed also. I don't understand, Mom, and I'm really worried about her, I explained in detail. Son, I think she's in her heat, Mom replied. Heat? But how could that be, Mom, when she's a human? I asked in curiosity and wonder. Yes, Grayson, I don't know about that since we all don't have any experience on human mating. But I think since she's mated to an alpha, so she will get her heat, Mom clarified. Mom, what should I do now? I questioned impatiently. You have to do the same thing with Xenia also. You have to be inside her, son. There's no other option. Just as how she-wolves mate throughout the heating process, so Xenia has to go through it also, she suggested. 
No, Mom, she won't allow me to do it. I looked back at my angel's tired and pained face. Okay, Grayson, then try with your fingers at least, she proposed. I'll try, Mom. I ended the call and headed back to the bed. So, she's in her heat. I have to explain this to her and there's no other option. Angel, listen to me carefully. You are in your heat. I took her onto my lap. What do you mean by heat? <gasps> Grayson, I can't bear this pain. She was squirming and struggling with the pain. Angel, heat is like the menstrual cycle of she-wolves. They get it once a month and they need to have sex with their mate to reduce their heat pain. I tucked her loose hair behind her ear. But I'm not a she-wolf. Beads of sweat were pouring down from her forehead to her shoulders and neck. Yes, I know. I also don't understand that how this heat is happening to you. But mom said that since you're mated to an alpha, you get heat even though you're a human. I kissed her forehead. Then what should we do, Grayson? She looked at me worriedly. I have to be inside you. I blurted out softly. What do you mean by that? She asked. I have to have sex with you until this heat lasts. I cupped her cheek. No, 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 that's not going to happen. How could you say such a thing like that, Grayson? We aren't even married yet. How could we have sex? She exclaimed. I know that angel, but mom said that I should at least try with my fingers. I said. No. No, please don't do anything, Grayson. I will bear this pain, but I can't ruin my dignity. Tears were flowing down her face. Baby girl, there's no other way for this. No medicine for this. Only physical touch is the solution. Even she-wolves can't bear this pain. Then how can you, my angel? I reminded, looking deep into her eyes. I'll die. I'm not doing anything like that. Her voice was weak but determined. For God's sake, please understand the situation, angel. I'm going to marry you. So why can't you let me touch you? Okay, I will not look into any part of your body. Just let me insert my one finger only. I begged her. She screamed and I felt a warm liquid wetting my trousers. I smelled blood immediately and I realized that she was bleeding. The warm, thick maroon blood started to come out from her lower parts like a waterfall. Grayson? <gasps> What's happening to me? Am I going to die? What is this blood? I can't hold the pain anymore. <sighs> Grayson, I'm burning from inside. Please take me to the bathroom and put me in the bathtub. I took her to my arms and rushed to the bathroom. I filled the tub with cold water and gently placed her inside the tub. Grayson, this pain is like someone stabbing me a thousand times and I'm burning. She screamed in pain. Angel, please let me have you. She puked on my shirt suddenly and I immediately removed it. Sorry, Grayson. She looked at me apologetically. It's okay, you can do anything, baby girl. Let me insert my finger just one time, and you will feel better. I promise that I won't look at you, and if it doesn't work, I will not touch you. I patted her head and kissed her cheeks. You promise? She asked with a faint voice. I knew she was tired. She was struggling with the pain for the whole day, and she couldn't fight it anymore. Finally. She gave up and allowed me to insert my fingers. I promise, my angel. I took her out of the bathtub and kept her on the bathroom counter. I removed my jeans, leaving me in my boxers. I filled the tub with cold water so that it would reduce her body temperature and slowly started to remove her shorts. Close your eyes, she said. I did as she said. Soon her lower part was naked. I lifted her up by cupping her butt cheeks and gently got into the bathtub. I sat in the bathtub, made her back lay against my chest, and she leaned her head on my shoulder. She was wearing a shirt of mine, and through her wet shirt I saw her bra. Grayson, you promised to close your eyes, she whispered to me. Baby girl, you have to relax when I enter my middle finger. Relax your muscles in your lower part, so that will be easy for both of us, I explained. She nodded and I slowly rubbed her vagina with my middle finger. She hissed in pain. I saw that blood had flowed out and was mixing with the water. I gently rubbed her vaginal lips and then I entered little by little with my middle finger. 
She is so tight. Angel, you need to relax your muscles. She nodded and her breathing started to accelerate. I gently entered my middle finger and waited. I saw that she closed her eyes. How are you feeling now, Angel? I asked. I feel the pain is reducing. I kept my finger as it is. I didn't fully enter the finger, only a half of it. Do you want me to go deep? I asked again. No, stay there. It'll go away. I kissed her back, her head, and crook of her neck. This feels good, Grayson. Thank you. She slowly opened her eyes and looked at me. Please don't say thank you, Angel. This is my responsibility. I smiled at her lovingly. Now you can take away your hand. It'll be okay. She said, and I removed my finger slowly. <gasps> Grayson, no, it's coming again. She took my finger and entered it in her by herself. Angel, this pain won't go away easily. Even she-wolves have sex for days until this goes away. I told her. Do you mean that I have to be like this until it goes? She looked at me worriedly. I don't know, Angel. Maybe at least hours I think we have to be like this. I think we should now get ourselves out of the bathtub and go to bed. It's already night and you will get cold if we stay here for much longer. I explained and took her into my arms. Angel, we can't go to bed in these wet clothes. We have to change. I pointed out our dripping clothes. Bring me something to wear, Grayson. I can change myself. I kept her on the bathroom counter and quickly hopped into a pair of sweatpants. I gave her another shirt of mine and a pair of shorts to wear. Grayson, hurry up. The pain's coming again. I quickly ran to the bathroom. Turn around until I change. I turned and smiled to myself. This girl's not going to give me a chance to look at her beauty until our marriage. Now, okay, I'm done. I took her into my arms and we went to the bed. I slowly entered my finger in her again and soon she fell asleep. Chapter 39 Will You Give Me Your Treasure? Xenia's POV I woke up to the sound of birds chirping and the wind rustling the trees. I looked around the room. It had been three days since we came back to the mansion from France. The visit to France was an unforgettable turning point in my life. Grayson proposed to me, and then I had to go through with the worst part which was the heat. I was still shy about what we did during my heat. I knew there was no other way than to insert his finger into me. I turned to the other side of the bed and Grayson was not there. Maybe he went for a morning run. As soon as I got prepared, I went down for my breakfast. Everyone greeted me, but I still didn't see the Grayson around. Have you seen Grayson? I asked the chef. Alpha went for a morning jog, Luna. But I saw that he came back with Beta and went to the office room. He smiled and brought me breakfast. I wonder what he's doing this morning in his office room. Usually Grayson doesn't miss his meals and comes to the table on time to feed me too. Maybe I should go have a look. I went to his office and knocked on the door. Who's there? Grayson asked from inside. It's me. He quickly opened the door and I saw Cade also sitting inside. Angel, why are you here? He asked curiously. Um, you were not there for breakfast, so I thought I should check up on you. If you're busy, I'll go. I turned around to go, but he grabbed my hand. No, it's okay, Angel. Come inside. Cade, we'll continue our discussion later, Grayson said. Okay, Alpha, let me know a free time for you. See you then, Luna. Cade waved at us and left the room. Grayson immediately locked the door. I looked around his office. It was the first time I stepped into his office. All the furniture was made of teak and the floor was carpeted. Baby girl, did you have your breakfast? He kissed the back of my palm. No, I didn't, but I am really hungry, I pouted. Okay, then shall I ask them to bring the food here? I nodded, and I guessed that he mind-linked the chef. Food will be here in a few minutes, Angel, he informed. Grayson, why can't I mind-link with you? You mind-link every pack member here, but not your Luna. I folded my arms in front of my chest. Oh no, my mate is angry with me. Angel, you can mind-link me after we do the mating ceremony. He sat on his large office chair and took me onto his lap. 
Hmm, so I don't need a mobile phone then. He laughed and kissed my back. Someone knocked on the door and Grayson got up. He opened the door and brought the food tray inside. Grayson, is it okay if we eat in the office room? I asked nervously. Of course, my love. This is the first time you've come to my office and I have to treat my guest. He started to serve the food onto the plate. Hmm, then I need a very tasty tea made by your hand. He brought the plate and juice to the coffee table before taking me onto his lap. Grayson, how old are you? I asked. I'm 26, Angel. He fed me a spoonful of food. So then do you get old? I mean, I'm a human and you're a werewolf. Do you live forever? He smiled at my question. We also get old, my love. Now don't talk about it. I have happy news for you. I turned to him in curiousness. And what is that? I questioned. We're going tomorrow to meet your parents. I jumped up from his lap in shock. What? Are you serious? I asked with a surprised face. Yes, and my parents are also going, so we can talk about our marriage. I jumped up and down happily. Really, Grayson? You should have told me earlier. I haven't bought anything for them yet. I sighed. I did the shopping and bought everything for them. I didn't tell you because I needed you to rest. I sat again on his lap. I had a sip of juice and some juice fell on my lips. He turned me and kissed my lips. Mm, these are the tastiest meal only for me, he teased. I blushed, my cheeks and ears becoming red as a tomato. Grayson, I'm afraid. Will they give their approval to our wedding? I looked at him with worry. Of course, my love. They can't reject a son-in-law like me. Plus, we will have two wedding ceremonies. One is in your country according to your tradition, and one is here according to my tradition, he explained. I don't know. I'm afraid, Grayson. Shall I call them and tell them that we're coming? I asked him. No, we'll surprise them. I started to think about so many things. Will mom accept this marriage? I can't live without them, nor Grayson. Grayson, what if they ask about my university? Will you give me permission to attend? I promise that I won't run away. He smiled at me. I know that. You can attend the lectures from next week onward after we come back to America, okay? I smiled at him. Next day. We got into the private jet with mom and dad heading towards Sri Lanka. Throughout the travel, I was nervous and Grayson tried to divert my attention to other things to relax me. We landed in the evening and headed straight to my home. I knew the roads were full of traffic and not like America. I didn't know whether Grayson would like my home since we were just a middle-class family, and we didn't have a mansion like them. We went home and I opened the gate while Grayson parked the vehicle. Mom came out of the house and I ran to her, hugging her tightly. We both started to cry. Then I saw the hero of my life, my dad. All three of us hugged for a long time until Grayson patted me on my shoulder. Oh, sorry, Grayson. Mom, this is Grayson. This is his mom, Mrs. Lockwood, and this is his dad, Mr. Roberts Lockwood. Mom and dad looked at me in surprise at the presence of the three foreigners who stood on our land. To my surprise, Grayson worshipped both my mom and dad by gathering his palms together and he bent on his knees, touching their feet. I don't know where he learned that. Shall we go inside then? I asked them. Grayson, I'm sorry, I don't have a mansion like you do. We live in a small house, I said to him. Angel, it's all right. I don't mind. He smiled at me sweetly. Zenya, will you tell us what is happening here, sweetheart? Why are they here? Mom asked. Ma'am, I would like to marry your daughter. Will you give us your permission? Before I could slowly start the conversation, Grayson directly came to the point. He didn't beat around the bush. What? Zenya, is this true? Dad asked in shock. Mm, Dad? Yes, I answered while looking down. Did we send you overseas for this? We sent you for your studies. And look, you are back with a marriage proposal and that too with a foreigner. Do you think that we can accept this behavior from you? Mom started to scold me. 
I didn't utter a word. I knew that this was going to happen. I bit my lips and silently listened to them. Mom, please don't scold her. She has nothing to do with this. I am the one who forced her, and trust me, your daughter never misbehaved with me. She is still the pearl you made, hiding in your precious arms. I looked at Grayson in surprise. I felt so lucky and proud because no one had a love like this that stands up for you, who talks on behalf of you. I thought that I was the luckiest person on earth. Son, this may be nothing to you, but we are a cultural people, Dad warned. I know, Dad. That's why I came with my parents for this proposal, Grayson explained. He stood up suddenly and went over to my mom and dad. I looked at him with my mouth open. Is he angry? Will Damon come out? I was scared. He bent his knees and took their hands. Will you give me your precious treasure too? I am nothing without her. I won't live without her. I love her so much. I don't care about the differences between us. I only know that I love her until my last breath and I can keep her happy forever, he said by looking into their eyes. Son, this is a big decision. How could we immediately say yes or no? Mom pointed out, her voice softer. I know that. It was I that suggested that we surprise you. Please, Mom and Dad, I need Xenia. I will die without her. Grayson begged for me. Give us one or two days, then we'll let you know the decision. Dad informed. I hope the answer will be a happy one. Grayson got up and returned to his seat. He brought so many bags from inside the vehicle and gave all of them to Mom and Dad. I'll serve a tea. Wait. Mom disappeared into the kitchen and I followed her. Senya, what have you done? Mom demanded. Mom, it's a long story. You won't understand it. How could I say that Grayson is a wolf? Will they believe me? They will definitely laugh at me. While Mom prepared the tea, I served the biscuits, cakes, and fresh bananas. I heard Dad talking with Grayson's parents while Grayson admired my framed photos which hung on the walls. There was a photo of me which was taken at a wedding while I was a bridesmaid. I wore a purple-tailed dress. I love this photo, Angel. He took out his phone and took a photo of it. You don't need a photo. You have me to watch and you can see me anytime. I smiled. Okay, son. Shall we go then and let them have their time for the decision? I hope it's a positive one, Grayson's dad said. Shall we go then, Angel? Grayson asked me. Where are you going, Xenia? You both are not married yet to live together. Mom warned with a steady voice. What? Why can't I take her with me? Grayson was a bit angry now. Uh-oh, here comes the big bad wolf. Mom, just give me two minutes. I pulled Grayson aside. Grayson, look, the culture here is totally different from America. We don't even touch each other until we're married. And that's how it goes, I explained. But we're sleeping on the same bed back home, Angel. I can't live without your touch. He looked at me with his sad puppy eyes. Shh, if they hear that we sleep on the same bed, Mom will kill me. So please, Grayson, I want you to be a good boy for these two days and respect their decision, okay? I held his hand in mine. What if they say no? To be honest, even I didn't know what would happen if they said no. Just pray that they say yes, Grayson. I bit my lips in nervousness. No matter what, I'm taking you away from here after these two days. I don't care about their decision. He cupped my cheeks. Grayson, please be patient for these two days. I pleaded with him and looked into his deep sea green eyes. Okay, then tomorrow I'll do a video call. I want to look at you for the whole day. I smiled at him. Okay, now go safely to the hotel. I waved to him. Two days went by and I described to mom and dad everything except the wolf thing, of course. They were so happy to hear about him. I spent the two days with my parents happily while Grayson was all the time doing video calls with me. After two days, Grayson came to our home with his parents. My parents happily welcomed them and informed their decision. They gave their blessings to our wedding. 
We both worshipped our parents and both the parents hugged each other. Another happy ending. Getting married with the blessing of the parents is a lucky thing. But the luckiest thing is you get a partner that loves you unconditionally. The important thing is that love never fades away and grows day by day. They cuddle you. They console you. You feel that this love is forever. Chapter 41 Mating Ceremony Grayson's POV A week had passed since we returned back from Sri Lanka with the blessings of her parents for our wedding. She was in a very happy mood and from time to time she spoke to Damon also. She was no longer afraid of Damon and even she threatened him sometimes. Damon's like a puppy in front of her. Of course we both love our mate. Good morning, Alpha. Kate entered my office. Good morning, Kate. What made you visit me so early in the morning? I asked while leaning back in my chair. Where's Luna? Kate asked, looking around the room. Oh, she's sleeping. I didn't want to disturb her. Why are you asking about her? I closed the file in my hand. Alpha, like I said previously, rogue activities are increasing day by day. While you were out of the country, they tried to attack as a pack, but luckily our warriors handled the situation. Kate's face filled with worry. They seem like a burden now. How could they challenge me? How dare they enter my territory? I got angry and I clenched my teeth. Alpha, when Luna was attacked near the lake, I think someone from within the pack betrayed us and helped them enter our land, he explained. Hmm, you're correct, Cade. Something fishy's going on here. Anyway, we have to do the mating ceremony soon. I was thinking of doing the ceremony the day after tomorrow. Shall we do the ceremony on that day? I wanted his opinion, too. Not bad, Alpha. But don't you think that Luna needs time to prepare? I mean, her costumes, the rituals and all? He asked. Hmm, yes, you're correct. Then we will do it next week on a full moon day. I smiled. That would be perfect, Alpha. I'll inform the pack members and prepare for the ceremony. I nodded to him and decided to check up on my angel. I went to the room and she came out from the bathroom with a towel. Water drops were pouring from her wet hair to her plump lips, down to her chin. Those drops poured to her shoulder and then went down to her chest. When she saw me, she bit her lips. She knew that I was checking her out. She slowly went to the wardrobe to take a set of clothes. Her cream-colored legs were visible to me. I felt that my junior was getting excited. She looked at me with the corner of her eye and smirked at me. I went towards her and as soon as she saw me approaching, she quickly turned to run to the bathroom. I grabbed her from her waist, pinned her to the bed, and hovered over her. Grayson, let me go. I need to change, she whispered. Really, baby girl? Are you sure that you need to go? With that smirk on your face, are you provoking me to do the bad things with you, Angel? I asked with my husky voice. My bulge was stuck in between us, and I knew that she could feel it on her stomach. I pinned her hands on the bed. Grayson, no, please. I need to stop. I told you that we can do anything after the marriage. Baby, please listen to me. Her eyes were pleading for me to stop. Oh, now you're calling me baby, huh? I smirked at her, making her face blush with red. You want to know what I'm going to do with you on our honeymoon, Angel? I whispered in her ear. Her chest was moving up and down, her boobs tight to my chest. She quickly shook her head no. I will do every naughty thing with you, Angel. It will be the most romantic and sexiest day of our lives. I promise that you will scream my name and bite me. You will beg for my touch. Not only in the honeymoon, every day after our honeymoon. I will deeply fuck you and make love to you. I will leave love bites all over your body. I lightly bit her earlobe. Her hot breath was getting faster and fanning to my ears. Will you please let me go? She pushed me lightly. I laughed at her. She ran to the bathroom and changed into a casual dress. You're very naughty, Grayson. She hit my chest. Of course. And being naughty with your mate is nothing to be guilty about. 
I kissed her forehead. Angel, I have to tell you something very important. We are planning to have the mating ceremony next week on full moon day. I informed. What do you mean by a mating ceremony, Grayson? She asked while sitting on the bed with her legs folded underneath her. Oh, baby girl, it is the official ceremony of you becoming a Luna to the pack. There are some rituals, plus you and I will be officially bonded as Alpha and Luna. I explained. Is it a big ceremony? She looked at me with her big doe eyes. Mm, yes. I'm planning to invite the Alphas and Lunas from the neighboring packs also so that you can also meet and have a chat with them. I said. Grayson, I'm afraid. Why can't we do a simple ceremony? She looked worried. Baby girl, it's like our wedding. I don't want to do it in a simple way. I kissed the back of her palm. And one more thing, Angel. From next week onwards, your lectures also will be starting. I smiled at her. Really? That's amazing! She squealed with joy. But I'm gonna miss you so much. I pouted my lips sadly. But the lectures are just a few hours, Grayson. After that, I promise that I'm gonna bother you for the whole day. She jumped into my lap happily. Someone's POV. There's going to be a mating ceremony, so we have to execute our plan on that day. I instructed. I'm ready with the robes. You just need to bring us in somehow. Then we will look after everything. The rogue alpha said. I will do a scent masking spell with the help of a witch. So you can enter as the omegas of other packs which will come with the other alphas. I suggested. I want to taste the blood of that Luna. His palms balled up into fists angrily. <laughs> do whatever you want with that bitch. But at the end, make sure you kill her. We wickedly laughed. On the mating ceremony day. All the pack members were busy with the mating ceremony preparation. The kitchen staff was busy with the food. The Omegas were putting up the decorations. Some are looking out and ensuring the safety of the area and strengthening the territory. Xenia's POV In the evening, Kate's mate and two Omegas came to my room with the makeup. And my costumes. Grayson's mom also came along. Mom, I'm nervous. My palms were moist with sweat. Xenia, darling, I remember on my mating day I was also nervous. But trust me, as soon as you hold the hand of your mate, you will feel better. So don't worry, sweetheart. Grayson will be there and he will take care of everything. I bit my lips and Kate's mate took a beautiful off-white long dress out from its cover. Wow, it's so beautiful. I touched the dress softly. It was a silk dress with long net sleeves and the back of the dress had a long tail. The bottom part of the dress was designed with sequins and beads with lace. I wore the dress and the others did my hair and makeup. Sweetheart, shall we go then? Mom opened the door and we all exited the room. The ceremony was prepared as an outdoor function. I was nervous and started searching for Grayson. Looking for me, Angel? Grayson approached from behind me. Grayson, I'm scared and nervous, I told him. I'm right here with you. He patted my back and kept my hand on the crook of his elbow before we started to walk towards the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our Alpha and Luna. We both climbed the stage. Son, it's time to start the rituals. Grayson's dad came with a gold knife that had two wolves carved on the handle and a very sharp tip. I squeezed Grayson's hand tightly. With the rites received from the moon goddess to me, I now pronounce to welcome and accept our Luna to the Redwood Warrior Pack. His father made a small cut on Grayson's palm and then mine. Finally, he put my hand on Grayson's hand over a bowl. Both our blood poured into the bowl and to my surprise, it turned into blue, then green, and finally to orange. All of a sudden, the blood shot up to the sky and blasted as fireworks. I was amazed to see that view. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your Luna of the Redwood Warrior Pack, Michelle Lockwood announced once again. As soon as he said that, I started to hear many voices in my head. Many of them congratulated me. 
Love, you are now the official Luna. I heard Grayson's voice too. I heard some of them turn into wolves and gave a happy howl. Angel, shall we go and meet the other Alphas and Lunas? I nodded. This is Alpha Tyler and his Luna Lily of the Blue Moon Pack. I smiled at them, shook hands with the Alpha, and hugged the Luna. Senya, you're so beautiful. Now I understand that why Alpha Grayson was all alone those years and waited for his mate to come. Luna Lily complimented and I smiled at Grayson as he kissed my cheeks. We went to meet all the neighboring pack members and they all wished me. Grayson, there are no human Lunas here. I'm the only one. I'm afraid that due to me, you and your pack had to face many issues. I took his hands and looked down. Baby girl, how many times do I need to tell you that being a wolf is not enough for a Luna title? He cupped my cheeks and caressed them. Hey, Alpha, are you busy? Can we talk for a while? Another neighboring pack Alpha came to us and asked. Oh, sure. Angel, don't go anywhere. Just stay here. I'll be right back. Grayson turned and walked away. I was tired, hungry, and thirsty. Luna, you must be tired and thirsty. Have a drink. And Omega came and offered me a glass of fruit juice. I had never seen her before, but I was thirsty, so I drank the fruit juice quickly. Within a few minutes, my vision got blurry and my head started to get dizzy, and soon I was going to fall to the floor. Suddenly, someone caught me in their hands, and with my blurry vision, I saw the person. You? Where have you been all the time? I looked for you to talk, but you were not visible. I said with my faint voice. Now you have me. How about we have a little chat? I heard before I fainted, and darkness welcomed me. Chapter 42 She Got Kidnapped Grayson's POV After the chat with other alphas about rogues, I came back to see my angel. Something isn't right. I feel something fishy. Damon impatiently started pacing around within me. What is it, Damon? I quickly went to her. I can't feel her. I can't feel her scent. I ran back to the place where I left her, but she wasn't there. Where is she? Where is our mate? I quickly mind-linked Cade. Alpha, what is it? He replied. Have you seen Luna? I went to have a friendly chat with other alphas and asked her to wait here. But when I came back, she's not here. Damon feels that she's not around. Her scent has gone. I explained worriedly. What? How could that be possible? Cade got upset. I don't know, but I feel scared. She never goes anywhere without me. I said softly. Alpha, how about you check in your bedroom? Maybe she's tired and went to the bedroom. We both went to the bedroom, but it was empty. Cade, something isn't right. Do not let the others know that she's missing yet. I want you to gather all the warriors with the best sniffing ability and ask them to search the whole territory. My Alpha voice commanded. Okay, Alpha. We will let you know as soon as we find her, Alpha. Cade headed out of the room. I started feeling anxious and restless. Where are you, my angel? I went and searched the whole pack, including every nook and corner of the pack house. After about an hour, Cade mind-linked me. Alpha, we couldn't find anything. What I don't understand is her scent has gone from all over the territory. How could that even possible? Yes, that's a question to ask. Where she has gone? Why can't I sniff her scent? Son, are you worried? Where's Senya? I haven't seen her in about an hour. Mom approached me. Mom, there's an issue. Mom looked at me with her raised brows and Dad came soon after. What's the matter, son? Dad asked. Grayson says that Senya is missing. Mom cried out worriedly. What? How could that happen? Are you sure that she's missing? Dad sat on the living room sofa and his hand ran through his hair. Son, I think she's been kidnapped. Dad suddenly blurted out, his voice deep. What? But how is that possible, Dad? Who does that? Who wants to challenge me? She's my innocent angel. Why would anyone need to kidnap her? I started nervously rambling. Where is she? Did somebody hurt her? Son, I think we should handle our guests first and then start the interrogation. Come. 
Let's go and say that Xenia's sleeping because she's exhausted. We went to meet the Alphas and Lunas of the neighboring packs. It was midnight and all the guests had left. We called all the pack members to the conference hall and started our interrogation. Xenia's POV I was in the dark. I could hear some whispers, but nothing was clear. My eyes were closed tightly. I was trying to open them, but I was too tired and my eyes were tightly pressed to each other. Suddenly, a bucket of water splashed over my whole body. My breath got stuck in my throat and I opened my eyes with a gasp. Wake up, you bitch! I heard a rough male voice. I coughed and looked towards the voice. A tall man was standing in front of me. His tattoos all over his body, his arms, and his biceps were clearly visible due to his sleeveless top. He wore a pair of tight jeans. His black eyes were giving me a death glare. I roamed my eyes to look around the room. It felt like an old house. The bed had dirty bed sheets. More like a haunted house. Who, who are you? What do you want from me? Where's Grayson? I asked, squirming towards the headboard of the bed. Oh, missing your lover, boy? He asked while coming towards me. The sound of his shoe tapping against the floor gave me a horrible feeling. It was like the actress of a horror movie who was hiding until the villain comes for her. My breath started to accelerate wildly. Please don't hurt me. I mean no harm to you. Please, sir, let me go. I will not say anything to Grayson or anyone. I was almost close to crying. Hurt you? He laughed hysterically. Hurt is a small word, bitch, compared to the things we have planned to do with you. He jumped onto me and pulled my hair. My body flew in the air and hit the wall. A warm liquid started to pour from my forehead. I lightly rubbed my forehead and saw that blood was flowing down. Please don't hurt me, I cried. He stood up from the bed, came towards me, and squatted down to my level with his knees. Oh? Are you tired so soon? You are a weak, pathetic human being. Are you going to end our fun so soon, bitch? He pulled my hair. You have to give fun to the whole pack. He pulled me by my hair and dragged me to the floor. <sighs> Please leave. It hurts a lot. I tried my best to fight with him, but he was stronger than me. He threw me into the middle of the living room. I looked up to see a huge crowd. Alpha, is this the bitch? The pathetic human Luna of Redwood Pack? A man among them asked. The huge crowd looked at me, including men and women. There were at least hundreds of them. But most importantly, I heard the word Alpha. Are you an Alpha too? He gave me a smirk. Suddenly a sharp pain went through my cheek with a loud echo. For a moment my left ear started to ring like a bell. It was a tight slap. Someone slapped me. You bitch! How dare you talk to my Alpha and how dare you to look at him directly! A woman with short hair and a tattoo on her right arm slapped me. Baby, it's okay. We can have fun with this toy. Take her to the dungeons and chain her. I have some business with her. He gave me a death glare. Grayson, where are you? Come save me from this hell. Two of the men came to me and dragged me with my arms to the dungeons. The dungeons reeked of the smell of vomit. There were blood spots everywhere and the water leaked from the roof. The tube lights were chirping and giving a dull light to the dungeons. This is like a mental asylum in a horror movie. They threw me into a cage and I hit the floor. They locked the door and left. I was thirsty and hungry. I remember that Grayson told me about mind linking, so I tried to link with him, but it was disturbed by some kind of unclear sound, like a radio signal that was not clear. Seems like the mind link is not working. Why is that? Seems like these people are also wolves. They are strong and I can't fight with them. I started to reminisce about the beautiful moments of Grayson and me. How gentle Grayson is and how rude this person is. Both were alphas, but 
but there was a huge difference between them like the sky and the earth. Maybe this is the last day of my life. I'm going to die alone here without anyone who loved me. Mom, Dad, Grayson, his parents. None of them are here with me. I cursed myself for being a weak human. If only I was a wolf, I could strongly fight with them. I cried bitterly, leaning against the cold wall behind me. Grayson's POV. Tell me. Who kidnapped your Luna? I growled to all of them. Who has the guts to challenge me? I will shred the one who kidnapped Luna. I roared to the core of the earth. I was fuming in rage. Alpha, calm down. We have to work consciously. Cade came to me and tried to console me. How can I calm down, Cade? My mate vanished into thin air with no clue about her. I slouched and sat on the floor. Damon was whimpering and howling, saddened due to his mate's kidnapping. We will find her anyway. I have a clue, Alpha, and you should come with me. I went with Kate at lightning speed. Alpha, she says that she saw Luna drinking something. And Omega was in Kate's office. Tell me what you saw, I commanded her. Alpha, I saw that Luna was standing near a corner table. And then Omega came and offered her a glass of fruit juice. She looked down. Speak fast. Then what happened? I was impatient to know what had happened. Then I saw Luna drank it quickly. She continued. Then? I leaned forward from my chair. Then, after around five minutes, I saw that she collapsed and... And then... The Omega was shaking in fear. Chapter 43 Got the traitor. Grayson's POV. Then what happened? I don't have time to waste. I growled to her. Then Michelle came there and she kept the Luna before she fell on the ground. The Omega said. Oh, Michelle, that bitch. I will not spare her. I threw the chair angrily. Alpha, I asked her where she was taking Luna. She said that Luna must be tired and she was taking her to the bedroom. Then I went for some other work, she explained. Alva, we have to find Michelle. She's the only one who knows where Luna is, Kate insisted. All of a sudden, Stephen came running towards us. Alpha, I have good news for you. Stephen stood before me. You can go. Kate asked the Omega Wolf to leave. She bowed to us and went out. Stephen, what is it? I wanted to try everything I could to find her. Alpha, I found a witch who can help us. Dad must have asked Stephen to find a friendly witch. Dad said that the scent must be covered with the help of a witch. Ask her to meet me in my office immediately. I ran with Kate to my office. Stephen ran to bring the witch. Good morning, Alpha. The witch entered my office room. I didn't notice that time gone by and soon morning had dawned. I was worried about what was happening to my angel. I was scared to even imagine bad things happening to her. She is so innocent and naive. I will not spare that Michelle. I will take her limb by limb and shred her into pieces. Good morning. I hope you know why you're here. I need help, I said, looking at her eyes. Yes, Alpha, Gamma told me. I need something which belongs to Luna to track her, and candles, too. I ran to the bedroom and brought my angel's hair clip. She took out a map and unfolded it on the table. Alpha, I need your blood. She made a cut in the middle of my palm and put my blood on the hairpin. She placed it on the map and chanted something from another language. Maybe she's doing a spell. A heavy wind started to blow into the room. The curtains of the room started to flap in the wind. The flames of the candle started to rise up straight, and I saw the hairpin of my angel started to move around on the map. Finally, it stopped in one place. Alpha, I think we found her, the witch announced. Xenia's POV Angel, wake up. We've arrived. I opened my eyes and saw a beautiful destination. We have started our honeymoon. I'm nervous. We've arrived in New Zealand, my love. We have to get off the plane. 
Grayson took me into his arms. Grayson, I'm feeling so sleepy. I cuddled towards him more. Oh, you can cuddle me more when we arrived at the hotel. And I'm not letting you go anywhere away from my embrace. Grayson assured, making me feel shy. I will sleep the entire day, I told him, and he smiled at me. Oh, really? Did we come so far just to sleep? Or for our honeymoon? He smirked. Wake up! Cold water splashed on my body. I gasped hard and woke up. Was that just a dream? Good morning, love. Did you sleep well? I hope you had a good night's sleep in your bedroom. Tell me if it's not comfortable. I'll provide you a more comfortable place. He teased sarcastically. I was cold, hungry, and thirsty. Can I at least have a glass of water, please? I asked since my tongue felt like was going to sink in first. We will give you nothing, you pathetic human. He unlocked the door and dragged me out. No, no, please leave me. I struggled. He dragged me to a large hall where only men were present. My white dress which I had worn for the Luna ceremony was wet with the water splash, making it tight as it hugged my body. They looked at me greedily. I tried to cover my body with my hands. They are eye-raping me. Gentlemen, we have a guest here. We can enjoy the whole day with her, the rogue alpha announced. What are you going to do with me? I asked with a shaky voice. You are going to give us a sensational dance, he replied with a smirk. And sat on the chair which looked royal, and a lady which I assumed was as an omega of the pack came with champagne for everyone. Please don't do this, I pleaded. He approached me and kicked me in my stomach. I squeezed my stomach and screamed in pain. Shut up, you slut, or else I have many ways to shut your fucking mouth. He squeezed my cheeks, with his big palm gripping my chin. I cried out in pain. Why are you doing this? What do you want from me? I dug my nails into the wooden floor. I was feeling weak. I didn't have anything to eat nor drink since the previous afternoon. I didn't even have dinner. Your mate is ruling the whole of America. His kingdom is the strongest one. I always wanted to be a king of a strong pack like that. Now your mate will be a weakling without you. So I'm going to attack the pack, kill him, and become their new alpha. But to do that, he needs to be much weaker. He slapped me again and again. My cheeks started to bruise badly as blood started to flow from my mouth. I couldn't have done this without the help of Michelle, he clarified while sitting. Michelle? Yes, I remember now. She was the one who held me before I fell. So she is the betrayer? But why? I didn't do anything to her. I even saved her when Grayson tried to ban her from the pack. Come on, bitch. Entertain us. A man came to me and crushed my left hand with his shoe. Ah, it hurts. Please stop. I can't dance. I'm not going to dance. I cried out. Oh, really? Let's see about that. The alpha stood up and removed his belt from his pants. My throat went dry. What is he going to do? Grayson's POV. Cade, I want to find that bitch who betrayed me in the pack. I'm not going to rest until I found my angel and she's in my arms, but also after I shred the body of that bitch into pieces. Alpha looks like Michelle Master sent. I think we need to get the help of the witch for this matter also. Cade was right. If she masked her scent, the wolves can't get to her. We both again went to find the witch. She was having a chat with Stephen. She was a friend of Stephen's. We need your help for another matter also. This time I need to find the traitor, I told her. Alpha, if you've anything that belongs to her, I can find her. I asked Kay to check Michelle's room and bring something that belonged to her. Kay brought a handkerchief of Michelle's and gave it to the witch. Once again, she unfolded the map and kept the handkerchief on the map. 
She cut my palm and put some blood on it. The handkerchief started to move and stopped at the same place where Xenia was being kept. Alpha, I think she's also in the same place, the witch announced. I asked Stephen to treat the witch well and pay her anything she asked for. Kate, get ready within half an hour with warriors. We're going to bring our Luna home. Kate nodded and ran to gather the warriors. Angel, I'm coming for you. You are going to be back in my arms again. You are going to come home. Whoever kidnapped her, you better get ready. I will take you apart limb by limb, and I'm going to tear you into tiny pieces. You will beg for death to come soon, you bastard. Xenia's POV My whole body was aching. I couldn't move even an inch. Even my eyelashes were heavy for me. I slowly tried to open my eyes, and after a hard effort, I finally could. I realized that I was back in the dungeons and chained. I didn't know what the time it was, but for me it felt like years had gone by without Grayson. I hoped that one day he would find me. I wanted to hold my last breath until he came and took me back to his arms, cuddling me. I slowly recalled the torture I had. The rogue alpha struck me repeatedly with his belt, and I didn't know for how long. I believe I must have passed out when he did. The sharp pain ran through all over my body each time his belt hit my skin. Those strokes were so powerful. He mercilessly struck me and my body was weak since I didn't have any water or food. Suddenly I heard some voices and footsteps coming towards my cage. Hello, Xenia. I heard a familiar voice. I turned my neck to see who it is. It's Michelle. Why are you doing this? I asked with a faint voice. My throat was dry and my vocal cords are damaged due to my continuous screams. You lied to me, bitch. You said that I can have Grayson, but then you returned and ruined my dream of becoming the Luna. Michelle gritted her teeth. I didn't do that. I truly ran away, but the escape cramps brought Grace into the airport. I tried to stand up, but fell on the floor instantly. Aw, look who's trying to be a baby to me. Stop your acting, you pathetic human. She unlocked the door and jumped at me. I don't know, but I do love him now. She slapped me repeatedly on both my cheeks. Stop saying that you love him. She hit my head on a wall and blood started to flow from my head. Suddenly I heard someone approaching with quick footsteps. Michelle, they're here. The rogue alpha came in a hurry and informed Michelle. Who? Michelle asked while standing up. Redwood Warrior Pack members, he replied. Finally, Grayson is here. I'm holding my breath for you, baby. Please come and take me to your arms. Chapter 44 Bury Me Near the Rock Castle Grayson's POV Beta, is everyone ready? I asked Kate with my alpha voice. Yes, Alpha, we're ready. In front of my eyes stood the bravest warriors of my pack, ready to go for the war with rogues. I finally understood why rogue activities were high all of a sudden. They were spying on my angel. I'm going to give them a painful death for hurting my angel. I need one car with a pack doctor so we can bring home my angel comfortably. We need a car because my angel was not a wolf. She couldn't shift and run. Besides, I was afraid to think about the condition she was in. Okay, Alpha, I'll ask Stephen to come in the car with pack doctor, Kate said, nodding at me. Okay, everybody, listen to me. We are going for war. There is no certainty whether we will be able to come back or not, so you still have time if you change your mind and want to stay in the pack house. I'm not forcing anyone. I'll even go alone to bring Luna back home if I have to, I declared. Alpha, we're coming with you. We will give them a painful death for kidnapping our Luna. We will put our lives second to protect you and Luna. And Alpha, trust us. We're going to win this and we all are going to come back home. I heard them all cheering. So, rogues, here we come. Then all of you, shift. 
we all shifted into our wolves and ran through the forest towards the rogue's territory. It was located around 50 kilometers away from our territory. I could feel that Damon was running as fast as he could for his mate. He had been weeping and howling ever since we lost our mate. It's already evening now. She's been missing since yesterday night, and we both are going crazy without her. After about half an hour, we reached the place. I can smell her. She's in there, Damon said to me. Damon, quickly, we need her. We have to take our mate out. No matter who comes against us, shred them into pieces. I was determined to take her home. Damon howled in an attack command to the other wolves, and we all ran into their territory. The rogues started coming towards us while shifting one by one. We started to fighting ruthlessly, but they were nothing in front of Damon's strength. While fighting, I went to search for the rogue Alpha. I felt that he was hiding someplace since he didn't come to fight with us at the front line. Coward! He must be hiding with his best fighters. Damon was frustrated and didn't want to rest until he killed the rogue Alpha and took our mate back. Cade, Stephen, you both look after the rogues. I'm going for the rogue Alpha. And my mate. I mind-linked them. Okay, Alpha, we'll join with you soon after the front line is clear, they replied to me while fighting. I can smell her. I can smell my mate. Damon ran towards the ground floor of the rogue's house. He stopped suddenly and sniffed the air. I can smell some different scents also, he suddenly alerted. Hurry up, Damon. We need to save our mate. I was impatient to take her into my arms safely. The ground floor led to a tunnel where barely one light was chirping. But since I was in my wolf form, I didn't need any lights and my instincts were sharp and dark. These are their dungeons. I smell the blood of different wolves. She's close. We approached the last dungeon cage and I saw the most horrible and miserable scene in my life. My mate was covered in blood. She barely opened her eyes. She was still in her Luna ceremony clothes. Her cheeks had terrible bruises. Her clothes were torn in most of the places. And her cream-colored skin has sharp whip marks. She must be gone through hell. But I'm going to give them a painful death. She was sitting on the floor. Her hair was pulled up by that bitch, Michelle, so that she wouldn't fall to the floor. I saw the rogue alpha and some of his best fighters standing with him. Damon, give me the control for a moment. I need to talk to them. Damon gave me the control and I shifted to my human form. Leave her. Let her go. You fight with me, not her. I told the rogue alpha. Will you let us go if we leave her? he asked with his brows up. Oh, let me tell you one thing. Considering my mate's condition, I can assure you one thing. You are all going to die. I said the last word in a stern voice. Michelle, you are going to die painfully, but before that I need to know why you did all these. I glared at her furiously. Because I love you. I always wanted to be with you, but you never gave me a chance. Then this bitch came and snatched you away from me. I started to fume in rage when I heard the way she called my mate. They started to circle me, ready to attack. Enough. Then prepare to die with them. Damon took control and jumped into a fighting stance while shifting in the midair. I jumped on a rogue warrior's throat directly and pulled it out. The rogue's body shivered for a while before going silent, motionless. Then another two rogues attacked me from behind, and with their push I fell down. But I was stronger than ten of them put together. I pushed the two of them off my back with my strength and they flew towards the wall. They stood up again and came to attack me. Damon jumped at them with a loud growl and his large paws were enough to push them back. The two rogues got thrown in the air and fell on the floor. Damon took the opportunity to shred them into pieces with his large paws and sharp fangs. Okay, let's finish this and kill him, the rogue alpha declared, he and Michelle shifting before me. The three of us started to circle each other. My angel laid on the floor with her eyes half open. 
I knew she could hardly open her eyes, but she fought to keep her eyes open. Beta, I need a helping hand here. I mind-linked Kate. I wanted to get my angel away with Kate to the car safely, so I could fight and end this game. Sure, Alpha, we're on the way. Kate came to the dungeon in his wolf form. Beta, you need to take Luna away from this dungeon and keep her in the car until I come. Cade's wolf howled and shifted to his human form. Luna, come. I'll take you to the car, Cade said, trying to take her into his arms. No, Cade. I want to stay here until he finishes them. Cade slowly took her aside and made her sit on a chair, holding her steady. Her body was weak and she couldn't sit up alone without help. But her words increased my adrenaline to kill both of them. The three of us fought like it was the end of the world. Michelle was a warrior of my pack. She had warrior blood. She was faster and greater than the rogue alpha, but she couldn't compete with me. While I was fighting with Michelle, the rogue alpha came behind me and bit my thigh muscle. I growled in pain and blood started to flow from my thigh. G Grayson, be careful. I heard my angel's weak voice. It gave me the motivation to finish my work. I turned to the rogue alpha and jumped onto him. He fell down and with an ear-piercing snarl, I dug my paw into his heart, pulling it out. His body squirmed a little bit and with an awkward scream, he died on the spot. Finally, it was time to fight my betrayer. She got hurt during the fight. Blood was flowing from her thigh muscle and back, but still she was strong enough to fight. She jumped onto me, but I caught her and turned her towards the floor, while shifting our places in the air, forcing her underneath me. Damon stood above her in a victory position. Damon stood above her in a victory position. I know you're going to kill me, Grayson. But before you end my life, you need to listen to me. I have loved you since we were kids. We played together in that green forest. We walked and talked in the moonlight under the stars. Remember all the times when I played your mate and your wife? But when we grew up, you changed. You always wanted your mate. I tried my best to become your life partner. Grayson, before you kill me, I have a last wish. Remember the lake which was close to our pack? Remember there was a place which we could build rocks? I still go there every time. Maybe you have forgotten the beautiful time we had, but I never did. Kill me and bury my body near those rock castle, Grayson, so that I can console myself looking at those. I wish we never grew older and stayed as kids. I'm not fighting with you anymore. Grayson, I'm fed up. If you ever lose your mate in another birth, I'll be waiting for you, Grayson. I love you. Michelle mind-linked me, and it was one of the hardest times of my life. Damon looked into her eyes. Damon, should we give her a chance? I asked him. If she stays, our mate's life will be in danger. We gave her a chance once, but she betrayed us again and again. Don't be emotional. Let me finish this. Damon insisted before he bit her throat and pulled it out with his sharp fangs. Michelle's body wiggled and stopped. Her lifeless body lay on the floor. Damon held a victory call and shifted to my human form. Love is an amazing thing. Sometimes it turns evil to good, but sometimes turns good to wicked. There is a thread of distance between love and hate. Chapter 45 Recovery Grayson's POV With a victory howl, Damon ended the fight. I shifted back to my human form and noticed that my angel was sitting on the chair with the help of Cade. I went to her and took her slowly into my arms. Ah, no, it hurts! She screamed and I got afraid. Did I hurt her? What happened, angel? Why are you screaming? She looked miserable. Blood was everywhere on her body. Her pure white dress had turned red. Grayson, my whole body is painful. There's no place that doesn't ache. I feel like thousands of knives are digging into my body. She whimpered in pain. Angel, I have to carry you to the car. 
The pack doctor's there, I explained. Grayson, my body burns with pain even if someone just touches me. Her words hurt my soul as I ached for her. Cade, bring the pack doctor here with her medicine box. I mind linked Cade. Kate nodded and went as I instructed. Did they hurt you very much, baby girl? I kissed her forehead and she leaned into my body. Grayson, the rogue alpha hit me with his belt and I fainted. They slapped me, tore my clothes, tried to touch my private parts. She cried in pain. I knew that her body wasn't the only one in pain, but her soul was damaged. Alpha, the doc is here. Kate came with a pack doctor. Doctor, can you give her anesthesia? She can't bear her pain and she will not allow me to touch her, crying out that her whole body is in pain. The pack doctor kneeled down to her level and checked her breathing with a stethoscope. She checked her pulse also. Alpha, her body is weak. It seems like she didn't have any food or water for more than 24 hours. Her whole body has bruises. I need to check her properly. We will take her to the pack hospital. I'll give the anesthesia first. She took an injection and administered it to my weak angel. Take me home, baby, her vain voice said before she collapsed into my arms. I wore a pair of basketball shorts which Kate gave me and took her into my arms and went to the car. Stephen, drive to the pack hospital, I commanded while hopping into the car. Okay, Alpha. Oh no, Luna looks terrible. I knew that Stephen really loved her and he cared a lot about her. I patted her head, kissing her forehead, the top of her head, and the back of her palm. I am so sorry that I couldn't protect you, Angel. All of this happened because of me. A single tear rolled down from my eye to my cheekbones, ending at my chin. Alpha, stop blaming yourself. It's not your fault. It was just a bad time. Now everything will be all right. Stephen's voice was low and concerned. Eventually, we arrived at the pack hospital. I mind-linked my parents and informed them that we found her, but her condition was critical, requesting them to come to the pack hospital. I went inside the room with my angel. She was unconscious. Her face looked terrible and it spoke volumes of the torture she had gone through. Alpha, we need to check Luna. Could you please stay outside? The doctor requested. What are you going to do with her? I asked wordly while kissing her forehead. Luna's clothes are tightly stuck to her body due to the dry blood, so we need to cut them and remove them before checking her thoroughly. The doctor explained. Are you going to strip all her clothes off? I questioned. Yes, Alpha, we need to check her wounds. The doctor nodded somberly. Fine, but no males are allowed, only female wolves. That, too, with minimum staff. I don't want everyone to see your body. My voice was firm despite what I was going through inside. Okay, Alpha, I guarantee you. I went out of the room. Soon I saw Mom and Dad arrive at the hospital. I hugged both of them tightly, and soon, without realizing it, I had started to cry on their shoulders. Son, you have to be strong. Zenya needs you. Don't break down like this. Dad encouraged and patted my back. They have tortured her a lot. I don't understand how to console her after she wakes up. I'm going to stay here until she recovers. Soon, Cade and Stephen came towards us. Alpha, how's Luna doing? Stephen asked wordly. Doctor's checking her, so we have to wait here. Can you both do me a favor? I need the two of you to run pack duty smoothly these few days because I have to be with her, I clarified. Alpha, don't worry about it. We'll handle the pack. You take care of Luna. Kate assured. Alpha, can I talk with you personally? The pack doctor asked, approaching me. So we went to her office. Alpha, we've checked Luna's condition. She is critical. Her whole body has whip wounds which were created with a belt. More than once, her skin was removed due to the belt. Her lips are cracked due to the countless slaps, and her whole body is swollen. In fact, in some places, her veins are wounded and severe damages are present. I can't imagine how Luna tolerated all these things. 
She's weak due to not having food or water. Damon whimpered in pain. So did I. So what should we do now? I felt as if I was useless. My alpha title was nothing if my mate had to go through such a pain. We need to take her in for an operation and we need blood. I appreciate it if you could give your blood, Alpha, so that it will heal her faster since you are a silver Alpha, she suggested. Take every single drop of my blood and cure her. My life is nothing without her. I felt that Damon held in agreement. Okay, Alpha, you can be with her until we prepare the operation theater. I went to see her with my heavy heart. I entered the room to see her laying on the bed unconsciously. Her clothes had changed into a hospital gown. The blood had been wiped away from her body. I sat on the bed, took her palm in my hand, and rubbed it lightly. Her fragile body had to go through a lot of pain. I'm so sorry, Angel. I know that if I ask for your forgiveness for what happened more than thousands of times, it still wouldn't be enough. I leaned towards her body and lightly touched our foreheads together. Alpha, it's time for the operation. Shall we go then? I went to the operation theater and threw a cannula. They started to transfer my blood to her body. I noticed that they were working quickly and patiently. The whole theater was in pin-drop silence with only her heartbeat showing. Making the machines beep, breaking the silence. I looked at her intently without winking in fear that something might happen if I did. After around two hours, the operation was successfully over. My angel was transferred to her room with saline drips. I sat on her bed and kissed her forehead. Son, how was the operation? Dad mind-linked me. It went well, Dad. She's still unconscious and I'm with her in her room. I replied back. Okay, Mom will bring you food for tonight. Please have them. You have to be in good shape to console Xenia. Dad advised. Okay, Dad, I'll do it. I cut the mind link. I blamed myself for putting her in danger. She had to face a critical situation because of me. I should have let her go, but I loved her too much to do it. It was not just because she was my mate, but I was deeply in love with her. Alpha, it's me, Stephen. May I come in? Stephen knocked on the door. Yes, you can come in. I stood up from the bed. Alpha, your mom sent some food for you. I think you should have them since you didn't have any food from yesterday. You have to be strong to be with Luna. I knew that I had to do a lot of things to help improve and repair her mental condition after what she had gone through. Thank you, Gamma. I'll have some food. Stephen went and I started to have the food. I remembered how she made food for me, the happy moments we spent. I was glad that I met her before they ruined her. It was 1 a.m. when I saw some movements on her body. Her hands started to shake as she began mumbling something. I went closer to her. She opened her eyes slowly and I immediately took her hand. Her eyes roamed around the room. Please don't hurt me. No, please don't hit me. She started to struggle and I quickly embraced her. Shh, my angel. You are safe now. I am here with you. No one is going to hurt you. I tightly hugged her, wanting to squeeze out all her pain. Grayson, tell me this is not a dream. Tell me that you're here with me. She started to cry on my shoulder. Her warm tears were enough to wet my t-shirt sleeves. I am here, my baby girl. You are in the pack hospital. You are with me. I patted her head and stroked her hair comfortingly. G Grayson, they hit me. They tortured me. Please don't leave me for a moment even. Not now. Not forever. She pleaded through her hiccups. No, my angel, I'll never leave you. Oh, I'm so sorry, baby girl. All of this happened because of me. I am so sorry. I kissed her forehead and kissed the top of her head. Grayson, my body is still in pain. She clutched my shirt and hid her face in my chest. Baby girl, they did an operation on your wounds. You need to rest. I'm here with you. I cupped her cheeks and wiped away her warm tears which were falling from her eyes like a waterfall. 
Grayson, please don't leave me. Stay with me. That day you went away just for a while and this torture happened to me. She pleaded. I know, my sunshine. You're safe now. I assure you that this will never happen again. I kissed the back of her palm. Grayson, kiss me, she requested and leaned to me. I moved one arm behind her as support for her back and the other arm to the back of the head. Our lips lightly touched and we went deep. She squeezed my arms. I knew that we both missed our touch a lot. We were mates forever who cannot live without each other. We parted our lips slowly to take a breath and brought our foreheads together. May I come in? The pack doctor knocked on the door. Yes, you may. She entered and saw that my angel has regained her consciousness. Ah, so our brave Luna has awakened, huh? Alpha, I need to check on her. Can you please wait outside for a moment? The doctor requested with a smile. No, please don't go outside. Stay here. Stay with me. She hung on my hand. I knew that she didn't trust anyone anymore. Luna, I need to remove your clothes and see your wound. If it's not a problem, Alpha can stay here, the doctor informed. I have no problem. He can turn around and wait. She allowed with a smile. I nodded and turned around. The doctor started to check her. Hmm, seems like you're recovering from your wounds, Luna. Alpha's blood is powerful to heal you, the doctor pointed out. What do you mean by that? She asked. Mm, Alpha gave his blood during the operation so it can heal your wounds quickly. You're so lucky that your mate is a silver wolf. And trust me, Luna, he really loves you, the doctor said while folding her stethoscope. I should go now. And Luna, you can have something light like soup, sandwich, or some fruits, the doctor advised, and she went out. Angel, Mom sent some food for me. I'll feed you from that. Luckily, Mom sent some fruits and sandwiches. I requested a pot of warm tea for her from the hospital kitchen. I knew that she loved to drink hot tea when her body felt exhausted. I adjusted her headboard of the bed and kept a pillow to her back so that she could have her meal easily. I started to feed her. She took one bite and swallowed it reluctantly. Grayson, why don't you want to take me onto your lap and feed me? You said that you'll do it until my last breath. A lone tear poured from her eye. My heart melted hearing the way she said it. Oh, my baby girl, I didn't take you to my lap because I thought that having your meal while in the bed would be easier for you. I wiped away her tear. There's no other more comfortable and safe place than your arms, baby. I was so glad that she loved me a lot. I slowly, gently took her onto my lap. The saline was attached to one hand, and the other hand had a cannula to inject painkillers and antibiotics. She cuddled into my chest like a baby who was looking warmth. It's an awesome feeling when your partner cuddles into your embrace and you forget the entire world. Love and warmth starting to pour into your... Chapter 46 Tease Him Xenia's POV It had been a week since I started to recover. Grayson had taken great care of me and I was glad to have him as my partner. I felt that I was the luckiest girl in the world and I knew that every girl's wish was to have a husband like Grayson. Angel, did you take the medicine today? Oh, I totally forgot about it. I was busy reading a book. I showed him a sneaky smile. You didn't, right? That's why you're showing me your puppy eyes. Angel, you should care about yourself. He took the medicine from the box and gave it to me with a glass of water. That's why I choose you as my partner. I gave him a sweet smile. Oh, really? Now my mate knows how to sweet talk me, huh? He started to tickle me. Ah, <laughs> oh, Grayson, ouch! It hurts! I squeezed my arm in pain. What happened, Angel? Did I hurt you? He asked me with a worried tone. I broke out a laugh when I saw his face. Is this a joke to you, Angel? He asked with a sad tone, making me feel guilty for what I did. Grayson, I'm so sorry, baby. I didn't mean to hurt you. Will you please forgive me? 
I apologized and approached him. He looked away with a long face. Oh, I'm sad. I'm so sorry, Grayson. Now I feel bad for doing that. Will you please forgive me? I placed my arms around his neck and asked. Please don't do that again. I was so afraid that you got hurt. Grayson put his arms around my waist and hugged me tightly. I'm so sorry. I will not do it again. He kissed my forehead. Angel, I have to go attend an official business meeting. But it's an online one, so I have to go to my office. You can mind link me if you need anything. Don't go anywhere. Rest in the room. I'll ask the chef to bring your food to the room. He said and wore a blazer. He looked so handsome with that blazer. Okay, but don't spend the whole day in the office, okay? I'll get bored. In the meantime, I'll read this book. I tapped on the book and sat on the bed. He left the room with a smile. I read the book until noon, but soon it became dull to stay in the room. What should I do now? An idea came to my mind. Let's go, Xenia, and show your wild side to him. Meow, here I come, baby. I planned to tease him sexily. Her, what should I wear? I didn't have any sexy clothes, so I wore his slim fit white shirt with his boxers. I wore my high heels and released my hair, letting it blow in the wind. I applied a dark red lipstick on my lips and I opened the first two buttons of the shirt, just to show my cleavage. The black lace bemmy bra I wore tightly cupped my breasts. Those plump breasts will definitely tease him. Finally, I sprayed on some perfume, took a blazer of his, and wore it to cover myself since I had to pass by two floors to get to his office. I can't go like this. I have to cover myself. I peeped through the door and looked around carefully to check if someone was in the corridor. When it was clear, I quickly rushed to his office room. My heart was beating fast in my chest. I had never done something like that before. I don't know if I will be able to tease him or not, but it's worth a try, Xenia. I stood outside the room and knocked on the door. Come in, Angel. How does he know that it's me? Maybe he smelled my scent. I opened it a little bit and looked around to see whether there were other people in the room besides Grayson. Nope. The room is clear. He was working, looking intently at the laptop screen. He still didn't notice my attire. Are you busy, my playboy? I behind him and whispered in his ear sexily, lightly biting his ear. He looked at me in surprise as his jaw dropped. What are you doing? Are you very busy? I licked and bit my lips before going up to the front of the table and leaning behind his laptop screen. My breast moved up and crashed down on the table. Grayson looked at them and licked his lips. Oh, it's so hot here, baby. Can you please make the air conditioner colder? I requested and removed another button on the shirt. I knew his throat and lips went dry by seeing me. Fuck, Angel. What are you doing? He ran his fingers through his hair. His breathing becoming rapid. I lifted my arms and tied my hair into a bun. When I lifted up my hands, I made sure to turn to his side so that he could see my belly button when my shirt raised up slightly. Stop doing it, Angel. I'm warning you, or else it won't be good for you. He gulped down a whole glass of water. I knew that the teasing was working on him. I walked to him slowly with my catwalk and pushed the chair which he was seated on towards the book rack with one foot. I sexily went to him with shoving one finger to my mouth. I sat on his lap while spreading my legs over the two sides of the chair. We were face to face, inches apart from each other. I could feel his manhood poking my thigh muscle. Oh, my poor love. I winked at him and leaned towards the book rack. Running my fingers over the books. I got bored. I need to read another book. I whispered in his ear and sat up straighter and taller. I was sure that my breasts lightly caressed his lips. He growled in response. I will read this book, I said, making sure my tongue went up to my lips in a sexy way before I stood up out of the chair. 
Where do you think you're going, huh? Did you really think you could easily escape after teasing me? He roughly grabbed me into his embrace and lifted me up, wrapping my legs around his waist and headed to his sofa. Ah, uh, no, Grayson. I got bored, that's why I thought of teasing you. I got afraid that I was going to lose in my own game. I knew he was aroused and that I should calm him down. Really, baby girl? Did you think about the consequences? Waking my inner beast is not good for you. He whispered in my ear. No, no, Grayson. Please control yourself. He started to kiss me, but I couldn't resist his touch. This kiss is so passionate and warm. Grayson, please stop this. We have to wait until our marriage, right? I said to him while painting. Don't ever do that again, baby girl. Next time I won't stop and you won't be able to stop me. He stood up from the sofa. So, my little tigress knows how to tease me, huh? Here I was, thinking that my angel was just a shy kitten. He had a smirk on his face. I bit my lip, shyly stood up, and quickly went to take Grayson's coat. Leave it. I want to see you like this. He removed my coat, backed away from me, and started to encircle me, eyeing me from head to toe. Grayson, I'm feeling embarrassed. Shall I? Before I could end my sentence, Stephen came into the room without knocking. Hey, Alpha, are you? But before he couldn't finish his sentence, his eyes went wide and his jaw dropped at the situation he was witnessing. Close your eyes and turn around. Grayson quickly covered me with his large frame. I had never felt that embarrassed before. Now Stephen will tell this to everyone. Stephen, don't you know some manners? What did I tell you every time about knocking on the door first? Grayson's voice had a hint of annoyance. Ahem, who knew that you two were having a lovey-dovey moment in the office? He still didn't turn around, so I wore my coat and ran from there quickly. I ran to my room and closed the door. My face was red like a tomato with embarrassment. I had a bath and decided to have lunch. I mind-linked the chef and requested him to send the lunch to my room. After about an hour, Grayson came to the room. I looked down with embarrassment. I saw with the corner of my eye that he was looking at me with a smile on his face while folding his arms in front of his chest. He suddenly started to search under the bed, open the drawers, open the wardrobe, searching around the room. What are you looking for? I asked while standing up from the bed, confused. I was looking for my tigress. Just a little while ago, she was with me in my office, he teased. Stop teasing me. I hit his chest. He hugged me with a laugh and kissed the top of my head. Angel, I have to talk about something very important. Grayson sat on the bed, took me onto his lap. And what is that? I turned to his side. Mom and Dad said that it's time to start preparing for our wedding. He said with a broad smile on his face. Really? Are we going to get married? I jumped out from his lap. Yes. Soon we're going to be Mr. and Mrs. He dragged me again to his embrace. So we need to talk to your parents also, because I want to marry you according to your tradition, and here according to our tradition. He kissed my cheeks. Grayson, in my case, we have a lot of customs and things to do. And to be honest, we're not a rich family like you, and we need time to prepare for the wedding. I explained. Who says that you need to do pay for the expenses for our wedding? I will do everything. You only have to dress up like a beautiful bride and be my wife. He kissed my forehead lovingly. Then shall we video call your parents, Angel? I nodded my head and made the call. Soon Grayson's parents came to our room as well. I think Grayson's mind linked them to come to our room. Both sets of parents talked about the wedding preparation. I must say that I'm the happiest, luckiest girl in the world. My parents described everything to Grayson and his parents. They agreed to do everything. Mom, I'll handle all the expenses of the wedding. You don't have to worry about it. I'll do an online transfer to Dad's account and you can carry on the wedding preparation from today itself, Grayson said to my mom. After the call end, 
Grayson's parents left the room. The wedding preparations soon started. All the pack members eagerly waited for the special moment. And from child to adult, they all worked hard according to their capacity. As usual, Grayson wanted to surprise me, so I didn't know what he was doing and he's secretly talking to my parents also. But I still knew nothing. I got angry with him because he wouldn't tell me anything. Angel, are you angry with me? One evening he came to me and hugged me from behind when I was on the balcony. No, why should I? I said, annoyed at him. Oh no, my baby girl's angry with me. Hmm, let me take care of my angry tigress. He started to tickle me. Now this is his trick to make me laugh. He lifted me from my back and came inside the room. Now, Angel, there's something important we should talk about. He placed me on the bed and sat next to me. What? I asked with my eyebrows raised at him. We need to talk about our honeymoon. He took my hands into his and rubbed the back of my palms with his thumbs. Okay, what about it do you want to talk about? I asked him. I just need to know if there's any place that you would like to go for our honeymoon. I'm promised you to take you around the world, Angel. But for our honeymoon, where do you want to go? Tell me. He looked into my eyes. Mm, I haven't thought about that, Grayson. Do whatever you want. You always do the best. I cupped his cheek with a smile. I was thinking of spending our honeymoon on your cruise, which I gifted you. And then we will travel around the world. Is that okay for you, Angel? Grayson suggested. Sounds good, Grayson. I smiled at him. I am nervous about the wedding. I hope everything will be all right. Chapter 47 Yes, I do. Author's POV Before starting the chapter, I need to describe some customs, traditions, and several important things that are part of a Sri Lankan wedding. When the bride plans to dress as a Kandian bride, both groom and bride have to stay away from having any meat items for their meals. They will also be blessed by Pirith chanting to avoid evil things that could happen to both bride and groom. Auspicious times are there for several things, such as there is an auspicious time to keep the Nalal Pati, which will be described later, by the bride's mom to the bride, and there is an auspicious time to step foot out from the bride's home, and for Porua ceremony, I'll describe later, and finally to leave the premises. Kandi and Bridal Set Bridal sets are the most important pieces of Kandian jewelry. They are handmade and consist of 26 pieces of jewelry that will adorn the bride from head to waist. The set normally consists of moon and sun, head chain, karapati throatlet, which is tightly worn to the throat of the bride as a necklace, earrings, three pendant chains, peti necklace, agasti necklace, a thick sari, bangles, gedi bangles, and hawadiya. Hip chain. Most of these jewelry items are made using five types of metals such as gold, silver, copper, lead, brass. These items are embedded with red and white Indian stones designed specially to go with the spectacular designs. Porua Ceremony Porua is a wooden platform that is decorated beautifully according to the wedding theme. The bride and groom perform few rituals with their families. The bride's relatives gather to the left side of the porua, while the groom's relatives gather to the right side of the porua. There are many customs performed during this porua ceremony time, so I am not going to describe this whole thing. Xenia's POV Grayson had made a whole new candy and bridal set specially for me, with white gold and original diamonds. He spent millions for that set. My wedding saree was a custom-designed one from the best designers in India. It was a pure white saree made from bridal chiffon material, with full diamond and silver work. My shoes were from America, designed with pearls. Grayson personally took care of everything. The wedding day came soon, and Grayson, me, and his parents flew to Sri Lanka to have the wedding according to my culture. I stayed at home with my parents while the Lockwood family booked a seven-star hotel and stayed there. They picked the same hotel as their wedding venue. 
On the wedding day, I was dressed as a Condian bride, but I requested Grayson to wear a full suit since the traditional Nalame suit would be uncomfortable for him to wear for the whole day. Plus, I personally didn't like the traditional suit. Grayson came with his parents to the wedding hall with his few close friends. The traditional drummers brought and welcomed them to the wedding hall. Grayson wore a royal blue suit with a silver caravat and a flower was attached to his coat pocket, which was from my rose bouquet. Grayson sat on the chair of the marriage registry table and waited for me to come. Soon I came in with my fast-beating heart. I entered the hall with my parents and just like Grayson, I was also welcomed by the traditional drummers. According to what someone told me later on, Grayson turned to look at me and described me as his beautiful bride, walking to him with a pure white Kandian saray, like an angel who just got down from heaven. He unknowingly stood up from the seat. I smiled at him, my face blushing as red as a tomato and pure shyness filling me. I approached the table and sat beside Grayson. Wow, Grayson looks so handsome. Soon, the marriage registration was done, and finally, we were legal husband and wife. Congratulations, my lovely wife. Now I have every right of you. Grayson kissed my cheeks, making me look down shyly. Then the time came for us to complete the Porua ceremony according to tradition. We got onto the Porua with our right foot. All the rituals were completed, and soon after, they both got down from the Porua, heading to our chairs. You are so beautiful, my angel. I can't believe my eyes. All I want to do is eat you, Grayson whispered in my ear. You're also looking very handsome, my husband. Plus, I saw that girls were eating you with their eyes, I replied with a smile. I'll definitely eat you when you become my wife back in America. Don't you ever think of going away from me even for a minute. I bit my lips at his words. The flower decorations and hanging candles brought a peaceful atmosphere to the wedding hall. The wedding truly screamed lavishness. We slowly started to go around the tables and I introduced all the relatives to Grayson. But imagine my surprise when Grayson greeted them by saying a Yubawan and by bringing his hands together, worshipping the elders too. My relatives were so happy and they blessed us. We enjoyed our wedding day, and finally, the time came to say goodbye to my parents. The moment was so emotional. I cried a lot while hugging my parents as Grayson tried to console me. Mom, don't worry. I'll take care of her more than you did. I'll keep her safe and love her until my last breath, Grayson assured my mom. Son, please take care of my girl. I am giving my treasure to you, my dad said. We worshipped my parents and left for our hotel room. Oh, baby girl, stop crying. I'm here with you. I know that you love your parents very much. I'll bring you here from time to time to see your parents, and they can also come and live with us any time. Grayson cupped my cheeks and wiped away my tears. My wife must be tired now, right? We will shower, have dinner, then we will have a great sleep, okay? I just nodded my head in response. I tried to remove my clothes alone, but it was so hard with all the heavy Kandian jewelry set. I looked at Grayson from the corner of my eye. Grayson had removed his coat and cravat. He folded his shirt sleeves up to his elbow. Need any help, Angel? It looks like you're stuck with your clothes. Grayson approached me. Mm, yes, I need a little help here. Can you? I turned my back towards him. Grayson slowly removed my condi and set, and then he helped me to release my hair from all the pinned hair clips. Angel, first you go and have a bath, then I'll have a bath after that. He kissed my shoulder. We both freshened up, and Grayson quickly noticed that I was looking nervous. Angel, are you all right? You look nervous. Grayson took me onto his lap. Mm, this is our first night as husband and wife, that's why. I bit her lip anxiously. Ah, oh, so that's why you're nervous. Angel, I'm not going to have sex with you here. Only once you become my wife in America and we go on our honeymoon cruise, I'll have you. I'm not going to let you go away from me for even a minute. And trust me, 
you won't be able to walk for a long time because I'll have sex with you until you get exhausted. Grayson looked into my eyes with desire. We both just gazed deeply into each other's eyes before we slowly brought our faces close and our lips touched. We kissed deeply and Grayson kissed me like there was no tomorrow. Eventually, we both fell asleep in each other's embrace. Three days later, back in America. Everyone was busy with the wedding preparation. My parents and close relatives had flown to America for the wedding function. The marriage was going to happen in a famous church in Philadelphia. I made sure to request Grayson not to bring any wolf activity while my parents and relatives were there. Grayson wore a black tuxedo set with a rose attached to his blazer pocket. He gelled his hair and his groomsmen were Cade and Stephen. The three men looked so handsome. All she wolves were eye-raping Stephen since he was the only bachelor out of the trio. All of them gathered at the altar and waited for me to arrive. Based on what I heard, Grayson was glancing at his watch from time to time. The door opened and everybody turned to look towards the door. I stood at the door with my father and slowly began to walk towards the altar. My gown was a pure white custom-made dress with luxurious flower lace and sequins. It was an organza princess cute bridal gown. My mom told me that I looked like a baby doll. My hair was done with a puff in front and I wore a pearl crown that Grayson especially had made for me. Grayson looked at me intently. Wow, Angel, your beauty is mesmerizing and the glow on your face is increasing day by day. He mind-linked me, making me smile widely in response. My bridesmaids were Kate's mate and Maria. They wore salmon pink strapless dresses with light pink rose bouquets. I caught Cade looking at his mate and she winked at him, but Grayson's eyes were only on me. Eventually, I slowly reached the altar and my dad let go of my arm. I kissed his cheek and proceeded to stand opposite Grayson. Grayson Lockwood, do you accept Zenia Fernando as your legally wedded wife? The priest asked Grayson after the ceremony prayers were completed. Yes, I do, Grayson replied with a big smile. Xenia Fernando, do you accept Grayson Lockwood as your legally wedded husband? The priest asked me. Yes, I do. My face lit up with a bright smile. I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. Grayson didn't wait for a second. He cupped my cheeks and gently kissed my lips passionately. I just looked down with my shy face, but my heart was glowing with happiness. Congratulations, Alpha and Luna, Kate and Stephen wished us. After the church ceremony, we all headed to the hotel for our reception. The hotel was decorated with pink and white roses. The crowd looked like they were having a great time and blessed us to have a happy wedded life. Our faces were glowing brightly with happiness. Soon our special day and the happiest day of our lives was over, just like that. We said goodbye to our parents and returned to our hotel room. As soon as we entered the room, Grayson hugged me tightly from behind. Angel, you look like a baby doll today. I feel so lucky to have you. And I thank the moon goddess thousands of times for giving you to me as my mate and my love. He kissed my shoulder. I love you, Grayson. All this, everything, feels like a dream to me. But I feel like the luckiest girl in this universe. I must thank the moon goddess for giving you to me as my husband. I turned to face him, buried my face in his chest, and cried happy tears. Love, I think we need a shower. I know that you must be tired and I am too. I request the dinner to our room and tomorrow morning after breakfast, we will leave for the cruise. Grayson kissed my forehead and then he removed his coat. Grayson, can you help me with this? I pointed at the zipper on the back of my dress. Grayson walked over to me, slowly turned me around, and lowered the zip to the bottom. I bit my lip in response when Grayson's fingertips lightly brushed my naked skin. Angel, I think you can remove your petticoat when you go to the bathroom. Grayson turned and walked away, but I quickly grabbed his hand tightly. Won't you look at your wife's body? 
I looked into Grayson's eyes. Baby girl, I told you that I'll give you an unforgettable honeymoon, but it's not here, not now. You will be mine tomorrow night, and you will beg for my touch. Grayson whispered into my ear. Okay, my husband. I headed to the bathroom with a smile. The most beautiful moment of our lives is coming soon.